Fan Studios, secured by DFWSecurity.com. This is Sean and RJ on 105.3 The Fan. Taylor, by far their best outside shooter. He has been dismal today, 2 for 11. Robert Sprunts. Radford calls the break. No Tom House. Bounce in. Up top, Garcia for three. Got it! Anderson Garcia, his ninth made three of the year, forges an 86 all tie. The red line is on. We'll have overtime. Wow, that was the call on uh, Westwood One as the Aggies tied things up late last night. Light the lamp. That's Light what they the say lamp. in college basketball, right? They Light the did. Lamp. They lit the lamp late last night uh, at the end of regulation and overtime, but. They lose an OT. Damn. Poor Aggies. I will tell you what. We'll, we'll have a full bracket update at 620. Bad weekend for me, by the way. Really bad weekend for me. Yeah, it was. It was. It's Sean and RJ on 105 through the fan. Sean is out. Sean is moving. Not states, just like cities. So he'll be back. He's out all week. He's out all week. He's out all week. He's got to take a whole week off to move. He's got to take off a week to move. Is think of a week to uh to have you know two weeks for a child a child birth thingy whatever I, paternity I, leave I I know you and I are gonna miss Sean Peyton Ryan they're gonna both both miss Sean the listeners are gonna miss Sean I have a special surprise for you later right. today oh great that that'll help us not miss Sean nearly as much it'll be like he's here with us in spirit okay so you'll have to listen out for that all right well, I will I, listen out I've never heard of the word listen out yeah I don't know we're kind of you uh, say he said end out before and now he's saying listen out Peyton's gotten gram- grammatical errors all over the cut sheet yeah. yeah and then had to argue for it yeah we, we're we're a mess without Sean that's basically what we're getting down to but we're we're gonna get I by. coffee this morning at home Jeez, man what are we gonna do and we'll do nothing man we'll, be, we'll do we'll do we'll do great radio uh we'll do, we'll do were you like were you Here's my theory. I was talking about this with Peyton driving in when you talk about Houston versus AM, because that would have been bad for Peyton's bracket. Peyton has Houston I winning know. it all. The rest of us have UConn winning it all. So that would have cooked him, essentially. Especially yeah. because you don't have Houston in the final four, or just the Elite Eight. Is it Elite Eight or Final Four? I'm in the Elite Eight. Okay. So that would have been your futures are not great right now. Your max points, because you've lost two Final Four teams now. They're okay. You've uh, lost Kentucky. I have. And you've lost uh, Baylor. Yeah, I didn't realize though that Peyton did not have UConn. No, Peyton did not have UConn. Right. So that it's might a big be a salvation. Six, it's a big six you. points at the end there. <laughs> it, it is, but the the problem is he's got Creighton going. So if Creighton yeah. beats Tennessee, that, that the big the big game is the Tennessee Creighton game because he has him in the final four. That might I do too. That might that might determine the bracket. And I have Tennessee in the final, so that could be big. But even last night, I saw Peyton coming in here. I was like, "Were you freaking out a little?" He's like, "Yeah, look when when he hits that three. I started panicking because it's got overtime. I was like, I wouldn't have panicked if I was you. Because to me, the longer a game goes, the better team wins. The the better that is for Houston or yeah. whoever's And better. we saw this with Creighton and Oregon on Saturday night. Oregon had a four-point lead like a minute to go. Like, they blew it. They blew it. And the game went overtime. And then they they didn't. You know, In overtime, they were able to, to force second. And then Creighton just boat raced him in the second overtime. Like, this is what happens. The longer the game goes... Because you know these these college games are forty minutes. Mm-hmm. Imagine an NBA game at forty minutes. I mean, like there's there's an eight minute stretch where the better team just has a better chance of winning, and that's well. And you told us, was it last? Yeah, you had mentioned on Friday. I'm a soothsayer. You were no. It was honestly it was it was a good take for you that one of the big takeaways we had from the first day of action was the second half of games the better teams were yeah. taking care of things. We're they we're were. seeing oh some some close action in the first half or. You know, oh, somebody was trailing early. Marquette was trailing early on. Yeah. Just absolutely rocks Western Kentucky in the second half. You see, oh, Long Beach State's keeping it close with Arizona. Arizona mm-hmm. comes out and takes right. care of business in the second half. So same sort of thing that you saw that a little bit this weekend, too, where things were kept a little close. Second half, there was generally some distance there. But Houston yeah, and A&M, under you. For, you know, that was probably, it was that game of the weekend for, for you. This Houston one last night? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I think it was. Uh, the Oregon game was really fun. The it Oregon was. Creighton game. That was really fun. The Aggie game. Listen, Wade Taylor, those were two of the worst, most atrocious shots I've ever seen in my <laughs> life at the end of regulation. I don't know what he was thinking, what time he was looking at. He had so much time on the clock, and he was just chucking. And I mean, chucking bad balls out there. Just terrible. 
bailed out by Garcia on that three-pointer that Taylor had a nice pass to. You never see a bounce pass from the baseline all the way to the three-point line right down center court. Like, you don't see that. That never happens. That that was a wide... Everybody was... And that's just the, the nature of the game. Everybody was so out on the perimeter. But that was a great shot, and they just blow it in the overtime. They probably, they probably could argue they should have won that game. Uh, I don't think they should have won as much as Oregon should have. Oregon should have beat Creighton the way they were playing the regulation. A&M had that furious comeback. Houston should have won. But what a what a finish in that one. You know what I you know what I don't like so far is that in the first round if you were to ask me what was game of the first round, I might say Kansas Samford was was right up there. This weekend it was Houston A&M. I don't appreciate as a guy who's got to get up for a morning show that the two games of the tournament are the ones that are ending at like midnight. Yeah. I don't know. appreciate that. It, uh, you know, if you're a if you're an A&M fan, uh, you're up late. Like our, our guy Troy Hughes, old Peyton's old, uh, old. He just texted. He's driving into the airport. Well, I'm sure, he was up very very late watching his Aggies play. Old Rockwall, you little Brenner. That's that's right. <laughs> He's uh, safe out there, Troy. It's oh my gosh, it's it it's is wet. it is rain. It's oh, wet. It's, it's wet out it's there. It's wetter than brought us watching a lineman yep. run a three cone. Wow. Um, <laughs> Like we don't like tennis. We don't play till nine ten, Central Time on Friday night this coming week, which is a ten ten Detroit start. They're not starting the game in the local time that the game is being played at till after ten o'clock at night. How That's much insane? How much were you sweating the Tennessee more Texas than game uh, it was? It started to get a little test. I got a little nervous. That that was clearly uh, look. Kudos to you, Rocky Top. Tennessee was better. Like Tennessee was better that whole game. That was not that was not a game Texas should have won. But closing it out, I was feeling like they're going to pull, oh, yeah. pull this off. It was one of those. Oh, here we go. Sitting there, absolutely inebriated at Richardson Bar and Grill, which we'll talk about more at seven forty. Oh, I can't wait. For that. I was uh, I, I was certain. Here it is. They they have no business winning this one, but they're going to pull it out, and this will end choppy in the bracket. Oh, I would be dead. I'd be. Dead. I mean, first of all, I'd be. I'd be just distraught, disheveled. There's not. You know, I, I would be so disappointed because this was a. Uh, this is. This is. I would say a final four. Eh, I don't say final four. It's an elite eight or bust. They got to make the elite eight. Otherwise, I'm disappointed. If they make the elite eight. I'll be all right. I could deal with it after that. If they don't make the elite eight, they lose this Friday to Creighton, which is possible because Creighton. I mean, they just got those shooters, man. They they can get on you. And they can shoot fifteen threes and make them all. And you will be cooked. You're I, honestly, you're the reason that my brackets in as good sh- good of shape as it is. Oh, really? I'm the only one of us who still has my elite eight intact. Yeah. And you you want to know why? Why is that? Here's my elite eight: UConn, Iowa State, UNC, Arizona, Houston, Marquette, Gonzaga, and Creighton. Okay. Outside of Gonzaga and Creighton. Those are top two seeds. They are, and I, I don't remember. Analysis, Bob. I'm well. just saying it's it's what Choppy, Choppy said. Look, don't complicate it. Keep yeah, it simple, I stupid. Did. And I didn't keep it simple. You, you pretty much did, other than Baylor. You did have three seed Baylor in there. All right, so the favorites went 15 and one straight up in the round of 32. Damn. Okay, we said the first round is where all the upsets happen. And each round after that, you you minimize your upsets. There's very few upsets after the first round. Usually at five of the first round, you know, you'll average maybe two in the second, and that's it. You don't even average one combined for the rest of the round. All one and two seeds made the Sweet 16. That doesn't happen. No. That doesn't happen. Double-digit favorites are 15 and three against the spread. So if you're a double-digit favorite, you are covering. And only two of the top 12 teams were eliminated, and that was Kansas... I'm sorry, Kentucky and Baylor. So, you know, we're gonna we'll, we'll talk about this. I'm sure this week uh, in terms of the tournament and, and and how you viewed it and liked it. But this is what the the women's tournament has always done. This they never have upsets in the first round, and they've got all the good teams in the later rounds. And then it gets really really intriguing as you get to the final four, of the elite eight. You know, maybe that's what we're gonna have in the men's draw this year, where you had a little bit less of the intrigue in the first round and two second round. There's no upsets, but. Look at the matchups you're about to have over the next four days. What's the if you're looking over the first two rounds? What's the pick that you look back and not just because it ruined your bracket, but is there one you look back at as like, man, I'd like that pick back. 
because I was kind of waffling on that one anyway, and it made, it screwed me. Because uh, to me, it was I should not have picked Vermont to beat Duke. Oh no, you shouldn't. Have. I, I did. That was that was I let. Yeah, I let my emotions you get the emotions best of me. Get you. Yeah, I get it. Um, I probably shouldn't have. I picked McNeese and Samford to beat. Um, Gonzaga and Kansas. And I'm okay with it. I mean, like, you got to pick upsets. So I'm not going to look back on it. But then I had, you so I had McNeese going to Sweet 16. I just, I just cost myself three points. I did there. the same with JMU. I picked yeah. James Madison and Vermont, which James Madison did win. But I'm probably not picking yeah. James Madison if I know they're against Duke instead of Vermont. So I shouldn't have, yes, I shouldn't have I agree. done that. that that's what, yeah, I, I understand that. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. So I, look, I, I, I enjoyed it. I know uh, the ratings were pretty good on Thursday. I didn't see the Friday ratings yet. Uh, the ratings were up 10-year high on Thursday for the Thursday slate. And Thursday slate, I didn't think it was very good That's what we're going to keep getting. Remember, they're gonna, they, they've they tricked the way you now yeah. talk about the households and everything, and so they're going to keep every right. every new tournament and Super Bowl playoff. It's going to be record high. It's the highest yes. it's been in a decade, baby. We are going to see that, yep, because the way they're, they're gauging uh, the ratings. So we'll see if we get those uh, this week and see what all the ratings were locally. Uh, for all of the games. So we got uh, college hoops, plenty of college hoops today. Uh, we got a great Inside the Star for you coming up. Of course, we're going to have the weekend. Jerry talked. Jerry talked yesterday out those owners meetings. Jerry talked. I want to talk about his notepad. <laughs> I think that's the story here. What the hell does he have a notepad for? Yeah. I think that notepad tells you everything you need to know But the general manager of the Dallas Cowboys and what his role is exactly right now. But... Uh, it is Sean and RJ on a Monday. Sean's out all week. The story that took over Friday night, we're going to get into next, and that is sadness from the great Kate. Mm. All next on the fan. Coming up in the next G-Bag Nation, it is a Monday show. We'll recap everything from the weekend with the tournament and start to count.
Good morning, DFW. It is Sean and RJ here on 105.3. The fan Sean is out all week. We will uh, pay homage to him at 640 this morning. A nice little treat for nice everybody. Treat. A word from Sean Sharif. Okay. A word. Yes. A word from A Sean few, Sharif. Several words. We'll see if they're any good. Uh, we may never see him again. We may never see him again. We will talk about that here uh, in a second, but we, how we may never be graced with his presence on this show at all again. Uh, but we do want to talk, Bobby Belt, about Kate old Kate Middleton. Middleton. Old Kate Middleton. Boy, that was some sad news coming out on Friday. That was Friday, uh, like one. Uh, Kate Middleton released a video message. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, she's been missing in action since having some abdominal surgery. And there's the controversy over the deep fake photo or the uh, yeah. the edited photo where the her daughter's sleeve was like blending into her wrist or something. Uh, and so everybody's been a little like, okay, what's going on here? Is, is something wrong with her? Is she missing? Is she like bedridden? Something ser seriously seems wrong here. And uh, Kate Middleton, stepped up delivered her message and announced that uh she has cancer and they are a she did not specify what no. kind of cancer she did say it was discovered in the course of the abdominal surgery that she had had um but that she's been diagnosed with cancer and she's started chemo or it was is going to start it was chemo a, it it's, preventative, it's preventative chemo yeah. man I, I can't with this peyton you, you could you have not picked a different song than god save the queen when we're talking about cancer diagnosis here Oh, well, I thought it was relatable with the uh, the top. <laughs> this is <Peyton>. God. <laughs> yeah, just no music, Peyton. That's probably better. My God, this does, this has not done anything, by the way, to silence the uh, the oh the deep fake detractors. Oh, listen, I I'll, I'll tell you this, all right. And I know it was their farm, Windsor Farms, right? Because they are the Windsor family. Mm -hmm. I I still don't know that that was them. There was no security anywhere to be found. I still don't. I'm still not convinced that was her in the photo. I don't well, know. Maybe it was. I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. But it's just, it looks, it's oddly suspicious how, like, every photo of Prince, of, of, of King Charles that you see in his vehicle is crystal clear. But you get Kate Middleton out there in a front seat, not in a side seat where you got tint, but in the front seat, and you can't get a clear photo. Well, here's, I don't know. I just thought that was a little bit odd. Here's the thing, too, is that the, the, uh, you know, the royals are, are, you know, whoever was in charge of releasing yeah. that initially, the royal family, whoever was put out that photo that was doctored, they've now opened it up to where these questions can thrive yeah, they because they did that. Look, I like I, I'm just I, I pulled it's up fortunate, but that's the reality. I, I pulled it. up Reddit this morning just to go to my saved articles that I have and everything else because that's one of the tabs that I'll have open. So I go there this morning, and at the very top of like most popular posts on the website right now. Or, or posts starting to trend here. The very top of the front page is this picture of Kate Middleton. It says, Kate Middleton is seen wearing a ring the entire video, except for about half a second. There's half a second there where she's not wearing a wedding ring. And so now people say, deep fake, rather than just, okay, is this like a still where you just can't see could be something? A still. But it it's... could be a cut. Like, she could have, like, had a cut in the video, took the ring off for any number of reasons, including her hands are swelling or uh, what? I, I have no idea. No idea. Why they could I think it, I think it now I think it all makes total sense now. It's she is I think it's exactly what we found out on Friday. She's sick. They weren't ready to talk about it. They were trying to hold things off as long as they could. They talked about how the, the children that they were school. they kids going to school and wanting to figure out a way to talk about it with them and do everything else. I I feel off for she does look she does look thinner. She looks, you know, a little gaunt. Uh, compared to how she's typically looked. And so it's just, I, I think it's its a sad, it's an upsetting thing, but it all, I think, within the context now, makes sense of all the secrecy and everything else. But now people are saying, okay, but why the secrecy? Is this more serious yeah. than, well, than it looks on the surface? Is it more than preventative? Are you really sick? There's still some. The conspiracy theorists are alive and well saying, they're still oh, out there. She is, uh, this isn't just, you know, She's sick. This is oh, she's she's not even here anymore. Right? No, but she, they, they haven't figured out a way to tell people yet. She wasn't missing. She wasn't in a coma. William wasn't cheating on her. That was another one that was tough. Now maybe he was. I don't know. But like that's not the reason that she was missing. Uh, there there was it was she was sick. She had they had found cancer in in her stomach and you know when they did her abdominal surgery, 
And that makes this, I mean, everybody should feel like, I mean, just complete horses, you know what's uh, over the last, what, four weeks we've been trying to figure out where the heck she is. Yep. Um, you know, because we all thought something sinister had happened. And, and that's, but then again, that's what happens when you try to be very, very secretive. People, especially when it comes to paparazzi and, you know, royals or, or presidents, I mean, they're going to, they're going to make their own determinations. And that's part of the problem here. And that was part of the problem. Yeah. But like you said, there was taught that they wanted to hold this off till the kids were out of school for Easter break. I don't know what the, schooling in london is like in terms of what how they go to school what time all the things but what days they have classmates i'm surprised the royal family sends their kids to public school or even private school well i, gotta I, thought, see, they, I thought they would just do all their schooling in the in the, uh, in the palace you, you got to remember this is a harry They're homeschooled like you harry joined the military for goodness sakes remember harry harry was like uh going through basic training and was yeah uh, but like, you I know mean, i don't remember the queen back in the uh back in the 30s and 40s doing Doing, doing school. I, remember, I, mean, I thought she was homeschooled. I don't know. Were you? I wasn't alive. Were you really plugged into what the royals were doing Actually, in the thirties and forties? I was. I've seen the crown. Oh, okay, good. I've seen the crown. Have you seen the king's speech? I have not. It's a good movie. I have not seen the king's speech. It, it is I've a heard good, it's good I've heard so, it's good. So did you? Uh, yeah, it's it's sad. It's sad news. It regardless. Is sad. You it want is, some happy news then? Just I to, do. To, let's let's boost this before we go. Mega Millions is up past a Billy. May we're up past Sean a again. Billy. May never see Sean again. Okay, so this is the question now. Do we even text him, like when we yeah. go buy tickets? Yeah, we're on a, we're on a group chat. Okay, we're so we're gonna we'll buy tickets. All right, let's quickly get this up. So we're we're gonna text and we're gonna include him. Should he get a smaller cut if we win while he's out? No, no, let's give the full cut. We'll give him the full. We'll give him the full percentage. Mm. We'll give the full percentage. Um, I don't know. I say. I he's, say he's, we, gonna, he's gonna he's gonna chip in the full percentage. I think we just. I think we at least take away a million, right? And then oh, we like, get uh, like an extra two hundred fifty thousand each. Assuming uh, Peyton, are you in on buying tickets for this Mega Millions? Yeah. What are you doing? Twenty, thirty bucks? Uh, yeah. What yeah. Do we usually uh, do twenty. 20 bucks. We usually do twenty. 20. Bucks. Ryan, are you in on this? He's thinking about it. Uh, that means yeah, I, I, I don't know. I need a firm commitment now. This is for the record, Ryan. <laughs> like, I mean, this is this is how yeah. we're going to be able to settle this. But I think ultimately we just. We maybe scrape an extra million off the top. Okay. I mean, look, I think it'll be all right with losing two hundred fifty thousand dollars off of. You know, a three hundred million dollar split. Maybe he seems petty that and and like he does that seem might petty. He seems might, very cheap. Yeah, that seems like something that he'd really want to. I mean, he's bickering with his new new drive new people about his driveway. It's got a little hairline fracture in it, so <laughs> he might. Uh, Guys, concrete isn't supposed to crack. Blinds. What is this? I don't even have blinds. <laughs> I don't have anything. I mean, you heard this man just uh, during I snacks. I was listening can. to snacks. He's talking about thirteen dollar trash cans. He's like, I, I can't possibly pay cans. that. I, I can't and do that. Everything should be included in the house. That's that's what he wants. Yeah, he wants one of these like uh, the way they look the make the homes look when they're showing them. Yeah, he wants a staged. He model wants home. he wants to move yeah. into the model home. <laughs> that's what he prefers. I mean, I want to move into the model home sure. too. Yeah. We go look at model homes all the time. Yeah, just, he's, just because I want to move into those things immediately. But he's the only one who expects it. Yeah, that's true. I'll tell you this: there's nothing better than using a toilet at a model home because you know very few oh, people yeah. have used it. Right, and it's like yeah, I might be the first. I might be the first butt cheeks on this thing. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. What's coming up in a love of the uh, inside the star, love of the star, whatever it's Jerry called. Jerry Jones Your podcast is love of the star. <laughs> yeah, the, the inside the, the star coming up next on Inside the Stars. We get things going at six a.m. for your commute. Jerry Jones said, "Boy, we just could not afford that Tyron Smith no, contract." Could That's not. next here on one hundred five through the fan. DFW's number.
From our fan studios, secured by DFWsecurity.com, this is Sean and RJ on 105.3 The Fan. From news and notes to the coaches and players for America's team, let us go inside the stars on 105.3 The Fan. Good morning, Metroplex. Sean and RJ here on a Monday. Sean Sharif is out today and the rest of this week. He is moving, moving into his uh, what would we call it? his uh, palatial estate or uh, very nice new house. Very nice new house. <sighs> Boy, I, I I I want that contract. I want that Sean Sharif contract. I, I, yeah, well, I mean, look, I, you can get more money. Than, I told I, I've told him for years. You get you get more for your bank, more bang for your buck. The further outside of town you move. I didn't realize he was going to move uh, to the other side of the world. <laughs> it's, but, not, uh, it's not that bad. Boy, no, I'll tell you what, not. I, I just, I am a, uh, I am an in, I am a between the cities guy. Yes, I, I am a between Dallas and Fort Worth guy. Yeah, yeah, I could see that, especially for commute. I understand yeah. that. Um, like, I mean, we, we, we've got a, a big Metroplex. I know the signal reaches far and wide. And so there are just certain things. Like, I remember we were looking at one point going to Justin, wife and I, and it was just like, man, it's really hard for that commute to be on the other side of the speedway. It's just really hard to where we have to commute each day. I got, yeah, I want to be inside the 35s. So, makes sense. But uh, Sean Sharif is moving this week, so he is out all this week. We uh, we wish him well. Uh, you will be able to hear from Sean Sharif at 640, though, uh, through the the voice of Peyton Russell. The the mind of Sean Sharif through the voice cool. of Peyton Russell. So look out for that at 640. Uh, RJ Choppy, Jerry Jones spoke on Sunday night yes, he at did. the owners meetings in Orlando and it's, it's reached a point where there, there's one of two responses to Jerry Jones speaking I feel like over the last several years either it's ooh Jerry Jones is speaking I gotta turn this on I gotta tune into this or ooh. like it is it feels like right now Ew. a lot of people saying Ew. oh Jerry Jones is speaking uh, don't care I, I, I don't want to hear what Jerry has to say right now too mad don't want to don't know what he has to say, but I think it is important whenever he speaks we'll to talk, right. especially chop when it's an unscheduled appearance, which is what it was on Sunday. According to reports, uh, I was reading this from the Dallas Morning News. He wasn't scheduled to speak, but he was just kind of relaxed in the hallway outside of a conference room. Some of the, the beat writers, you know, they were swarming. They, they mm -hmm. smelled chum in the water. They came over and they cornered him on a couple of different subjects. And the one that's really drawn headlines this morning, chop is what he had to say about Tyron Smith. This is his quote about Jerry talking about Tyron leaving the Cowboys for the Jets. You know how highly he's thought of by us, but we can't afford that. He makes all of his incentives and things like that. We would be really wrecked. So, Chop, according to Jerry, they can't afford a $6.5 million base salary. And with all the incentives that he could potentially make, which means... He's playing for you consistently and available. They couldn't afford a $20 million tackle, which still would have been outside the top five of offensive tackles. So what they're telling you is right now, our financial state, where we're at with the cap, whatever else, we can't afford to pay top five money to an offensive tackle. And RJ Choppy, you say what to that? Um, I say to that, you had a hundred million bucks for oil and gas and, uh, investments last week so oh, there, there's no cap on oil investments no though. i know but there's there's no cap there, there's look this is all this is doing is just continuing the idea that there is a salary. we all know there is not a salary cap there is but there isn't you could fix you you could fix your way around it here here's what else that was a problem here, like, here. that's that, that that sucks okay i don't we don't have money that's garbage that's garbage. That's, that's garbage. garbage that's garbage here's what i'll say about the cap because we I, I I I fall in the middle. The idea of there is no cap. It's uh it's a it's a myth. It's a, it's just some accounting trick, whatever yeah. else. Versus, oh my gosh, there's a cap. You absolutely can't do anything if your cap's tied up. I fall in the middle. Is the cap just a nothing, a nothingness, and and you don't have to worry about it at all? No, that's not the case. Uh, eventually. It's yeah, you got to worry about it in some regard. The the day's gonna come where you're gonna have to pay up. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I think that there's room to maneuver it and, and there's certainly ways 
to maneuver the Tyron Smith deal if if you want to do that. The thing is, is that they just clearly didn't want to do it. That's where we've hit at this point, I, I think, Chop, is that they had no interest in in getting this done with Tyron except on their terms completely that completely 100% protected them. Right. And when it became clear that that wasn't going to be the case, they were done with it. Right now, Chop, $8.65 million. That is Tyron Smith's cap number with the New York Jets. Eight, okay. 8.65. Why can't you afford that? They could have done that. I think, you right? You can very easily afford that. You know how much money you free up off your cap if you just sign CD Lamb to an extension? Up to 13, 13. million. Up to 13 million. So that's important. So, so, so are they doing this because they don't want to extend these guys? I Okay, so it's similar, I think, to what Sean had talked about last week. The idea that... If you don't free up that money, if that money's not there, it's like when Sean says, oh, I don't have my tax return yet. Sorry, can't do it. Like, like it's just an excuse. It's something they have in place because as soon as they want to do something, they can flip the switch as necessary. They can get extensions done. They can, you know, uh, restructure guys. They can release guys. They can do all sorts of accounting tricks to try to free up that money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they've got, if they get an extension done with, CD, if they get an extension done with Dak, you're talking about that's $40 million right there just by handling stuff that you say yeah. you want to handle, which is, you know, keeping our own. That's what we're worried about. Right. They can do we, that. We don't, we don't want to play out in the free agent waters. We're worried about keeping our own. Instead, what you've got the Cowboys doing right now is just saying, oh man, her hands are tied. And it's like, but they're not really, you could make it work and you're just choosing not to. And that's what's frustrating, I think, right it now. It is frustrating. It is very frustrating. They, they're they're deviating from... Look, I like their plan generally. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of living in the free agency pool. That, I don't, I don't want I don't want to live like that. I, it's, it's, I, I think it's... I, I know that there are stats that show that the teams that spend the most increase their wins. That's because teams that spend the most generally are bad teams and you have nowhere to go but up. Now, now you, have, you would acknowledge you have to... Spend something. Spend something because you have to sign. Like, you need bodies. Yeah, this team lost. They did nothing but lose. So this has been, like, it's not. it hasn't been. Sellers generally win. The problem with this is that they didn't really sell. They just mm -hmm. lost. If they had sold, they would have gotten draft picks for these guys. Which all they're going to get is comp picks, which are going to be, you know, mid to late rounds. If you had sold them, you know, and this is what this is what teams a lot of times will do. Carolina should have done this with, 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 uh, with Burns. Right, they they had somebody offered them two ones last year at the mm -hmm. deadline, and they said no, because they they were trying to salvage a season. What? Oh, what? Not, not only that, they also traded DJ Moore because they didn't want to give up Brian Burns. Right. So and, and then they, what did they, they end up doing? Nothing. They lose him for a second and a fifth or whatever that was, or whatever the sign and trade was. The the deal they negotiated they wind up being a sign and it was trade. It's like a second or something. But like still, it's like okay, well. The whole reason you, you didn't want to give up DJ Moore, but you really didn't want to give up Brian Burns, so you did it. Right. And you didn't want to give up Brian Burns, so you wouldn't go get two first-round picks for him. And, and so that's, a, that's just, what bad franchises do. You and, and the problem is, is that Dallas right now, I feel like, is mismanaging things. Here's the thing I want to consider, Chop, and get your thoughts on. What if, what if this isn't mismanagement from Dallas? What if this isn't negligence from Dallas? What if... When Jerry said all in, he did not mean spending a bunch in free agency, but what he legitimately meant was I'm all in on 2024, meaning 2024 is the evaluation year for this core. If Dak's going to be here, Mike McCarthy's going to be here, people in our personnel department, um, you know, Micah Parsons even, like this is an evaluation year for do I want to continue to build on this core or do I want to blow it up and if I'm making that determination right now I am not spending to add to that core until mm. I know that I'm keeping it well is that what he wrote on the notepad that he scribbled out oh my gosh that's the that's what you're obsessed with this morning is I the can't scribbling. stop thinking about it isn't it just because there's nothing on that notepad he didn't write anything on that notepad okay so isn't it doodling potentially like yeah, just, it could yeah, be, da, da, da. but is that what the, is that, uh, look, Sean sits here every morning and just draws like spirals. Sean's not a billionaire. Sean's not the owner of Dallas, he's the gentleman of the Dallas house, Cowboys. Right? Ryan has the photo up on the fan cam there. It's, okay. it's a bunch of squiggles. All right, but here's the question. What the hell was on the pages that were folded over? 
Okay. He folded something over to get to a clean page. Okay, can I can I make a suggestion? I, I was clearly not there. He wrote nothing. Uh, he wrote nothing on that paper. What What do you do when you want to make sure that you got some some ink in your pen? Like if you're you're curious, is your phone? Yeah. Is it possible he flipped over relevant pages? Went. Hold on. Let me see if this pen works. And did one of those and just scribbled. It's possible because that's what it looks like. That's a lot of scribble though. I mean, he scribbled all over the. You can't scribble in the middle of the page though because you can't write. You would scribble in the corner on the top on on that. Uh, what's the quote up here? The border. The, head, the header? Sure. What do they call that where you put your name on the top of the paper? On the top of like... Yeah, uh, the header. The header? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You put your name up on the header on top of the college ruled legal pad, which you chose white, not yellow. That's Nothing always an interesting de 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 uh, decision. Nothing you know, wrong what, with that. What goes to the decision-making process of choosing white versus yellow or yellow versus white. They couldn't so, afford yellow. They couldn't. There you go. So then he scribbles all over the middle of it, which means he was never going to use that to write. That's there. It's a prop. It's a prop. Okay. That's it. look. I, I I think that it's it's probably as simple as he was just testing the pen out. That's what okay. I think he was doing. Because I, I think Jerry is aware enough of optics that he's gonna he would he would know better than to just flip that open and and have it there if and he have was it just there mindlessly and write. scribbling. Yeah. yeah. So, but anyway, to answer your question. Um, I don't know what he means. Like maybe that is what he means by all in. But I mean, is that is possibly that... what he means? It's just like I'm all in in terms of like I'm all in on this being the year. Not that I'm all in on spending to to build a rep, but like I'm all in on this uh, is the yeah. year for me to determine if this is the right team or not. And so this has to it has to work this year. Otherwise, we're gonna start tearing things down. Not not a rebuild, but you might start renovating. Uh, I mean, I, I think that's a great situation, a great point. I think it's very, very plausible, and I think it's going to be the reality. But does that mean that they don't sign Dak this year? That they let him go into the season unsigned? Does that mean they don't sign Micah and CeeDee Lamb this year? Does that mean that they don't, um, that maybe they trade down in the first round to stop, um, stockpile more picks? So that's, that's an interesting thought. Um, well, so if you, Chop, if you're to look at, you're, you're familiar with the uh, trade value chart. I know you've got a, a, a modernized Chase one. Chase Stewart like or Jimmy Johnson? I'm just telling you, a lot of the NFL uses the Jimmy Johnson one still. You know what? That was interesting because the article I read the other day said nobody does anymore. Like they use they use it as a baseline. It's a hybrid. It's a hybrid. Yeah, they use it as a baseline, and then they use the other one for like player value. Let, let's just go with the uh, Draft Tech has the trade value chart every year. If you were to see Dallas there at pick 24, this is a relatively deep draft chop. Sitting there at pick 36 is the Washington Commanders. A couple picks into the second round. And the Commanders have a ton of draft capital this year. They had the $80 million in cap space that they had to spend to. If you want to take pick 36 from Washington in the second round, and then you take their pick 78 in the third round, the draft trade chart, that is an exact equal match for Dallas's pick at 24. So if you don't have a fourth round pick... Would you rather pick up a second, pick up, you know, have two thirds? You you basically end up yeah. with two twos and two thirds. Is that getting you closer to at least filling some of these spots that you have, some of these okay. holes? Okay, so you instead of having one at twenty four, you have what? So instead of having twenty four, fifty six, and eighty seven, you would have thirty six, fifty six, seventy eight, and eighty seven. So you're picking four times in 50 picks. Um, And keep it in mind, you don't have a fourth rounder. Oh, yeah, I'd rather have that. You'd rather have that than the first round pick? It uh, is a deep draft. It's a deep the, draft. The thing with the first round pick is you get the fifth year. So You do. I, that could be a reason why Carolina picking at the top of the first round, right? Carolina's yeah. picking at the top of the first. If Carolina said, hey, uh, we'd like to get into the first round because we don't have our first. And we'll trade you some of our picked up. We'll give you the top pick in the fourth round because we want to make sure that we've got. Yeah, I'd rather have. I'd, I think I'd rather have the, uh, the the late one, the early two. You get the fifth year. Even, I think I'd rather even have that. even knowing that you're without that fourth round pick and you are thin right now on your roster because you won't. That's sign. Good question. I mean, you could trade down. A, you could trade a second rounder. Man. You, could, you could trade back on the in the second. They're, they're you're just, not going to pick up a fourth for that. No, that's the thing. They are in a. They're in a tough spot right now. Think, or you could are, trade back up from the from the sixth and the fifth to get into the fourth. 
could. I mean, look, you've got these future comp picks coming your way. You're going to have a lot yeah, of... Yeah, sure, your future comp picks. You need, you need people now, though, Chop. That's the biggest problem. You need people now. And the question now is, now that you've lost Tyron Smith, do you need a left tackle? Jerry said yesterday, hey, don't dismiss the idea of Tyler Smith actually going to tackle. No, we talked about guard, but he might play tackle. Jerry said, that's a possibility. That's on the table. And so, I mean, that'll be something further that yeah. we're going to have to d discuss, not only today, but just, you know, as we lead up to the draft here in about a month. I think it is a, um, I do think it's a draft day trade. If if you're going to do that, if you're going to trade on the first, like, it's like, who's on the clock? Get Costner on the uh, board. It's who, yes, yes. It's who, it's who's on the board. Who's available when you're, when you're on, when you're on the, on the clock. That's how I think I would go about it. So that's. A little bit of inside the star here on 105 through the fan whose bracket is busted. And we got a juicy fight, juicy, between coach and media. That's all coming up next on Sean and RJ. Without Sean, all week on 105 through the fan. Let's get you over to the greatness.
the Fan segment here brought to you by Window Nation, Cars for Kids. Donate today at carsforkids.org and by the personal injury lawyers, Frankel and Frankel. If you have been injured in a car or truck wreck, call Frankel first, 214-817-333-3333. With Frankel and Frankel, there is never an out-of-pocket cost. They only get paid when you win. Frankel and Frankel, the go-to car and truck wreck attorneys in Dallas. It took double overtime to get it done, but for the third time in the last four years, the Creighton Blue Jays have advanced past the first weekend. They beat Oregon 86 to 73 in a double overtime epic. They are headed to Motown. Woo! All right, their little uh, Westwood one with the call as Creighton knocks off Oregon 86 73 in double overtime. To advance to the Sweet 16, how's everyone's bracket looking? It is Sean and RJ here on 105.3 The Fan. Uh, we have a little bracket pool going on. The loser has to pay off some kind of punishment. We haven't even decided we re- the punishment. Yeah, we really should have we, we really, really should have nailed that down before. Because yeah. now whoever gets in a bad position is going to try and wiggle out of it. And right now, it looks bad for me, Chop. It, it doesn't look good for, for you. Me. It doesn't look good for me right now. If you're just looking at the standings, as they are right now. I had a brutal week, Chop. Or, or a brutal weekend. I, I had a bad effing weekend, to quote Will Chambers. Because as the point totals stand at the moment, it was 21 19 19 19 after the first round. Sean was two points out of us. And, and the scoring system we're doing here is a point for every single one you got right in the first round, two points for the second round, three points for Sweet 16, on and on. So first round, we were all pretty close. Clustered there together, Chop. For the most part, we had, yeah, 19, 19. You had, uh, Sean had 21. 21. I had 19. You had 19. And Peyton had 19. Here is the point totals after the second round of games. By the way, what, what, a, what a lunatic. This, I don't know when Bobby spends time with his family because <laughs> the amount of spreadsheets that he has over all of these point totals. Yeah. Like, he had to put this together. I just do it old school. I have the bracket. I write down my trusty pen and paper. Sometimes I, I I I boosted it up this year. I used a Tennessee colored orange marker. So I can really see it. Alabama. Okay, so after it was 21, 19, 19, 19, here's the new standings. Sean and Peyton have 43 each. Oh yeah. RJ Choppy, not too far behind. He's got 39. And then pulling up the rear is me. At 35. Oh, Robert. <laughs> Bro, I went eight. I picked eight winners correctly out of the 16 games this weekend. <laughs> and there were six sets. Eight and eight. Wow. Yeah, eight and eight. Peyton had a Peyton had a hell of a week. At 12. 12 and four, right? Peyton went 12 and should've four. Should have bet, man. Yeah, I should have bet. The favorites were right there. But you know what killed Peyton over the, the start of this so far? Has been Kentucky and Baylor. Two teams that... He had gone pretty far. Two Elite Eight teams. Two teams you had gone pretty far. I had them both in the Final Four. And that's why it's not as bad for me as it initially looks. So, because of the people that we've picked that have lost already, Mm -hmm. that then now they can't possibly win. Like, for instance, Kentucky can't possibly win in the Elite Eight. So, we've already marked that off of your future potential points. Yeah. So That's four points you can't get. You have all your Final Four. I have all my Elite Eight. Okay, so you'd have all your Final Four. Uh, yeah, I have my entire Final Four oh. and my entire Elite Eight. Oh, wow. Okay. I haven't lost anybody in the You're Elite in Eight shape. yet. Now that's the, so that's where we're at. Is The problem is that of future points, potential points, the max points that can be earned, Sean has 100, I have 95, Peyton has 93, Chop, you got 85. That's all right. I should have won. It's all coming down to Creighton and Tennessee. For me versus Peyton. Now you got to hedge it, though. You know you know how to do that, Chop. You just got to hedge it. Well, it's, you, we put the, you put the house on Creighton. But if I Creighton can't wins, hedge it. If Creighton wins, then you, you win a bunch of money, you know, and you lose this bet. But if Tennessee wins, then you're, you're doing good in the bracket. See, Peyton? Well, yeah, but for the bet payoff, I can't I can't hedge it for the bet payoff. Right. No, you're not. It's, leaving. it's my own thing. Yeah, and I get that. I would probably, yeah. and that's normally <laughs> what I would do. I would take a ten, I would take Creighton plus the two and a half. I would bet money. And then on Creighton plus two and a half, and then I would take, if Tennessee wins, I win. And if Tennessee loses, I mean, I lose, but I get a little bit of like, you know, it's it's pain and suffering. See, pain, pain and suffering payment. Peyton's in, a, Peyton's in a decent spot. He's in a better spot than you are. 
the, even with that, because if he loses Creighton, he's got Creighton in the final four, though. I have Creighton in the final four, though, and I'm two points ahead of him on the futures. And so if Creighton loses, he still has a different champion for me. He has Houston. I have yeah. UConn. That puts him in a spot where if Houston wins the championship, yeah. I'm done. Right. Like you guys would be safe for me, probably, because if Tennessee continues to make it further, Sean and I, our picks are so similar the rest of the way that him being five points ahead of me is yeah. kind of significant. But he has sense in the final four. He does? Yes. Yes, he does. So that would, I mean, that could obviously be a change for you because I think you have Purdue in. No, Why I do you not have, have Purdue. I had Purdue losing you the round of 32. In. You have Creighton in. Yes, I have UConn, Arizona, Houston, and Creighton. So you don't have your Elite Eight. Yes, I do. Oh, you do? Yeah, because you didn't have TCU there. Okay, I get you. Yep. Yeah, it's um. I, I, look, I, I thought that this weekend um, was it was not the same kind of upsets that you normally have. We had some good games. We had some blowouts, too. There were some blowouts here. I think that's what happens when you start getting three. It's nothing but three-point shooting is that you're going to have teams that are just hot and cold. You see it in the NBA all the time. But we had some some interesting finishes over the weekend. You had, of course, last night, Houston beating and hanging on in overtime against A&M, 195. That was a tremendous finish. That yes. was a game that was a double-digit game for, you know, last five, seven minutes of the, of the, of the second half until the final minute and a half when A&M comes from double. They were down 10 with 124 to go. With 124 to go, they were down, I think they were down 12 with like a minute 35 to go. 10 with 124 to go, and they wind up coming back and tying it on a prayer three. Not a prayer three. Wade Taylor took two prayer threes. <laughs> what awful shot selection. Is there any chance Buzz Williams was happy with that? I can't imagine. What the hell was he doing? If you're a player on that team, you're like, dude. What are you like, doing? You're just chucking those up there. Help us out. Look, I mean, it's a it was a Tim Hardaway Jr. shot, right? Not even Tim would do that. Man, he might. Timmy Timmy loves him some chucking. He does. It was a it was a Nate Robinson shot. May, maybe a little bit more like that. But either way, that was one of those ones where as soon as it went into overtime, I was like, all right, Houston's still coming away. You've got it. If you're if you're one of those teams where you you have no business beating Houston or being in that game, you've got to finish it yeah. in regulation. To you me. do. Over, overtime is going to kill you. But look, this one was, we were we were ready to turn this one off. The oh, Houston yeah. A&M game. Because this was, I, I mean, I thought, all right, we're 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 pretty solid. We're pretty safe here down the stretch. Because this was a 79-67 game. It was a 12-point lead with two minutes and 25 seconds to go. Yeah, I'll it, tell it was you a 12-point lead with two minutes and three seconds to go. I was not going to stay up for Yale-San Diego State. I, I was going to go to bed. I was going to go to bed as soon as the uh, Bama Grand Canyon game was over. As soon as the uh, well, that was, was a little bit earlier. As soon as the A and M Houston game was over, I was like, "All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna head, I'm gonna head to bed." San Diego State and Yale is going to be up too late for me. Um, but that was that was a really good finish, and Houston hangs on. Houston will take on a uh, Duke, right? They'll take on Duke uh, in the Sweet Sixteen here. Yes. That is going to be at the American Airlines Center. You're going to have NC State Marquette and then Houston Duke at the American Airlines. Boy. Will Duke have more fans than Houston? Oh, probably. Yeah. It's like Yankees fans walking into, you know, globe life. Yeah, but man, like, Houston should have fans, right? Yeah. I mean, Four hours like, up the road. The Rangers have fans, but still, when the Yankees come to town, that's true. It's, you know, it is what it is. But I mean, it's. It's still, you don't usually see, kudos to AM because you don't usually see any teams putting up 86 in regulation on Houston, the way that no, they play defensively. No, you don't. Uh, let's see, over the uh, Saturday night, you had my boys and your boys. This is a big uh, inter-show matchup, Texas versus <sighs> Tennessee. And this was a, what, a 14-point Tennessee lead in the second half. Yeah, this one was Texas... You know, just really kind of whittled down, and Tennessee made some mistakes and couldn't make shots that they needed to. Uh, and Texas whittles this one down. Tennessee hangs on despite an awful shooting night. Worst shooting night of the year for us. First time all year didn't make five three-pointers. They only made three in the entire game. Three for 25. Three for 25. And the only reason why we won is because y'all weren't much better when it comes to two-point field goal percentage 
at 36 percent no it was a uh look it was and a turnovers it, it was a, a a disappointing finish this is one where i i thought as we closed in the last two minutes i was like all right they're actually gonna do this like texas is gonna come back they're gonna win this game i was sitting there with reggie atatula at richardson bar and grill and i was getting i was getting pretty hyped because i was like this is it and when this happens chop is cooked because i was the only one in our bracket who picked texas and yeah sure some of it was longhorns love yeah more than anything it was just I needed to I needed to find a, a spot to be different from you guys. I needed to find somewhere to have a split to to put some daylight between me and a couple people for our bracket so that I if I was right, I could feel comfortable the rest of the tournament coast. And Texas would have done that for me. If Texas would have beat Tennessee, you would have been feeling some heat, Chop. You would have been feeling oh, you're yeah. already you're already feeling some heat, but you would have been feeling some serious heat if we would have come out of this weekend and you're missing Tennessee, Kentucky, and Baylor. Out of well, for the point. bracket, yeah. You'd be my, done. my own personal, I'd, I'd have been devastated. That's true. I, absolutely devastated. Drop that, it here. That would, um, you know, I, I didn't drink enough to do that. <laughs> um, you would have, though. You would have if they if that would have happened. Yeah, but, you know, during the last, I, there's a video I have, and I, haven't, I was going to post over the weekend, and I was like, you know, I don't want my kids to see me like that. On that, the, the internet's forever. The internet's forever. What about what about the just the audio of it? If we did the audio, uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> we could do the we could play the audio maybe, but without the video, just the, the audio. Video. The eyes drop here. I, my eyes are on a different planetary level than anything oh, else. Oh, it, yeah. it was pretty bad. Uh, what my eyes were were were, were showing. So, uh, choppy here. Yeah, it was a bad That's night. The drop from it. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Other days, other games on Saturday. Carolina 85, 69 over Michigan State. Nice. You know, they were only a three and a half point favorite in this game. You know, they're only a two and a half point favorite now over Alabama. Uh, or I'm sorry, three and a half point favorite over Alabama again. Uh, Arizona beats Dayton by 10. Iowa State rolls up on Washington State by 11. But there were a lot of blowouts this weekend. There were Illinois, a 26 point win over Duquesne. Creighton in a double overtime, 13 over uh, Oregon. Gonzaga. 21 point victory over Kansas, NC State in overtime, six point win over Oakland. That was a game that y'all were watching. Did he? Uh, did, I didn't even make sure to check. What was it? It was plus 750 that uh, old Eddie Munster from Oakland. What was his name? Uh, uh, Golke. Golke. Jack Golke. Yeah, that uh, that he was going to make a two point shot. Did he make one? No, he did not. No, he, he not was six one. of seventeen from three. He didn't even attempt a two pointer. <laughs> See, plus, I'd have taken that bet. Someone's got to tell him, man. Someone's hey, I got, I got, you get seven fifty. All right, uh, you know, I'd have he, taken that. I mean, all you gotta do is have a run out. Late in, late. Yeah. In. You got, yeah. you got a late game run out. Yeah. He's in the game. No, he's, he's, he's one of those dudes. He's where he's spreading over. He's yeah. then stopping at the three point line to take the open three. That's what he does. It looks like. Yeah, it might be because all of his shot, all of his made two pointers were layups. So I figured maybe he would have gone and gotten one. I mean, you're hoping for a foot like a foot on the line or something, and he drains it, something like that that gets you the two points. That's but. that's not a bad. I wonder. I wonder. That's a good question. How many of his eight two point attempts he had this year was that? It was just eight attempts. Oh, even? there's a chart. They have a chart. I wonder how many are. I like wonder how if he was line. on the line for a bunch of those. Is all. Of uh, those. no, 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 no. He wasn't. They were they layups. Were, they were layups. And stuff? They okay. were layups so. All right, so the tournament is set for this coming weekend. Uh, Thursday, you're going to have Clemson, Arizona, 6 o'clock on CBS, San Diego State, UConn, Alabama, North Carolina, and Illinois, Iowa State. Every 1-2 and two seed is still available. They're still left. They're still in. You need Cray Creighton, Tennessee is going to be the big deal breaker That's for it. you in our bracket. That's it for me. I need that one. And, of course, look at that. Highest ticket price of the Friday slates, 276 wow. Boy, Creighton, that one. Creighton brings dollars, Creighton man. brings dollars, man. Marquette, NC State, Gonzaga, Purdue, Duke, and Houston. That game, Duke and Houston, uh, along with the NC State Marquette, will be at the American Airlines Center. We've got a... Sp we'll get the uh, controversy audio, the special controversy going on in college uh, basketball uh, coming up a little bit later on. But we got a special uh, surprise here for Sean. He's out all week. If you're missing him, you got a little surprise. We'll get to it next on 105.3 The Fan. Let's get you over to Boomer Jacks, your official game day headquarters and the place to watch all the action. Look, great menu items. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, they're going to have lunch specials as low as ten ninety nine. Head on over to Boomer Jacks today for lunch. It's a great uh, atmosphere, fantastic TV setup. If you're going to watch sporting events, maybe not for lunch, but other times of the day, other times of the week, it's a great setup. 
best patios out of a town. And the patios are mostly covered, so you don't have to worry about the weather. They're all weather patios. It's Boomer Jacks. It's your official game day headquarters all day. Thank you. 
is the number one Chevy dealer in the world. More Silverados than anyone else. Go see them today or visit ClassicChevrolet.com. This is Texas. This is a Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's ride, relax, enjoy the difference based on new Chevrolet registrations 2023. Taken away by Duchesne. Looks to flip it to the front. Now Haskin and leans into a shot and he scores. Miro Haskin. What a shot. And a massive goal to make it 3-2 Dallas. Coyotes TV with the call. Fourth straight victory for the Stars, 4-2. They've scored at least four goals in all of those last four games. Have not allowed more than two in any of them. It's typically pretty good, but you score at least four. You never allow more than two. I think you're going to win most of those. That's on Coyotes TV. Miro with a goal. Tyler with a goal. Stars with a 4-2 victory off tonight in San Jose tomorrow. They have Phoenix or Arizona. They just couldn't. uh, They couldn't. Execute the revenge game after uh, yeah. the social media post. You thought, right. you thought that they'd be locked in, oh. have some pride? Nope. Nope. No pride. No pride in Phoenix. Well, they have pride. They just don't have, they don't have the talent yet. Uh, so, Stars get the 4-2 victory. Mavs were off the last, what, three nights? Yep. Thursday night, last time they played at home against Utah. Yeah, now well, they play tonight. Back at it in Utah. And they have dropped... They were sixth. eighth in the West. They Just, were sixth when they were the, the last time they played. How you get fired on your off day? Exactly. That's exactly what it feels like. But now they've uh, they're they're back tied with uh, the Kings right now in the standings. And then they're uh, just a half game behind the Suns. So it's motivation. That's what happens when you're just sitting around instead of uh, playing basketball. You're, you 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 lose those spots. But Mavs get another chance tonight. I'll be interested to see how how the game is going to feel because you know, we've been, we've been so into the ends of the tournament the last few nights. With the energy of those games and the excitement of those games, and you go to a regular season game that doesn't have the same stakes, has no stakes on it. When when those games have all the stakes, excuse like, me, sir, it is the Utah Jazz. Fine, that's fair. No one's dying. Let's uh, let's fair. let's show a little bit of respect. That's here. Fair. So we'll see. We'll see how we'll see how the uh, the intrigue for that one is. All right, set us up for this. Uh, you have a surprise for Shan the sheriff. Yeah, and uh, and look, and for you as well. Okay. Because uh, I I've told you about this, but you haven't you haven't gotten a chance to take part in any of this yet so uh sean is out this week yes he is uh we're all we're all gonna miss him we we love uh we love when all three of us are here we feel like we're all on our game we all fit our roles perfectly we're, we're, we're family we're chemistry team. chemistry is booming uh and, and so when sean's out we, we feel like a little piece of us is missing so i didn't want to completely miss sean this week so every day this week we're gonna hear from sean sharif through the voice of peyton russell because is Josh, he doing an impression no, a couple weeks ago, I mentioned to the to you that uh, through one of my uh, Penn Badgley like Googling fits, I found Sean Sharif's twenty year old blog posts over at the Russell Street Report, the the Ravens blog that he once wrote for years and years ago. Oh my god! So every day this week, we're gonna take an excerpt from one of his posts. Oh, I love this. And Peyton is going to read it for us. Oh, I love this. So before we, before we even get into one of his posts, in fact, You're we're gonna, a loser. We're, we're gonna go into yeah, his, how many times the shots that the thing. You're a loser. We're gonna go into his very first. We're actually gonna read from his very first blog post. Before we do that. Peyton, why don't you give us the uh, the Russell Street Report bio line? Now, typically, when you're a blogger, your bio is like, I don't know, uh, 10 words. I write and you, things. And you write it yourself, yeah. typically, at those blogs. So keep in mind, Sean probably wrote this himself. And uh, it's lengthy. Uh, Peyton, no, why, it's, is it? Peyton, why don't you hit us with the uh, the Sean Sharif bio over at the Russell Street Report? Good morning, Metroplex. <laughs> no, he didn't start doing he didn't start doing that until he got here, though. I don't think. I don't think he did that in Kansas City or no. Miami. I don't think he said good, good morning, Metroplex. Morning, yeah. Beltway. In, uh, in Baltimore. <laughs> good actually, morning, Capital. Actually, good. good lunch. He was middays back then. I think. So. Uh, thanks. <laughs> All right, here's the bio. Sean Sharif is a sports talk host and program director for Del Marva's ESPN Radio 1240 in Cambridge, Maryland. Well, he is wow. recognized for his interviewing skills and ability to attack a subject from a number of different angles. He has interviewed the likes of Jim Brown, John Wooden. Red, Wooden. 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 <laughs> Wooden. <laughs> this, this is going to be, be part of the enjoyment. Oh, yeah, it's going to be amazing. Red Arbach. Oscar Robertson, Brooks Robinson, and Earl Weaver. Sean is a native of Maryland and attended college at American University in Washington, D.C. While there, he had interned for the George Michael Sports Machine Whoa! and traveled back and forth to Salisbury, Maryland for television experience at WMDT Channel 47. Wow. After graduating, Sean did play-by-play in color for the Rockford Lightning of the Continental Basketball Association. Oh, the CBA. Boy, yeah. how, how much longer is his bio going to go on, this bio that he's Holy written? Holy cow. Man, hopefully one more sentence. 
Sean gets made fun of constantly for winning a state tennis championship in mixed doubles, although he openly admits to not being good enough to win one by himself, and that is the Oh, fight. look, self-deprecation look at, at the end. That's good. It's so a whole Wikipedia page. So it, is, it is, man. Wikipedia he he rubs it. So his very first blog post. We don't, don't have a Wikipedia page, by the way. Oh, we should. Bobby, get on that. I know, I know, I know, we, I know. Need to have, we need to have individual Wikipedia I'll pages. Get, I'll get on it. I'll, I'll, Peyton's going to have a Wikipedia page before ChatGPT. <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, the, the first blog post he wrote was back in April of 2007. And it was called Tis the Season for NFL Deception. And it was about the NFL draft. This was the Jamarcus Russell draft. Calvin oh, Johnson, man. those guys. So it, it's lengthy, so we're not going to get into the whole thing. But but we did get uh, a little bit of an excerpt from this. And this will this will give you an idea of the Sean Sharif writing style. So Peyton, uh, give us an excerpt from this article that he wrote for the Russell Street Report. Liar. Fraud. Phony. Four exclamation points. No, this isn't a recap of my girlfriend cheating on me. It's a preview of the 2007 draft. It's the lies, deceit, <laughs> and upstantiated rumors that make the NFL draft my favorite. Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> I love all, I love the, I love what's being written here, and I love how Peyton's reading. <laughs> all right. So, though, that's. That's great. It's good. I like, it catches the attention. Like, is it true? Did this girl cheat on him? Is that why he? He did says that? it did it because I found this couple weeks ago. He goes, "No, I was just I was being funny. I was I was, okay. I was, catch, I, I was hooking clever. clever. What what is the what is the use of exclamation points? I mean, do you go? I don't. Is so it, as you can see here, he went liar one, fraud two, phony three. So he increased mm. the exclamation points with each point that he made. Okay. All right. That's how he chose to go about it. Continue. Your guess is as good as the experts. This is why the draft is so amazing. No one knows what the hell is going down. The worst thing that can happen is a Friday night deal being finalized in Oakland, which would ruin the drama of Roger Goodell strolling to the podium for the first time. Fortunately for us, the Raiders are probably too cheap and too inept to finalize negotiations with whomever they select. Mm. By the way, what could be better than Oakland and Detroit having the first two picks in the draft? It's the same thing as letting Don Imus and Tim Hardaway combine for a State of the Union address. <laughs> <laughs> and what year was this? 2007. <laughs> we have no idea whether Al Davis will overrule his grandson, Lane Kiffin, <laughs> and make the pick for the silver and black. Will we get to hear Davis comment on the pick via teleconference from the, his hospital bed? Will the Raiders make the number one Jesus. guy don an all-white sweatsuit once selected? Oh. There are many questions that will be answered in a matter of hours, so sit back and enjoy the best sporting event there is while you're waiting for Saturday. Could you find me a loyal girl who won't cheat on me? <laughs> wow. I like it. Wow. That's, Going that, back I to like the girl. it. In all the points, <laughs> it's uh, the tell him. Tell he him what you told back. him. He had the call back from the yeah, beginning to yeah, the yeah. girlfriend yeah. cheating on him. Yep. It's tell him. Tell him what you told him and then tell him again. So I had everything you needed there. Uh, I, yeah, I like it. I think that that's, that's, a, that's a nine, eight and a half, nine out of ten. It's strong. It's, it's very strong. strong. Very strong. And you know, there's enough the to, to go a whole week of this. Oh, oh yes. Oh, wow, he has oh. like 20 posts up. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. And all of them are, they're even more snarky than that one. You got to remember, that was the first one. He was just getting warmed up. Yeah. That was, there's, that was, there's Paris Hilton references and stuff in the future yeah. ones. Oh, it's strong. Oh, pop culture, Sean. I didn't think I would have seen that one. No, I didn't no, know. No. I didn't know that one existed. Yeah. He was, he was all about it back then at okay. the Russell Street Report. All right. I like that. I like that. Okay. This, this is going to be a good little bit. Good <laughs> little bit. Uh, Bobby, you are not a fan and neither is Sean. Right mm -hmm. of the self checkout. Are you a fan of self checkout? No, I don't like the self checkout. I just did. I don't like scanning things. I don't being told uh, too many items in the bagging area. I don't like filling up a bag and then feeling like I. I feel like every time I take it out and set it aside, like when Kristen does it, it doesn't do anything. Whenever I do it, it says you can't take that out. We're coming over here. Police are on their way. Police are on their way. Mofo, the basket drop. Yeah, and then so like I always feel like. I have to just fit everything onto the platform right. that I'm checking out. So I, you know, I hate it. Peyton, are you a self checkout guy? I always do it. I do too. No matter the items, too. I'm a, I, I disobey the 20 items or less or 10 items or less. I'll oh, you go. can't go full. When you have a full basket, you can't Well, I, I don't shop for a whole family. You know, it's just me, my, myself, or me and my girlfriend. Yeah. So, yeah, like, how yeah, many I'm, bags and nuggets is he buying? That's true. They have 40 um, pounds now. But I, so I like, I like the self checkout. But there is, I mean, they are talking about introducing this at a, at Walmart's, mm -hmm. where you have to pay. It's called Walmart Plus. It's a membership program. Okay. Where you have to pay, you know, a fee to use the self check and become a member of a club. No. Well, 
And I'm thinking to myself, like, all right, no, I don't like this. But if you were to have, let's say you have a bay of self-checkouts. Uh-huh. And then you have a separate little aisle where it's only for fast pass customers. So, like, yeah, like the, the flash pass. It, you buy it. And then you're like you go right to the front of the line, the HOV lane for for whatever. I would be it's like the TSA pre check for for fast for a self checkout. Oh, we know you love that. I would be in on that as opposed to because there's nothing worse than waiting behind somebody. So is I that, imagine is that pay, what this is? Yeah, I think yeah. So like they're no no no. I'm saying I'm suggesting this. Okay, this is just like they're considering having customers only be able to use the self checkout if they have. The Walmart Plus. This is only going to start like certain markets, I think. They're just going to test this out. Uh, this will get dynamic pricing feedback like Wendy's got. I agree. This will get you crushed. I, I totally agree. I, I assume, this is my assumption. I could be wrong, and I, I don't mean to speak ill of you, uh, mm -hmm. young Payton. I assume you'd be the most annoyed. I'd be very annoyed being behind you in the self-checkout. I assume okay. you're slow. I don't know why. I don't know why. I think it's probably because you're going to have a million items. So like, I get, I get very annoyed in the self-checkout line because I love self-checkout. Love it. I can't stand it. Costco, self-checkout. You know why? You know what this is? They, they've duped you. They've they, duped no. you into thinking, like, they've duped you into doing work for them. No, they haven't. Here's the thing. And the same thing in the Home Depot. You're taking somebody's job. I am a, in, I am just enamored. Is it enthralled? I want to use that gun. The oh, scanner gun. The little phaser. The scanner gun. I never use the gun. Oh, I love I the scanner like, gun. I have water oh, I feel like a two-year-old. <laughs> I feel like a six-year-old right there. Just, oh, give me the scanner gun. You're scanning gun. the bags I'm of chips. I'm scanning and... everything. I'll scan things twice, and then I'll have to do a refund or rescan. I think it's fantastic. I love using the scanner gun. I'm a child. I, I can't I can't stand the self-checkout. I get, I'm get. i not going to pay to be told, uh, unexpected item in the bagging area, please wait for a sales Sucks. associate. I'm not paying to do that. I, I'd much rather stinks. just, here, here's everything on there. You guys, I don't even, I get anxiety when they just, you go to some stores and they, when they're done checking you out, they just push it to the end and they make you bag it. That mm. even gives me anxiety. Cause yeah. I'm like, I'm not doing this fast enough. I know. I want, I want to remove all of that yeah. anxiety. They can go as slow as they want. I just don't want to do it. And I'm certainly not going to pay for it. Scanner gun, man. Scanner mm. gun. Absolutely love it. I would be in. I would be in on the Walmart Plus if it was a fast pass lane. Okay. Six o'clock hour. In the books, it's Sean and RJ minus Sean here on 105 to the fan. Did you know the Rangers just added the 2024 AL MVP? They added what? it over the weekend. We'll get into that next here on 105 to the fan after we get you over to Platinum Chrysler Dodge Ram Jeep. It is, of course, a Stephen Gilcrest Stone Store. Gilcrest Automotive, they are going to hook you up on that brand new Chrysler Dodge Ram or Jeep. PlatinumCDRJTexas.com. It's in Terrell. It is worth the short drive to Tarot. Save a lot more on that brand new vehicle right between I-20 and Highway 80. You're going to head on over there. You're going to go see Stephen Gilchrist and his fantastic team. And they're going to hook you up with that brand new vehicle. You get massive savings. Right now, you take advantage of 0% APR for 72 months on select Ram 1500s. Why are you getting these amazing savings? Because it's Ram Truck Month. That's why Ram Truck Month at Platinum Chrysler Dodge Ram Jeep, get into that Ram 1500 Crew Cab, Quad Cab, Lone Star, Bighorn, Laramie Edition. Get you that 2500, get you that 3500, or maybe you're into a Jeep, Jeep Grand Cherokee, Laredo, Limited, two row, three row option. They've got them all on the lot, ready to be picked up and delivered today. PlatinumCDRJTexas.com to customize it or drive a little further to save a lot more at Platinum Chrysler Dodge Ram Jeep. If you're a new listener to.
Fan Studios, secured by DFWSecurity.com. This is Sean and RJ on 105.3 The Fan. Good morning, DFW. It is Sean and RJ here on 105 Through the Fan. We're going to have a little bit of a weekend uh, recap. Best and worst of the weekend coming up at 740 today. Uh, but the Texas Rangers, it is opening day week in Major League Baseball. Where is your excitement level, Roberto? I'm pretty excited. I, I'm, I've I'm. i got, I, I mean, obviously, look, the, the pitching is going to be the biggest question here. Uh, you know, you've got to get through those three months or whatever it is until you get like the bulk of your rotation back. But I'm pretty excited specifically for the offense. I'm excited to see how, how much Evan Carter's come along. I know everybody's really excited for Wyatt Langford and, and what he can do. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean pretty pumped. Yeah. I'd say, I'd say a, 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 a solid eight. Yeah. Holy you, know, smokes. you know, I was, I was expecting to be more excited for the defending champs, but I think with the fact that it's happening See, the, usually the opening day of Major League Baseball, historically, now the last few years has changed, but historically, the opening week has been basically the same week as the NCAA Final Four. So your yeah. week was you had the Final Four, you had the uh, the tournament, you had WrestleMania, and you had the, you had the Masters, all in about a 10-day stretch. Well, because the tournament's a little bit later this year, Major League Baseball is starting a little bit earlier this year, um, we, we've been robbed of that, so... I mean, on Thursday, they're going to be, you know, you, if you play on Thursday, you're going to be going up against the Sweet 16. Yeah, and I hate the, I, I'm always a much bigger fan of the daytime I am too. start. I am too. So, because it's 635 on Thursday against the Cubs is, is first pitch. And I'd rather, I like the 105 first pitch. I do too. Day, afternoon, sun's I out. I, I, I am right there with you. So, that is that's a little bit later in the afternoon, but, you know. This is going to be still uh, the most, this is going to be the most, uh, I don't want to say the most fun opening day, but it might be because you're going to have a party. You're going to get you one of those, uh, any of that banner. gold trimmed merch that the Rangers are rocking this year? Probably not. I'm not a fan of the of gold trim. But it's for champs. I know. Champs were gold. I know. I know. That's true. That's true. So I, I don't know. I'm not, I probably, maybe I will. Who knows? We'll see what kind of hat I wind up getting. Um, but the Rangers do have a uh, the newest their newest member, uh, Michael Lorenzen, talked about being a member of the Texas Rangers. You know, just giving up control and, and trusting in God's plan for whatever He has in store, and, and just staying grounded in that. So, it, you know, at times it was frustrating, but um, when you're able to step back and, and change your perspective, yeah, just I'm happy with how it's been, how it's went. I've found peace. You know about it, and I'm in an incredible clubhouse. I have incredible teammates playing with more legends. You know, I, I seem to find myself on teams with with a bunch of legends on it, and um, yeah, so it's you know I can't complain. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean if you're not, not at all, and um, yeah, playing the Rangers and going to Texas, I've always loved it. My wife loves it, so um, you know as a family too, like we're excited to be in Texas and to um, just experience it all and and take it all in and um yeah we're we're excited about the opportunity and just where we're at you gotta turn your mic on uh-oh uh-oh bobby's mic just broke oh it's off it broke bobby is not happy oh no robert is not happy his microphone he was i know what he was gonna say he was gonna say wrong with things he was gonna say on the cut sheet that peyton wrote michael lorenzen on being a rangers yeah, that was instead an interesting on, choice. Instead of well, on being a ranger. How do you say their name? It's <laughs> he's they're, trying, he's, they're, they're called the Texas Rangers, right? He's just right? trying to justify this all day. <laughs> he knows. Someone said on being a ranger, that, that's, not the, that's not the team name. It's, it's English. Yeah. It's okay. how, it's how I, plural I made and singular work. Made a mistake. You know, possession. put the S on the end. It how, was four I, in the morning when I grabbed that cut. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> how, however, however you want to try to justify it, Peyton. Um, look, I... I what I was going to say was Michael Lorenzen, obviously he, he had struggles closing the season last year with the Phillies, but I mean, he was, he's just, he was, a, he, was, he was a trade deadline pickup too. Yeah. Man. And, and when he first got to Philadelphia, he was, they were like, Oh my gosh, this is uh this couldn't be any better. Mm -hmm. Second start out there for the Phillies. He throws a no hitter. Uh, yeah. And he was somebody who, if you looked at his run with Detroit, the very first start of the year for Detroit, he had, he went four innings. 
But every start after that, that started a run all the way through his first two starts in Philadelphia. That started a run of 19 straight starts going at least five innings. So he was solid. He was consistent. He wasn't getting knocked around. He wasn't getting rocked in these ball games. And so, look, it says if, if you're not going to go get Jordan Montgomery, Michael Lorenzen is as good of a pickup as you could have made at this point of spring training to help solidify your roster. So I'm a big fan of it. I, I'm glad Chris Young went this direction that they pulled the trigger. I, I like the pickup too. It's uh, it's low risk. You're not, you're not paying them a gob of money. It's what the Rangers have to deal with or have used this year uh, in their offseason. A lot like the Cowboys, right? They haven't they didn't break the bank, and there's an issue with the uh, you know with the with the Bally, the Diamond yeah. Sports Group, and and all their money. So that's part of it. But I do think the pickup is pretty good. Here's Chris Young talking about Michael Lorenzo in the starting rotation. Great fit, great person, hard worker. Um, obviously had a great year last year and sort of fell through the cracks of free agency. Um, this was really a very good signing for us and uh, grateful to ownership for stepping up and allowing us to make this move. And I think Michael's going to be a huge addition to our team and uh, uh, help get us through um, the early part of the season, especially when um, we may be a little thin with our, our pitching. So with that, happy to answer any questions. And I think Michael may be able to speak to that a little bit more, um, but uh, he has built up pretty well right now. That said, it hasn't been in a major league spring training environment in front of fans. And so um, there are steps that we want to pass in terms of um, making sure he's fully healthy and ready to start the season. Um, he and Mike have had a good discussion this morning. I think we have a little bit of a game plan over the next five or six days. Um, there is the possibility that he'll be ready and active on the opening day roster, um, but we want to build him up in a responsible manner and we want to make sure he passes the test in the next few days uh, before committing to that. A tremendous editing on those, by the way. Uh, <laughs> that's the video itself. It's the video. Uh, that's the <laughs> Stefan Stevenson video. I mean, no, no offense to Stefan Stevenson. That's just the editing on his video. But either way, I, I think Lorenzen is a strong pickup. And again, we've talked about that a lot recently about if you sign guys this late or you get guys this late, what is the ramp up like? They'll try to get him ready. But I, I mean, the, the reality of it is like you might have a little bit of a window there where you're just you're trying to ramp him up, get him ready. And, and have him prepared to go, just like they're now running into trying to get guys ready coming off of injury and, and things like that. And an update on those guys. Yes, uh, Corey Seager and Josh Young both made their spring debuts over the weekend. So this talk of, hey, you know, we're we're optimistic about them being available, you know, the, the timeline, it, it always felt like Young was a better shot at being available at the beginning of the year than it was Seager, but now it, it seems... Pretty optimistic that both of them are going to be ready. Uh, Seager and Young both made their spring debuts over the weekend. Uh, they want to combine three for four. Seager picking right back up from where he left off. He goes two for two with two singles. Josh Young one for two with a single. Uh, and both of them were in there playing in the infield. So you had uh, Corey Seager at shortstop like usual and then mm -hmm. Young at third base. But Corey Seager after the game was asked about like, hey, how you feeling? Where's everything at? He said, I feel good. Not in any pain. No limitations. Just trying to build up. It was my first time playing defense. So I'll see how I respond tomorrow and kind of go from there. But either way, this is a a big boost for a team that's already got so many issues with the injuries to the rotation. Yeah. And then, you know, you threw on top of that Nathaniel Lowe and his injury. This is really big that it feels like you're getting young and Corey Seager yeah. ahead of schedule. Oh, for sure. Now you don't want to rush them as long season, you know, not having them on opening day should be fine. Not having them for the playoffs is not fine. Um, not having them for a longer part of the, uh, of the, um, of the season because they re-injure something would not be fine, but sure. And I, I don't think that there's, I mean, look, uh, you know, when you're talking about an issue like a, uh, a, a sports hernia or how, whatever the exact definition was of, of what Seager had versus like, you know, Young's, which is more soft tissue and stuff like that. I imagine the the chance of, of something kind of having a setback would probably be young. I would guess in terms of just with surgery, I'm sure it's just, you got to heal and, and what's right. healed. You're, you're probably fine. So with Young, just that that you know the you're you're always a little concerned when it comes to issues of like muscle pulls and things like that. Of like when is that going to when, when is that going to be cleared up? When when is the you know when is that fully healed and when is that ready to go? And so with Young, I, I would imagine yeah maybe take it a little easy. But if they're confident with where he's at and and if Seager's fully healed, by all means roll him out there because you're right. You do want him for the playoff run, but also you want to make sure like 
you're, you're staying competitive enough to make sure that you're making a dent and able to progress into the playoffs. Because if you're having trouble covering those holes in the early part of the season, you know, it's the old line of you can't win a division in April, but you sure as hell can lose it. Yeah. It's that sort of thinking. Yeah. All, all None of this matters. None of this matters because the Rangers have acquired the 2024 American League MVP. Really? White Langford was added to the roster. Thank God. Which we all, this is kind of we obvious, knew this. right? We knew this. A uh, little, little, uh, little um, uh, foreshadowing. Is it foreshadowing? A little preview here. I've already been working on a song for opening day. Oh, yes. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. With Wyatt Lankford mm. as a part of it. He's singing with you? Oh, wow. He's not singing with me. Oh. Yeah. He is in, I did not get him. Uh, oh, he is not singing with me. Show of whales. Uh, but <laughs> oh. he, his name will be in the song that I am preparing for opening day. What What is What is realistic expectation for you right now with Langford? Re- re- seriously, realistic expectation for right, you know this rookie season. Anything like, less than the American MV- American League Rookie of the Year is a failure. That's uh, that's fair. Like like, is it too much to He's say? A favorite. I like I look at it and I say, if he has Josh Young's rookie season at the plate, nope. that's not good enough. Failure. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, let's give a little time to adjust. There's got to be a little bit. But I will say, I, I do think that if you're going to set a baseline OPS. My baseline OPS for him this year. It may not be fair. I, I know Jared Sandler's uh, been listening this morning. Maybe Sandler's going to hear this, and he's going to text me. He's going to say, you're an idiot. It'll but be me, nine, 962 and a half. Okay, well, you're way higher than I am because I look at it and I say, like, give me a baseline OPS of, like, 850. If he's hitting that 850 OPS for the season, I'm happy with that. Nope. And and that's the expectation nope. that's been set. But, I mean, that's got to be that, – nope. that's number one on everybody's list this year, right? Of thing they're most excited about. It's White Langford. It's White Langford. 962 and a half is the OP, uh, over-under. That is the baseline OPS. We got to do Rangers over under and an OPS plus of one sixty seven and a half. <laughs> oh my god! And why is that important? Mike Trout's rookie year was an OPS of nine sixty three, and his OPS plus was one sixty eight. Now, what if you roll All it right, in? You want to? Everybody's been saying he's he's Mike Trout. Okay, so, but you got to remember. So it was his his rookie year was twelve or whatever it was. Yeah, he played forty games in twenty eleven. He did play forty games. So if you roll. The forty games from the previous year where he was not great, you gotta you gotta give Langford that that same sort of benefit. So if you combine those two years, I think that should be your expectation. Okay, whatever combine. whatever that would end up being. So that would be an OPS of nine eleven and an OPS plus of one fifty four. Okay, there so, you go. A little lower, a little lower, not much, but a little bit lower. Uh, but that's what it takes, you know. My, and Trout should have run the should have won the MVP that year. Uh, should have, and, and I think that was. Uh, Miguel Cabrera's triple crown here. Don't care. Trout should have won the MVP <laughs> that season. So, got it. We got to have a, uh, a the pregame show. Obviously, we're here on 105 through the fan on Thursday. It's going to be a 635 first pitch. Get you started at 6 o'clock uh, on the fan. Second highest ticket price right now for any of the opening day games is the Rangers one. The only one higher Ooh. is Braves at Phillies, which is a huge division rival, huge division contest anyway. Um, so Cubs Rangers second highest ticket price by a wide margin, like everybody else is uh, considerably lower. World Series champs and the Chicago Cubs. That's going to be a draw, baby. It's the Wyatt Langford effect, though. Mainly, that's what people are paying for. Uh, comparatively speaking, Astros hosting the Yankees on opening day. You can get in right now for a hundred and sixty. Uh, I'm sorry, for just sixty two bucks. So oh. almost so forty six dollars. More expensive is the get in the door price for Rangers Cubs. That's because, but that, that's because they make you bring your own trash can in. They don't just supply fair. them, so people are not willing to pay. As yeah, much. they don't. They don't supply that. Mm-hmm. They don't supply that at all. Okay, there is a little bit of uh, of Ranger stuff going on here on 105 three the fan. But how was that weekend? Best and worst of the weekend coming up next here on 105 three the fan. But we're going to get you over to a hey, number one air. That's right.
to you by the on-time experts. Good morning, DFW. It is Sean and RJ here on 105 through the fan. You have reached the commercial free expressway. I don't like having this microphone here, Chad. It's different. Because I can't I can't choose my own, I can't use my own button. Peyton's in complete control of shutting me off or letting me talk or whatever else. I don't like that. Yeah. Makes me too uncomfortable. The uh, the umpires at uh, my youngest game yesterday said, are you going to use the expressway to give us a shout out? And I was like, no, but I'll say hi. So I did. <laughs> so here they are. Shout out to the umps from yesterday. That is big a shout tolos, out, isn't it? Big tolo. It is a shout out. Yeah, big tolos. Uh, they, you see, they saw the name on his back of his jersey. And like, there's no way that there's another Choppy out there because it is a very unique last name. There is one other in Choppy in town. They are family, though. Oh. They're family. They? they live out in um, the Garland area. Oh, so it's not the ones that uh, accost teenagers at Epic Gelato? No, she's not a choppy. That's my mom's side. That's my that's my mother's side. That's not uh, that's not the choppy side. Uh, but that's uh, they're they're you know we have we have one other family member in town. Uh, so shout out to those umpires uh, over the weekend. Uh, Jerry spoke over the week uh, the weekend. He he had a doodle pad, a scribble pad. Did absolutely nothing on it. I am I am hell bent to be stuck on this. It is stuck with me. It is in my head. Stuck I think it is everything you. that has gone wrong with this offseason can be found on that notepad. It's an NFL notepad at the owners' meetings, or the, the league meetings, I should say, where you had 27 of the 32 coaches in yes. the photo. Yes. Who was short in that one? So we didn't have – there was no Mike McCarthy. No, uh, who no reportedly Sean Payton. no Sean Payton, no Mike McCarthy. I've got the list here. It was no Sean Payton, no Mike McCarthy, uh, no Matt Eberflus. Obviously, Matt Eberflus is uh, busy, just furiously trying to save his job. Uh, no Mike Tomlin and no Nick Sirianni. So those were the guys who decided to skip the photo this year. McCarthy uh, out at uh, Michigan Pro Day on Friday. Apparently, he was the the one. It wasn't just he was out there watching. He was throwing a uh, Blake Corum, the running back. Yeah, he was throwing Blake Corum through, uh, like having him do like run routes uh, as really? a receiver, and he was running him through the drills and everything, according to reports. So they've uh, they got their eyes on Corum. I think I, I think that's one of the guys they like. If you're talking Second about round? if you're talking about uh, pro- I would guess like third. Okay, but if you're talking about like day two running backs and some of the names we've thrown around, we brought up Jonathan Brooks at Texas. Um, you know, I know some people have talked about Trey Benson at Florida State. I think Blake Corum is is one that might be in the the mix of guys that they would be interested Man, in. Man, I heard J.J. McCarthy shined at that pro day. Scott Zolak is now all in. Oh, my gosh. he's a, If he's all in, does that mean we're getting him at three? I think so. I think Scott's getting stuff from the organization. He's like, I'm all in, baby. Now, this could be complete. You know, they're using him as a mouthpiece to get somebody to trade up for him. Sure. And flip spots with them, like Minnesota, maybe. But that's what he said. But everybody said he looked really good. He looked really good at his pro day. Look, there's a lot. Everybody does, though. There is a lot to like about J.J. McCarthy. J.J. Yeah. McCarthy does have some some NFL throws on his tape. And, you know, we I heard Will talking this weekend when Sean had been talking about McCarthy last week. And he said, I, "I've never, I've never seen. I, I don't see it. Him, him out there dropping back and slinging the ball around. It, it did. I didn't see it last year." And Will was talking this weekend on the air about how he had heard that discussion. He was like, "Guys, you got to remember though. Like, Michigan lost their starting tackle after the Penn State game, and every single snap after that where McCarthy dropped back, somebody was in his lap." And it's just like he didn't. He also didn't throw a lot in the second half. Like I don't even think he threw a pass the second half of that Penn State game. No, but I will say this: if you go back and watch McCarthy the first time, he was really playing significant, like a, a significant amount for Michigan. So you watch the way he threw the ball last year. There's definite improvement. That was a guy I never thought was ever going to be able to throw he the got football way better. And he's he's grown. That, yeah, that's why on. that's why he can't make these broad sweeping projections after like a freshman year or and no. I'm not I'm not saying yeah. anybody here was I'm just saying that for people who they see a freshman quarterback and they're like oh they suck it, not everybody's Trevor Lawrence as a freshman it doesn't sure. happen they're not they're not uh so this this uh, article actually made me feel pretty good about the Dallas Cowboys offseason good we need to feel good after yeah. Jerry's telling reporters yesterday oh tire too expensive man too expensive he's he's Jerry's turned into Chris Rock from I'm going to get you sucker where he's yeah. like, uh, he's like, I just want one rib. 
I don't, I don't want to buy a whole record. It's how much for one rib? Oh, rib. Yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't want a cup of soda. Just uh, pour it in my hands for a dime, and I'll, I'll sip it. All right, so th there's there's a, there's two reasons here why I feel pretty good about this based off this article. This is an NFL free agency, the experts' best and worst team signings and trades, or no signings and trades as it would be for the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. And on the question, which team has taken a step backwards over the past week or two? Yeah, I'm having a hard time figuring out why you think this is good All based right, on so the answers here. Stefania Bell, fo football analyst, says the Cowboys. Matt Bowen says the Ra uh, the Ravens. Jeremy Fowler says the Ravens. Uh, Eric Moody, fantasy writer, says the Cowboys. Jason Reed uh, says the Ravens. Jordan Reed, draft analyst, says the Cowboys. Aaron Schatz, NFL analyst, says the Buffalo Bills. Mike Tannenbaum, uh, former general manager of the Jets and the Dolphins, says the Cowboys. Aaron Schatz is one of your guys. It's a Aaron football Schatz. outsider's guy. I like Aaron Schatz. I'm a big fan of him. I'm feeling good about this for two reasons. One, they're lumped in with the Ravens and Bills. Anytime you're in a category with the Ravens and Bills, it's a good thing. Okay, the Ravens and Bills are smart teams. Smart. Nobody is killing the Ravens and the Bills for not signing anybody and losing players. No one's killing them. Okay. No one's killing them. Why? Because nobody has the guts to kill the Ravens and Bills because they generally make the right moves. The Cowboys are an easy punching line. The Cowboys are Major League Baseball. You can always make fun of Major League Baseball in the way they do things. Tough to make fun of the NFL and the way they do things. Right. The Ravens and the Bills are the NFL. Secondly, you got two fantasy football analysts here and Mike Tannenbaum <laughs> picking the Cowboys. That's all and, you and Jordan, Reed. and Jordan Reed. And Jordan Reed. And Jordan Reed. And your thoughts on Jordan Reed are? Jordan Reed's fine. Jordan Reed, uh, I, I've known Jordan Reed for like five years, uh -huh. something like that. But I mean, he, he's fine. He, he played uh, college football. I think he played at North Carolina A&T. He was a okay, quarterback years ago, that's fine, but that's he, fine. he's fine. They're, the fantasy football people look at it, again, from fantasy perspective a lot of times, right? They didn't make a splashy hire or a splashy signing. So the fantasy football people would not be happy with that. Mike Tannenbaum, I mean, anytime you're on the opposite side of Mike Tannenbaum, I feel like it's a good thing, even though I like <laughs> Mike. I think, Mike's a, I think Mike was an underrated general manager, put good rosters together. He never had a quarterback. They just had a good roster. In 09 and 2010. That's how they got to the AFC Championship game twice in a row. Top with defense. Mark Sanchez, right? It was mm -hmm. his defense that he put together. Um, you know, but he says they still have needs at left tackle, center, running back, defensive tackle, and receiver. A lot of the resources will be tied up in extensions. It was surprising not to see them make a move on Henry or A.J. Dillon. Of course. Like they said, they need to sign Derrick Henry for $12 million a year. They deserve credit for outstanding drafting and patience, but they're going to need an almost perfect draft to fill all their needs. Which they're going to get. Because this team always gets perfect drafts for the most part, except for last year. But which not, that that's not about that's that not like I mean that's numbers. Like like look, here's the reality. I've seen some people. It's been a common thing lately. People say, "Oh, they're not. They, we got to stop talking about them as a great drafting team." It's like no, they're still a pretty great drafting team yeah. compared to the rest of the league. What you have is the like I mean you're gonna have drafts where you miss. That happens, course, you have and to. so because of that like that's just the math of it, and. I don't want to say they've missed for sure yet. The guy they were most excited about in training camp last year was DeMarvian Overshone, and he got hurt. They never got a chance to see him. Okay, so you had Overshone. Schoonmaker, I, I don't think you can rule out that he's going to improve. He improved as the season went on. And Mozzie Smith, again, I don't think that's one where I, I think he had growing pains, but this is not Taco Charlton where you're looking at it and going, oh, well, he's stiff and he doesn't have this. He's got the tools to do it. So I don't want to say that's a bust class yet. Could it become one? Yeah. We might be talking about it as one. But I, I, I don't think that you can say with certainty that that's an awful draft class yet. It it did not have a good year, for, cert, for sure. Right. And if they play like that for the rest of their time mm -hmm. here in Dallas, it's a bust of a class. Yes, it is. It's just, let's let's pull back you a little bit. Let, let, let's have some yeah. patience with this, just a little bit. So Overshown could have a great year, and all of a sudden we're looking at the draft class completely differently this year, coming up. Yeah, o Overshone has a great year. Or, and then if Schoonmaker and Mozzie just improve, you're talking about the draft class in a different the way. The issue with Schoonmaker is I don't think they realize what they had in Ferguson. That's part that's of it. it. That, that's, that's it. That's part of what they've run into is that... They didn't need him. They had they had Hendershot and they had Ferguson. They didn't need Schoonmaker. Look, I still think that there's a place for... You're, you're talking about two tight ends have become more... Real quick, was mm -hmm. Laporta picked ahead of them? Yes. Yeah, Laporta was ahead of them. They, um, did they like Laporta better than Schoon? Uh, yes, they did. 
If they like, I mean, they took where they took Mozzie Smith, they would have been. I mean, if they would have traded back, or if Mozzie and then Matthew Bergeron, the offensive lineman from Syracuse, if those guys would have been off the board, like Laporta would have been the guy in Patrice's play. brother, Matthew. Right? Yeah, right. Patrice O'Neill. Yeah, rest in peace, yeah. Patrice O'Neill. Patrice O'Neill. Uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> good comic, though. Very good reference. Good celebrity roast. Right, yeah, he was oh, on the roast. He was fantastic. He was, very, very good. He was. Very, very but good. this is, I, I mean, that's, I, I, they did like Laporta a lot. Laporta was the tight end that I think they had their sights set on, and then Schoonmaker was supposed to be, I, I think, a guy who they looked at as, look, the traits are there to be a really good tight end. A lot of people thought that, you know, and I know people have their different thoughts on Dalton Schultz. I think Dalton Schultz is a good football player. I think Dalton Schultz is a quality tight end. But you remember, Dalton Schultz did nothing for the first two years he was here. Remember that? Like people were talking about yeah. like Dalton Schultz was a complete black hole the first two years he was here because he just he was a little bit, you know, behind on the blocking and he didn't get as much of the opportunity. And then year three started to click. And then you're talking about, okay, year four, he's making a big impact. Year five, he's back on the tag and he's making a big impact. Then he goes to Houston and he gets paid. So you've got to have some level of patience. Right. Think, think about the tight ends here that have needed time. Um, you know, I mean, Schultz was in great day one. Schultz was year three when it finally clicked for him. Martellus Bennett never figured it out here. He had to go figure it out somewhere else later on his career. Mm -hmm. Uh, Scott Chandler, who became a really good tight end for the Scott Bills, Chandler. old South Lake Carroll alum, Scott Chandler. Uh, he ended up here in Dallas at one point. He was not a pick of theirs, but he ended up here in Dallas at one point and couldn't crack. Ends up, you know, I think he spent like half a season here before they moved on from. Fasano, Anthony Fasano didn't click here. It took a little bit. He went over Miami, to Miami yeah. and Kansas City and he played better. So I do think that we want it now. We want the, the results now. Tight end is one of those positions yeah. still that like there's right. a bit of a curve. For Sam sure. Laporta is not the norm. You no, know, he was day one. Vernon Davis was supposed to be this like freak of a tight end. And I mean, he was as an athlete, but Vernon Davis didn't become like one of the top tight ends in the NFL till years after he was picked yeah. sixth or whatever it yeah. was. No, you're right. Uh, uh, so one more thing on this uh, best and worst, uh, the best signing, Mike Tannenbaum, I just want to give you an example on why this makes me happy that he picked the Cowboys as the worst <laughs> off season because he doesn't know what he's doing. The best signing was the Eagles and Saquon Barkley. Okay. Of the entire off season. Was the Eagles and Saquon Barkley? That's all you need to know. The Cowboys will be fine, and they're going to win twelve games again, like they always do. They're over under. Think about this. In Vegas, they're over under. To start last year was nine and a half. It's ten and a half to start this year. I don't know why, because the the schedule well, next important. year the schedule that's next important. year is difficult. Uh huh. And. I did this exercise over the weekend. Well, I, I jumped on on Saturday with uh, Will and Chris Arnold. Uh, and I ran through this exercise with them. And I'm, I'm going to do it with you really quick. It's just an example of how much they're, they, it feels like they're thin right now. Okay. If I, I'm going to run through each position on the field, you tell me if you're okay. If you would be okay if they spent a pick anywhere in the first three rounds on this position. Okay. Quarterback. Would I be upset if they took a quarterback in the first three rounds? Yes. No. Okay. Running back. Um. I mean, I would rather them not. No, they, keep in mind they don't have a fourth, so anything else you're addressing no. would be fifth or later. Yeah, third only in third. Okay, but still, uh, receiver. No issue. Tight end. Uh. Yeah, they don't need one. Okay, got an issue there. Uh, offensive tackle. No issue. Okay, guard. Uh, no issue. Center. No issue. Defensive end. <laughs> They've lost four defensive linemen this offseason. So you're, but you're drafting a backup. Uh, I, I mean, you rotate pretty heavily, though. And, I mean, Demarcus Lawrence, you don't know when... Demarcus Lawrence is probably under his position of value. Year. I would have a problem with it. Okay, defensive tackle. I want, I want to see. Okay, so see. you would have a problem with that. I mean, I would have a problem with it, but it wouldn't be my first choice. Okay, linebacker. I put a lot in. They put a lot in. They put a lot of resources in, and they signed uh, Kendricks. Kendricks. So and they're going to get overshown back. So you'd have an issue with that one? Yeah, I don't think okay. one. Corner. No issue. Safety. Uh, no issue. Okay. So we just ran through every position on the football field. There's only two that you would have an issue with them picking in the first three rounds, which should tell you exactly where their depth is right now and exactly, and exactly where they need contributors to be. Because it's like, 
Man, all of these we'd feel okay with mm -hmm. if they found somebody and you don't even have a fourth round pick and you're not signing anybody in free agencies. It's like, you got to give me bodies at the very least, yeah. dude. I understand if you don't want to sign, you, you don't want to go sign Saquon Barkley. I get that. You don't want to, you know, pay the amount that Daniil Hunter goes for. Okay. I, I get it. But like, you got to bring bodies in. You got to yeah. bring veterans in because you just, you don't have, an, this is why I think we need to start looking at the reality that if the Cowboys are comfortable like this, it, 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 I got to believe they're going to trade back. Yeah. They're they going to trade back and pick up a fourth. Yeah. I have to believe that. They probably don't want to pay a first rounder anyway. Uh, they're probably going to get out of the first round. They don't want to trade for that. They don't want to, they don't want to pay the first round money. They got, they got all this oil and gas investments to do. <laughs> they don't have the cash man to be able to go and pay first rounders. They just don't They just don't. It's, just, it's, it's a, it is a, it's really interesting to look at them being a 12 and five football team three years in a row being one of the best teams in, in football. No doubt about it. And I know people will push back and say, no, they're not. Okay, fine. The reality is the results say they are one of the, what, five best teams in the NFL over the last three years, cumulatively. Um, I mean, look, of over, a consistency oh, standpoint, last oh, three years. Over the last 10 years, I think only like five teams have more wins than they do. Or the last 10. When, they're, when they have a healthy quarterback for an entire season. They win 10 games. They're in. And so they, they've clearly been one of the most consistent best football teams in the NFL. So for us to be standing here and saying, yeah, they've got pretty much everything on the football field that if you drafted it, you'd f in the first three rounds, you'd feel like eventually they might start here. That, that gives you some pause as to, I, I think when you look at that 10 and a half number from Vegas, it just it makes mm -hmm. you wonder a little bit. Chop. Makes you wonder. All right. Very good. Let's do a little weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, the weekend. I'm having a bad fucking weekend. <laughs> oh, man. Did you see what you saw Will over the weekend, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think I did. I, I, everything's a little hazy from over the weekend. All man. right. So let's start there with Roberto Belt's weekend in uh, Richardson. Richardson. Richardson, the RBG. We were hanging out at Richardson Bar and Grill. Uh, it was a fantastic time. Uh, I went out there on uh, Saturday at 3.30 and hung out with... Uh, Will Chambers was out there. We had Reggie came out and uh, we had uh, Tolo Steve was out there with us. Um, I, I met a lot of really great listeners out there. Uh, Justin, uh, Steven, uh, Heath. We saw, I saw Sean, Tolo Sean from Kansas Hello. City, who's the, the big Jayhawks and uh, oh, Vegas yeah. Gold Knights fan. He was out there with us. Chef Eric. Uh, it, it was great. I, I ran into, uh, I, I'm hoping he's listening. I'm going to text him later. And I'm going to show him that I talked about him. That's hopefully soon to be Tolo Scott, who Scott says, look, I, I, I've I've listened to other stations around the area. I, I've never uh, I, I've never tuned into you guys. He's like, I'm a I, I'm a little little disenchanted. He's like, I, I, I'm going to give you all a listen. He's like, I've enjoyed hanging out here, drinking with you today. I, I'm I'm going to give you all a listen starting Monday. OK. And so we're 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 auditioning for Scott today. Okay. Scott. Okay. All right, yep. Scott. That's what we're out here to do. We're, we're out here to audition for Scott. But I met a ton. Speak to the fire, brother. Yes, exactly. I met a ton of great listeners. Brad, uh, another one who came out there. So I, I hate that if I'm forgetting anybody. But it was a fantastic time. We were throwing back the drinks all afternoon. Uh, and I made sure to do several tongues out photos. Yeah, I saw uh, that. Just to, to get that. under Sean's uh -huh, skin. Absolutely. He hated that. I, I discovered a new love this weekend. What was that? Chop. Liquor? Shuffleboard, the uh, little, the little like game. shuffleboard great thing. Game. I've never played. never played. What? Dude, never. What? That is. Jay Ocho was out there too. Don't want to forget him. Tolo Jay. That is. And Connor. <laughs> I'd never played before, dude. Reggie and I both. We had never played. I'm thrown. Reggie and I, like, I had no idea. I was about to stand How on. How are you? remotely prepared to live in a retirement community. <laughs> you've never played shuffleboard? I'd never done it. And Dude, I've, foosball, you've played foosball? Yeah. Pool all that? Yeah. No shuffleboard. Nope. And now this is the this is the the bar probably, probably because you like what you just said. Retirement home. I'm like that's that's the the old man's See, game. But that's I don't the one that. sticks. Yeah, this is the this is the yeah, one with the like hand. The, like a, it's almost that's like a curling. <laughs> no, no, no. These are like the big sticks. They're almost like a broom. You got to push 
the shuffleboard down, the uh, the the puck down. This is one where like you put sand on the board, and it's like this skinny, like yeah, full-length oh, yeah. one. And so I know what you're talking about. It was uh, Reggie and I were playing for the very first time. Here's how little I knew about shuffleboard. Are you They're a like spinner. I was like a spinner. I, 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 I wouldn't call myself a spinner, but I mean, I, I, I certainly uh, try my best. Yeah. And so I was, uh, I, this is what I thought when I found out Reggie and I were on the same team. I went and stood next to him and they're like, no, you don't stand next. You're on opposite. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's like cornhole. I was like, oh, okay. Let me go over here then. So I, uh, I went over there, uh, played against uh, Calvin and Jerry who were hanging out at the bar there. Not, and not Hobbs, not no, Hobbs, no, 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 different one. But they were, uh, they were, they were shuffleboard veterans, and we were playing to twenty-one. I don't know what's normal, but they told us we're playing to twenty-one. It's normal. Okay, I didn't know if that was, and uh, it was, a, it was a hell of a game. We lost twenty-one twenty, Reggie and I, on our very first game. Good for you, we, uh, I, I hit a. There was one shot that was. They had three down at the. They had two in the two area and one in the three. It's a good roll. And I was, I was on my last one. I was like, this is, this is not good. So I just kind of threw it down there and it went maybe like a half inch ahead of their three pointer. Oh yeah. Knocked baby. them all off the board. Got you your three. Boy, I got I I, I got quite the high. All the moment. high fives. Oh the the bar was going nuts when I did it. It was it was an incredible trick shot. Nice. Now what time of night was this? Who this is probably seven thirty at this point. Okay. So you got there what's that you said three thirty, yeah. Three thirty. It, it, it was, I was You're already four hours deep. In. Uh, did you Uber? Did you get a ride? Yes, we Ubered. And so, I mean, we ended up... I went out there because I was like, I don't know how, how much I'm going to need it. Kristen came out. Uh, it was clear at the end of the night we needed it, so we left the car there, went back the next morning, picked it up. But, yes, we Ubered back out of there around, like, midnight. Okay. So, 3.30 to midnight, I was tying them on. It was, uh, it was a great time hanging out with all those listeners. Like I said, it was... Uh, and like I said, trying to... Uh, to woo new ones um william was out there I, I got to talk to him for a little bit uh i talked to a guy from philly who told me he's oh, like no. he's like i don't even like dallas sports i grew up in philly he's like but i love listening to you guys in the morning he's like i don't even care about the teams y'all talk about it's just i, I love listening to y'all y'all oh. are fun to listen to and i ran into one person I, mean, that I you appreciate know. that but it's just the whole philly sports thing i ran into somebody apparently you know and peyton has this audio here i ran into a man by the name of cowboy jeff Oh, Cowboy Jeff, I, he's been a listener for years. I think he was a listener. I think he listened at ESPN when I was over there. Yeah, so. he said he said he is a long time listener. Time. Apparently, uh, he came into to, to studio once yes, and and sang a, a parody song uh -huh. for Sean. And and he he was a listener who recorded a ton of different parodies. And he's like, man, last uh, last decade, been taking care of some stuff at home. He's like, just haven't been able to to listen as much. He's like, I, I've really ramped it back up in the last couple of weeks. So he's like, I love. What you guys have going on? He's like he's a special big Reggie Reggie Atatula fan. Oh, he's really? like that guy you have at yeah. night, Reggie. That 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 guy's fantastic. So, I had asked people when I was telling them to come out. I said, "Hey, Sean's going to be out this week. If you have any messages you'd like to record to him, any well wishes uh, as he moves into his new home this week, come on out and give them to us." And so, uh, Cowboy Jeff came prepared and oh, said, brings, I, I've, "Does he do songs?" I've, no, he said, "I've got a message." Well. He's like, "I've got a message that I want to deliver." To Sean Sharif. And I made sure to tell people, don't make jokes about his hands. You know, that, that, that's low hanging fruit. Don't make yeah. don't make jokes about his aggressive temper. We all know about Very that. Low. Low. You know, let's just come from a place of love and zero trolling. And I think Cowboy Jeff struck that balance perfectly. Hey, uh, what's going on, Sean? It's been a long time, exactly 10 years since I came into the 105.3 studio to serenade you with a song parody. I wanted to congratulate you on your new home, but Bobby Belt here was telling me that you have anger issues. Mm. Well, we all know, Sean, that you make Mike Tyson look like Mahatma Gandhi. Mount Vesuvius cowers to your eruptive power. Wow. And I even heard, Sean, that you were offered the lead in the Bollywood remake of The Incredible Hulk. <laughs> oh, no. That's where The Incredible Hulk goes to Sunnyvale, Texas, and beats up all his H-1B home contractors. <laughs> and Bobby also told me that you have small hands. Well, I'd shake your hand if you were here at Richardson Bar and Grill, but it's like shaking hands with a newborn baby at a nursery. Your hands are so small, it must be a real ego boost, Sean, whenever you have to use the men's room. But look at the bright side. You're one of the few adults who can fit their entire hand in a Pringles can and grab that very last chip. Damn! But all kidding aside, from the bottom of my heart, Sean, I want to wish you and your family nothing but happiness and love in your new home oh. for many years to come. And I'm also very thankful you didn't bury me at the bottom of your pool like Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> Don Yavad Paramalangi, bro. 
Very good, Cowboy uh, yes, Jeff. Very nice. Very good. And that's an Emerald Custom Pool. Uh, they did a fantastic job for Sean Sharif. He'll tell you about it. He'll so. tell you all about it. Yeah, so it was it. it was a great time going out there to the RBG, seeing seeing everybody out there and uh running into Cowboy Jeff. And and it was good. I, I was glad to catch up with everybody. How was uh how was your weekend? Other than your big appearance on Sunday night on the Jody Mack show. Oh yes, Jody Mack. That was uh they, they called me up, uh, they texted me over the weekend. I think it was like Thursday or Friday they texted me. And they said, hey, uh, Jody, we'd love to have you on. I, I went out with Jody Mack on Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, do like a Dallas sports scene yeah. update. I'm like, you know, dude, the Super Bowl's in like four hours here, man. What are you talking about Dallas sports for? We ain't in it. I actually really like Jody. Though. I like Jody. I, 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 think, I think Jody's good. I, I, I mean, I used to listen to Jody when I was a kid. Oh, man. Like a long time ago. Yeah. I mean, you're old. so. I'm old. So as he makes him him even older. So I like Jody. So Jody's a good guy. RJ, how you been? Hey, there you go. And uh, so he had me on last night. They say they sent me a text. It was a Thursday or Friday, and they said, "Hey, we're we're planning the weekend here. Jody wants you on to do a Texas Rangers preview. Either Saturday night he's on from ten to two, or you can do Sunday from six to ten. And I wrote back in brutal honesty. I was like, brother, I cannot guarantee how sober I will be. <laughs> On Saturday night at 10 o'clock. I cannot guarantee that. So let's go with Sunday. Let's do Sunday. And were you were you sober? Because I didn't Sunday or Saturday night? Sunday. Oh yeah. I mean we were coming out for baseball. Because I I don't even know. The whole way I even knew you were on with Jody Mack was Uh Tolo Steve, who was out at the RBG with. He texted me at uh, 6 04 p.m. He goes, I think Choppy is drunk on the radio right now. Really? I was like, our station? He goes, yes. I was like, well, let me uh, let me draw attention to this. Okay. And I asked Peyton, so Peyton, what was what was your general cuz he I asked Chop later on and Chop was like, "No, I wasn't. What are you what are you talking about? Chop or Peyton, where do you think this uh this comes down to? How how do, how do you think maybe it, it came across when you listen back to it's it?" It's just the over the phone. I think the phone makes it a little more draggy. I mean, it's just how I mean, Chop, you know, like there were times where we were like, "Well, you know, White Langford, well, I, I just think it was the delivery here and, and, and there, some of the, but some it was of the- it was just choppy. Like Some of it, the ahs, like that. Yeah, ah, you know. Like, I was I was also driving. I was a just trying to drive. Oh, okay. And I did not have. I didn't. I, so when I do a radio interview, I don't put it on Bluetooth. I put it on the handset. Handset. Well, uh, just because it's better sound quality. Mm-hmm. Safer so, too. It's not safer. It's definitely no, not safer. That was my joke. Uh, it's definitely not safer. So that could have been it. I was a little. We we had just gotten done. We were leaving the grocery store. Uh, we got back from baseball. I dropped the kiddos off. And then on the way home, we decided to the grocery store to get some stuff. And then we were leaving that. So probably a little distracted driving, but it was good. I, I enjoy going on with Jody Mac. Uh, anytime I can do that, I will. So that was, I, it was a boring, it was not a boring weekend. It was all baseball. How did baseball go? Uh, it was, you know, it's not a tournament. We didn't play in a tournament this weekend. We played like kind of scrimmage games, if you will. Tournament. Uh, boy, this is the only time of year where you call it a tournament. Is it to distinguish between the tourney and the tournament? I don't know. But everybody who's like a college basketball insider calls it the incident of like tournament. But every other time of year, it's just a tournament that you play in. So for whatever reason, maybe it's a New York influence on the college basketball. But for whatever reason, this is the only time of year you call it a tournament. Until Masters comes around, then you call it a tournament. Because that's how they say it in Northeast Georgia. The tournament. Boy, there's a... See, I, I struggle with anything that, that begins with T-O-U-R. Because you guys always give me hell for the way I say tour. 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 I thought that's tour. what... Huh? Tour. Tour. What? Tour. It's not spelled like tour. And if you're Rory McIlroy, it's tur. I hit live. Feed the tur. I hit live. I hit live. I hit him. So, I hit him. A, a, a pretty a, a pretty quiet weekend a, in I'm the Choppyman household. I'm did not get did not get uh, did you COVID. did you wear a mask? I did. I wore a bandana. Oh, uh, look at ooh. you! I, I wore a bandana. I wore not wear a mask. I wore a bandana. It looked like I was going to rob something. Did you like? Did you drop did you your was, hat down over your eyes so that not. nobody could see you I, wearing that? I wore sunglasses and I immediately forgot how the worst thing about COVID is not the getting the COVID for me at least. It was putting the mask on and then sunglasses over it and you get the foggy sunglasses immediately. Mm. That was like the worst thing for me about COVID. Obviously, other people had much worse issues happen to them. <laughs> yeah, you know, losing family members and everything. Sure, but yeah, uh, yeah I, I mowed the lawns. I did not get uh, Movid. Peyton, you, I, I saw your, well, yeah, I saw your mail and email. Yeah, here. let's let's okay. get well, let's get well, very, let's on this. <laughs> let, let's. This is the biggest thing to talk about from Peyton's best and worst of the weekend is the email he wrote, which this man clearly knows. 
Hey, I'll, I'll be honest. Okay. You know, we, on, we, right? we talked. We talked earlier about you know Sean's got that temper or whatever, right? Like, like Sean, Sean, Sean rules with an iron fist. You always say you read all of his texts in as if he's yelling, angry, even angry. even when he's not yelling. Even when he's not yelling. You just you still read. It's like okay, that's cool. You're just Where like okay, that's cool. Where are we with the guests? Yes, exactly. That, that's how. Hey, <laughs> that's what Where are we with? The John Smoltz guest. <laughs> Pay. Where are we with Smoltz? <laughs> Why not Mike Madonna himself? <laughs> so Madonna hasn't responded. Why? But you know what? Know. He he's got it. He's got a rule with that iron fist because it's clear. As soon as cat's away, as man. soon as he's away, oh Peyton Russell just gives up. I hate to see <laughs> what the payload is going to look like. Why don't you read Peyton okay. Russell's email for us, John? Uh, best slash work of the weekend. At least he put it worst of the weekend. He put it in the subject line. So good for him. Yes. I was, here we go. He couldn't be bothered to write and, no. though. He had to do a slash because he was... Here we go. Didn't do much over the weekend. Watch college basketball and did some work around the house. Pretty laid back weekend. Now, I Chop. Was honest. Chop. Is he writing that exact same email if he's sending it to Sean today? He may make up something. I mean, but look, if you didn't do anything over the weekend, you didn't do everything. We sure. Don't Until next Sunday night. I'll copy and paste it. Total. We'll, we'll, Whoa! We'll, I'll copy and paste it. Ooh, look at that! So now, he's he's calling bluff. He's so you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna basically either recreate your weekend or give a like, like basically lie to a a bare bones. Well, extent. thing is, is March Madness it, it carries on yeah, next weekend too, does. so I can use the same thing. Absolutely, I watched basketball. I asked you to I asked you to come out to the to the Richardson Bar and Grill. You could have played shuffleboard with me. You uh, you always talk all this try. mess about the the way you play beer pong and everything else. Well, I did say in there I had to do stuff around the house. Yeah, did yeah, you get the lawn mowed? You finished the lawn? I did. I fe- I mowed the second half. I had to remow the front yard though. Front okay. yard already grew back, and I did put fertilizer down. Don't know what kind. It's a big white bag. And the fertilizer looks like uh, Neapolitan Dippin' Dots, different colors. It's like okay. uh, pink and brown. And Do you white. remember the brand? No, I didn't even look. So at the brand. white bag, white bag. Probably Scotts. Could be Scotts Southern Law. Big white bag. I used the whole thing though. I white bag, the whole thing, front too. and back. Okay, well yeah, you got I a killed big three ant piles. Three okay. ant mounds. Did you use the ortho? I did. I used the, uh, the pellets or whatever thing. I poured that on there. Now I had to anger the smells, up. doesn't it? it? Stinks like it pumpkin. does a little bit. Now because I, I poured it on top of it the first time, like two weeks ago, first time pile didn't kill it. Came back there the next day, they were still alive. So yeah. I had to anger them a little. I had yeah, to step so, on it. So you gotta, yeah. I, I wouldn't step on it because you get all your feet, right? right? Take a stick or something like that. Open it up. Oh. Let them all come out and then pour it in. You got to get to the queen. How much? Whatever it is. How much power did you feel taking out those ant hills, though? I almost recorded it. Oh my god! <laughs> I almost in this middle finger Dude, to them all the, bu- oh, the, the so bug good. zapper the first time the you get one of those like yes. bug tennis rackets Dude, yeah. oh i got one of those too dude the first time you like catch one of them you're like oh my god this yeah. is this is the this is the type of power you can feel. least co my dad just texted me it's least co uh, yeah. the, for the fertilizer yeah fertilizer I haven't, I haven't seen that one. What's up, Daddy Russell? Thanks for toloing. Good stuff, Peyton. Appreciate you. Hello. Oh, you're becoming a, I love <laughs> no, no, no. this. I no, love not that good, you're Not good in. stuff, Peyton. This is, I, this is no, a no. mail-in for Peyton. I love that he's that getting four in the lawn care. minutes we just care. killed off for me. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I love that you're getting in the lawn care. This is fantastic stuff. I'm, pr- I'm proud of you, uh, young man. All right, it is Sean and RJ here on 105 Through the Fan. There was your commercial-free expressway. Coming up next, it was always Shohei. It was always Shohei. And I'm sorry if that triggers you. It's coming up next on The Fan. The place to hear sports.
Fan Studios, secured by DFWSecurity.com. This is Sean and RJ on 105.3 The Fan. 8 o'clock hour here on Sean and RJ on 105.3 The Fan. We've got a big week of sports ahead. you got Rangers opening day. We're going to have a song for that. Ooh. Uh, Mavs in Utah tonight. Stars get a 4-2 victory over Arizona. They got the night off. They are in San Jose tomorrow. Uh, and then, of course, the NCAA tournament resuming uh, on Thursday. And we will do a – I'll get you caught up on that coming up at 820 here on The Fan. But, man, when we left on Friday, the Shohei news had broke about the interpreter uh, being fired, being 
embroiled in a gambling ring of some kind uh, to the point where he owed four and a half million dollars to a bookie, which I said, I warned y'all, I said there's no way that his interpreter was placing those bets, uh, at least with his own money, because... Or his own name. His own name. Like, or, he, he could... He could have placed them, but he was placing them either in someone else's name, primarily Shohei, or with the known backing to both Shohei and the yes. bookie. It was um, it was not just him and his bank account and his name. Bank there account. there had to be some other. Yeah. Like, he doesn't have enough M's in his bank account. No, uh, he does not. But and then it comes out over the weekend that you know, well, uh, maybe he knew, maybe he didn't know. But I told y'all, there's no bookie in America, no casino in America that was going to let somebody with a three to five hundred thousand dollars salary, which is his reported salary, of the interpreter. Rack up four and a half million dollars in debt. Not a chance. Not unless they knew who the real money behind all this was. What do we have as the latest on this? So the latest is the MLB is going to open an investigation into this. Very. I'm surprised at this. That they're opening an investigation. I would not. Why not? You want to ban them? I mean, this is like going through your girl's phone. Go ahead, man. Go home, Dodgers. You're going to find something you don't want to see. Whether it's her talking bad about you to her friends, or there's a there's a guy that's just a little bit too uh, persistent with her or whatever. You're going to find something. You're going to find something you don't want to see, and that's going to ruin everything. And it's the same thing here. You're going to find something here if you're MLB and you investigate this that you don't want to find out because you cannot find something and then not ban him which or is, suspend him for a couple of years. Which is where, what do they always say though? Cover up is worse than the crime? Yeah, it is. It is. But you go ahead. The biggest global star, one of the, one of the, how many, I mean, how many global stars are bigger than him in sports right now? Um, global. Messi? Ronaldo? One, on one or two hands. Yeah, probably one hand. LeBron? Count him. Yeah. Honestly. I mean, he globally, he's probably bigger than Mahomes. Globally. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would say so. Not in the U.S., but... Uh, yeah, and and we're US, just yeah. including active athletes, right? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Mbappe, Tiger. LeBron, maybe Tiger. Tiger, um, Mbappe, LeBron, Messi, Ronaldo are bigger names. So, I mean, he's he's somewhere between... Yeah. He's in the top five, top ten. Yeah. Yeah. But so, look, here, here's the deal. If he did something wrong, you got to remember, this was a... This was a, a story. This was... The media was on it, sniffing it out. You don't know what they know. If there's something bad here, That's right. they're going to find it, yes. and then you're involved in a cover-up, and now you've got a scandal that could take baseball. Well, back. you know, I, I didn't. Uh, we our, our investigation didn't find that. Unless you chose willingly not to do an investigation. Right. And if they say, well, this is everything baseball knew, and they chose not to investigate, that makes yeah. it look bad. You've got to, even if it's a phony investigation, investigation. you've got to. Okay. You, you can't leave it. I, I had sent you the, the thread. On Twitter, dude, can you do you have that? Yeah, I got it open. Should we like? Should I just even say what it is? All right, I'm gonna say this. This is not anything that. So is, this is all speculation. This is I have no nobody has any idea. So two things happen. One, they're detailing Shohei's bad games, his worst games. They're going back and looking at the betting lines and the over unders of those games, and then I guess they somehow found there was a bet placed. So, that part I don't. So that's the biggest problem is that if, if all of this is accurate that's in this Twitter thread, which there's a this went really viral over over the weekend. It was a sort of anonymous Twitter account, which a lot of times those are BS. Sometimes they have been real and exposed things. Um, but it basically just says, hey, if you look over the history, here are some of Shohei's worst starts, and they coincide with, you know, for instance, on July 22nd, 2022. There was a $1 million bet that was placed for the Braves to score over six and a half runs against the Angels, parlayed with Braves minus three and a half. And the bet was placed with a bookie in Shohei's hometown. It's like, okay, well, that you can't yeah. know that. Yeah, like the bookie's not, is a bookie keeping records from six years ago. That, so that's the kind of, but those are the things that are out there yeah. now. That's what, and that's what I'm saying. That's why the MLB has to investigate because you've opened yeah. yourself up to these sort of things. It's the same thing as like we were talking about earlier with the, the awful news that. Kate Middleton uh, has, has cancer. Has cancer is that they've opened themselves up to 
all these different questions about, well, what can we believe about this? What can we do that? Because they just weren't upfront earlier right. and they tried to doctor photos and and create this illusion of everything being okay that now it's okay, you're it's that whole boy who cried wolf syndrome. Like like yeah. you, you you've and created he's a lack to, of trust. He's gonna speak today. Who who's gonna be the interpreter? Good question. But uh Shohei's gonna speak today. I can't wait to see what he says here. Because they're gonna be peppering him with questions and they have to. They have to, because again, in order for you to believe that the show had nothing to do with this, you you would have to believe that his interpreter, not his accountant, somehow got a hold of his bank account information, and you probably need a signature. And and, by the way, got a hold of his bank account, and that... The bank never followed up. I'll tell you this. If I if I were to bet, or if I were to spend a lot of money, let's just say, if I were to just spend $500, if I were to deposit $500 into a online uh, bank account, uh, online uh, gambling, mm-hmm. which is just an odd um, you know, deposit or, or, or transaction in its own right, my bank would immediately text me and say, did you do this? And if this guy is wagering hundreds of thousands of dollars at a time, there is zero chance the bank is not going to inquire about this with a text message to show A. So you got to believe that he, A, got his bank account information, and B, the bank never sent him a note? Never? The bank sent you a note if you crossed the state border, for crying out loud. So the first time I, when we land, every, mm-hmm. every time when we land in Vegas. Yeah. First time I swiped my credit card, the bank sent me a text. Oh are yeah, you, are you in Vegas? Yeah. yeah, I am. Thank you. Appreciate that. But it, it puts like, like like this happens. Well, and so so here was the most recent story from ESPN talking about Otani speaking. This is from uh, Alden Gonzalez over at ESPN. He writes: Shohei Otani briefly came to the Dodgers clubhouse on Sunday and declared he would make himself available to reporters and address the illegal gambling and theft allegations levied against his former interpreter the following afternoon. The interpreter. Uh, how are we saying this name? Ipe Mizuharo? Ipe Mizuharo, yeah. Okay, Ipe Mizuharo was fired by the Dodgers on Wednesday in the wake of media inquiries surrounding at least, at least, so this is the interesting thing, at least $4.5 million in wire transfers sent from Otani's bank account to a Southern California bookmaking operation that is under federal investigation. So yeah. is that the... The bookmaker is under federal investigation yes. or these ac- the, the like these transactions are? The okay. Bookmaker is- so like, oh. that, that's the thing. I guarantee you, I, and I don't know what bank Shohei has, but I guarantee you, if he wires four and a half million dollars to somebody, they are going to send him a message. And like, that's a the text other message is going to be or email or whatever. And that's the interesting thing that it doesn't look like has been cleared up yet. Is if was this a mass transfer or was this several wire transfers that totaled up to four and a half million? Right, was this six. like, hey, I've got I've got this debt. All right, here's a four and a half million dollar transfer to to cover over your debt. Or is this like there's several of them over a period of time? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that. I don't know what it is. I I do know that like, you know, I was talking to a lot of professional gamblers. Well, maybe I am one of them. I don't know. And yeah. we'll see how the they turning, all said we'll the like, turns out for you. in order for you to owe four and a half million dollars to a casino or a bookie, right? Two things have to happen. Either one, you have to be the worst gambler in the world, and you're just betting that that's one bet. Or if you're gonna like, you know, to, uh, the way a normal person would lose money, you got to bet about ninety million over time to rack up four and a half million dollars in debt because you're gonna, you're not gonna lose every time. You're gonna win. You're gonna lose. You're gonna win. You're gonna lose. And sooner or later, it'll creep up, and all of a sudden, you look up. It's like, oh wow, I'm I gotta I gotta balance. The the ESPN story says Otani's camp initially said Otani transferred the funds to cover Mizuhara's debt and presented Mizuhara for an interview with ESPN on Tuesday night. So when we asked about how did this happen, how did he have one on one, that was. Apparently, Otani coordinated that and put him in front of ESPN to talk about it, during which he laid out the process in detail. The following day, a statement from Burke Brettler, LLP, the law firm representing Otani in the matter, instead said the two-way star has been the victim of a massive theft. Mizuhara then told ESPN that Otani had no knowledge of his debt and that Otani had not transferred the money. Okay, so now we're getting inconsistent. ESPN is saying Otani's camp said he transferred the money, told us, he transferred the money to cover the debt and that he then presented Mizuhara to ESPN for the interview. And then the next day, 
Mizuhara goes to ESPN and says, uh, never mind, Otani had no knowledge of the debt and he didn't transfer the money and this was theft. It's like, okay, well, now we're now we're getting some clarity from ESPN where ESPN say, no, the story we were told initially from Otani's camp was that he did this to cover the debts. And then they have that big meeting in the clubhouse. Something's which, not good. Which this still stinks. doesn't, yeah, which with that part makes the least amount of sense to me because again, no bookie, no casino, nobody is going to let somebody who does not make a ton of money. He makes a lot of money for us. You know, Mizuhara's salary was estimated between three and 500000 Somebody making that money is not going to be allowed to rack up a $4.5 million balance unless they know that he has a backer. Why? Here's the biggest thing to me that I'm curious Shohei would have known about it. Yes. If, if he's, let's say he's putting up $90 million of, of you know, money for, for these bets. Why would somebody who has that level of a gambling addiction, like, let me just play devil's advocate here. Why would somebody who has that level of a gambling addiction then willingly structure a contract with deferred payments where they're not? Uh, that I could easily see. Okay. Uh, that would tell me because if they suspend him, Mm -hmm. Let's say so. Let's say Shohei is suspended for let's say he's suspended for two years for this. Mm -hmm. All right. So I, I would think this would get him. My thought is this would get him banned. Okay. Well, let's, whatever it is, let's just say he's suspended for two years. Your your the salary deduction would be your your salary that year. So he would only be the same thing with Deshaun, right? Didn't the Browns do Deshaun yeah. a solid when they suspended his base salary that first year was a million bucks, so he didn't lose any money? That's the same thing here. Your base salary is two million, and he's getting. Was it sixty-eight million deferred each year? So he would only get fined the two million dollars salary, and not the other sixty-eight. Do you think the Dodgers were caught off guard by this, or do you think they knew something was going on? Oh gosh, I don't know. Because he's not been with it. Like he just signed this off season. He has not been with them. I mean, if this has been a long-standing issue, the Angels would have more of an idea yeah. of this. You think than the Dodgers? I mean, surely they don't want. They, they, they're not happy. They don't want this over their the cloud in them. Where? How do you think this ends ultimately? I don't think anything happens to him. I mean, I think deep down, like something, something went on here. Like I don't know whether he placed the bets. I don't think he did. I think he definitely knew. I think he did his. I think he did his guy solid. It's tough when you have ESPN though, like saying, "Oh, this is now like uh, this has been presented to us as two wildly different stories in the yeah. span of forty eight hours." That's tough to then call the dogs it's, off who want to yeah. dig deeper and find something out. So I it's, don't know how easily he can just not have anything happen. I don't think it's wire fraud. I think what happened, the re realistic thing, is that he knew he was betting, and he said, I'll be your bankroll. And that's, I, I don't think Shohei was actually placing but, but if he was, it wouldn't surprise me. Do you think, do you, so, like, you think the initial story they presented is the real one, and then the Dodgers went, no, 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 that story's not going to work. That's not good. That doesn't look I, I good. Think it's, I think it's somewhere like more like the real one where he paid him off. But I think Shohei knew because there's no way, again, there's no way that bookie's going to let you rack up that kind of money. Right. So he, the bookie had to have assurances that Shohei was going to cover it if things went south. Wild. I told y'all he was a diva. Nobody listened to me. Stop it. I tried to tell you. Man, I, th I said the same thing. <laughs> Not as much. Uh, controversy in the NCAA tournament. And are we set up for the best second weekend ever? In March Madness, it's all coming up next year on 105 through the fam. Let's get you over to QC Kinetics.
and brought to you by the personal injury lawyers, Frankel and Frankel. If you have been injured in a car or truck wreck, call Frankel first, 214-817-333-3333. With Frankel and Frankel, there is never an out-of-pocket cost. They only get paid when you win. Frankel and Frankel, the go-to car and truck wreck attorneys in Dallas. Bound to Hunter, streaking into the front court. Pull up, launch for three. No good front iron. Tennessee somehow escapes. 62-58, holding off Texas. That is the call on Westwood 1, the Longhorns' valiant effort at the at the end. Coming from 14 down in the second half uh, to cut this to, what, a two-point game at one point uh, on a multiple occasions. Were you, getting the, uh, were you getting the nervous toots there late? I wasn't nervous toots. I was getting nervous, though. I, you know what happened? Here's the thing. So they were up. Tennessee was up like 12. And Sarah gets up off the couch and goes to bed. All of a sudden, it's like a four-point game. And I run in there and I grab her. I said, hey, get up. <laughs> you are so, you buy into the jinx so she's much. She's like, what? I'm sleeping. I go, tough. Text went on like an 8-0 run. Get your ass up. You're coming back in the couch, on the couch. And at that point, next to Sushi got there, hit a three ball. So she's the good luck charm. Well, in, the, in this case, she was. You can't, hang on a second. You can't be watching a game. And all of a sudden, somebody gets up and goes to bed. Sleep on the couch. That's okay. I I will do that. I agree. Everybody stay in their spot. You know what mine was always the the jinx that I was always worried about is I was always convinced when I was watching, if I was watching and they were playing, I just needed to turn the TV off. I wouldn't go anywhere. I would just turn the TV off and I'd kind of sit there, and I'd just sit there in silence. You know what I've done that for? A couple of big moments. I did it in uh, the the Mavericks were down by 15 to the Thunder. In the Western Conference Finals, uh, there's like six minutes left in game three, I think it was. Down 15, I was like, can't watch this. Turn it off. Shut it off. Sat there for a sec, turned it back on. A few minutes later, it's like down six. And then I finished watching the rest of the way, and they come mm. back, send it to overtime, and they win. Did it with uh, fourth and one national title game, Texas and USC. Because I was like, they haven't been able to start, or fourth and two, whatever it was. They haven't been able to stop the USC running game all night. They're going to hand it off to Lendell White. He's going to pick it up. Couldn't do it. Turned it off. I was like, I can't watch this play. I'm going to sit here for a few minutes. And when I turned it back on, they were in a close-up shot of the Texas cheerleaders doing like number one and cheering nuts. I was like, oh my gosh, we got the turnover on downs. Wow. So that's always been mine. I got to turn it off for big plays whenever they're playing poorly because I feel like it's me watching it that's jinxing it. Okay. All right. I never thought of myself as the jinx, but I guess that could be it. I mean, I have I have rearranged the remote controls. Robert uh, Durst Belt. That's what they call me, the jinx. Okay. Very good. Very good. Um... So yeah, I was I was a little bit nervous uh, to say the least at the end of that game, um, but I do think we are going to have maybe one of the best uh, Sweet Sixteens we've seen because you've got every one seed, you've got every two seed, you've got half the three seeds, you've got only what one double digit seed and that's NC State. Mm. Is that it? Yep. One double digit seed. Yep. Uh, you've got a six seed in Clemson. And you've got a five in Gonzaga. So every other game is either 1-4 or 2-3, except for Purdue-Gonzaga and Marquette and NC State on Friday. That's it. Boy, and Mark then you got 2-6 in Clemson, Arizona, 1-5 rematch of last year's Natty in UConn-San Diego State. This is going to be a dynamite. Sweet 16 in Elite Eight. Marquette is really starting to scare me. Well, they got Kolick back. He's healthy. I know, but like you look at it. Not, not, uh, not academically ineligible, the, as many Big East fans would joke about, but the, that was never the case. They end up they end up getting the uh they they end up beating the toppers in the first round. But you remember they were down six at halftime to Western Kentucky, and they were down like it was like ten at one point mm -hmm. in the first half. And then Colorado was hanging around way too much for my like with Marquette. And so I've got a little bit of uneasiness about Marquette getting to the Elite Eight and ruining my perfect Elite Eight as it stands right now. Really? Yep. I'm just a little I'm a little concerned about Marquette and the way that they've played. So I mean they they got a good draw. Getting the eleven seed is as good a draw as you could hope for, but they've just they've not been super sharp in these first couple games. Well, we're going to have, I think, a really good uh, tournament uh, this coming week, like I said. Um, 
it is. I'll tell you one thing. I don't want to play Illinois right now. Illinois looks like a juggernaut right now. Obviously, Arizona. Uh, you know, they did they they made good work at Long Beach State the first round, and then they didn't struggle with Dayton. I mean, they, it was it was close enough for comfort. Um, but I mean, f- the the favorites were fifteen and one straight up in the Sweet Sixteen. Fifteen so, so the, and one. The betting favorites or the higher seed. Oh, the higher the like betting, the money line favorites. Yeah, the betting favorites. Because Gonzaga um, was a five against Kansas four, but they were the they favorite. Were the favorite. So the favorite was yeah, they were fifteen and one. Damn. Um, yeah. That, good. That, is that I know you say that we get fewer upsets the further that we get into the tournament, but I mean that's mm-hmm. still for that fifteen round, and one is pretty. That, that's a pretty absurd money line hit. Isn't I mean, it? think of it this way: the tournament expanded to sixty four teams in nineteen eighty five. This is the fifth time we've had all one and two seeds make the Sweet 16. Wow. The last time was 2019. Happened in 89, 95, 09, 19, and 2024. So you have talent at the top of this. You've got a lot of talent at the top of the tournament right now. Favorites are 38 and 14 overall in the tournament straight up. And 15 to 1 in the round of 32. Double digit favorites were 15 and 3 against the spread. They covered it. All one and two seeds made the Sweet 16, and only two of the top 12 teams were eliminated, which is Kansas. I'm sorry, Kentucky and Baylor. So you can complain about the madness not being there, but you can't complain about what you're going to see this weekend because you're going to get top, top matchups. Yeah, this is what you want, right? What, what nobody wanted was San Diego State and Florida Atlantic. You, you last year you didn't you didn't want yeah. that. I like one Cinderella maybe. Like when I, w- I was at oh I was at the uh, Final Four where it had VCU and Butler. Oh well, uh, old Nick Wright coaching VCU. Shaka. Yeah, Shaka. <laughs> yeah, that was at uh, that was in Indianapolis, right? Was it? Yeah. No, it was in. Uh, let's see, one was Indy. <laughs> one was no, no, that was in um, uh, Houston. Okay, I was in Houston. The like, Indianapolis one was... And Brad Stevens at Butler, right? Is he still there? Stevens at Butler. That was uh, the second year. That was the second year. That was the year I sat right behind Jim Nance. I had the second row, middle seat. Well, Me and Mac Angle sat next to each other. Somehow Mac Angle was assigned that seat. And I went there and I said, hey, is your boy Gil going to be here? I think it was Gil. And Gil was not going to be there. I said, all right, I'm taking a seat. So I took a seat and I sat right behind Jim Nance. Yeah, look. You, Great seats. You, you, love, you love George Mason... Get into the final four. You liked it. I didn't want to see VCU and Butler. I didn't want to see San Diego State and FAU. Yeah, or or even NC State, like making their Cinderella run yeah. and winning all. That's fine, but like it, you don't want the. There's got to be some sexy opponent yeah, involved. It does. can't. It can't just be two Cinderellas. That's yeah. nobody wants that. That that's that's absolutely true. So that's where we are with the NCAA tournament. I think it's going to be a really really good uh, second weekend of the tournament. The women's game. Uh, they're going on the women's draw. They have got more games tonight. So they do Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, or the men do Thursday through Sunday. Uh, Kim Mulkey over the weekend got in front of a story. This is very strange. So she got in front of this story that was talking about it's a nobody knows what it is. We yet. don't even know what it is. We don't even know what it is. On her press conference this week, she went on and she talked about this reporter from the Washington Post wanting to do a hit piece on her. This reporter has been working on a story about me for two years. After two years of trying to get me to sit with him for an interview, he contacts LSU on Tuesday as we were getting ready for the first round game of this tournament with more than a dozen questions, demanding a response by Thursday, right before we're scheduled to tip off. It's these kinds of sleazy tactics and hatchet jobs that people are just tired of. I'm fed up. And I'm not gonna let the Washington Post attack this university, this awesome team of young women I have, or me without a fight. I've hired the best defamation law firm in the country. And I will sue the Washington Post Mm. if they publish a false story about me. Not many people are in a position to hold these kind of journalists accountable, but I am, and I'll do it. That's all I'm going to say about this right now. 
And now I'm going to get back to talking about my basketball team and winning this game tomorrow. So well, there's two routes you could have taken here. Do you take the talk about it first before the piece comes out, which is what she did? Which this this even became a question because it was Pat Forty had tweeted the other day, hearing some buzz about a big Washington Post story in the works on LSU women's hoops coach Kim Mulkey, potentially next week, wagons being circled, etc. And so that's what first brought it to people's attention that there's something there. And I think that's why she ultimately was answering questions about it. Yeah. And then the other one is you let it come out and you give it no attention. Um, I guess or the third one is she should have responded to her to the person, the reporter's questions with comments. Like I, I understand that like, because if they if they sent it to her, I think they said she sent it to her on Monday or Tuesday, mm-hmm. and then she wanted to, they wanted a response by Thursday. I, I know coaches love to say I'm not gonna. It's too busy of a week. You're LSU. You're playing a first round game. Like what are we doing here? Like you're not gonna lose that game. There's not the, the 14 seeds don't upset three seeds in the in the in the women's tournament. They didn't play great though. They didn't play great. They didn't play great. They didn't play great. They still won. Like it's not the the men's tournament you're going to get those those upsets. Women's tournament you get some. It's not nearly as much. Not generally as much. You're going to have some like LSU should dog walk just about anybody in the first round. They're really really good. Like would it have killed her to take 20 minutes? Like is that something that she could have done? Well, yeah, I mean, we, we obviously, it's again, it's so vague. We don't even know yeah, what's even know being what said. Is. Like, is this one of these things where it's like, Kim Mulkey is a hard ass and we've got quotes from former players that say she's demeaning or we're like, like, is it a story like that? Or is it like something big like, oh, Kim Mulkey's covering up a crime or like, like it depends on what level of story it is to, in terms of what level of attention you probably feel you need to give to it and what, how much you want to think on your response. I would guess if she's talking about for her specifically, I've got to have responses ready. If it was something about like you're covering up a crime or something, I'm guessing she'd have lawyers answer that question, not her. Like she wouldn't right. even answer it anyway. So I'm guessing it's something not that bad. It's probably more about culture and what they do at LSU and how they operate. Well, if it's culture, do you really need to come out and get in front of ba- of that? I mean, like if you're just a hard, everybody knows she's a hard ass. Yeah, I mean, how many? Like how much? How much more can you damage her reputation in terms of she's kind of difficult? Like that's already been established. I feel like, yeah. I mean, she looks. She's she's like both. She's polarized. She's loved and hated. She's but, she's definitely difficult. I think you could say. Yeah, I mean, like she runs her operation the way she wants to run it. Nobody's gonna tell her how to. Yeah. Now people like you. And that is difficult. There yes. are people that that love her. People that dislike her. But like, there is no doubt that like yeah. the the one thing that there's no debate on with Kim Mulkey is like. She's kind of a hard ass and she's kind yeah. of difficult to deal with. But also, like, really successful people in a lot of times are difficult to deal with. It's the way that it is. So, I mean, it just depends on how you view it and and what exactly is going to come out in this story that I guess we'll be waiting around yeah, for. We'll see. We'll see what happens with this. I can't wait for this thing to come out. I wonder what it does. I can't wait for the blowback, too, if it does come out. So, we'll see. <laughs> what is up next in Below the Belt? Do you have Travis Kelsey burnout? Guess what? You're about to see a whole hell of a lot more of him. That's next in Below the Belt Belt. on 105.3 The Fan. Let's get you over to Platinum.
dealer in the world. More Silverados than anyone else. Go see them today or visit ClassicChevrolet.com. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's ride, relax, enjoy the difference. Based on new Chevrolet registrations, 2023. The great Bobby Belt. You ruined the morning show. Don't make me take off my belt. Don't make me no, take no, off my belt. We're not. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? I like to think so, but then again, I've seen my fifth grader's homework, and I'm like, man... All right. What is they don't they don't call it PEMDAS anymore? By the way, do you know that? Sure. I didn't go to school. Remember? So what's PEMDAS? Peyton? Is that the uh, is that math term? Is it the uh, uh, order of operations? Plus right. Something. Parentheses. Exponent. Uh, Ryan. I bet you Ryan knows. He was in school last week. P E M D A S. Uh, yes. PEMDAS. Parentheses. Exponent. Multiplication. Division. Addition. Subtraction. They call it GEMDAS now. They don't call it parentheses. They call it grouping. No, well, that's lame. Well, at least my kids, that's how my kids being taught. If, if so, you're smarter than a fifth grader, yeah. Travis Kelsey's going to let you know more on that in just a second. The two for one. Uh, Jerry Jones spoke at league meetings yesterday in Orlando, and it was not a scheduled discussion. It was one where he was just kind of hanging out in the lobby and some reporters caught him and he's always willing to, to have a conversation with some people. And so the reporters Went over there, just started asking him some different questions about, you know, Dak Prescott. One of the things he said, he said, I think there are a handful or more of quarterbacks playing who haven't won a Super Bowl that will win a Super Bowl. I think Dak is one of them. I'm firm there. He's one of the ones who can. He also said that they couldn't afford to keep Tyron Smith. He said, look, bottom line, if he hits all these incentives that he's supposed to, you're talking about $20 million. We just simply could not afford that. Couldn't play in those waters. And a quick update, RJ Choppy, on the least spending teams in NFL free agency this offseason. The quick update. Spend... So the Ravens, Cowboys, and Bills. No, no, no. No, if you if you include waivers, extensions, free agents, trades, everything else. This is the 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 bottom five. If you take the bottom five chop, mm -hmm. the fifth. Lowest spending team in the NFL this offseason is the Cincinnati Bengals. They've spent $72,177,500. And they're a top 10 team to win the title this year, right? They are. And that, remember, that's fifth lowest. The lowest spending team this offseason is the Dallas Cowboys at $11 million. So what was what were Cincinnati at? 72. It goes Dallas at 11. Then second to last is the Chargers at more than three times as much, 39 million. The Saints at 52. The Broncos at 53. And then a jump to the Bengals at 72. Wow. That is now this is net. stunning. This is net, right? This so is the amount spent on extensions. So it has nothing new... to do with losses. Doesn't count, it doesn't count your losses. No, it counts you. what you have spent. Okay. Like I was thinking maybe it's like, all right, if you lose... $100 million with the salary, and you spend 70 that means you spent 30 right? But no. There you go. There's your answer on the fan cam from Ryan. Look at that. About your PEM dollars. And I know that. I knew that. I even said that. Look at that. And then I, I guess the P is now a G for grouping instead of parentheses. I don't know why they had to change things that worked for a thousand years. You know, when Aristotle or whoever came up with uh, PEM DOS... I don't know. I was never taught Maybe with that acrostic. Maybe it wasn't Aristotle. I don't know. You were what? I was never taught with that acrostic. We didn't use that. So. Acrostic? Mm -hmm. Like one of those like things where you spell something out and then each letter represents something. Oh. So. Like no ma'am. Sure. National Organization of Men Against Man Amazonian Masterhood. Oh, is that a thing? It's from Married with Children. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the I Cowboys used to have a no ma'am shirt. I don't know where it is. The Cowboys have not uh, spent this offseason at all. And even still, they couldn't afford Tyron Smith, apparently, even though they've got plenty of switches they can flip, plenty of different things they can do. One of the interesting things that came out of this conversation that Jerry had had with the media, though, was they were asking him, hey, you know, with everything that's going on with Tyron Smith and, and him departing, you've got options in the draft, but what about Tyler Smith? Could, you know, you guys said Tyler Smith could be kind of Larry Allen-like, could play guard or tackle. Now that Tyron Smith is gone... Does that change things for you? Do you look at Tyler Smith as more of a tackle? And so he was asked about playing Tyler Smith at tackle. He said, I'd say that's a good, viable thing. Keep that idea there. Don't dismiss that idea. Certainly, he's potentially, I want to say, a great player at left tackle. And Chop, I think I think this is ultimately where it, it goes. I think. 
is just I, I think that when they said what they said about Tyler playing guard or, or what Steven said, Steven was actually kind of wishy-washy when you hear him say it. He says that okay. he could, we could have a Larry Allen situation here where he's great at guard or tackle. Like when you listen to it, everybody heard what he said and went, well, Larry Allen was a guard. Yeah, primarily, but I, I think we were filling in details there that were actually Steven being kind of non-committal and saying, well, he could play either one. And I think that any deference they had or leaning they had towards Tyler Smith playing guard was when they thought, I think that things were at that time still going to work out with Tyron. They hadn't met with his agent yet. They didn't know where things stood exactly. So I think that's a shift. I think TJ Bass, who they had as an undrafted free agent out of Oregon, I, I think they think is a competent starting left guard. I think they believe he could okay. do it. If you take a center in the first round, maybe that's Jackson Powers Johnson from Oregon who played alongside TJ Bass at Oregon. Um, if you take a center there and then move Tyler Smith to left tackle, I think they probably view it as we've covered our bases. You've got your starting tackles. Then you've got Zach Martin and, you know, TJ Bass inside a guard. And yeah, then we go had, draft. They could have had their center in the draft like two years ago or whatever. They could have. They could have done that. But they look, I mean, they drafted Tyler Biotish, who was, who was solid for them. I, I think Tyler Biotish. Bad is. He played well in 21. 22, it's just he kind of took a step back or, or, or played well in 22. 23, he kind of took a step back. And, and I think that it changed their outlook a little bit. But I think they were definitely interested in having him here for a longer period of time. It just, I, I think that last year they kind of made an evaluation that said, okay, he's not quite where we want him to be at this point. But I would say that as we start looking at the draft and we look at pick 24, Maybe the, the focus should shift to, okay, maybe we should start looking at centers maybe more as a priority because you got to remember they do have that flexibility with Tyler Smith, and that can help yeah. them a little bit more. And center is a much thinner area in the draft than tackle is. There are not nearly as many good centers in this draft as there are tackles. So kind of where that stands. Are you comfortable, Chop, with Tyler Smith at left tackle? Yeah, I mean, I guess so. I mean, I, I think he's uh, – ideally, I think you would keep him where he's an all-pro – which is a guard. If I tell you he's a top 10 tackle or a top five guard, would you just rather have the top five guard? <sighs> Game's different. What's the tackle? There's a lot of interior pressure. Where's my tackle? Left. No, 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 no. no. Mm -hmm. If I keep that guard, where's my tackle rank? Like, we'll say you get a, a top 15 tackle and a top five guard, or you get a top 10 tackle and a top 15 guard. Uh, I'd rather have a top five. I mean, that, that's a top five guard. Give me the top five guard. Okay. That, I mean, like, I know tackle is a more important position, and it absolutely is, but. I mean, guard, a, the, the game has, with all the interior pressure and the way teams try to drop yeah. pressure up the, up the middle, guard has become yeah. a really important position in terms of pass protection. Because he's not a top five guard. He's a top two guard, according to. I mean, he, he, he was an all pro. He played really well last year. He yeah. he was really really good, and I think there's still room for him to continue to grow. I, in, I mean, in, early in on last year, year, in his second year, he's a he's an all pro. He was incredibly yeah. dominant last year. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll take I'll take an all pro guard over a you know borderline Pro Bowl tackle. Give me the all pro. Like you got a strength. Like keep your strength your strength. Don't weaken a strength just to strengthen a weakness. Strengthen your weakness on its own. And keep your strength to strength. I, I can see the argument for it, absolutely. I still think that... I think Tyler Smith has the capacity to be one of the best left tackles in football. I just think they think... I think the Cowboys think he might be elite at guard and really, really good at tackle. I think that's maybe how they view it right now. And they just view it as, hey, we can create a stronger unit together yeah. if we have Smith at left tackle, potentially. So I think that's very much the direction that it could be heading. Uh, are you smarter than a fifth grader? Are you familiar with the, the program, Chop? The yeah, Jeff Fox uh, did show? Jeff Fox really do it? You might be a redneck. He did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is a little is a little ironic, I guess, to have this. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? Show be hosted by the the guy who's the redneck man. Mm -hmm. But uh, that show has been off the air for a little bit now. Uh, it's getting a reboot on Amazon Prime, and Travis Kelsey is in talks to host the program. Don't you have a little Travis Kelsey fatigue at this point? There you go. There's the um, Ari Spider in the fifth grader music. Is that what this is? Yeah. Uh, yeah, a little bit. 
I told my daughter the other night, she's a big Taylor Swift fan. She loves all the 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 swellsy stuff. I know everybody else has been going like Tay Trey or whatever they call them. I, I don't know what they're calling them. Travis or Travis. however they call them. I prefer swellsy. Swell, I like swellsy too. I like it. Uh, um, but I told her, I was like, hey, guess who might be hosting? Mm. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? And I told her and she went, eh. I was like, what's that? And then she's like, I don't know if he's good for her. I was like, oh, okay. So she's turning on Travis Kelsey now. I think she just wants some new music. And she needs uh, Taylor to have her heart broken for it. Could be. Um, but man, this is like, I think people are starting to get Travis Kelsey fatigue. And so now if you're going to throw him on another thing, it's going to be like, again? Like, you remember uh, Chris Pratt. Everybody loved Chris Pratt at one point. And they're like, he's in everything now. It's too much. You're throwing Chris Pratt in too many things. I feel like that's becoming Travis Kelsey. People liked him, and now they're like, I see him too much. Um, I, I see him on commercials. Yeah. I see him on football. I don't need to see him on Amazon Prime. I don't need to see his face plastered up there every time I open Amazon Prime. There's a fine line. There's a fine line where you go from oversaturation to perfect. Did people get annoyed with Manning on every commercial and everywhere? Eli, I think they got a little annoyed. Peyton was always funny. He, he was in everything, right? Didn't people? Get, I, I assume people got annoyed. But if you went from people love to be miserable, like let the, the people love to be miserable. I have no problem with Travis Kelsey. I, I think the relationship. I think cute. Jason's much better than Travis. Jason's much better, but you know Jason is also that like less is more kind of thing. He he's not everywhere. But Travis imagine is just everywhere. But imagine if Peyton, in addition to all his commercials and being on the football field, had also at that time been dating Britney Spears and was also hosting uh, Wheel of Fortune. Wouldn't we kind of be like, all right, Peyton? I got enough Peyton Manning in my life. I don't, yeah, I don't need I can it see ever. that. Yep, I can see that. I mean, I, like, I mean, strike while the iron's hot. You got to. And he's just trying to set up his post uh, career. Michael Strahan did that right yeah. at the end. He, you know, tried to set up his post career. I remember I first saw Strahan. He was doing Vaseline commercials. <laughs> he was hawking Vaseline, uh, the 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 lotions. And then he then he parlayed that. I mean, everybody, hey, you got a cool smile, a little gap tooth, and let's send you on the day show. Puts the lotion. Or was on he the on uh, Regis and Kelly? He yeah. took over for Regis after Regis passed. Or he did, decided that well, he was gonna Yeah, he just stepped away. I don't think he, he stepped died away. At the time. I don't think he died at yeah, the time, but he just stepped he retired. So, so anyway. That's um that's a little bit of below the belt. Uh we've got a a Tyreek Pete at professional sports mm. uh with the ladies. And what is this Mavs ringer? We got a lot of encouraging stuff. The ringer is high on what the Dallas Mavericks can be, and Yahoo is high on what Dante Exum already is. That's next on the fan. Hey, miss anything on Sean and RJ?
our fan studios, secured by DFWSecurity.com, this is Sean and RJ on 105.3 The Fan. Good morning, DFW. It is Sean and RJ here on 105.3 The Fan. We're fist pumping. Peyton's fist pumping. Peyton going. Peyton's changed up his fist pumping. He used to go short stroke. And, and now he's going. going now he's going goes forward. Out. Yeah. Now he's going forward. There's like, a short baby. We talked about last week going out. We're pumping. Yeah, they're pumping out, man. Pumping out, baby. Uh, all right, it is uh, Sean and Arja here on the fan. Sean's out all week. He'll be back next week. Moving in takes him a week to move in. Uh, I was moved in in 24 hours. You, you, you know what uh, I don't I didn't have everything. Move in, but whatever. You know what I don't like about Peyton's, Peyton's fist pump though is it's uh, it's too mechanical. It's too tight. There's no like he doesn't feel it. I, I feel like he doesn't feel the fist pump like you. It's you saying it has no rhythm? It, no, it's just it's within your soul. Like it's like you're 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 feeling the fist pump. Him, I feel like it's just like this is the like yeah, like like pump on the beat. Like like he went to Wiki How. I was like, how do I do a fist pump? And then he just he's mechanically following the steps. It just feels a little tight. I want to see a little more like feel to it, Peyton. Got to put all. his mustard on the beat. Wow, that chair has changed you a lot. <laughs> yes. you're, you're a lot more judgy <laughs> in that chair. Uh, I'm I'm gonna raise it up even higher. Uh, before Roberto gets to the uh, Mavs Ringer article, I want to touch on the Tyreek Pete that is happening in the NBA. Uh, this is Jalen Green. Ah, familiar, yes. You familiar with his work? I am. Houston Rockets. Now, he has done uh, pretty well for himself for the last month. Uh, since March 8th, these are his point totals per game. 27, 19, 16, 37, 26, 42, 26. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Now, granted... They've been against Chicago, Washington, Cleveland, Washington, San Antonio, Sacramento, and Portland. So not exactly murderer's row. Yeah, but I mean, 11-game stretch, you're you're scoring 27 points a game after, you know, not averaging more than 20 in a month all year. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Now, why is he in the news? Well, because he's averaging 27 points a game. He's nah. playing really good on the basketball court. A model claims that she had his baby last month. Mm. All right. Okay, that's fine. Congratulations to him and the family. For welcoming a child into the world. Very, very Sean Sharif about to be. Very Zach Wolchuk. That happened fast, though. Right? Because, like, they, like, I thought he, it feels like just yesterday, like, the announcement was made that he was expecting a baby. Yeah, it was. And so, like, for, I didn't, jeez, time flies. With me. his girlfriend, who is uh, basketball wives legend, Drea Michelle. Former significant other of uh, Orlando, Orlando Skandrick, Skandrick, right? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, she announces, she's 39, that she's pregnant with 22-year-old Green's child. By the way, if a 39-year-old man was with a 22-year-old, they would say it's icky, it's creepy, it's creepy, <laughs> right? But with her, it's fine. It's okay, because with a guy, it's totally different. Well, it turns out uh, that there is a dancer, an overnight dancer, as uh, our guy Bonte would say. We don't call them strippers, we call them dancers. They're overnight dancers. Claims that she has the same due date as Drea. <laughs> so he had a baby. All the overnight dancers. Oh boy, he has been putting up numbers. Uh, a model, so a model claims she had a baby with Jalen Green's. She had Jalen Green's baby last month while a dancer claims she has the same due date as Drea. Which means he would have three kids in 12 months. If that is true. Now, as somebody who is divorced and does pay child support, I do know one thing. He gets buckets, baby. Yeah, well, he's he's in the final year of a four-year, $40 million deal. He's going to get paid. This guy's going to get paid. He's, he's, been, he's been playing very well. You want to talk about somebody who's got a little dog? That's This is this guy right now because he is putting up big points after he had this baby, this model. Like, I, got, baby. I, got, I got kids to he's feed. He's got to get man. paid. He's got kids to feed. And I do know one thing. My, my, my attorney, my, my good friend Robert, told me this. It's way better to have three kids with one girl than one girl, one kid with three girls. Oh, I would imagine. Because, you know, with one, it just goes up incrementally. So you pay 20% of your salary for the first, and then if you have the same, another kid with another girl, it's 25%, so forth. But with the first girl, it's 20%, and the second girl, well, they got to get theirs. They're not just going to bump you 5%. Mm. It goes up. Like you're paying almost 40% for the second one. Combined, when you find the two, it's, it's much higher. So this is no good, man. Uncle Sam, and this is all pre-tax. They don't. They don't take your. I mean, I'm sorry. It's post tax. You pay them post tax, but you're taxed on your salary. Uh, wait. You're so so your this salary. is twenty percent, and it's, and it, 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 it's 
figured pre-tax, but it's paid post-tax. That sucks. So, like, if you make, if you make, let's say, round number hundred thousand dollars a year, and you pay forty percent taxes, right? So you have sixty grand yeah. left over. You got to pay twenty thousand. <laughs> you got to pay. The, you got to pay twenty percent oh. of a hundred grand, and you don't get a tax write-off for it. You you're taxed on the full amount, not a tax deduction. Boy, look, I mean, he and must... the girl does not pay taxes because that's not income. Man, that's that's quite the setup right there. I, I think it's different for alimony. I'm not sure I'd ever paid it. You just uh, you mentioned there though, uh, Drea, who's a, th this has been one of the other little controversies there since she announced that she's pregnant. Not controversies, just people are like chuckling at it. Uh, her oldest son is the same age as Jalen Green. Weird. They're both 22. Weird. <laughs> I don't know about you. That's I'm weird, man. 22. I don't know how you do that. I don't know. I get it. I mean, she's she's attractive, but from her standpoint, like how I mean, 20. 22 years old. You're like zero in common. You would think so, man. Like that's your different points of life. But hey, I mean, she's she's clearly hung out with a lot of athletes. So when you when you get a lot of times I've heard athletes talk about this before is that when you see a girl kind of like make the rounds with the athletes, and you're like, well, why? Why does that guy keep going over there? Then a lot of them have said like, well, she knows what this lifestyle's like. Like I she's in, like, it's easier to be with somebody who understands your lifestyle and understands what it's all about to be with an NBA player or whatever. So then, you know, just always meeting new people who it's their first time ever being around this world or whatever else. And so I guess that part of it makes sense, but all right, this ringer article. Yeah. A couple different articles that we have, uh, one from the ringer, one from Yahoo sports. And before we get into that, this was a fun note that I saw this week, the Dallas Mavericks and the New York Knicks, RJ choppy. Mm-hmm are the only teams in the NBA who have yet to play an overtime game this season. Wow. Now you go, okay, well, I mean, that's that's interesting enough. Uh, how often does that happen, though? Over the last 20 years, there's only been one team that has failed to play an overtime game in an 82-game regular season. It's happened once in the last 20 years. And we might get two this year. And this comes after the Knicks played the most overtime games in the Eastern Conference last year. And the Mavericks were tied for playing the second most games, overtime games in the Western Conference last year. So just kind of a statistical oddity, but something fun to watch out for. So make sure that that the is Knicks, pretty cool. Make sure that the Knicks and uh, and the Mavericks don't end up with any playoff games and we'll see some history there. OK, so over at the ringer, they had a piece over there. Sort of sharing in our frustration. This is from Zach Cram. And it was sharing in the frustration that we've all felt watching the Dallas Mavericks at times this year. Which we all feel like when they're on, they're really, really tough to beat for anybody. Yeah, they are. Especially since they, they got this trade done to get, you know, Gafford here and P.J. Washington. I know P.J. Washington has not shot the way you wanted him to. But defensively, P.J. Washington's been really good for you. And yeah. Gafford is playing really well. Lively is playing really well, start, starting to come into his own. Uh, and, and they talk about in this article, Zach Cram's referencing about how this addition of Gafford and the, you know, the, the way that Derek Lively has come on, it means that the Mavericks can fill all 48 minutes with a high motor, bouncy big man on the court. Yeah. Both Gafford, who has now made, and this was at the time when he was on a streak, had made X amount of shots in a row, and rookie Derek Lively are happy to fill their offensive possessions with picks, dunks, and little else. Jason Kidd said, I've never seen it before where you have two centers dominate like that. Gafford and Lively give Dallas an athleticism advantage over most opponents, which manifests not only in half-court pick and rolls, but in transition as well. Derek Lively says, I like to turn the game into a track meet because I can't outmuscle anybody. Y'all know that. So I can definitely get around people. I can outrun them. And I've got to be able to use my stamina and energy to try to get up and down as many times as I can. He does not mention anything about using his leadership to rebound, though. Uh, but it talks about here, it says, look, Dallas ranked sixth in the NBA in fast break points. I was after ranking 29th and 28th in the past two seasons. The roster stylistically has strong balance, stronger balance than in previous seasons with Luke at the helm. Derek Lively said, Luca plays slow, but everyone else plays fast. They've still got the bread and butter of what they do, uh, you know, on the, the, the pick and roll half court offense. And he says, look, when, when they're on offensively, they're really tough to beat. The problem here is Dallas is just maddening inconsistency. Uh, on the defensive side of the floor and everything that they've struggled with in terms of, like you'll go through stretches where you're like, why is the offense not clicking? As good as it is, there are times where they go through these unexplained lulls. But isn't that the I think I think what we're seeing, and we're seeing a lot of this in the NCAA tournament, 
I think it's the nature of the sport now. It's it, there, there's you don't just like it generally used to just like dump it down low, get your easy sure. baskets. You don't do that anymore. And there's going to be times where you're going to have six, seven, eight, ten possessions in a row where you come up relatively empty. A lot of them because you're you're taking threes. Yeah, and I mean the the biggest inconsistency they show here is the defensive side of the court because they say look offensively still they're they're really really strong. But it says that the Mavericks rank 21st in defensive rating over the full season. The only team with a winning record behind them is the Pacers. And they putrid 28th since the All-Star break. This was before the, the last like three or four games here. Uh, but it says it's not a new problem. Mavericks have had a top 15 defense just once in six seasons with Doncic on the roster. And not because of incidentally, that was the year they reached the conference finals. It says Doncic isn't a, a disastrous defender as some other lead guards because his size inoculates him against the very worst outcomes. But his engagement comes and goes. And Kyrie Irving is a below average defender as well. Gafford and Lively could both block shots, but neither is the sort of anchor or deterrent at the rim who can compensate for lousy perimeter play. So he says the biggest thing here is that, you know, the Mavericks have shown such incredible play on offense that if they just get a, a baseline average defensive performance, if they can consistently do that, it's going to be really difficult for anybody in the West to beat them. The problem is that you just you don't know if you're going to be able to get that consistency, they're, they're at a, all. Uh, I mean, they're, look, they're good. You know, said a couple of weeks ago that they were a uh, you know West Finals type team. Yeah, they're they're, they're they've got they've got um, stars. Well, and maybe the, the biggest, end of the day, you're the best player on the floor. You have a chance to win. And maybe the biggest key to all this is Dante Exum. Really? So Jake Fisher over at Yahoo had really Fisher with a C. Yes, had, had really isolated. He had written this really good piece for Yahoo at the end of last week, looking at Dante Exum as a really key cog in terms of what Dallas is trying to do right now. And obviously we know Dante Exum, former top pick in the draft, kind of flamed out, dealt with injuries, had to go over play basketball in Australia, and has come back and has, has been a really good role player for the Mavericks. Uh, Jason Kidd, when he was asked about it for, for this piece, he compared him to Sean Livingston. Where he said, you know, he dealt with the injuries early, big time pick. Everybody had kind of written him off, but he's come around. Kid says he's one of the smartest basketball players that he's ever been around. And for Dante Exum, he says the biggest difference for him now compared to previously is his mental toughness. He said that when he used to miss shots or or have issues during games, it was really tough for him to get past that single play. That whenever he'd have a mistake or he'd have a missed shot, it would carry weigh over. On. It would carry over. Yeah, that's and weird in basketball. You would think because the game is so fast. Well, and, and there's, a, there's another possession immediately after. It's not like in, you know, say uh, baseball. If you're a closer, and you blow a save. You got to wait a whole day, two, three. You don't know, like, or a kicker, mm -hmm. right? You miss a kick. In basketball, you think you miss a shot, you have a bad play. It's like, all right, you got to get over, it, man. We got another play right now. Well, and exactly why? If you think about if that is something that's weighing on you, you can imagine how much of a problem that would be because you do have to get back down there. And so if you're lagging and then he and said it, it would start to snowball side of the ball. Okay, and he said you. it just it became overwhelming so he said the biggest thing he's learned is the ability to kind of just put that aside and, and and put that down now what's interesting is jake fisher points to he says the lineup data with dante exum is small but it's substantial so during games where exum has been available irving and Doncic sport a minus 2.9 net rating in 511 minutes without dante exum on the floor when they are on the floor together Dante Exum, Kyrie Irving, Luka Doncic, their net rating, which is basically offensive rating or defensive rating minus uh, yeah, or, or the offensive rating minus the defensive yeah. rating, their net rating is eleven point nine. So which Dante is, Exum is the key to the Mavericks winning the NBA championship. Dante Exum doing what he does. Dante Exum doing what he does and contributing the way he does defensively because they say it's a small sample size, but the offensive rating is one twenty four point eight and the defensive rating is one twelve point nine. And that right there, that would be the highest net rating in all of basketball right now. The, the Celtics have an 11.8. And so if you were to extrapolate that over to a full-time season or, or a full season, obviously we're taking a small sample size and extrapolating it, but that would be the best team in the NBA. And so Doncic, Kyrie, you've got, you know, Dante Exum on the floor and what you're getting out of these centers, it's all starting to kind of gel together the way that you want. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, I like. I mean, when he is on the floor, they do seem to play well. So that net rating really explains it. With uh, with Exum, goodbye with Kyrie and Luca. It is Sean and RJ here on 105 through the fan without Sean all week, but we can explain Sean Sharif's success. We will do that coming up next.
here on 105.3 The Fan. Alone, we'll get you set for the...
Zero weight loss. That's soda. By Cars for Kids. Donate today at carsforkids.org and brought to you by the personal injury lawyers, Frankel and Frankel. If you have been injured in a car or truck wreck, call Frankel first, 214 817 333 With Frankel and Frankel, there is never an out of pocket cost. They only get paid when you win. Frankel and Frankel, the go to car and truck wreck attorneys in Dallas. In the way by Duchesne, looks to flip it to the front. Now Haskin it leans into a shot and he scores. Miro Haskin. What a shot and a massive goal to make a 3 2 Dallas. Oh, Coyotes uh, TV with the call. They were not happy. Stars with a 4 2 victory. Uh, road killed. Ran over him. And then you know what we did? Ran over him again. Threw it in reverse. Yes, Backed sir. over him again. Yes, sir. 4 2. Miro with a goal. Tyler with a goal. Uh, they're off tonight. They're in San Jose tomorrow. Uh, now they've won four straight. They've scored at least four goals in all four, and they've allowed less than two or two or less in all four. So that uh, that, that generally is going to get you a win. It's all coming together. Stars are playing well. Rangers Tied are coming up. Mavericks Tied atop the division. Mavericks are playing well. Go stars, baby. Cowboys are dominating the offseason. Dominating the offseason. It's coming together, dude. Dominating. Uh, Mavericks uh, in Utah tonight. They've been off the last couple of nights. Playing the Utes. They've been they're dropped to eighth in the West without even playing. I mean, you lose ground on your day off. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. Uh, NCAA tournament. Get you caught up on this uh, real quick. Uh, as the Sweet 16 has been set. Last night, you had a great one, a great finish as Houston polishes off Texas A&M 100 to 95 in overtime. I got to tell you, that's a great job scoring 86 points against that Houston defense Dude. regulation if you're A&M. Especially when you got nothing in the first half from Wade Taylor. And, I mean, he... He was, I mean, that guy is a chucker, dude. What the <laughs> hell were those two shots he had near the end of regulation? Not exact. Can't be what Buzz Williams wanted at all. Houston wins. Um, and they move on to the Sweet 16 uh, where they will face Duke. Duke. At the American Airlines You think Center. Hagee's going? Um, I thought he was a A&M fan. He's a oh, he's, that's football. He's a, that's football. No, he's a Duke a. basketball. No, he's a Duke. He's a Duke basketball. He's a Duke. I don't. I, I'm trying to look here. I believe, yes, RJ Choppy. That was the first time all year anybody had scored 86 on Houston. Wow. Period. In regulation. Period. Period. Nobody and had scored 86. And the Aggies did it in regulation. They want to get 95 overall, but you know. That's a moral victory. UConn rolls what Northwestern. I think they slept well through the second half, 75-58. Uh, Marquette, a four-point win over Colorado. They advance. They'll be here. Uh, Marquette is going to take on NC State. That's going to be at the American Airlines Center. Uh, those games will be on Friday. Duke, 93-55. It's a dang near 40-point win over James Madison. Bama beats Grand Canyon, 72-61. Thank God. I, I, I've about had it. This game got testy for a little bit. With, with those cavernous fools. It got testy. Cavernous? Yeah. Because of the canyon? Yeah. Yeah, I see. Yeah, the San Diego losers. State rolls up on Yale. What is the Grand Canyon without the Colorado River anyway? Like, like you only exist because the Colorado River just beats you down over the course of years. It's, it's called erosion. A or millions of years erosion. Yeah. yeah. Who, who names their team after erosion? Who names a school after erosion? You bunch of losers. <laughs> Uh, Saturday night, Tennessee 62-58 over Texas. Uh, in a game that turned out to be much better than uh, it was at, at you know midway through the second half when Tennessee was up in double digits. Carolina 85-69 over Michigan State. Michigan State blew it in the first half. They had a lead. They had a big lead, a double digit lead in the first half. They wound up blowing this one. Arizona survives Dayton 78-68. Iowa State they beat Washington State with a big second half. This game was tied at halftime. They wound up winning by 11. Illinois destroyed Duquesne by 26. Creighton needs double OT to beat Oregon. Gonzaga all over Kansas, and NC State ends the Oakland fun. So you've got one double-digit seed in the Sweet 16. That is NC State. Uh, you got Clemson who's a six. You got Gonzaga who's a five. And unless I'm missing, everybody else is a top four seed. Best advice you gave us before the tournament. That you didn't even take. You uh, you did. You're just your your top three seed because the the two big ones you've lost. Baylor yeah, the and two Kentucky, three seeds that lost. I put the final four. You, you had yeah you had. Yeah. Guys, Other than that, I did pretty well. You I, had teams who were who were top yeah. three, but that was the the best of it. Now I did go I, I did go outside the top three. 
with one team in my elite eight and that was gonzaga, gonzaga and that yeah, has yeah, that yeah. is that has brought me favor so far otherwise i went one two or three seeds for yeah, my elite eight i really need i needed houston to lose last night i really need duke to beat houston I don't think anybody has Duke in their uh, no, Elite Eight. No, we have, nobody has. And I, so that would level the playing field for you significantly. Yes, because Peyton's already lost one Final Four team, right? With yep. Baylor. Yes. Baylor. And then that would give you another one. And on the other side, because you have Houston in, you have Houston winning it all. So that would eliminate you from a you, lot. I have you, Creighton in there as well as a Final Four. So you Tennessee really, yeah. I need bit, Tennessee to beat Creighton. A big boost for you if Tennessee beats Creighton. Houston loses to Duke. Then I win. I, I then Peyton's out, absolutely out. And then if you can get the uh, the Clemson upset run to continue and have them beat Arizona, that would help you. Because uh, well, I don't even know if I need that. Happen. No, no, you do because that that would help you close the. If you want to talk about winning, that would help you close the gap. Oh, I don't Sean, care about winning. Sean and I both have Arizona in the final four. I don't care about winning. I care about not losing. There is a massive difference. Especially for what we're talking about here, our purposes. Yeah, I just care about not losing. We don't even know what the bet payoff is. Uh, we'll come to that ag uh, agreement at some later date. Uh, so I don't care about that, but I just care about not losing. And right now, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, Peyton's okay, too, because he's got more points. But he doesn't have... If he loses Duke, if he loses Houston, he could be in trouble. Yes, Houston would put him in trouble. Just like Travis Tritt, T-R-O-U-B-L-E. <laughs> Hello, Leo D and Eval D. That's right. Speaking of, I will have a Rangers song for you this week. Woo! Um, can you give us a genre? Can you tell you us know, what the genre the Rangers, is? Or do you not the want to Rangers have been doing very well when I have gone the country route. Yes. 90s country. I am going back to my roots. Oh, baby. And I am going to do... You're going to do Reba McIntyre. She thinks his name was John. No. Oh, okay. I'm going to do country again. 90s country. Let's go. I I've can't got wait. half the song written already. I don't know if I want to change the song or not. I like it. I don't love it, but I like it. Is that a hint? I like it. I oh, love it. I no. want some more of it. No, <laughs> but you know what? It's a good idea. I could have used that. I could have used that one. But the Rangers uh, did have some updates on some of their players that have been injured through most of the spring. Yeah, look, we had heard from Chris Young. He said he was optimistic, uh, cautiously optimistic, was also the term that Bruce Bochy had used about Josh Young and Corey Seager being available for opening day. They did finally get into some spring training action. Both of them played in the field over the weekend. Uh, Corey Seager, two for two at the plate, couple singles. Josh Young, one for two with a single. Um, but both of them got to play in the field. Both of them said they felt good after the game. Uh, obviously, like Seager said, hey, I, I'm probably going to need tomorrow to really know how I felt coming out of this but right now no pain no nothing feeling pretty good so that is optimistic news for putting them on track to be ready to go for opening day Thursday or opening night I should say since we're not getting the day game we're getting the night game instead of a, a 105 pitch uh, but Seager and Young should both be ready and and if they are ready that means they will join Wyatt Langford on the opening day roster because Wyatt Langford made the team on Friday. It was announced and it's funny. It's become so, you know, they always love teams love to do the social media videos where mm -hmm. it's like, ah, here's the secret camera of them being told that they made it and everything else. And it's like a, a, a fun moment. They put out the one of Wyatt Langford and it was cool. It, it was good. Bochy told me, he's like, Hey, I love this. This is one of my favorite things I get to do is tell people, but it's like, it's like you made the opening day roster. Langford's like, yes. Like, I mean, it was just kind of like, yeah, cool. Yeah. But I mean, we knew this. I was going to make it. We knew, yeah, we, knew. We, we, we've known over the last like week I was going to make it. But thank you. I appreciate it. And so it's just funny. They were all like, yeah, you, you're you're here because you're a super stud. and Because you're going to win the MVP. You know what? Listen, He's... if you're not betting for Wyatt Lankford to win the MVP this year, first of all, you should bet him to win the AL Rookie of the Year. But I think, uh, let me look this up real quick, of the year odds. I think you're going to be, you're going to have to, it's not going to be good odds for you to win the Rookie of the Year. I wouldn't guess so, but uh, you know what? He is apparently not the favorite even. He's behind Jackson Holiday and Evan Carter. Okay, that's interesting that you said that because I think that was that's old. I think he is now the favorite. This is I I, I think he is now because, well, at least according to um, uh, Jody Mack yesterday when I was on his radio show, Jody Mack. why it is the favorite, but I guess, um, yeah, yeah, DraftKings, he's plus 225. Jackson Holiday is plus 450. Because Jackson Holiday, he's getting sent down. You see this crap? 
Is he? Yeah. Is that garbage? They're not even starting him the, at the big league level. Mm. Chris it's, Young would it's never. Disgusting. Chris Young would never. It's disgraceful. It's disgraceful. They're just doing it to save service time. That's why that organization sucks. Yeah, in Baltimore. But, but, and, I, and I'm glad that they're down. And, they're, and I'm glad they got swept out of the first round. They didn't deserve to win 100 games. They no. don't deserve this. They got Jackson Holiday, and they're going to start him in minor leagues because they don't want to pay his service time. God, I hope they sign. I hope, I hope they give him a massive fine and they take five first round draft picks away from them. <laughs> that you want, you got to penalize these. Who, who should that. hey? Who should be penalized more? Uh, the Orioles for doing that, or Shohei Otani if he was the one who did all that gambling? Oh, Shohei! I mean, you got if he did all the gambling, you got to yeah. penalize. I mean, him. I don't know. The Orioles is pretty egregious. Yeah, is. Uh, that's a pretty bad spot to be in. Uh, do this. Why is uh, Sean Shreve been so successful? We could we could pin this down to uh, <laughs> so, playgrounds. Uh, yeah, this was uh, an interesting study. the The Telegraph had this, or the Guardian had this this week. Uh, that after a five decade, at least in the UK, a five decade UK study found that aggression at school leads to better paying jobs while those with emotional instability went on to earn less. So this is research that says nice guys finish last. It said children who displayed aggressive behavior at school, such as bullying or temper outbursts are likely to earn more money in middle age, according to a five decade study that upends the maxim that bullies do not prosper. They're also more likely to have higher job satisfaction and be in more desirable jobs, say researchers from the Institute for Social and Economic Research at the University of Essex. The paper published today used data from almost 7,000 people born in 1970 whose lives have been tracked by the British cohort study. So it finds that uh, it said they said we found that the children whose teachers felt they had problems with attention, peer relationships and emotional instability did end up earning less in the future as we ex expected. But we were surprised to find a strong link between aggressive behavior at school and high earnings later in life. But here was something that I had talked about over the weekend with somebody. It wasn't even related to this article. Don't you find that like people who get to the top are usually the ones who are willing to like, you know, just basically stab backs and, and climb over top of people all the way to, up there? Like, isn't that the, the idea of it? A lot of times that somebody's like, I, I've got the, like, cutthroat, you know, nature within me to do this, and I'm going to go straight to the top that way. Like, I don't feel like it's always, like, the, the, the sweetest people who I get to the highest levels of, of jobs. I generally think the most insecure people make it to the top because they have to prove to themselves that they're worth it. So if it because like they want to be at the top more to prove their self worth. So if Sean Sharif were not out there just like on on the Stop mean streets of the microphone on the mean streets of of Cambridge Maryland, just going like, hey, give, give me a bag or, or whatever he yeah. would do, uh, then then he wouldn't have been he wouldn't have been here. So he was a playground bully. That you're saying he had to have been. Look, I mean, he he I I wasn't a bully. I don't I don't think you were a bully. Were you a bully? A little bit. Uh, Did no. you say a little bit in middle school? I mean, look, if, if you looked at it from today's parlance, I was probably the worst kid in the world. That's true, you know. But like, I didn't. We didn't. We didn't consider making fun of people with words as bullying. We didn't. We didn't consider that. No, you just you bullying just... was like when when you're in the hallway and someone's scared to walk down that hall because you might, you know, sh throw them into the locker. Right, right, right. That to me is bullying. You know, making some fun of somebody because the hat they're wearing is not bullying. Or, right, or like you know. At least making it sure that then. now the, it is making sure the janitor didn't have lunch because you stole his lunch yeah, out of the I was, closet. I was a jackass. Man, okay, I stole the, the I stole the janitor's lunch. That's brutal. Poor man. guy was a diabetic. Didn't even know. Oh he, my god! He even said, he even said uh, somebody had a good diabetic lunch. I'm like, I didn't know what that meant. I was like in sixth grade, seventh grade. Oh. I had no idea what the hell that meant. Turns out the guy probably could have gone into shock for crying out loud oh. in an insulin deficiency. But here I am. Chuck. I enjoyed his corn. <laughs> oh, so, choppy. I don't know. But you grew past it. You wouldn't eat his lunch today. No, I feel, I feel like a total jerk. I, and, I, I and, still and, do, I feel it, really, really bad about and it. And if you found out Luca did that, you, you'd probably thump I would be, him in the head. I, I mean, look, look dude, you got you to learn things. You can't do that. And if the janitor's out there listening, which I doubt he is. Um, no, he went into diabetic shock. Well, I did. I'm very, very sorry. And <laughs> I, I have been regretting this for, we are close to 30 years now that I have been thinking about this. So if you're still alive, and I hope you are, because you were an older gentleman. Um, I'm sorry. Disgusting. And if you're not, and it's your children, <laughs> tell your dad, I'm sorry. All right. Can't see masterpiece coming up <laughs> next year on the fan. Let's get you up to play golf, boys and girls. You know, I know it's a little bit overcast this morning, a little bit chilly over the weekend at times with the with the wind. 
but you know it's coming. You know that blast furnace is coming. You know it's going to be 110 degrees in the dead of summer here. Well, why don't you head on up to Gaylord, Michigan, my favorite golf getaway, my favorite summer getaway. You know, I like to get in the springtime, maybe get down to Mexico to go to the beach, but in the summertime, I like to get the cool temperatures, and northern Michigan's got that. Average summer highs in July and August is in the low 70s. You know what it is here. It's brutally hot. Head on up to Gaylord, Michigan. It's the best golf you're going to play. Fantastic championship golf courses, picturesque scenery. These courses are in pristine condition. You take massive divots. That's how soft the ground is, and you're playing on you're playing on grass you've never seen before. It's so green. It's so pretty. The the natural elevation changes. You're, I didn't realize Michigan had these kind of like mountainous terrains, uh, but they do. It's tremendous. GaylordGolfMecca.com for all your stay and play packages. It's about a two hour flight from Dallas Fort Worth to Traverse City. Hour drive uh, over, and you are on the best tee boxes that you're going to play. GaylordGolfMecca.com. Great outdoor stuff too. If you're not into golf, it's a summer paradise. Fishing, hiking, all the things. Boating. Uh, it is Gaylord Golf Mecca. Dot com Get lost in the game in Gaylord, Michigan. Coming up today on the KNC Masterpiece, it's opening day week.
segment here brought to you by Classic Chevrolet. Classic Chevrolet in Grapevine is the number one Chevy dealer in the world. More Silverados than anyone else. Go see them today or visit ClassicChevrolet.com. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's ride, relax, enjoy the difference based on new Chevrolet registrations 2023. Welcome back, boys and girls, from your Friday getaway. It is uh, the KNC Masterpiece joining us here mm. on Crosstalk on 105. The fan Sean's out all week. So you're stuck oh. with Bobby and I. Yeah. Are you guys excited about that? Yeah, I'm more excited for the uh, paternity leave that he's going to have coming up. Yeah. Nah, that's a joke. I'm not really excited about that. What does the baby much, this do? Is too much work for me. I don't know. <laughs> well, you just said you were excited for the paternity leave. I thought. Why would he be? Why would he know, though? I don't know. Because. The, the paternity the, leave is said. whenever the baby gets here. I don't even think Sean knows what the babies do. Yeah. Oh, I hope he knows what it's due, but he doesn't know when the paternity leave is going to happen. Remember, right? you didn't know when your baby was due. Oh, man. No we kidding. were all in California, and you were like, can't go. I'm That's what the kid. doctor said. Nobody knows when it's going to happen. Well, yeah, Sean with all those like, endorsements. How many nannies does he have to take care of this situation? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's a good question. Was that, was that the, the ba- question. Was that the baby that the fan text told me was uh, like, like a... Chat GPT baby, they're yeah, like it's, AI, it's, it's, it's an AI baby. Yeah, it's like the he's live like a real baby. <laughs> <laughs> what do we have coming up on the show, uh, Corey Major? Uh, guys, it's opening day week, so we yeah, get our newest segment. Base. It's hard to say. Basics baseball basics right out of the gate. <laughs> Plus at ten twenty, we dive into some stars with puck around and find out. Oh, oh man, these are good. It's very difficult Did to say. Y'all go as to well. the uh, lab for these? And then Wanker of the Weekend at 11. Oh, uh, hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. Yeah. Yes. Kevin, you like alliteration and puns. <laughs> yes, this is your day. Yes, and then, uh, sir. And then at 1 o'clock, Mike likes to call it Corey's Corner Block thing. Okay. The time we're yeah. talking about Wayne Brady. Well, actually, we're going to talk. We're, mm. Huh? We're talking about Wayne Brady? That's fun a conversation that we had. Is whose line is it anyway back? He, oh. I love that show. It's a great show. I only ever saw it. It just led me to a question that I needed more information about that I don't what's know. What's the question? Let's hear it. Um, what's the difference between bisexual and pansexual? Mm. Because there's an article. Yeah, that's up- definitely a 10 to 2 definitely. question. Yeah. Certainly not on our book. Yeah. There's an article up on Yahoo Jordan that Peterson said has a good answer that Wayne way. Brady oh, said he feels a lot better since he came out as pansexual. <laughs> and I was like, Going Ooh. down the Dr. Phil route here. Okay. So Wayne Brady. How are y'all's brackets? How are y'all's brackets doing? Busted. <laughs> Pretty good. Is it? Yeah. Really? I got... Did you have Duke in the Sweet 16? I did. Do you have in the Elite Eight? No. No. Are you going to go? Yeah, I'm working on that. I hope so. Yeah. Uh, I've got 12. If you asked me. Are you going to go? No, but I got a guy. Ooh. Do you remember Chop got us into the suite during oh, the dude, Final Four? That was the greatest. You know what, Choppy? That's a good point. That was an amazing You night. were responsible for the best phone call I think I've ever gotten in my life. Whoa. Is well, I was there when we knew the baby was coming. <laughs> Both of them is Corey called and he goes, Hey, you want to come and hang out in a suite with Nancy Lieberman and Rolando Blackman? Well, and it just felt like this weird hodgepodge of things that he put together. I was like, Yeah, I do. And we got to hang out in the suite. Yeah, thanks. You're RJ. welcome. You're welcome. You know what? I'm going to talk to you after the I show. Go. Choppy I'll did, like Choppy did disappear in, a, in the midst of all that, though. That's Remember fine. He left us. He has stuff to do. H- hooked up with Columbo, and then we oh. lost Choppy for the rest of the night. Oh, yeah, with the Romo suite. <laughs> oh, <laughs> did yeah. you? Yeah, well, because Columbo was there, so it was Witten. I went to Romo suite, just, and then. Do you just socially try to trade up <laughs> along the day? <laughs> the, the paper clip to yeah, yeah. game? Because <laughs> I ended up that, that night, I ended up in the owner's club that night. <laughs> See? <laughs> so, like, yeah, it was the first time I was in there. So, Witten, like, we're walking down, and, and it was Columbo, and then I'm just, like, tagging along, and Witten's there. And we get to the owners' club, and they've got the, the guards out front. Like you can't get in. And then Jason comes up, and he's like, "Yeah, these guys are with me." And that was just free drinks, like the rest of the night. It was free awesome. food. It was great. I didn't even know you knew Peter Falk. That's cool. That's that's a different Columbo. Columbo. That's a good. Different one. Columbo like that. with the cigar. Oh like yeah, that's the that's, yeah. That's good. the uh, Princess Bride. They Columbo. spell it differently though. Yes. Columbo's with a U, and Columbo's with an O. I'm He's t- the guy so who just, read the book. There you can see. see yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, that, that, uh, yeah, no. yeah, that old Ben Savage was like, yeah. "This is stupid. I don't want to read yeah. this." And was everything that else. Ben Savage or Fred Savage? I don't remember. I think which one. It was Fred. It was, it was one of them. Yeah, I think so. It, yeah. it was one of them. Uh, I I let my Duke the hatred King died that very night. <laughs> I let my Duke hatred get in the way of my bracket. Jared McCain, maybe. <sighs> I, I screwed up. And well, I mean, I have them losing in this next round. No, I know, but I picked like I picked Vermont. And then okay. I picked I picked JMU to beat uh, Wisconsin, which was Me great. Too. 
But the problem is then in my bracket, I was looking at JMU or Vermont. I was like, well, JMU, clearly. So I ended up screwing myself twice. Yeah. Where if it would have been Duke JMU, I probably would have just picked Duke or whatever else because I would have gone, ah, they, they took care of what they were supposed to. This bracket is super chalky so far. It is. It is. Only the fifth time all the one and two seeds are there. Which is wild. And did you... I know, obviously, you guys have to get up ridiculously early. Did you get to watch the end of Houston A&M yeah. in real yeah. time? Yes. I stayed up. Jeez, yeah. man. I was really nervous. I did not wake up Noah or my wife because I was watching in the living room. Yeah. But when he hit the three-pointer to set it to overtime, I was like, oh! I know. I just couldn't believe it. And then I looked... Hey, nobody woke up. I, I Isn't believe. that your biggest nightmare of your life? Is that you're going to root against a And M in a basketball game to make it to the final I four? I think it somewhat? would be fun. But Houston's a damn. See, fine most people don't have to worry about that because they don't have two teams. Damn fine. That's okay. Worry about that, Mikey. Yeah. You I'm, excited for this week? Is it your week? Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, going to the Red Sox game tonight to, wow. to do Bally Sports Southwest nice. for the game tonight. So if you want to watch some Rangers baseball. I don't know if it'll be live here or not. I have no clue. It's an exhibition game against the Red Sox, yeah. uh, but it will like be it on is. television. I assume it's also on radio here. I believe that. What's is your uh, what, what is your comfort level at this point that Young and Seager are going to be out there opening day? Hundred percent. I mean, oh, Seager, yeah. Seager's hitting bombs, barely past the second baseman right now. Hey, anyway, it so was a hit. It was there. One was a good, nice, good hit. Hey, the other one they was were both hits. Point. What is what is your expectation that Wyatt Langford's the MVP this year? Five percent. I think I think he's going to finish somewhere between fifth and tenth in MVP voting. Okay, so we we were we were talking about this earlier today. <laughs> Choppy was saying if if Wyatt Langford's OPS is not. What nine sixty two or something? Nine sixty two and a half. He that said he said Trout's, it at Mike Trout's I, OPS I, rookie. He Mike, said it, he Mike said Trout's if, OPS and OPS plus for his rookie. He year. said if it's below Mike Trout on the OPS, he's gonna consider that a failure of. So a if he season. his OPS is nine forty. You're gonna be like, bomb. I mean, all, all, I think I said all like hat no cattle. I, I think I said like ridiculous eight sixty. <laughs> I'm gonna try and be reasonable. I think he'll go past it. But if it's eight sixty at the end of the year, I'm gonna feel good now, about. Now I'm only doing this because I want people to stop with overhyping these poor kids that they never reach the level of the expectation. Like with Wemby, he can never be. He's he, Wode said he's the greatest Man. prospect of all time. He's trying his he's hardest trying, though. He's trying. He's trying. But he would have to be like next level. And for like to, to for this for, to give Wyatt Langford, poor kid, give him a minute. And they're yeah. already comparing to Mike Trout. Like, guys, what are we doing here? Like, let the I kid will play. say this. I every, know he looks like him. Every He's got quads, quads for days. Every major leaguer, former major leaguer that watches them goes, oh, crap. Yeah. It looks He's that good, man. It, it looks just like him. I'll just give you this. How about this? I go to Julio Rodriguez. He won Rookie of the Year in 2022 at 21 years old. His OPS was 853 and a half. There you go. So I, I feel like that's a solid that. over under. His batting average two eighty four. Uh, our, our home runs twenty eight. Runs eighty four. RBI seventy five. It's weird uh, that if he goes twenty eight and seventy five with the two eighty five batting average and an eight fifty OPS, people might be like, eh, and that was eh. that was seventh in MVP Hard, voting. Dude. Julio wow. Rodriguez. Okay, I'll take that. His his rookie year, he finished seventh in MVP. Won a silver slugger, was an all star. So, I mean, Julio Rodriguez is one of the favorites to win the MVP mm -hmm. this year at 23 years old. So, I just look at it. And now, last year, it's weird. Last year, Julio Rodriguez regressed. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, you just look at it. Stolen bases, he had 25. That's going to be so interesting to me the first month of the season is the Rangers are so much faster now oh, yeah. in their starting lineup. I'm wondering, Bochu is like, we're not running. And then he kind of, in August, we asked him about that question. And he kind of said, I don't really have a team that's built for running. Right. Uh, this year you do. And I don't know. I don't know if that means you steal more bases or you go, our lineup is so awesome. I don't want to give them the opportunity for a free out. My, which uh, which do you think is quicker for the league to catch on to when you have like a a like you know prodigy hitter? Like how quick is it for pitchers to get a beat on them versus you've got some prodigy pitcher coming out before teams start figuring out how to hit a guy? I'll say a hitter because you're going to get 600 at bats in a season, and a pitcher like I've talked about this. It's the least thing you can practice. I guess a sprinter, right? You can you can't practice sprinting yeah. a lot either. You can't. 
I don't think so. I don't think. I don't think you, you don't go. Though, hey, right? Usain Bolt. I want you to run the hundred five hundred times today. I can get five hundred swings today. I can oh, only yeah, throw can like forty handful, to sixty yeah. pitches only every other day yeah, at most right. while okay. I'm just practicing. So you can't really practice pitching a lot. And then when you look at mm-hmm. innings pitched today, you're averaging five innings every fifth day. So you're still going to have a tough read on a pitcher after year one. Not a you'll you'll have a better idea on what they do. Don't get me wrong. There's so much scouting going on that you have a good idea what they like going to behind in the count ahead in the count yeah. versus righties versus lefties but I do think when you get 600 plate appearances you're going to figure out the hitter strengths and weaknesses quicker KNC Masterpiece is next enjoy these chairs gentlemen you'll love yeah. them. these are nice chairs very nice chairs I love chairs. this chair already very very nice chairs I'm not going to take it home good but I might lay down on the couch with it you know what I mean? There you go. What? Do it up. I know what you mean. KNC Masterpiece, next to the fan. Be a part of the show.
Entertainment Studio, secured by DFWSecurity.com. It's the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan. KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. You got me, Kevin Hagelin, Corey Majors, Mike Massick, and Alec Medford rocking with you guys as we're just a few days away, three to be specific, from opening day. But I want to ask real quick, Mike, did you almost not get to us today? Yes. How could that be? Well, my son had a baseball game in Duncanville, and then that was Saturday. Then from there, we drove straight to Austin to see our daughter and then got back late last night. And Saturday morning, my wife moved our cars. We just have like, you know, we're in Oak Cliff. We're not in Plano. We don't have multiple like driveways and stuff like that. How big is your house? How many square feet? (sighs) Like fifteen hundred square feet. No, yeah. it's in, not. In Plano, we just send all our we send all our sewage down to the other cities. You know, okay. that's the way we yeah, that's the way it that's drains rude. into Oak Cliff. That is and they say we'll get to it when we get to it. <laughs> we got to get to Highland Park first. Um, so she moved the car and then put her put the keys to the other car, my car, in her purse. Oh, and so then when she left this morning for work around seven fifty or so. I noticed at around 8.30, oh, no, she has my keys. And so she's doctoring all the sick kids. Sure. Really, she's actually doctoring the well kids. From 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. are well checks. No, no one might come say hello soon. So anyways, uh, I call her. I text her. Everything. I, and she's just like, I'm doctoring. I don't pay attention to you anymore. And Do you think she was purposefully? 100% because she has her oh, no. Apple Watch on, and I have an Apple Watch, so you get text messages on your watch. Mm-hmm. So she sees first, hey, do you have my keys, question mark? No response. SOS, sorry to bug you, but I think you have my keys. So finally, I had to call and schedule an appointment for myself. <laughs> you called the office? Yeah, at Oak Cliff Pediatrics. <laughs> and a nurse, uh, you great. know, the receptionist finally answered. I said, yes, this is Mike Bassick. I'm Sue Bassick's husband. I believe she has my keys to my car. Uh, is there any way you can just let her know that? And then I just have to hope that she drives home. Luckily, it's just a five-minute drive home. It's not a, a, a long drive. But then... Finally, once the receptionist went in and told her, hey, sorry, sick kid, I just need to send this message. Hey, I think you have your husband's keys. And then she was like, all right, well, I'll get to it when I get to it. No, she got to it there pretty soon. After she probably did the well check, then she drove back home. And so I got here. Oh, So that was my morning. We are glad. Man, Duncanville has an awesome baseball field. (laughs) Because it. Are you being serious? No, because it's oh, it's it's in the late nineties. USA Today voted it the best high school baseball field in the United States of America. It hasn't changed since then. No, it's gotten way better actually. Oh, okay, all right. I would argue that it is one of if if there's a nicer high school baseball field in the United States of America or the state of Texas, I'd like to see it. Jesuit is awesome. It's still not as good as Duncanville. What do you think about Highland Park's baseball field? Not not With, like, very the good. Brick walls and everything. I was yeah, but the like, stands suck. Okay, okay, gotcha. That, in fact, Highland Park, there. you have a zillion million dollars. Build better stands for your baseball program. <laughs> All right, a few things happening this morning from the eight one seven. Are you guys going to be live at opening day? So since the game is at six thirty, we are not going to be live from the stadium because there would be no one around to party with us. However, do you hate that? A little bit. And that the, it's late or that we can't be there? That that it's A, that it's late. That doesn't bother me. It just bothers me that we can't lead into it. I understand why we're not going to be there. Just because it's like, hey, they're fighting yeah, the I get, I get that machine. too, but Mike, it being a late game like this irritates me because... You don't mess with tra- with with tradition, all right? And we always have yeah, but the tradition was games. always not winning the World Series. <laughs> I we get are the it. premium get ga- Thursday opening Good day point. Thursday. The premium game is the Texas Rangers. They've been promoting this now for a good couple weeks on ESPN. The premium yeah, game yeah. opening night, Rangers hosting the Cubs, the World Champion. So. I do get this from like Kevin's perspective. It's not the best time for you because you're going to be so locked in on college basketball that now you're going to be flipping, right? Like if it was a 2 right. p.m. I, Ranger I'm, game, you it would there'd be no true. there'd exactly. be nothing. For this, this takes precedent over everything else for opening day, especially since the Rangers are off on Friday, which we've yeah. talked about that before. That's always 
seems odd to me. The other thing that has just happened supposedly in the last 15 minutes or so, Tom Pelissero is who I see out on front on this, that the hip drop tackle has been banned. And the biggest thing over the last several weeks, months, is that the NFL talked about how it is 25 times more likely to result in injury. The NFL PA has voiced their objections and being like, what exactly, what rule are you going to craft that's going to make any sort of sense right here? And even when we talk with Tony Pollard, who got hurt off of that, he was even kind of like, I mean, kind of, but I don't know how you get that out of the game. Yeah, I... So the Roy Williams tackle was very similar yes. because the Roy Williams tackle you grab. It was less about the grab, but more about the fact that you're putting your weight on the back yes. side of somebody. But because of they where the hand placement it. is, yeah. then they were like, well, we'll just right grab you around the hip and do the same thing. And so anybody that's upset about it, go look at some of the careers of the guys that had that injury happen to them. And what were they different afterwards? And how much did it screw things over? I, I get it. Like it's, it's very difficult to be a defensive player. To be a cornerback, to be uh, anything in this league on the defensive side, it's tough, man. If you're a defensive lineman and you touch and you tap the quarterback on the helmet, you, you, that's a penalty on your team right now and possibly a fine. And that, that's one of the things, because I, I want more information, and I'm sure more information will continue to trickle out within the hour and without the, throughout the day. Spelicero said, expect more fines than flags. And so I'm... I'm I'm really asking this. This might sound like a dumb question, especially because it's not my money. Do you think there's players out there that are be like, oh, I'd much rather get fined than it cost us penalty wise in a game? Or is that pure foolishness to think? Foolishness. Okay. They would much rather keep their twenty thousand dollars. Mike, I come to would you. you what if they did that to us here? Hey, you have I don't know, fifteen minutes where you get nobody listening or you have to pay a thousand dollars. I'd be like, I would like to if keep it, my thousand dollars. And I think, I just think you and I might be different on that, Mike, because if it was proportionate to the income, then I think I, I might take the fine over blowing up. Yeah. But this you're thinking about period. our bonuses. Yeah. There's no bonus for It's not like they get bonuses based on the least amount of penalties. They get. true. I, I would also be really obsessed with winning. Like I said, I, I think you and I are just a little bit different on this front, but I bet a lot of people agree with you. I, I bet a lot have, of people. You agree. definitely would have no agent. I will tell you that. That's fine. your agent would be like, I am firing you because you <laughs> refuse for me to oh, get more money. Yeah. Like we want to get you more money, I know, bro. Because I, I was like, I want to win. Um, I do, I do wonder. Well, because I guess the owners vote on this too. Yeah. So, or sure or the really, competition committee. I'm sure that was a really contentious vote. Yeah, hey, we're all good with this, right? Yep. Yeah, I just, uh, I, I don't know, man. I do feel like there was probably a lot of discussion on it, but it's probably a lot of people that are like, man, I have a very highly paid guy that got injured to this. Yeah. And I would like for that to not happen again. Yeah. Uh, but I do. I do wonder sometimes if there's a in that in that instance, Kevin, like you're talking about, very specific. Hey, it's a it's a playoff game, and we're here. You need to make that play. We'll take care of the fine. Don't worry. I've make always. That I've play. always. How often you just come in with a you know that. what? Get a little bonus. Let's get a little bonus. I got a little piece of property up in Frisco. It is probably illegal. It's illegal, though, right? It didn't. It, oh, no, absolutely. And nobody's ever done anything illegal. No, I, it is absolutely illegal. Especially I've always wondered. Do you think wonder. Jerry Jones no. would ever pay a single penny more than he has to in hey, salary cap situation? He would write the biggest. No, guy. but I do, but I do know that Bounty Gate existed. Fibs that he tells tremendously on the air and in the public. I do know Fair. Bounty Gate existed at one point. So, like, I do know some people out there are willing to do that. Not always. But not Jerry. the general manager. Not That's coaches Jerry. going, I want you to play harder. Yeah, that is. General managers, slash, I guess I shouldn't say this, owners are not going to be like, I'll slip you an extra 20K to do this. Right? That's true. That's the coach. Not that coaches aren't going for 20K, but they'll be like, hey, $500 if you kill that guy. Not like literally kill him, but like, put a hey, hit on him. Yeah, yeah, go as soon as he kicks the well, ball. Like a hard hit. Not like I, as soon as he kicks the ball, it. don't block anybody. Just dead sprint and smoke the kicker. And, and then that'll be funny. And I'll give you 500 bucks for it. <laughs> not me. That would be a Ryan son. No, I. Uh... <laughs> I understood. Thank you very much. I wanted to ask real quick, how much do you care or how much are you paying attention today 
to Shohei Otani. Oh, that's all I want to know about, man. Is it really? Kind of. I mean, there is, there is, every time I look up at the TV and see a picture of him, I'm like, what's, is there something new? And I know he's supposed to talk today, so I'm very interested in what he's going to discuss and what, uh, what the Dodgers and him and his people crafted together to come up with this, whatever is about to happen. This is going to be awesome. What if this happens? I've been thinking about this. From what I hear from people, Otani speaks English. He understands English and he speaks English. It might not be like the best English, but it's, you would understand him. Right, it'd just be kind of a broken English that you'd understand. What if, because he doesn't have a translator, he just goes, "All right, guys, so here's the situation. <laughs> this is what happened." And they're like, "Wait a second, you didn't get another interpreter? Like, didn't need one. Just didn't want to do inter- interviews in English, and it limited the amount of exposure that I would get from the American media. I'm fine." But here's what happened. Like, he spoke English the whole time. The whole time. I had that experience once with you, Darvish, right? Mm. When we were on the backfields, is every time he would speak through, like, the official channels, it would bounce back and forth with an the interpreter before he did his, I think it was all English interview with Emily Jones. And I heard him just talking in English. And I was like, hold what on. What is happening right now? And because like, I, I felt really naive then. And I thought... I'm sure that just makes them more comfortable, but in that moment, I had no idea that he just conversed with folks in English, and I felt really stupid. Yeah, or like, what does he does he show up with the same interpreter? Does that is that interpreter there, there is, with him today? No, and he just answers all the questions, and he's and like, he makes Shohei look real bad, and Shohei's just like thumbs up, everybody, let's rock. I don't think so, but I do really want to know a lot more about this. They story. have a new interpreter. Is that they have to have a new guy, I right? Just, is anybody going to believe? I, I I feel like at this point in this storyline, the Shohei Otani storyline, I don't know what is factually true and what is being covered up. So when Otani speaks, do you, when he says whatever, I we have no clue what he's going to say. But like when he speaks and he says, "This is the story." What will be the percentage of the population go? That is, that's the story. I'm just going to tell you some of the baggage I bring in is based on all the stuff we've read about his relationship with that interpreter though that's not to say someone close to you can't betray you because obviously that can happen is misuhara started working with him with the ham fighters and he said i've known shohei since he was 18 when i first saw him i was like this guy's unreal when otani moved to the major league baseball in 2017 signed with the angels mitsuhara came along and jared walsh told espn last year They've transcended friendship into brotherhood, truly. It might sound dumb, but it's true. During the lockout... Is that our Jared Walsh? I believe that is correct. Yes. Interesting. During the lockout, MLB employees were barred from communicating with players. So Mitsuhara quit his team, quit the team so he could stay in contact with Otani. And then he was rehired. He also was the catcher during Otani's home run derby. And he picked up groceries for him when he was in, in recovering through injury. And th- this just relationship has gone on and on and on. Again, people very, very close to you can absolutely betray you. But it does feel like there's a lot there. And if if the guy just really stole from him and he thought that was his brother, his friend, that's terrible. And I feel really bad for Otani. Yeah. And I mean, won't Shohei then have lots of trust issues from there on? That's a lot of money to steal from well, somebody. And and here is the other thing that goes along that might be on Otani's side. He said that he graduated from the University of California. NBC Los Angeles, once the scandal came up, contacted them, and the University of California said they have no record of him ever going to that school. And then the Red Sox have also denied that Mitsuhara was a translator for them, for one of their pitchers on the team. So now people are like... This dude doesn't even exist? People are like really looking into his resume and going, well, there's a few lies in here. I feel like that works in favor of Team Otani was duped. Right. He hasn't lived here for the last 10 years. No, I'm not saying that. Wasn't there a dude who got the job as Notre Dame's head football coach who had like a bogus resume? I do believe I remember a story like that. There was bogus things on his resume. Absolutely. I do remember (laughs) that. He got the job at Notre Dame and he was like saying, I have this education and this and that. And he's like, nope, you have none of this. But if you'd have gone 11 and 0, we would have been fine with it. So I'm interested to see how this all plays out, what the next step is. 
Yes. Uh, so I, you asked the question. I'm fascinated. Yes. Okay. And I was glad to see that the MLB is like, no, we're investigating Otani they're, they're and not, his interpreter. Dude, I agree. Nothing's going to happen to him. Yeah, I think you're probably It's right. too much guaranteed. Well, and I know the guaranteed money. It's too much. It's too important. He's too important of a player. I, I am very curious how the Players Association sees something like that. Because would the Players Association be like, no, that's not that's not okay. Like, we can't have something like, if they were to find that Otani has, uh, it, it did illegal things, like he actually did something, would the Players Association be like, we can't have that. It's not okay that MLB just let him slide on that. Because other guys could get in trouble for but it. The MLBPA is like your lawyer. Yeah. So you're saying your lawyer would turn you in? No, but I, would but would they just be like, well, you have to turn a blind eye for it? Like, would the players be okay with it? Would the rest of the league be okay with it? They'd be like, well, now all of us can get away with this. I think they would. It wasn't like the MLBPA went after the Astros players. That's valid too. Yeah. Like they backed them up. Like you're, you're, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. And I'm sure if your lawyer knows you're guilty, it's probably really tough for him to do their job. Yeah. But you still, I think, I don't know. I, I feel like lawyers protect their their person, even though when they know they're guilty well, and have done the, the crime. And frequently, you will hear from defense lawyers, you don't ask. Yeah. Are they guilty? If they do tell, not sell me. You, don't if, they tell tell, me. if they tell you they did it, don't they have to be like, I can't represent you anymore because uh, I don't know. I guess they, I do not I believe know. that is factually accurate. I have no clue. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105 through the fan. Coming up next. Puck around and find out. What? Forget just the central. Could the stars take the president's trophy? We'll do it next right here on The Fan. DFW's number one Cowboys podcast.
you by Cars for Kids. Donate today at carsforkids.org and the personal injury lawyers Frankel and Frankel. If you have been injured in a car or truck wreck, call Frankel first, 214 or 817 333 3333. With Frankel and Frankel, there is never an out of pocket cost. They only get paid when you win. Frankel and Frankel, the go to car and truck wreck attorneys in Dallas. Suter with a shot, rebound, and they score. Tyler Sagan, he's made it a 2-1 game in favor of Dallas. One of the most automatic things in sports, the Dallas Stars defeating the Arizona Coyotes. Happened sure. again last night, 4-2 with the win. Corey, was there ever any doubt? 20-2 and two since the time that we made Jamie Benn break his stick over uh, over the goalpost. Ironically enough, he or scored the, the first goal board, last yeah. night. Yeah, um, no, there was never a doubt, Kevin because it's the Coyotes. But there, it was kind of tough to come through. You know, it was one of those where it was like, uh, Kevin, you love very efficient six-goal nothing nights, and it was not one of those Who kind doesn't? of nights for us. It was, uh, it was definitely one of those nights where you were like, it's pretty tight, but Ottinger had a really good night yeah, in Yeah, I thought he looked sharp. He, uh, he had a couple of saves. Like, one of the goals had a, a very unlucky deflection off of his pad directly to somebody who buried one home. That's that's a tough one. He couldn't find that. There was another time where he couldn't find the puck at all and still was able to make the stop on it. And I was like, that's crazy. He didn't even see how he stopped that one. And there was one right in his face that I thought was going to get knocked through. And he glove saves it. And it was awesome, too. So good job last night for Otter. I have a few thoughts, Kevin. Do you mind if I throw some thoughts I out? I do not. I'm loving Jamie Benn's game right now. Okay. Jamie Benn does this, though, on a yearly basis where you'll see a stretch of him where you're just like, that's that's the dude. He's still got it. And I don't know. That's a good observation. It, it's it's. It, I don't want to say it's Joey Gallo because you get a lot more production yes. from him whenever he's not hot. But he's in that stretch right now where I feel like you're seeing the best of Jamie Benn again. And I hope that he is able to continue dragging that into the playoffs with him because it's a lot of fun. Uh, the other thought I have is it's a Sagan's presence is very a w very welcome sight right now because he's smart. He's savvy. He's skilled. He has all those things. And so when you just add him into a line, he... And whenever he also is willing to go out there and be physical and do the, the the dirty work too, man, it just looks really nice. When it all comes together for Stankoven, good luck. Like I'm looking forward to like that. He's already good. But whenever like it really comes together for him, we'll have another Wyatt on our hands. I was gonna Kevin. ask you if you think he could be better. That than that Wyatt. pairing could be amazing. And then that last the last thought there, Kevin, is that Haskin and shot to kind of to finish it up. He went full on Fulton there. Uh, from Mighty Ducks, where he just said, I'm hitting this as hard as I can. That was a burner, dude. Yeah. It looked like it almost took the net out. It was aw It was great. That was a fun game. Add points. Keep on stacking them up, man. And that's my, that's all my points. While this is happening, man, you got as many points as the Stars right there. That was impressive. <laughs> while this is happening, Winnipeg is spiraling. Nashville has been on freaking Fire. And you know how we talked about maybe you get Nashville if you draw the wild card, if you win the division and draw the wild card. All of a sudden, they would still have to continue their run. Nashville has not lost, or excuse me, has not lost in regulation in their last 10 games. The Stars have won four in a row. The Avalanche have won nine in a row. Gross. In the, that is gross, and we'll get back to that. In the meantime, Winnipeg is falling apart right in front of us. And so now all of a sudden... You do kind of wonder if the number two seed in the Central would not be so bad if you did match up with Winnipeg. Now, you'd still prefer the number one seed because then Colorado and Winnipeg can take each other out. But three of the hottest teams in the entire NHL, if not the three hottest in the entire NHL, are in the Central Division. And it's Nashville, it's Dallas, it's Colorado. You would have thought that the Stars going 8-2-0 and in their last 10 games would give them all kinds of advantage. That has dropped them two points against Colorado. Because Colorado has been crazy down the stretch. It, they, they've been playing unbelievable. And I'm with you, Mike. We've talked about this before. I might think it's more competitive, but I think Colorado wins the series over the Stars. And the good news is, though, it's looking more and more unlikely that you would get that in the first round. Right. Not to say that you won't get it, but it doesn't look like you're going to get it 
in the first round, at least as of now. So the Stars have played much better against Winnipeg than Colorado this year. So I'm not saying I'm not worried about Winnipeg. I think they're a very good team. But it does look like as we're getting closer to the end, the path is going to be home ice against Winnipeg. You got to figure out a way how to win on the road Fair. against Colorado, which seems impossible. Because they've been a good overall road team, right? But, you're but it's against just like Colorado. Colorado just whether it's ma- like I don't know this. Maybe it's just bad matchups. Maybe Colorado yeah. isn't the best. They Agreed. just match up tremendously yes. well against the Stars, uh, and then you would have to at some point go up against the uh, I don't know is it the Pacific? I know it's probably not. Whatever the other it is the Pacific. Okay, the other conference, uh, the the, the winner other of division. That. The other division, yes. Thank you. And then you'd play the other conference. Correct. The Eastern Conference. Now, I want to focus on that for just a second. Because you said maybe Colorado, maybe they are the best, maybe they're not the best. This is tough to figure out. Vancouver and the New York Rangers, they lead the NHL with 98 points. So the run for the President's Trophy. There are six teams right now that have 90, excuse me, five teams that have 97 points. Yeah. So essentially, there are seven teams that have 98 or 97 points. And so the race for the President's tro- uh, President's Cup, almost had it, President's Trophy, is on and home ice throughout the playoffs. And I know you might be thinking about Boston last year. You get home ice, who gives a crap? Doesn't mean anything. For the Stars... It's a little different. Why? They have gotten the President's Trophy twice. In 99? Nine, that is one of the years. But first they won it 97, 98. They made it to the Western Conference. Like Bush finals. and Obama, the second Bush. <laughs> that was they two, won the Presidency Trophy twice. That's, and it was eight years. That is a great point. Eight more. It was the chant. Uh, sure. Every time. I would support that chant for hockey purposes. 97-98, they went to the Western Conference Finals when they took the president. Next year, they won the Stanley Cup, had the best record again. So just the only two times that the Stars have ever had it, Western Conference Finals, Stanley Cup champion. That was 25 years ago, and you might be like, that has literally nothing to do with what, what's happening now. But I do think that's a nice little nugget there. So you're, you're trying, do you feel like if they get it, they stand a better chance of winning the cup because they prove they're the dominant team? Is that what you're trying to say? I do because if, not necessarily because of that, but if they win it, that means they'll continue to be on a tear in the last 10 games. Yeah. Because they've had to fight, 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 fight to stay up at this point, and they're right behind Colorado. Like we said, Colorado has been on fire. If Dallas wins not only their division, but takes the top record in the league, that means they probably finish out, I don't know, 8-2-0, and 8-1-1, and something ridiculous like that, which means their last 20 games, they would be the hottest team in the NHL going into the playoffs. Like we saw with Boston last year, that doesn't always translate, but I still would much rather that be the path to the playoffs. So you're saying, you're telling me that you want Pete DeBoer to walk in with a replica of the president's trophy. He can set it in the middle of the room and say, guys, this is what we're playing for now. I don't think this is what we want to go after. Right. Guys, I need everything from you here. When we get to the playoffs, different story. We want this one first. I think I would still have the Stanley Cup replica because it feels like no players want to touch any trophy. Okay. <laughs> That's not the Stanley Cup leading into the Stanley Cup. On the flip side. From the 619, you don't want the President's Cup. President's Cup winners get knocked out. Like I said, theoretically, for other teams, yes. You deny it and you take the Vice President's Cup. The t- <laughs> There's not as much responsibility. Then, then you or just the speakers, get to hang out. The speakers yeah, you cup. just kind of chill. Yeah. I feel like the vice stand, president's cup does not have much responsibility. Stand up and at clap. All. I, yes, it feels like the vice president doesn't do much. Yeah, not not, just, not like today. Not, I'm just saying, like in, in the history forever. of like, yeah, the only one maybe they misspelled potato. That is true, true man. And they were on that show, Murphy Brown. Bam. I know. Is that that was also Dan Quayle, right? Yeah. From the two one four Rangers showed us how to do this. The stars need to go cold and turn it on and, at the start of the playoffs. Okay, that's look, how you do it, guys. This is going to be tough to argue against. Yes, In any yes, other scenario, would I would tell you the way the Rangers went into the playoffs is absolutely not. Every not, manager not should aspire the way for that. you want to do it. But then your counter argument can be, oh, really? 
because they won the World Series, and then I'm stuck. But yeah. if you're telling me you have two options, uh -huh. limp into the playoffs on a tough string or be as hot as you can be going into the playoffs, I want the hot. All right? It just shut you don't freaking you guys are Alex, jerks. But the Rangers the have yeah. shown there are multiple ways <laughs> to win and I can't argue against that. Yanni Hakampa by the way is going to miss some time with a lower body injury. You don't want anybody to get hurt, but you talked about we just got Sagan back. I you don't want anybody to get hurt. It's been a struggle this season for him. He so has struggled. When yes. you hear injury at this time of year, you might kind of clam up. I don't think this injury is going to be as devastating as other ones could have been. And I don't I don't feel like, like that's a mean like, thing to say. Like who? Are you saying the other people or other type of injury? No, no, no. Other people. Like, uh, look, na like name name somebody. No, I'm not doing that. Don't do that, Because Kevin. that feels wrong. And I don't know the specific injury because, of course, I just heard lower body injury. Because there's only two injuries in hockey. Yeah, upper there's body. upper body and lower body. And lower body. And still very weird to me. The coach said he'll miss some time and won't be skating in the near future. There's going to be future tests to follow up and everything like that. But here's what you get. He's going to miss some time with a lower body injury. My guess is that means he'll be out three weeks. Yeah. I have no Maybe two. clue about that. Maybe though. two. It's like the other day I went, I went to go get my inspection done, and my guy, he's awesome over uh, over there. They uh, they do amazing work. I walk in, and he goes, my machine's down. And I was like, you think it'll be back in? And he was like, no telling. Could be a week, could be a month. And I was like, but I'm supposed to get my inspection done now. And he just kind of gave me the shoulder shrug, like, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, gosh, this is... Just like hockey injuries. Nobody knows exactly how long or exactly what's wrong. Oh, I know what was wrong. He was waiting for you to slip him a little. Extra oh, cash. no, he wasn't. Did you look over? No, yeah, he yeah. wasn't. If you're like, He's hey, big time Tolo. Don't say hey, that. Man. Thanks for your time. And you shake his hand and there's 20 or 40 bucks in there. He's like, oh, you know what? We got another way we can look at this car. Mm. That is based on absolutely nothing. But that is my wild theory for the day. You look like you wanted to say something. Mm -mm. Okay. No, I'm done saying things. For the whole show or just well, This now? guy said that sometimes what comes out of my mouth is nonsense and it makes them think that they'll actually be good at radio. So. Oh, that's rude. For no. the 972, Corey is one of the stars <laughs> of the number one show in that. all of the land. Mm -mm. I, I'd it say is all that. the land, though. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105 Through the Fed. Coming up next. It's time for Baseball Nuggets with Mike Bassett. The Major League players have spoken. Where do they love to travel? Next. Ooh. Coming up in the next G Bag Nation, it is a...
This segment is brought to you by Classic Chevrolet in Grapevine. They're the number one Chevy dealer in the world. More Silverados than anyone else. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. Based on new Chevrolet registrations, 2023. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105.3 The Fan in studio today. But you can find us out in the world this week. We're going to be doing the show from Rally House in Mansfield on Wednesday. And then on Friday, we're going to be doing the show at Buffalo Wild Wings in Dallas off of Lemon. So 10 to 2 Wednesday, Rally House in Mansfield. 10 to 2 Friday, Buffalo Wild Wings off of Lemon in Dallas. Hope you guys will come hang out with us. I'll be there. Okay, good. I will go hang out with you, okay, Kevin. Okay, I appreciate 50, 50. that. Okay, actually, that does sound accurate. Kind of, now, kind of expected. <laughs> it's time for Baseball Nuggets with Mike Basher. All right, so the players have spoken. This is from MLB.com, the survey on multiple things. I wanted to start off with, people ask me this all the time, what are your favorite stadiums? Uh, where are your favorite cities to go to when you played? Well, obviously, it was a long time ago. I'm 46 years old, and... I have not been to all the new stadiums. And but you're going to be back in the flow now. I will be a little bit back in the flow this year, going to some different stadiums. Let me ask you, just give me your opinion. What do you think number one would be for the players' Chicago. vote? Chicago. Okay. It's in the top five. I'll just say that. Oh, New York. It's that, in the top five. That makes you guys sense. have hit two in the top five. Their number one is San Diego. Oh, that really? makes a lot of sense. Beautiful yeah. park. The and the weather's gorgeous. Yeah. So uh, it says that they just love the they love everything about San Diego. Okay. Obviously, being there, plenty of things to do when you wake up. And you know, I'd like to say in the morning, but most players don't wake up in the morning. They wake up around noon. Oh. But um, well, I mean, think I, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, their, yeah. their schedule is more go to sleep around one to two a.m. Wake up around noon. Because I'm sure that adrenaline. After the game, it yeah. doesn't just dissipate. Is is Boston in the mix? So they say real quick. They say about San Diego. This is a, a third baseman. They they all of these are anonymous. Okay. It just says NL third yep. baseman. The infield surface, the weather, the stadium, the atmosphere, the city. You can't beat it. That's about San Diego. Number two is Chicago. That makes so, sense. So uh, you said Chicago. The only thing that I don't know is players weren't asked specifically of the White Sox or the Cubs. I don't know this. I don't know. Do you stay in the same hotel, whoever you're... Because they are I north side, you, south side. Yeah, I I'm bet just, you don't. But I don't think they want the players on the south side. I could Just like when you play Oakland, you don't stay in Oakland. You stay in San Francisco. They don't put you in Oakland. They're like, you shouldn't be in Oakland. I, I, I bet you do not stay in the same place. I also just assume it's the Cubs because of the happening that is Wrigleyville as opposed to... Yeah. The dead corporate atmosphere outside of the White Sox. Yeah. They're just trying to get a good rate. <laughs> so if you were, <laughs> so if you up. are like, man, where the players love to go, I'd want to go on a trip. Like this is going to be fun for the next few years, and, and hopefully longer than that. It's going to be really fun watching this Rangers team. I'm not saying yes. I know they're repeating or I know they're making the playoffs, but they are going to have an, a really a team that you can just go. I know everybody. Yep. It is rare in today's sports. To go, I know everybody on the team. And I remember like 2018 through 2021, let's say, how many people would tell us, I don't even know who's on the Rangers. Yeah. Like, because there, it yeah. was just, they were trying to figure out who could and couldn't play in the major leagues. And there was nobody to really latch on to. The best case scenario, you had Joey Gallo was your best case to it's like latch on or, or as Elvis's career was coming to a close with Texas. I don't know if you guys saw this or not, and I haven't seen an update. He did get released by the Diamondbacks. Oh, Ooh, man. So he is uh, not... So we need him back, huh? Well, unless you think he's better than Ezekiel Duran or Josh Smith, I guess. Uh, well, I think he's not. better than Josh Smith. Okay. Josh Smith won us a World Series. Did he? All by himself. Oh, come on, dude. I was thinking about Josh Young as an example. Yeah. Josh Young feels like he would theoretically be a big deal. He's like, what, eighth? Best yeah. known player on this team, maybe. Yeah, I think it's just really cool now for the next few years. You're just gonna know all. You're gonna know definitely all nine guys in yeah. your lineup. You're just gonna get to know them because they're not going anywhere. I mean, there might be one or two that you make a trade, uh, but I mean, really, you're gonna get to know this team so well and go. This feels like, you know, back when you did have Pudge and Juan yeah. and just like, yeah. and, and you can even go to recently when you had Michael Young and Ian Kensler. 
Uh, obviously, Beltre joined in 2011, but you just like, this is a core group that I really am, am knowing well. Number three is, hey, Toronto. I would not have gotten that. Toronto ten is, more guesses. I have been to Toronto, and it is a very clean city. It is, you're just like, do they... Do they are they cleaning this at all times? Like you know how there's <laughs> it's like nothing, Disneyland. Nothing against Dallas. <laughs> Somebody obviously I up. live here. I love it. But like you can drive around Dallas at times and go, man, they need to clean this part up. Mm -hmm. and you're like, how did Toronto do this? How do they just have everything cleaned up all the time? And maybe it's just when you're visiting, you're only going to the nice areas. But yeah, That's Canada, bro. When you go to San Francisco, like I've seen a guy poop in a cup, <laughs> and that was on a way to a nice, a nice like breakfast. You know, it just that's. It happens. Oh my I, gosh. I just so, wasn't prepared for that comparison. All right. Well, it happened. Number four. I'm not seen disputing that. that. I mean, I'm not like you jealous. Don't want to. You don't want to. It's a little <laughs> bit weird. You're like, what's happening? And like, oh, that's happening. Did I, you immediately turn away or were you oh, no, oddly no, no, like no. fixated on? No, no, no. <laughs> okay. it, you know, that's not something I want to watch. I guess there's a few people in this world that might want to, but I do not want to watch that. Number four, you did say Boston, right? <laughs> yes. Boston yeah. is number four. And number five is New York. Wait, do you, that makes how, sense. how far does this list go? Five. Okay, because I was kind of curious on Baltimore, too. Yeah, good luck with that. I don't think Baltimore for city. I don't think players, I'm not saying they okay. hate it. I don't think they love it. Like, the tough thing is, is I guess that, yeah, I was thinking Arlington's stadium. Okay. probably never going to get, nothing again, I love Arlington, but probably from a player standpoint, it's not going to get tons of love. First of all, they stay in Los Colinas usually, if you don't yeah. know this. Um, where the Byron Nelson, I think, used to be played, I think is where most teams stay at. Maybe they stay in different hotels. Are but they not going to utilize that Lowe's at some point? Or is I, that for, for... I don't know, yeah. and I don't know if that's considered... You have to stay at five-star hotels. Like That's oh, okay. part of the collective bargaining agreement. They can't just say, we're saving some money here, and we're going to a nothing against Holiday Inn Express, but we're not staying there. Gotcha. Right? So uh, I don't know like if that becomes where they would stay at. I know a long time ago in the 70s and 80s, I don't know if that's a Sheraton or a Hilton that's still there. That's kind of near where the Ranger Stadium, you know what I'm talking about, the old hotel? It's yes. about, I don't know, 15 stories. Yeah, yeah. But that's where the players used to stay a I long there time ago. Ooh. I hit my head on a shower curtain there. What? Oh. Okay, so I found this really cool. This is a little bit old, but they just came up with kind of like uh, an article with all the players, what they said about different things. But they said, who is MLB's fiercest competitor? The players weigh in and vote. I wonder if Trout is still in that mix. Okay. Who would you guess? Fiercest competitor, Max Scherzer. Max Scherzer is number one. Oh! It says nearly 30% of our survey Ow! said Scherzer Alpha as the competitor. fiercest competitor in the game, which isn't surprising for anyone who has ever seen the three-time Cy Young award-winning pitcher. The intensity he brings to the mound makes him an intimidating presence even in his late 30s. Here's what a National League outfielder admitted. He scares me. <laughs> I just I love that quote right there. Uh, number two, by the way, is Bryce Harper. So I think there's going to be some sort of kind of attitude when it comes to these guys, like is an intimidation fan. The, there then, Ronald I'm Acuna sorry. Jr. is number three. Garrett Cole is number four, and there's a tie for Arenado and Verlander. Okay, I was curious because he, he kind of reminds me of Scherzer at times, just in terms of that level of. Fire. A lot of pitcher involvement in that too, and that like that makes me. I was looking through some cards yesterday, and I always yeah. thought Dave Stewart was very intimidating. Yeah, just the way that yes. he, his mound presence. Yeah, and I think there is uh, from a mound perspective that that's part of what you kind of want. Yeah, Charlie Huff said that about you. You know, he was like, you had that look of a, of a pitcher, and that's what I thought we could work with. And I would pitch. <laughs> Uh, so here's another one from an AL catcher. And this is the thing is you don't know, like it could be from Jonah Heim. I don't know. It could be one of his catchers, but says, if you foam at the mouth, when you're pitching, you know, <laughs> that is another quote on Max Scherzer. Uh, here's from a uh, AL outfielder, just his attitude on the mound and the look he gives you and the way he attacks every day, even at his age. Another NL outfielder said, I've heard a lot of stories about Max Scherzer. So I think there is kind of this 
this storytelling thing, and, and I know I'm running out of time here, but I know the Rangers, it doesn't look like they have young pitchers in their rotation to start the year. If Michael Lorenzen most likely is taking Cody Bradford's start as the season progresses, as he gets built up, so it's going to probably be some sort of combo Bradford starting, Lorenzen uh, relieving, Michael, yeah, and then quickly it'll switch as long as you're healthy. But I'm just wondering, with Max Scherzer's attitude, and the intimidation and the right here being the fiercest player in baseball. I'm just wondering how this could possibly, he's only on a one-year contract, yeah. rub off on a Jack Leiter. I know Rocker's not going to be on the major league team this year. Owen White needs to kind of refine his game. Like I'm just wondering yeah, as these young pitchers, the more they get to be around this. Yes. Because we go back to once again, they did have people like Mike Miner and Lance Lynn. It was a weird time in, in Rangers baseball. So they did have some veteran pitchers to kind of look up to, but maybe not good veteran position players to look up to. Because oh, I will say Odor kind of did early on in his career and maybe Mazzara early on in his career. But as it progressed a little bit, they're like, we got to get rid of all these guys and we're just building around you. I just think it's amazing that Wyatt Langford, which we'll get to during the show here in a little bit. We're saving some Wyatt yes. Langford talk in a little bit. Evan Carter, Josh Young, who's in his second year. Ezekiel Duran, who's kind of in his second year. Uh, I know that he made the major leagues a little bit before that. But they have all of these, not only pitchers to look up to, but then they can look at these position players, Corey Seager and Marcus Simeon, uh, to really go, how do we do this? How do we become as good as we can possibly be? Who knows what the ceiling is on some of these young guys? But they're not having to do it on their own or just listen to coaches. They have a lot of brains to pick on, on how, to, how to act appropriately on the road, how to be a good teammate, how to deal with adversity, how to deal with struggles, how to deal with success, how to deal with autograph seekers, how to deal with, you know, I just think that this team is really set up well for if you are a young player, to help win, to help this team win, there's a lot of people who can help you do that. That's for sure. For the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Coming up next, nobody cares about your bracket. But today we do. Is your bracket busted, staying alive, or maybe even thriving? We'll do it next right here on The Fan. You can hear Kevin, Corey, and Mike anytime and anywhere. Take the KNC Masterpiece wherever you go on our Odyssey app. Presented by Comerica. This is Maggie Gray with an Odyssey Sports Minute sponsored by LL Flooring. LL Flooring, every step covered. So much for major upsets. The men's NCAA tournament has been a celebration of the highest seeds. All four number one seeds have advanced, winning by an average of 27 points per game. All four two seeds are also through to the Sweet 16 and half of the three seeds. The buzzword around college basketball is parity, but so far the Blue Bloods reign supreme. I'm Maggie Gray. This March, Wendy's has some amazing deals on their hamburgers made with fresh, never frozen beef. Like a juicy Dave single for a buck and a fresh $2 Dave's double with an app offer. It's such a good deal, we wrote a little ditty about it. Get it for a buck. Dave single, Dave single, order in the app. Dave single, Dave single, get it for a buck. Choose wisely, choose Wendy's official hamburger or March Madness. Limited time offer, participating U.S. Wendy's. See offer details and redeem at Wendy's app. Account registration required. Fresh beef available in the contiguous U.S. and Alaska ebay motors is here for the ride go ahead feel your engine admire that perfectly installed exhaust your vehicle's moving along this freeway like it was made from fresh installs and a whole lot of love with ebay motors you get over 122 million parts to keep it running and with ebay guaranteed fit they'll be the perfect fit every time plus at these prices well we're burning rubber not cash keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. Meet Cheryl. Hey. She's on vacation and lost in the moment. Unfortunately, so is her Chase debit card. It's gotta be somewhere. Maybe she lost it at Salsa Night. 
These skirts should have pockets. Or maybe she lost it at Pilates. Three and two and... But ah. she's not worried. With the Chase mobile app, she can lock her card till it turns up. Tools that help protect. One bank that puts you in control. Visit chase.com slash checking. Chase, make more of what's yours. Chase mobile app is available for select mobile devices. Message and data reads may apply. J.P. Morgan Chase Bank, N.A. member FDIC. Get your spring centerpiece at Whole Foods Market. Save 30% on spiral cut bone-in pork ham with Prime through April 2nd. Gather around this succulent roasted ham to celebrate the season. While supplies last, shop in-store or online. Terms apply. Hi, I'm Nick at Dowerth Restoration, and I have a question for you business owners out there. What would you do if your building suddenly flooded or caught on fire? Would you be able to deal with your insurance company and keep your business on track? If you're like most, you're too busy to even think about it. That's why you'll love this news. All you have to remember is DowerthRestoration.com. When disaster strikes, we'll be there just like you planned all along. It's good to have friends in the restoration business. DowerthRestoration.com. Baseball is back at the ballpark. Join us for an epic opening weekend as your world champion Texas Rangers kick off the regular season against the Chicago Cubs. Come early Saturday, March 30th for the pregame ring ceremony and celebration. Then come back for the season's first Sunday matinee. Plus, all weekend, the team will be wearing the championship gold uniforms. Grab your seats now at rangers.com. Upgrade the security of your home business or large commercial facility now with the latest technology from DFW Security. If your system is older than five years, it's time to upgrade. Get DFW Security, your local experts for over 30 years. DFWSecurity.com. DFWSecurity.com. Progressive presents advice on new team drivers. You know, the hardest part about oh, teaching your team to drive is the chafing from the seatbelt. But the best part is the grip strength you build in your knuckles. Okay, now let's pull out of the driveway. Here's another tip. Offset a chunk of the cost of adding a team to your insurance with Progressive's Team Driver Discount and get a break from the break. Progressive Casual Team Insurance Company and Affiliates not available in all states or situations. Find what you love, love what you find. A total wine and more, there's so much waiting for you. Spirits and beer, thousands of wines. Walk right through the door, it's all here to explore. With guides in the know, when price is so low, it just might blow your mind. You're gonna find what you love, and love what you find. Responsibly B21. RJ Choppy, your friends over at A number one air, the awesome Metroplex leader for over 35 years, and it is the Love is in the Air special from A number one air. Buy a new heated and AC system from A number one air, and you get free duct cleaning plus free pull home surge protection and flexible financing options to meet your budget for all your heated and AC, plumbing and electrical. It's A number one air, 1 800 new heat, 1 800 new heater, A number one air.com. Some restrictions apply. A you're turn it on, leave it on. Home of America's team is 105.3 The Fan. Hello, baby. KRLD FM and HD1. Dallas Fort Worth. Always live on the free Odyssey app. From our fan studio, secured by DFWSecurity.com, it's the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105.3 The Fan from the 682. Still have a perfect bracket. Whoever doesn't needs to watch more college basketball. All right. I do not have a perfect bracket. So back to the drawing board we go. Now, we wanted to provide everybody with this opportunity because bracket talk is very similar to fantasy football talk. Nobody cares about your individual triumph, failure, or issue. They're just waiting for you to stop talking so they can talk about theirs. Yep. And they listen to your story so they can tell their story. Do you think that is a fair assertion? Absolutely true. All right. But today, we are here for you if you want to share your amazing triumphs, your struggles, anything like that. I want to go to cut number five. Did you guys stay up to watch this game? Because the ending of it was amazing. Taylor, by far, their best outside shooter. He has been dismal today, 2 for 11. Robert fronts. Radford calls the break. No Tom Ouse. Bounce in. Up top, Garcia for three. Got it! Anderson Garcia, his ninth made three of the year, forges an 86 all tie. The red line is on. We'll have overtime. 
Just think if they had real jump balls in college. <laughs> yeah. The game would have ended. I know. But a jump ball is just a possession arrow. It and He's made nine threes all year. He's the opposite of the white dude for Oakland. <laughs> yes. He takes mostly two point yeah. shots. Houston was ahead eighty one to sixty nine with a minute and fifty seconds left. Texas A and M scored seventeen points in the ensuing one hundred and ten seconds to tie the game going into overtime, and then they lost. Well, watching that game with my son, who's a huge Aggie fan, did he go crazy? He was so pumped, but then just, he's like, "I don't like Jamal Shedd." I'm like, "He's really good, man." Like, he is very good. Oh, uh, he's really he's so good that some dude for A and M who averages twenty points a game took twenty three shots at one point and Wade, made four of them. That is Wade Taylor. Like, it was he. He has been an excellent player for A and M all year. Yesterday, not his finest moment. What, he made a couple late, so he might have been like seven for forty-eight at the he end of the game. He was five for twenty-six. But okay, just think he, about this: in the opening funny. round, from three, seven for ten. He used them all. Yeah. <laughs> he it felt like he used them all. I, that was just a rough game. I watched that whole game. Here's what I didn't understand: late in overtime. They call the timeout. So they have a dude going straight to the basket. It he, looks like for yes. a layup. He calls timeout with, I think, 13.4 seconds call. to go. He called a timeout to demand a three-pointer. Four of the five Houston Cougar starters had fouled, fouled out. out. Like, it was – they couldn't come back into the game. I'm like, if you can tie this and send it to another over overtime. Now, I know they have two guys fouled out, and they're in a little bit of foul trouble here. But I'm like – you're playing against a team that's not very deep and is having to play four out of five bench players right now to try to finish this game. And he said, hey, we just got to try to hit a three here because I don't want to possibly go to another overtime. Like, if they don't have Jamal Shedd, which at that point they didn't when yep. he called the timeout, he'd fouled out about five to seven seconds before that. It's like, why aren't you trying? And the announcer was like, that's why you go for two because then the kid went to the free throw line who had like, he was three of four for the year. That's how many free throws the kid had shot. They had to bring in a dude who like, hey, you've made three of four this year. We, we don't have anybody who plays basketball anymore on this team. You guys are all practice players. Right. But you made three of four free throws in the season. So you're going in. He misses the first one. And the announcer was right to say. Oh, they crushed. That's, uh, why you, that. that's why you just take your layup. With 10 seconds to go yeah. instead of, well, we have to make a three to cut it to one here. No, they are down to scraps. If you can somehow tie the game, second overtime, Houston's finished. They have nothing left to play basketball. And they were like, well, we better win it in, in this overtime. Or we, I, It was weird, 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 weird. It was a great game, but I thought it was really weird that final 30 seconds for AM. It has been... I was going to say it's been a very fun tournament, but it has also been a very chalky tournament. In the round the of 32, 15 and 1 for the favorites. Wow. And the one, Kevin, I think was Baylor. Oh. So, yeah. My bracket is busted. What? How far did you have Baylor going? Final four. Okay. Can I tell you a worse situation? Yeah. Somebody. Oh, I, I was really wanting to talk about me a little bit. Okay. Right well, you know the deal. You have to listen to this part of the story to get your part of the story. My older son definitely might have definitely picked Auburn to win the national championship. What was he thinking? Yeah. I, I don't. Was that his, Cam his Newton spare came bracket? Back? I don't know what happened. <laughs> oh, no. It's not his spare bracket because he showed me eventually he had six brackets that he did. And I was like, that's too many. <laughs> but on the primary one, he picked Auburn to win it all. Unfortunately, on almost all of them, he either had Auburn in the final four or winning the championship. How many brackets is too many brackets? It depends on if you're doing like money leagues uh -huh. and stuff like that. If it's just for fun, I feel like more than two is probably. If you do three fun. brackets in the same pot, you know, like you do three, they allow as many brackets as you want for this one pot. If you do three, do you need to like go find something else to do? I mean, not if you consistently win money and you have a strategy, but. Hey, look, maybe you don't have a job anymore. And that's what you do to pass the time. It's okay, all right. Lots of maybe it is. Yeah, maybe you're know. just a consultant. Alec, how is your bracket looking so far? Because I get the distinct feeling, with the exception of Kentucky, it's looking pretty good. Yeah, so I did our little Odyssey bracket and I was live tracking it. Yeah, I was live tracking it during the show yesterday. And uh, 
I think I have six of my Elite Eight are still in it to win it. My Final Four is still intact. Uh, but I, I had a really tough time in the South. But outside of that, I'm doing okay. I'm actually doing okay. I'm kind of proud of myself. I'm proud of you, too. Hopefully somebody representing this show can win I, the bracket. I think I'm doing all right. You can't win if you don't enter. I don't think either one of you entered. There's about a thousand. Cost money? Nope. Uh, oh. And there's prizes. Were we with the station? Yeah, this was the best oh, way yeah. to do it. It costs nothing, and you could win something. I didn't get that email until late. Yeah, I don't check my my email. <laughs> I really don't. From the eight zero six. No, I know. I have three brackets. If I combine all three, technically, I still have all sixteen teams left. <laughs> Let me ask you this. That's a great question. If I gave you three brackets. Do you think you could get all 16 teams? Like, in yes. one version or what? another? Uh, like, without knowing, you're just saying, give me the matchups that are happening Thursday and Friday? Go back to the beginning of the tournament. Could you figure out all 16 if you got three bracket shots at it? Oh, no. And, and you can mix and match that I would. That I would I'd screw it up. I don't... Oh. I don't I'm maybe not understanding the question. Okay, that's okay. Mike. He's going to give you three brackets. Yeah, okay, Could I got you that. get all the Sweet 16 teams out of any of those, out of one of those three? Do you think you could land on one of them? Oh, no. I meant if you mix and match. Yeah, mix that and match. Still be, do you oh, think you could land on them? I guess that's I get what, what you're saying. saying. Okay. Maybe so there, but uh, San Diego State in a weird way like would be a tough one for me okay. to in those three, like to pick San NC State. Because you don't want them to beat Tech, right? Right. But. You're saying in another bracket, I you guess could write it down. I guess you could do it where you know that if all three combine and you just get your best picks and every yeah. then I think you'd have a small chance. But I think San Diego State might not be hard because they're a five seed, but probably NC State would be a tough one because you're gonna pick Kentucky. That was Kentucky's spot. Yes. Right? Correct. And then you also have Texas Tech. And that was almost Oakland. That game went to overtime. It could have been Oakland in the Sweet Right. Team. So I, gu I guess so, but it'd still be tough, right? And so the matchups, if you're going to go to the American Airlines Center, it's going to be NC State against Marquette and Houston against Duke. Not surprisingly. This is great for the Cowboys coaching staff. Hey, Go scout NC State. I'm telling you, there's a seventh rounder or an undrafted free agent named Burns who's playing for them. He's a good guy to bring into camp and see if he can play football. From the 817, Choppy said Auburn was one of the seven teams that could win the bracket, so blame the Chop. I mean, he's probably doing well otherwise, right? He also... Oh, Choppy's bracket? Yeah, is he No, done? Choppy's bracket's oh. poor. Oh. I believe he's in last place out of the entire show. What does a loser have to do? I don't know that they if they've actually come up with that idea ah, yet. Okay. But yeah, I think he's in last place. Did you see the Iowa State Washington State game where there was people Ooh. dressed from Ace Ventura? They were I did not. they were dressed as Ace Ventura and Ray Finkel. Also, Choppy is 235th in Jared Sandler's uh, thing. How many are in that one? It, I don't know, Kevin, because there are a bunch of people tied for like something. So I okay. guess 285. Oh dear. I think I don't know something along those. It feels like a lot. Uh, and I'm 53rd right now out of all those. People. Oh, so, okay. John Daniels has entered three times. Is that who you David were Murphy at has earlier? A, David Murphy has at least two entries. Whoa. Will Chambers, he picked Kentucky to win it all, so he's done. <laughs> oh, no. Did he? Re he did not really. Hey, I'll tell you what. He might have already bought tickets for this Sweet 16 because they were supposed to be here. You might want to text him. you think him. I should text him and yeah, be, like, be like, hey, can I get tickets yeah, off you, Do Chief? you have the Kentucky tickets? Because he might, and then you can go That's see. That's a great idea. There's 350 people in this. And Chops 235? Chops 235 at the Ooh, moment. Oh, that's kind of rough. So there were some fun things happening around the tournament games. Like I said, Finkel and Ace Ventura rocking at one of those games. But then also, what do you think about your coach saying he was looking forward to next year already? Because Bill Self, the Kansas coach, who Jared made an argument was better than Coach K. Don't ever forget that you said that, Jared. He admitted that for the last month, he was looking forward to next season. While his team was still playing, they made the tournament. They made it to the second round off of a botched call, but he was thinking about next year. If you're one of the players that was on that team or maybe one of them that's going to be back next year, is that what you want to hear? 
Why was he already looking forward to next? Like, what did he say around that? Like, was he like, man, can you believe how many of these kids I got coming back next year? Like, that's why I'm excited. Yeah, and who knows that? Quote, for the last month, I've been thinking about next season, to be honest. Not part of the quote, but definitely inferred. Because this team sucks, and we're not going to win anything. He said that? I just told you, not part of the quote. What about the portal? He doesn't even know about the portal. Uh, the portal could change like, everything. I'm excited about next year. You don't even know if any of the kids are coming back. Yeah. They might all portal to Kentucky. They need some portals. They got a whole team of Wyatt Langfords. Then he added this. We could have done a better, much better job as a staff putting more guys out there that we could play. And so that's something I've thought about for a long time. Now, not... Enough to actually do something about it in the midst of it, but still. Uh, you just flexed. I hope you've got From the something. 972, I listened to y'all's podcast the entire weekend. I was super stressed, and y'all allowed me to laugh. Thank you for all the work you do. 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. is the best part of the day. Boom! You changed that wording. I appreciate it, though. Now, let's talk about who's having a great time as well. The Yale Molecular Biophysics and Biochemistry Twitter team. They party so hard. You're damn right. Yeah, they because do. they serve you that fancy stuff that they're like, oh, no, we have created this to get you <laughs> drunk as yeah. hell. And no hangover. Exactly. So their Twitter handle is at Yale MBB because it's Molecular Biophysics and Biochemistry. However... Their Twitter got blown up with people partying about the victory over Auburn and said they tweeted this out over the weekend. Our notifications are blowing up with basketball tweets, but we are the Yale Molecular Biophysics and Biochemistry account. Oh, yeah, you are. might want to tag at Yale and basketball <laughs> instead. And then they put a basketball emoji. <laughs> So, or say so just keep tweeting us. It's fine. We love it. I know. I wish I would have looked up their before and after follow count. Like how many people started following <laughs> the molecular biology. As a bit. Yes, absolutely. And then let's go to Stan Van Gundy. This is cut number eight. Mike, I'm guessing you understand. I understand. Corey, tell me how you feel about when they reviewed yet another play. Well, he got hit there with a little bit of an elbow. It's just a basketball play on a spin. He's not extending this much. Come on. Let's go. Move on. Let's play basketball. That's what we all are here to see today. These reviews are soul-crushing. And you know what I realized? When they come to the exact same conclusion that I did watching the regular replay, and then they show a couple different angles, and they zoom in, and you're like, all right, I got it. It's Colorado's ball. Oh, we're going to need eight more minutes to figure this out. I'm with Van Gundy. Like, let's go. No one's here to see you, ref. I'm with let's play Van basketball. Gundy. It is amazing how long the final three minutes of a really close college Ye basketball yes. game takes. It's the worst. I used to always think that when we covered high school basketball, I wished it was a tie game or like a 12 point game. So the game would play out naturally. If you're in the five to six point range, it's death. It's just going to be three-pointer, free throw, three-pointer, free throw. Here's what I would say they should do. Fine. You want to replay everything to make sure that you got it right for the out-of-bounds or whatever. There's a shot clock the players have. You get a shot clock, too. As soon as that monitor comes on and you put the headset on, it's a 30-second shot clock. And then the buzzer goes off. The TV goes black. And then you have to say... We had 30 seconds. We saw three different angles. This is the best we could come up with. Yes. Like, there there needs to be a literally a 30-second shot clock on the refs. Once that screen comes on, you better start hitting play as many times as you can or rewind. Figure because it you out. have 30 seconds to figure this out. It's just, it's, it's not good for the game. Kevin, currently John Daniels is leading our bracket. Um, the... Uh, oh! Face, Corey. With one of his three brackets that he submitted. The uh I don't know exact it's four hundred and fifteen people that are in this. Four hundred and fifteen people are in this. But that. Eric Chiafalo just texted me and said, check where I am in the bracket rankings. And I'm currently at two hundred and thirty five and I haven't found oh, him dear. yet. So I'm currently oh, scrolling to try and dear. find out where, where Chiafalo is on this list. Because I feel like over the weekend, I looked at one point and he was ahead of me. 
And so now I'm, tr I'm now I'm like, okay. where is he? Is Keep he looking. Last? I'm going to give you one more update. This Dave, is no, that's Donnie Raymond. Never mind. From the nine seven two, we have one dude in our bracket group of four that has fifteen of the sixteen Sweet Sixteen teams. He watches zero basketball. That is the most infuriating part. I can't find him. Oh no! Did, is he so bad they just dropped him <laughs> off the board? I yeah, I don't know. I don't know where he is. I'm going to have to. I'll find him at some point. Because I want to know where Chia Falo is. Because, I, again, I thought he was doing really well. And, by the way, great news for the NCAA and the NCAA tournament. They're averaging 9 million viewers per window. And keep in mind, that includes starting at 11 a.m. Thursday. That includes... You know, 11 p.m. Jeez, Friday man. night or 10:30 Friday night. So it's the most amazing thing. It is that incredible. The most wonderful. Such time a of the year. small percentage watch college basketball and, and then, the regular season. Yeah, and then you get three weeks of all right. I'm going to watch college basketball. Yes. What oh, are, Dave Raymond, 65th, but he picked Baylor to win it all. Ooh. So tough for Dave Raymond, man. All right, and we'll find out if Eric Chiafalo still exists. Well, maybe they can still win it all. <laughs> they, they, they can't. They, they got, can't. They this, lost this year. They will not. We're the KNC masterpiece right we'll here on 1053 The no, Band. No, we won't find. We already found out, Mike. Coming up next, it's time for Wanker of the Weekend. Who is the best at being the worst this weekend? And why was it the UFC fighter who bit someone and got fired? Can't do that. We'll do that next right here in the fan. Hell.
your taco deal. That's Fuzzy's Taco Shop. This segment of the KNC Masterpiece is brought to you by Cars for Kids. Donate today at carsforkids.org and the personal injury lawyers, Frankel and Frankel. If you've been injured in a car or truck wreck, call Frankel first, 214 or 817 333 3333. With Frankel and Frankel, there is never an out of pocket cost. They only get paid when you win. Frankel and Frankel, the go to car and truck wreck attorneys in Dallas. Did he bite him? No way. Stop. Oh. 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 Did he get yeah. flesh? 100%. Okay. Look at that. But it's that is that's really different. bad. And they did break the skin over there, too. How did he so do now that seeing with his that, mouth guard? I don't fault Chris no, Tione not at all. For, for that stopping. Wow. That last part is what I really want to know. So it's time for Wanker of the Weekend, and we're going to start with this. Igor Severino was released by the UFC for biting an opponent in his debut fight for the promotion. It, if you listen to the announcers in all the in-between space, they're like, oh, wow, they're just ending the fight? Oh, man, that, I don't know. And then you see, there. it looks like he was a vampire who tried to like drink his blood. There is a very defined bite mark in his arm. And that's the last part where they all go, oh, whoa, no wonder they called the fight. And then the excellent question of, how do you do that with a mouth guard on? Yeah. Um, I don't have a good answer. Uh, I mean, very carefully. You just you just bite down hard. Okay. But you just you just bite down as hard as you possibly can. But Didn't Mike Tyson have a mouth guard in when he took an ear off? Yeah, I think he did oh. actually. So I think you just bite. You just. I mean, think about it, dude. It's what 200, 600 pounds of pressure that we have with our jaws. It's not quite the same as an know. alligator, but uh, but it is uh -huh. definitely or a crocodile strong. or a crocodile, mm -hmm. yeah. or other things that have stronger jaws. Hippo. But hippo. I feel like well, they're just aggressive. I don't know exactly. Maybe you can open up their mouths. I don't know. You see a hippo. Go away. Shark. Shark's a good one, Mike. Do you have any other guesses? Dogs. Dogs. What are what is he guessing? Well, I Things think that you, bite you just kind of pry open a dog's when mouth. When they measure how hard an animal bites. Okay. Or a human. From, okay. the, from the 214, he got the bite tattooed on him. Shut up. Did he really? I don't know. I don't know if that's true. I'll have to look at that. So <laughs> that would be amazing. But here's my here's my question. I also want to know the answer. At what age do you stop biting? Because Tyson Suarez, the soccer player. Oh yeah. This person, um, Severino, biting like you, at some point, biting you stop biting, right? Like that. I feel like there's something for vengeful purposes. Yeah. You keep biting to eat and stuff. Okay. Yes. Of course we eat foods. I don't know. Some of us. Uh, but that's the like you. You're taught to not bite people. That's the thing. I guess whenever you're fighting, though, it's no holds bar. No, no rules apply. It's definitely not because, like I said, he got disqualified and then lost the fight. A lot of people saying he absolutely did get it. I tattooed. mean, it got fired. Wow, that's what a what an awesome tattoo idea. <laughs> Nobody else is gonna have that. That is pretty amazing. Why'd you have that tattoo? Because I was in a fight and got bit by a dude. Yeah, and I won. Dana White even goes, "Hey, look, there's lots of ways to get out of a fight. Don't bite somebody." Yeah. Come on, people. Stop biting. Now, Mike, this Unless one. you're a zombie. This one is just for you. Sure, okay. Choice. I think you're going to know about this. And I know it makes you unhappy. Adam Silver was talking again about the All-Star game. And he said, young players see it as a break. Chance to have fun. We should just make it a celebration of basketball. We're going to look at USA versus international. I just think maybe we're past the point where we're going to play a truly competitive game. I'll tell you when it stopped, and I didn't know the exact moment, Corey Major sent me a video of Kobe shutting down and embarrassing LeBron James in 2013 because Kobe was like, hey, the way Michael put on a challenge to me in 1998 in my first All-Star game, and I know LeBron had been there as his eighth or ninth All-Star game, but Kobe decided to challenge part of that game, LeBron, and see who was maybe better. Because didn't Mike, didn't Michael Jordan say we're taking the kid out today, or we're not going to let him do anything when right, Kobe he just was said, there? He and... said in 1998, Ahmad Rashad before the game said, "I've talked to Michael, and he said I'm going to play defense, I'm going to rebound, and you guys are too." And so it's it set a tone of like, okay, if the best player in the world, the guy who is the face of the NBA, is saying 
we're putting on a show here. Yeah. And we're going to put on a good game. And then Kobe did the thing to LeBron, embarrassed him by turning him over, blocking his shot, making him look bad. And I think that was the moment LeBron then took over the NBA and said, we are not, we are not trying wow. to embarrass anybody. We're not trying to play tough defense. And that's when LeBron took over and said, this is the way it's going to go from now on. Because 2013. Well, there's your commissioner going. Sounds good to me. There's I social media. The there's everything. And 2013 is not that long ago when it comes to, hey, just the way the media is now and, and everything asked upon us is just too much for us to actually compete on a Sunday night. 2013 is not that long ago, so it's not like oh man, it was a it was a different world in 2013 with media. So it is what it is. I'll never watch it again. It's fine. Okay. I don't. It doesn't matter to me. I'm, I didn't watch one second of it this year. I can't remember watching a second of it the year before. I think I've watched a few minutes of it and then noticed that Luca was not interested at all. And since my guy's not interested in it, I'm not interested in it. And the other 24 guys aren't interested in it. I do think we're going to see a hundred point score in one of these games and break Wilt Chamberlain's record with 50 layups. So if they go with this international versus them, there is that versus NBA. So is it NBA international players versus American? Yeah, I believe players? Okay, because so. I would. This would be even cooler if they're like, no, no, Luca's on our team. All stars that but aren't it's in the NBA. All the rest of the players, all y'all's best. And then somebody's out there going like Elon Musk is like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a super team. And he's oh, out there, and he's awesome. you know like. Well, they won't do it because they're not gonna have Lori. Nothing is Lori Market, and he's a good player. They're just not gonna have him as an all-star and you're going to have to have on the international team the starting five would be tremendous and probably win the game if they all competed but i think your depth of we have to get 12 international players there's going to be agents and obviously americans upset that are like hey we get it we get that this is going to be a competitive game and we don't want to get embarrassed by the international team with Jokic and luka and Giannis and Embiid, and they're going to you know, I guess, I don't know, does Shea count as Gilgis Alexander? He's, as, uh, he's not American, yeah. so, like, you're going to, you know, they would win the game. They're a better team than the Americans, but the Americans that are, like, players, let's say, 18 through 25 in the NBA are going to go, this isn't fair. We're not making the All-Star game now because you're having to find 12 international players to make the All-Star game. By the way, as a follow-up, thank you to all of the helpful people who talked about Andre Lima's tattoo. I have now looked it up, and on Instagram, the tattoo is the I got effing bit bonus. And Dana White commented, I was going to give him 25000 but now that I see the tattoo, I'm giving him a $50,000 bonus for getting this tattoo. Does it's the other awesome. guy get fined for biting? I think when you get if DQ'd, that's the case, you might have to, yeah. If that's the case, Kevin, wouldn't that be like, hey, Kevin, we're fighting this week. I'm going to get 50K from Dana White just for getting a tattoo if you bite me. So, like, I don't know. And you're not going to get fine. Nothing's happening to you. You're losing the fight, but it's fine. But did they know that, like, I'll Dana White's going to go, grand. hell yeah, I'll give you this I, bonus. Well, from now, but he just set precedent, didn't That's he? That's true. So, if he sets precedent, now he has to pay all the players. I did not know that this happened, but did you see the women's basketball game that got stopped or the referee got changed in the NCAA tournament because of quote a background conflict so apparently and this makes sense to me you're supposed to disclose like all of your educational stops so they can determine if there's any bias or anything like that well one of the referees during the Chattanooga NC State game they found out Tommy Paris had a background conflict and had, I believe, a ten had a master's degree from Chattanooga, and so one of the backup, one of the backup refs got put in the game at halftime. Like they have backup refs ready to go. You saw one of the men's yeah. games; they had to give one of their shoes over because one of the refs busted their shoe running up and down. And they the wear court. the same size shoe. I, you know, that is kind of weird, and that seems a bit suspicious. But one of the backup refs switched out the shoe. This backup ref. Or the standby official got to come into the game because of an undisclosed, you know, potential bias, which I had no idea they did that. It makes sense though. Wow. I think I think uh it was one of the um one of the four by four, four by one hundred races. Allison Felix always carried an extra pair of shoes and one of her teammates 
like couldn't find her shoes. Oh. And so she was like, here, they're not the same size as you, but you can, if you can fit in them, you got at least have shoes. And she flew in them. She was, they were too big for her, but she still flew and they still, they still dominate. Now, this is another potential conflict of interest, Corey, but I want to see how much for sale you are. I love Allison Felix. I think she's amazing. Okay. At RJ Dukes in McKinney on Friday, we did our remote there. After you guys left, I talked to somebody who has front row Oklahoma Sooner football tickets, but they want you to stop bad mouthing Baker Mayfield so much. <sighs> Deal. Our, oh, man, that was so that was Baker's so great. Fast. Carter thinks Baker's great. Yeah, Baker's great. fantastic. Would you give your ticket to Carter? Uh, I mean, you know what? I would send all of my kids to Baker's house just to hang out uh, at this point. Maybe they can learn something from a, a true human like that. Okay. Pure a human. true human? Pure human. 100%. You weren't sure human. he was human before these tickets don't were? Don't worry about that, Mike. I'm just... Mike, listen. Don't get in the way on this for me, all right? From like a truly great person or a great guy. Human. But just pure from a human. human. Just yes. from a true 100% human. 100% pure human. Yep. You don't know how many people out there might be butterflies? How many humans what? do you think are... Not 100% human. Oh, you better tread lightly, my friends, <laughs> with whatever you're about to say. Tread lightly. Hey! Half. Oh my god, that was the wrong thing to say. I don't know. Let's talk about Trevor Etienne. He is the... Travis? Travis? He is the brother of Travis Etienne. Okay, that but makes I'm, sense. But I'm glad yeah. you guys... I thought it was Trevor Lawrence. No, okay. I'm, I'm glad you guys are on top of this. I do appreciate You combine both these Clemson guys into one person. <laughs> he is a running back for Georgia. He got charged with reckless driving, affixing materials that reduce visibility of windows, failure to maintain lane, and improper driving as part of a DUI stop. Have you ever been in the car with somebody who has had something on their window that could reduce the visibility that could get them a ticket? Is uh, that just like illegal tint? Yeah, or I did have probably not just a big old sticker. I had illegal tint. What? But I didn't know it was illegal. The guy, the guys at the tinting place were like, which ones do you want? And I was like, I don't know, which one should I get? They were like, this dark one's really cool. And I was like, hell yeah, it is. Let's put it on. And I got pulled over and the dude was like, this is a legal tent. You can't have this dark in the front in the front two seats. Did he give you a ticket or a warning? He gave me a warning. And so I was able to go to go remove it. So I have had that before. I whenever I have some somebody puts like a hat or a piece of paper on my dashboard, I always freak out because I don't feel like I can see. Does that does that affect y'all y'all too? When you're driving and somebody puts the, like uh, the, something up on the dashboard, I don't feel like I have the whole window because the reflection of like that piece of paper or something. Why didn't you take it off? You, they can't do that while you're driving. A piece of paper? No, like, yeah. On like you get to your car, like you go to a game or whatever, and they they post something underneath your windshield wiper. I get <laughs> it. You decided to just leave it there. <laughs> No, no, like when I'm sitting in the car uh -huh. and like, let's say my wife, a passenger, a friend gets in and they just like throw a, a folder up on the dashboard. I'm like, I immediately move it because I can't drive like that. I'm like, on the stuck. inside of the car. <laughs> so I got you. Okay. <laughs> Man, Mike looks very suspicious. <laughs> because of the reflection the of reflection, it? Yes, the reflection throws me off. Like I, I can't put a hat up. Nothing can be on the dashboard. Keep every, keep the dashboard clear. You Okay. I know what you're talking about. I understand. I get a hat. It seems like you don't understand. No, he's saying that there's a reflection, the reflection of whatever. Yeah. That I got it the first time. I get it. It just, that seems a little bit awkward. I get a hat because a hat can mm -hmm. actually take away part of your view. I yeah, totally or like a dog. Get that. But just the reflection of it is interesting. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Coming up next. It's time for Gridiron Gravy. What one word that I can say on the radio would you use to describe the Cowboys offseason? We'll do it next right here on The Fan.
This segment is brought to you by Classic Chevrolet in Grapevine. They're the number one Chevy dealer in the world. More silver autos than anyone else. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. Based on new Chevrolet registrations, 2023. Goff is under center. Receiver comes in motion from right to left. Goff will fake it and throw. That's picked off. It's picked off by Jordan Lewis as he threw it out to the left. Trying to throw the ball back to Montgomery, and Jordan Lewis comes up with the Cowboys' first turnover in the last three games. Can't see Masterpiece back here on 105 through the fan right now. It's time to go around the entire NFL and dip into some gridiron gravy. Indeed. That was a regular season highlight. Indeed it was. And we asked one word to describe the Cowboys offseason that I can say on radio. Meh. Confusing. Hibernation. Dookie. Dismal. Jackassery. Invisible. Inept. Lethargic. Confounding. Atrocious. Fart knocker. Huh. I like that. That's t is that two words, though? They put it as one word, so I choose to accept. Disappointing. Hyphenated. Jonesed. Oh, we got jonesed. <laughs> Apa yeah! Damn it. Apathetic. Substandard. Catastrophic. Debacle. You get the idea, and then one person put a dash in what Alec just played and insist that, yeah, here we go, is one word because of that dash. And you know what? I'm going to allow it. All in. No. Well, actually, have you seen what that new phrase hey, is now from him? The Rangers have one of their <laughs> phrases this year that you're going to see a lot, run it back. Uh-huh. Okay. Now they won the championship, so that's what they you want to do. You think the Cowboys? Yes, want to run they it want. Back. They want to run it back. Yeah. This is like that's their <laughs> thing. Is like this is perfect. Run it back. Um, I'm sorry, Kevin. You, to answer your question that you asked us. I'm going to read you this from Jerry Jones via Clarence Hill. I have been. Oh my God. Are you okay? Just, Are you mad already? Yeah, pretty much. But not me, at me though. No, I, no, no. Clarence Hill? No, not well. It's not Clarence Jerry, Hill's fault. He wrote it. <laughs> this is a quote from Jerry. Oh, okay, Jerry. Quote: I have been more all in before. By any definition, I have more all in to make a run back to the line of scrimmage than I've been to run fifty yards. It took more all in just oh. to get back to the. Oh, just wait. <laughs> It took more all in to just get back to the line of scrimmage than it did to run for 50 yards. Sometimes that's the bigger challenge. Blah, 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 blah. I think that we've been in a situation where we can get it done with lesser. More doesn't necessarily beat Green Bay. There are other things. Maybe having it better strategically in different spots, but more than necess doesn't necessarily beat them. So we're going to be asked to do some things different because we've got different players. So we've gone from all in to get it done with lesser yes i like it i bet you do i bet i'm so confused by, i'm so confused by that entire thing that you said there's a lot all the, of, of all the things yeah. you just said out loud kevin i don't understand any of them all right he's basically telling us i i've decided we're going, we're going to go reinvent. Gentlemen, this is a football. All right. He's, he's, is that what it sounds like? Yes. Let's start at the basics, guys. This is a football. And then we rebuild from there. We're getting back to the line of scrimmage rather than all the way back from the end zone. I don't, that's a weird analogy. He didn't have to do it. I appreciate it. He's trying to make it easy for me, the dummy. You get an analogy in every, pretty much every story that he tells. And here's the part that oh, is, no. that is agitating. Man, I have other stories, but I feel I feel like this is going to take over a lot. From the 432, Kevin seems to have anger issues like Sean. Fair. <laughs> Especially when it comes to this team. What we are doing here can hit the next five years because it can impact us that far. So you've got some real 
real decisions, end quote. As opposed to regular real decisions, these are real, real decisions. Let me remind you of how it's going to play out because this is what the Cowboys do every single time. Right now, the Cowboys have $16 million of dead money on their cap for this season. I know you might be wondering, why do they have so much dead cap money? Six million of that is from Ezekiel Elliott. And I know what you're thinking. Well, hold on just a damn minute, Kevin. That can't be right. He, he hadn't been on the team since 2022. But remember, what the Cowboys love to do is make that post-June 1st designation to be cut, which seems so cool and cutting edge at the time. Because you're going to save all this money. Well, get ready. We have the same exact conversation in a year when you talk about all the money that's still left on Michael Gallup's deal. Mm -hmm. Because that is the way they do it every single time and before you're like other teams do it like that great don't care about those other teams and i bet they've been to their conference championship game within the last generation washington hasn't fair enough see Cleve just named a team worse than the cowboys that's what i did Cow i do i agree i love we're that. not the worst no, and i'm not making fun of you it's just that we can always detroit do was it. just there yeah detroit just went so now there's only one team left in the <laughs> nfc we're down to one. Name one. Washington. One. That's it. But you can still name it. As a Cowboy fan, we're better than them. Name we did two. It. Can't. You can go over to the other side. The Cowboys. I Miami or something. They haven't been to a conference championship game. In so a here's here's the years. deal though. When when we heard all in, who really believed it? Oh, I think. Fifty-five to seventy-five percent of Cowboy fans. That's why they're so mad. Yeah, that that that's that part of. They believe everything Jerry says. I might, I like, I you might be right. I about wanted that. to believe it, but there wasn't a part of me that was like, it's really going to happen. I wanted to believe it, yeah. and I wanted to believe that his version of or my version of all in and his version of all in was, look, this team, it was there, but you can't even say it was so close. Like that that playoff game didn't even look close at all. It didn't look close by any means. So you can't say, well, my team was that close. We're just this player away. Yeah. And so they're like, well, we're not one player away. We might as well just break it all down and say, let's go rebuild it all. And that's what, I mean, it, not a not a complete rebuild. But as I heard, I think Bobby and Sean, or Bobby and RJ this morning, a renovation maybe. Like you're, you're kind of renovating this thing right now. And it looks like you're going on the low end scale of your ability to get uh, supplies. Yeah. Which is weird how we only talk about how this could affect the salary cap negatively in five years and never focus in on, but we put the money in now it might benefit us in five years. Plus that's just really agitating to hear. You're right. I didn't believe all in either. But when you hear all in and then you hear, hey, but something we do now might affect us in five years. Yes, expect that is yeah. what the concept of all in means. It could absolutely blow up in your face. But what the hell's the difference? You're not going to win anyway. Yeah, might as well go have some fun while you're trying to do it. Yeah, I could have got, oh, we talked about this. We created $50 million of salary cap space. It's not one player. We could have got you four players. You could have moved up a draft pick and gone ahead and sold out for that. We could have got you five new free agents and draft picks if you really wanted to go all in. Would it screw you for the next several years? Totally. But who cares? But you might have had a shot this year. Yeah, and if, that, if that's what you're really after. Yes, I'm really after winning really a championship. Want. But that's the thing. The Cowboys are still good enough that they'll be in the conversation to make the playoffs. I absolutely Cause believe they're, that. Because they're poor teams in the... I mean, heck, there are poor teams in the NFC, sure. let alone the NFC East. Like, Agreed. your NFC East look this year. I don't know how quick can Dan Quinn get that thing turned around. Is it going to happen I immediately? Hope not. I hope not. If quick. it does... I've oh. heard from every Cowboy fan. He was one of the worst defensive coordinators in the history of football. I'll just... It took that, that from losing that playoff game... They're like, well, we don't want Dan. It's fine. I mean, I think Mike Zimmer's fine. I think, sure. obviously, I think Dan Quinn did a great job here taking one of the worst defenses I in the too. NFL. Yeah. And he did. He didn't do a good job. In the end, he takes some blame yes. for yes. the 27-0 to zero loss at halftime, pretty much. But at the same time, now they're like, oh, good. He was pathetic at it. All right. He was pathetic at it. Just It makes you feel good as a Cowboy sure. fan to be like, everybody who leaves was pathetic at it, and now we got way better. Now, we talked earlier in the show about the hip drop tackle ban getting approved. The NFL owners did vote down the 4th and 20 onside kick alternative that I feel like we've been talking about for a couple of years. 
Competition Committee Chairman Rich McKay has said more onside kick alternatives will be discussed in the future. But for now, converting a fourth and 20 to get to keep the ball is a no-go. Let's go, though. Let's let's go for next year, man. Yeah. And like, that's the Cowboys' MO, right? Man, maybe we're like the onside kick rule change. There's always next year. When the schedule comes out, they're going to have two Thursday games. They're going to have Thanksgiving the game True. after. They're going to have at least two Monday night games and three Sunday night games. Yeah. Half of their games are going to be the standalone. That's the win. They got it. It's over. Like, they did it. They've won the championship. As soon as the schedule comes out, we will see the championship. And that will be five Sunday night and Monday night games. You have your Thursday You're Thanksgiving right. game, your Thursday night standalone game the next week, and that's the championship. And from the 6A2, what if we don't make the playoffs? Uh, we've talked about this before. I think that could be a good thing for this franchise. I, I realize in the short term it seems like a very bad thing. I definitely think that could be a good thing to wake this franchise up. But then again, maybe they'll be like, yeah, we'll just tweak it a little bit. It'll be fine. They'll lose one Sunday night game. Yeah. Like, it's not like the game, but they'll like the next It'll year. It'll go away. They'll only yeah. have four premium, super premium and games. I still don't think I believe that. I still think it'll be maxed out. Yeah, probably so. We're the can see Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Coming up next, are the Rangers actually healthier now than when they arrived in Arizona for spring training. Let's talk about it next right here on The Fan.
of Dallas Cowboys football. KRLD FM and HD1, Dallas, Fort Worth. Let's go, Cowboys. Always live on the free Odyssey app. From our fan studio, secured by DFWSecurity.com, it's the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan. KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. You guys ready for some Rangers? I know you are because of the pictures you were showing me in the break. Yeah. I'll be at the game tonight. Oh! With Dave Raymond calling the game Dude, on Valley Sports. It looks like Hurtado's adding a new, uh, yeah. the Milanesa tacos to their, oh. to the. Oh, they came out with the new stuff today. Yeah, I'm looking at all of it right now. And that's, that's a taco I want really bad. What is it? What's in it? Um, Milanesa. I don't know what that is. I'll show you, Mike. You'll, you'll be able to check Mila it out. Milanesa. Yeah. I want to ask the question Milanesa? if the Rangers are healthier now than when they started spring training. But I also wanted to throw a few things out there for you, especially if you're going to opening day. You can hear everything you need for your opening day coverage as well as the game right here on 105.3. The Fan World Series Championship banner will hang in the Rangers home ballpark. It'll be 20 feet by 30 feet. It'll be located adjacent to the Globe Life Field right field video board and unveiled from the park's roof support prior to the game. Also, before the game, there'll be the formal on-field presentation of the Commissioner's Trophy, which the Rangers won for winning the World Series. That's better than the President's Trophy, right? I mean, yes, because that means you won the championship as opposed to the fictitious regular season exactly. award. Exactly. I guess it exists, so it's not fictitious. I remember in 1987 when the Mavericks won the Midwest <laughs> Division. I was like, never hang that banner ever again. And they damn sure did. Well, wait, did they? No, I mean, at, as the at the time. Well, because it felt like goal accomplished and then you lost to your former teammate Dell Ellis in the first round and you're just like, we can't celebrate these things, man. We we got to wait. The there is one little area. You, Mike, you know where the where the big huge conveyor belt of jerseys are in the stadium? Yeah, near in the left field corner. Yeah, so yeah. back behind there there's a stairwell that goes up and a stairwell that goes down. On the stairwell that goes down, the picture on the wall, Kevin. Ruben Sierra, right? Not anymore. And now it is the picture of Adolis Garcia oh. giving him the. It's that's a home run, boys. We Let's gotta all find go. Ruben some space out need, there. Yeah, I'm we sure can't, that, we can't eliminate Ruben. Yeah, no, you're True. right. You're right. But this one, this picture, very specific for everybody that knows. I get it. It's, that's a round tripper, boys. That's better because now the history. Is being made where it's not like, hey, and Ruben was, was a great love player. Ruben. Finished yes. second in MVP voting in 89 to Robin Yount. But I get it. I totally get celebrating more of today's guys than, I hate saying it, but maybe some of the history of the Rangers. Now, the national anthem will be sung by Wade Bowen. Michael Carter. I've met him before. Have you? Yeah, he's Texas country. Michael Carter will be throwing out the ceremonial first pitch. He's been going to games for the Rangers since 1973, and he's been following Major League Baseball since 1950. Yvonne Rodriguez will, of course, catch the first pitch. You think he ever gets tired of catching pitches? Yes. And he's like, <laughs> I mean, there guys, you go. I don't want to do that anymore. Find a better catcher. Every He's one of the rare people, and I know this isn't going to help for radio purposes, Every former catcher that caught a while. Now, Bochi is a former catcher. They all have a limp or something, but most of them look like they just got off a seven-hour ride on a horse. <laughs> and this is how they all walk at the end of their career when it's all done. You're like, and you're just like, this is really like, it's a weird it's really wide-legged if we're yeah. describing it, if you're not. It's like, I just got Twitch off a horse and I can't, right my now. thighs aren't going to get anywhere close to ever touching. Mm-hmm. But my sure, hips are all, and they're sore. Right, and I'm sure Pudge is like, I gotta, you think, <laughs> like, I don't know if he'll squat. Maybe he will. Maybe, Maybe he'll he just, will. I bet he just stays Maybe there. Maybe one knees it. And you gotta wear certain pants to squat. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, you can't, and wear underwear or a belt, you know? Mike, you know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. you squat down and your shirt's not long enough. Could you imagine if you were an all-star catcher? And then they wanted you to come back and catch first pitches every year, just every once in a while. Mm. And everybody just saw they're like, dude, our, we love that guy. But he doesn't wear underwear or a belt. And we just see his crack every time I, he yeah, squats down. Yeah, I know down. where you're going with this. Hey, the parking lots 
open at two o'clock and the ballpark gates open at three 30 on opening day. If you want to get out there, be tailgating, catch the fever. Rangers batting practice starts at three 30 Cubs at four 30. So I wanted to run through all of that. The pregame ceremonies will start at six o'clock with first pitch, I believe scheduled for six 39. You again, you can hear that right here on one Oh five, three, the fan, but the question that I wanted to throw out, are the Rangers actually healthier now than when they arrived in Arizona? Because let's fire off cut number 12. I don't care how how pretty it looked. It still happened. And the count now at two balls and two strikes. He hit 327 on the season, had 33 home runs and 96 RBIs. And that was with, you know, two significant periods in which he was injured. Uh, Corey played in just 119 regular season games last year. And here he rips one past the second baseman, Hampson, and out into right center field. Welcome back to the Diamond, Corey Seager. What else would you expect? He's on board for Josh Young. Kevin, I just want to say the most surprising thing about that whole clip that was just played is that the count was 2-2. Two -two. Corey Seager had seen four pitch. pitches yeah. already, and that usually doesn't happen. You're not getting to two and two that often with him. And then you also had Josh Young. He got a single in his spring training return. These are, I know we were nervous about both of them, but Bruce Bochy was talking about their return and said the Rangers have been cautiously optimistic for about two weeks about both all-star infielders being ready to go for opening day. They both get hits. Not that that is like how you judge it. Just being in the game is a huge step. And Bochi said, this is good news. The timing is good as we approach opening day. And I was kind of curious about this because we were worried about Corey Seager, Josh Young. I know you've lost Nate Lowe for a little bit longer than we had all hoped for, but with those two coming back, it feels to me like the Rangers have maybe gotten healthier through spring training, which is unusual. Well, if I remember this correctly, and I know that Max Scherzer isn't ready yet, but when we were in January, so the calendar turns over, and we were really ticking off Kevin with saying, we'll see you next year. Yeah, Next year, buddy. And now we're in next year. And in January, we get the news on Seager. If I'm, I could be wrong on my timing here, but he needs a surgery that it just didn't heal the way that they thought it would heal Fear. in the off season. Yes. And the thought was then no timetable, but you're kind of hearing, look, probably not opening day. Yeah. But no timetable, but probably not. Max Scherzer, he's going to be back around the all-star break. And now we hear into May. Josh Young obviously wasn't hurt at all in the first day or two of spring training. He hurts his calf and it looked like, oh no, is he going to be ready? And now that Seager's not ready and Young's not going to be ready, your whole left side of your championship infield needs to be replaced. And now, I mean, I won't say 100%. They have to make it through today and tomorrow. But you're going to have your left side of your infield ready to go on opening day. And that was not – you weren't feeling that way on like February 20th or so when the Josh Young injury came out. And you weren't feeling like, hey, how long does this staff have to go until they get back at least one of these guys? And now you're hearing, hey, in two months, Max Scherzer should be ready to roll. So I feel, yeah, a lot better right now today about the injury situation. Yeah, for sure, man. Just having Seager back is, just, is such a massive – that's a, that's a huge void to fill for this team. So just adding that back into the mix kind of helps you lay out what you really hoped your lineup would look like. I know we kind of, we've been going over this idea and I'm, I'm very, very interested to see if Bochi is like, no, no, we are, we're going with him at number three. And that's just the way that it is. We're going with him there because we have Seager back and we don't have to fiddle with it too much. I wonder if that's the case. Now, I also know he, they've been kind of considering the DH for Seager for a little bit. I know they were, they were talking about like every third day or something like that. But just having him back there is a huge factor, Kevin. The Rangers also look good on the Nathan Evaldi front. He has had a sharp spring. Dude, he looks fantastic, too. Like, just like his, he looks lean and ready to pitch. Because that's somebody that I, I admit I do worry about the entirety of the season. He's awesome, but I do worry about the entirety of the season. I'll probably repeat myself 
when we get to Thursday because he's the opening night starter. I guess it's yeah. weird, like because it's it's going to be you know a six thirty start. Is last year in the month of April he was okay. He wasn't bad. He wasn't good. Yeah. He didn't have his breaking balls at all. His both of his breaking balls were not good. So he was pretty much a fastball split guy, and and he was trying to find. His off-speed pitches. That is very common coming out of spring training because those are feel pitches. Those are not so much just throw the living crap out of it and see what happens. That's usually fastballs, cutters, and change-ups or splitters too are going to be a little bit easier to, to have where you want them to be in April. Sometimes you feel great and you do have everything. I'm going to be interested here in the month of April, seeing Evaldi for the first time ever as a Ranger where you're watching him every fifth day pitches. What are, this is something to look for if you're kind of a newer Ranger fan or how is Evaldi's slider and curveball or cutter and curveball? What do those look like early in the year? Because he was an okay starter in April when he found those against the Yankees. That's when everything took off. That's when he became a dominant four pitch pitcher. Yeah. I, oh man, I wanted to throw this out there. The projected opening day lineup from Kennedy Landry, who does great work. I, she did pick Baylor to win the whole thing in Jared's thing. So, oh no. We have to question her on this. <laughs> so, you're not sure about that? Yeah. She does have inside She's knowledge, very, yeah. though. So, if, if you're okay. not. Okay. It, it could be it. I don't know. Don't I have no it. clue. I have not read this yet. So, Adola, you tell us out there. batting first. No. Okay. Marcus Simeon first. Corey Seeger second. Evan Carter third. Adolis Garcia fourth. Josh Young fifth. Jonah Heim sixth. Justin Foscu seventh, Wyatt Langford eighth, and DHing and Leody Tavares ninth. I'm not I'm not against that. Same. Like I, I'm not, if that's if that's what happens, I don't think it'll happen on opening day because of the lefty starting for the for the Cubs. Because yeah. of, of, and I think that's why I was surprised by. That. But if they had Langford batting, let's just say sixth, seventh, or eighth. That's not the end of the world to start your career right now with this team and this lineup to be like, yeah. hey, let's let's give him the month of April where he's batting lower in the lineup, where he's not in the heart of it. But if he is batting third, sweet. I think he's going to be unbelievable. I really do. He's going to have struggles. But if you want to take a little bit of pressure off of him, it's still it's always weird to me what pressure is and isn't because it's tough to define. So you're playing in the major leagues if you bat third there's a lot more pressure than batting seventh sure. it's weird that there is but they're like joey gallo did not want anything to do with certain spots in the lineup he felt like there was too much pressure in those right. spots the premium spots were like that's too much pressure for me i don't think wyatt langford's gonna have a problem handling pressure he had the pressure of spring training of hey we think you can make this team show us he's like all right how about if i'm the best player in all of baseball <laughs> Like I, I don't That'll think like work. it has been an issue for him, but if they wanted to put him later in the lineup, I have no problem with that. I do think he's going to be batting third for the majority of the season for the Texas Rangers. I see that's that's what I think as well. But you're right, Kennedy is very plugged in on all this stuff. Because the interesting note there is Justin Foscu as well, as opposed to we talked a lot about Jared Walsh, right. but. Foscue. And maybe I don't think they both can make the team. I do not think that I Foscue that. and Walsh can both make the team. If she's going off of there's a lefty starter on opening night, I hear then you. I get that Foscue yeah. or Ezekiel Duran is your first baseman. But if if I do think if Foscue's on the team, that means that they are asking Walsh to go down to AAA. And then I thought this was cool as well since the Rangers have broken camp out of Arizona. 7,282 was the average attendance over the span of the 15 games. Or excuse me, 7,510. For and spring training? For spring training games, they sold out the stadium three times and drew a stadium record crowd of 12,026 fans against Cincinnati on March 14th. Good be the champs, right? Yeah, and all that money goes directly to that uh, that swim pool across the street from the stadium. I don't That's know where it all goes to build more that pools. is factually accurate. Since I got to do that game on that night, I wonder how much it probably would have been sold out, but you got a two-for-one ticket. 
Yeah, for the, wow. you got the to see the spring, game. Yeah, you got to see the spring see breakout that. seven inning game, and then you got to see a major league game afterwards. I think that is entirely possible. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Coming up next, let's stick with the world champs. The biggest Rangers questions going into spring training. How many of them got answered? Let's talk about it next right here on The Fan. Before we do that, guys, let's
And the expressway on the fan is brought to you by the on-time experts. Taken away by Duchesne. Looks to flip it to the front. Now Haskin it leans into a shot and he scores. Miro Haskin. What a shot. And a massive goal to make a 3-2 Dallas. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105 through the fan. The Stars defeat the Coyotes like they always do. This time it was 4-2. They get back in action tomorrow night at the San Jose Sharks as they continue their hope of winning the Central and perhaps having the best record in all of the NHL. It's a very tight race. Need to keep stacking up those two points. But right now let's go back to a team that we know can win it all. Because they are the defending world champion Texas Rangers. So I wanted to run through an interesting article that I was reading from the Dallas Morning News. It's the biggest questions going into spring training and how many were answered. Is there, I can just start going down the list or is there a specific question y'all had going into spring training? Um, Where will the second starting pitcher come from? Second? Yeah. Because Jordan Montgomery was your two. Okay. If Aldi was your one. So Still available. And, and uh, <laughs> are you not buying into that report that he has multiple long he found out. Deals. Hold on, hold on, Mike. He's as available He's to talking the, to Jim Bowden. He's as of as available to the Rangers as all in is available to the Cowboys. The Oh no. The um <laughs> just just taking a shot at the Cowboys. It's not even their segment. You know? Actually, was, anyway, <laughs> that's, that's a good that, point. That that's a good point. Um, I, I, team. I like John Gray, uh, and I do want to see more from him. I did. I was kind of hopeful to have a left-hander following Evaldi in the rotation. Uh, we have a lot of right-handed starting pitchers right now, even on the injury report. So that's that's kind of where I was like, wh- who is going to be that? That question has not been answered other than John Gray will get his pitching time in. Does it, you're right about that. Does it help at all that all of your starters have come out of the spring thus far unscathed and ready to yep. go with Michael Lorenzen? The idea is you're going to build them back up, sub in for Bradford, who would then go to the bullpen for the time being. At least that's how we think it's going to go, and then Lorenzen could bounce back into the bullpen depending on health and everything in the second half of the season. Yeah, that's helpful. Uh, okay. I have question. I still have questions about Lorenzen. Um, fair. Which I think is very fair. The But it does help that they added something. You know, that's that's better than saying they're going to do something and not. True. I feel like that was a shot against the Cowboys. I didn't again. say anything about the Cowboys. I know, but I feel... Said the quiet part quiet. Like it was. All right, here's another question. Before y'all respond, we're going to play some audio that answers this question. Figuring out if Wyatt Langford fits on the opening day roster. Done. Let's go to cut number 15. This is this is super cool because they had the cameras rolling for Boach telling Wyatt Langford he did it. How are you? Yeah, how you to see him? Wyatt, how are you doing? Good, good. Uh, I gotta tell you, one, one of the coolest moments, uh, you know, for manager is a moment like now. And, and that's being able to tell you you're with the, the major league team here. And uh, I could be happier, I could be prouder for you. I mean, when, you know, how fast this is all happening for you. I, and I gotta tell you, there's never any doubt in our mind. I don't know if you ever had any doubt, but <laughs> I just want you to know uh, this is a re- really, really cool moment. You're going to help us win. You're going to help us win a championship here. And, uh, and so, congratulations on everything that's happened uh, to you. I know, you know, just a year ago, you are playing for the Gators, and now here you are. So, yeah. it's pretty cool. Yeah. Nice yeah. work. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. Win some games. It's awesome. Why? Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. You've earned it, man. And this is just yeah. the beginning. Yeah. you got the best yet to come. So, proud of you. Oh, yeah. 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 Great job. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Guess what? Nice. All right. Thanks, nice work. He is awesome. That what a stud. That is is that Chris Young I think saying it is Chris what a Young stud, saying, what right, a stud there? right there? And I you know the Mike before you have more experience on this for sure, but they didn't fiddle far around with it. They didn't try and play any jokes on them. They wanted to be straightforward. Look, man, this is a great moment for me because I get to tell you that you're about to be in the show. And then he lines up the you're gonna help us win games, you're gonna help us win a championship. 
And like that that part right there, if you're Wyatt, you got to be sitting on the other side of it, just getting ready to roll. I think you guys got to cover the team with me. This is a pretty serious team yep. led by a serious general manager yes. and somewhat of a, I mean, I think Bochi's awesome. He has great personality, but somewhat of a serious manager. So yeah. I don't think there's much practical joking going along with the Texas Rangers. I'm not saying that's good or bad. That's just the personality of this team. Marcus Simeon isn't here to laugh and have fun. Corey Seager isn't here to laugh and have fun. So you just kind of look at the way this team is built it's a pretty serious, not going to goof around and play practical jokes. I'm not saying it never happens, but I think that this is, uh, I guess, a little bit on the extreme of a serious team, which is fine. It is what it is. That's just the personality of this team. It's a pretty serious, like, we'll play jokes every once in a while, but we're going to definitely be on the low end of like stuff like that. We're coming in saying, hey, you made the team. Congratulations. You deserve it. Now we move on to the next the next guy next situation because obviously it wouldn't be funny at all if bruce bochi said this is one of my favorite things to do is send players down to the minor <laughs> leagues oh my gosh i could see how much, outside folks yes. would think that's funny that would be right, so no. rude but you've seen so many times yeah. where they kind of act like they're sending a guy yeah. down but they're really keeping them and and it's always tough. I'll always remember, and I'm not making this up. Frank Robinson was doing his crossword puzzle while they were sending me back down to the minor leagues. And then I said, all right, well, thank you for the opportunity and stood up to shake Frank Robinson's hand. And he pulled his head up at me and was like, what, what do you want? And I was like, I was trying to shake your hand because um, I was in major league camp. And, I, and he's like, I don't, you know, he, you could tell by yeah. his body language, like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be here. I'm not part of this. I don't care. Yeah, this crossword to figure out. This one is a little complicated, but I'd have to say you haven't really answered this question totally either. Finding young players to step forward. Now, I know that sounds like a weird thing to say since we just talked about Wyatt Langford. I interpret this as pitchers uh, because you feel good about Wyatt Langford, feel great about Evan Carter. You think Evan Carter can contribute this year? I, You know what? I'm going to go on a limb and say yes. Okay. But... You looked at the quartet of young pitchers that we talked about. Zach Kent, Owen White, Colwyn, Jack Leiter. Can somebody show me that, hey, put me up against Bradford for the fifth spot? No. Uh, Jack Leiter looks better than the rest, and it looks like he can contribute to this team now. It might be in a relief capacity, but if you look at Owen White, Colwyn, Zach Kent... They were all in the early push of players down to the minor leagues. And these were players that the Rangers were, I mean, I know they didn't announce it, but they were saying, show me that you should be on this team. And they could. Yeah. And that has a lot to do with what we've been talking about for years with this, this club, not, not the, not the, the pro team, but just the development yep. of everything yep. underneath as they grow into it. I don't know, like, because we've we discussed, do people, is it the scouting to try and find the guys or is it the development in that? And this offseason, I don't know how much more they dove in on, we got to fix this part of it. Because, Kevin, we did point out the guy that's in charge of that part of it, at least, is still there. So he still is, is kind of overseeing all that. What other changes have been made there? But you're right, man. They do get that opportunity. Mike was... Was Jack Leiter, when he was in his bullpens with the team, was he was Maddox there watching him? Was Maddox talking to him? I is mean, that... my guess is I'm sure, but I can't verify. Okay. I didn't see his bullpens, but I'm I'm sure when that you was... give a person $7 million, just going off of my history in professional baseball, uh, when you get somewhere around $2 million or more, they're going to have a lot of eyes on you at all times. And that was something, that was one of the reasons that they had him pitch that game in front of Maddox and Bochi because they wanted their guys to see him. So that is tough, man, but I think there's there's still a lot more. Look, we built the we built the franchise to to win. You, you saw that last year from Chris Young. Now we need to build the franchise to develop. The first month for Leiter is going to be so important. Agreed. Because if he comes out and has a, I'm just throwing out a number here, a 2.5 ERA in 20 innings, now you're like, he did it. He yeah. discovered it. I know it's AAA. We'll see what he can do. But now it's like 
he really earned it, if that makes sense. Yes. And I know it would just be in one month and about four starts, but you really want to see when Jack Leiter comes up, and he is going to come up this year and pitch, that you look at his numbers and go, he's he's as ready as you can be without ever seeing him pitch in a major league game. This one's interesting to me. Can the Rangers make sure defending the World Series title isn't a burden? Now, we only have spring training to go That's through, good but... That's a good one. I, it is a very good one. Well done, Evan Grant. Dude Perfect showed up. So did the influencer King of Juco. It looked like they were having fun, and then Bochi added, I haven't seen any change in the team. They got about their business just like they did. Has there been more attention? Because we just talked about it. Sellouts at the spring training facility. Way more people in the backfield. So they've gotten bigger attention, but they're still having fun. And Bochi is saying, I don't see any change in their approach to the work. Yeah, I and, and that's the thing that, that's where what Mike was just discussing. That's where you, these guys, they know how to win this way. Like it was Corey Seager knows how to win championships for one. Sure. Uh, it, somebody texted in and said the fact the man who just won the World Series in his first year out of retirement just told Wyatt Langford that he's going to help win championships holds some weight. It's not like every Definitely. other Rangers manager who had never won a championship saying that to you. Yep. And so that that's where you lie that part of it. You do have a manager that's like, hey, here are the important things for season two as opposed to the things that aren't important. You still got to focus on these parts uh, to get what we ultimately want to get again. Now, this is probably the biggest question. I I could turn out to be spectacularly wrong on this, but are we feeling good about our bullpen going into the regular season? And one of the examples that got thrown on there, you put, Evan, you put Ian Kennedy on the roster last year out of, I don't know, hope that it would all work out. This year, you might send both Grant Anderson and Mark Church back to the minors because they have options, even though they've both pitched very well. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be regular season success. But the fact that they're going to say, hey, these two guys pitch really well, but let's send them to the minors because I think we've got the people we want and we won't have to lose any of them because they don't want to go back down to the minors. That feels encouraging in terms of depth to the bullpen. I, I hate to say we'll find out. I but get you it. just don't I, you're right. know. Uh, I hope that it is as good as it has been in spring training, but they're going to get tested early. Chicago's a team competing for a division title. We know you're playing right after that Tampa, who has now consistently won pretty much 100 games or close to for a good five-year stretch. And then you play the Houston Astros. Like I mean, you're looking at your first 10 games, and it's tough. And they're probably going to be contested games if that makes sure. When it's when it's six to one, it's a little bit different to judge a bullpen. Now holding a six one lead in the sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth is going to be like, hey, this is going to encourage me if at the end of the game the final score is still six to one or eight to two. You know, you're like, hey, they they just went three, four innings and only gave up one run or didn't give up a run. That's going to be encouraging in winning situations or pressure situations where it's kind of a one-run game to hold it there or to keep that lead. So I think because the schedule is tough in the month of April, we went over it, and there are 30 games to start the year until you get to May 1st, 22 games are against a winning record. So it's going to be tested probably early, and your starters probably aren't going deep in games early in the season. True. So your depth is going to be tested in those first 30 games for sure until hopefully guys can go a little bit deeper in games and uh, you know maybe your offense just starts crushing people. I can't remember who it was last year. It might have been Tampa or somewhere like we don't even have games to close. We just win them by so many runs. It might have been Atlanta. I can't yeah. remember. It's just like we I would don't, accept that as well. We don't have outcome. safe situations because we're always up by four or more runs when we get to the eighth inning. Ex I accept. Yeah. Hold on, you'll accept being up by four or more runs every game. Yeah, yeah. And you're just like, just throw out whatever. All right. That's, if, that's, if that's what they want to do, that's fine. It's long relief. Close this thing out. We're the KNC masterpiece right here on 105 through the fan. A couple of notes for you. If you want to see us out and about in the Metroplex doing the show this week, 
Wednesday, we'll be at Rally House in Mansfield. And on Friday, we'll be at the Buffalo Wild Wings off of Lemon in Dallas. So, you know the showtime, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. If you want to come out, hang out, partake in those businesses while we do the show, that would be phenomenal. Eat some wings. Yes. Drink some cold beers. I know that's what you want to encourage them to do the most, right? Buying some UNT gear. Fair. At Rally House. Can. That yeah. it, absolutely. Or some Cowboys gear. You probably need to separate some of those things because I don't know if you can bring beer into the Rally House, and I'm guessing they don't have UNT merch for sale at Buffalo Wild Wings. To be mm -hmm. fair, I don't actually know that to be 100%. You know what? You that know me so well. You know me. You know what my counter argument's already going to be. That would be my guess. <laughs> now... It's time for some Mike Likes It. All right, so I don't have this. Maybe I'll get it tomorrow, but we're we're in here doing our show, and Brian Cranston, famous actor, Breaking Bad, yes. other... not Is it not Malcolm in the Middle? Yeah, or, Malcolm, yeah Malcolm in the Middle. Other things, too, but, I mean, he's a pretty famous person, and, and he is the narrator of Opening Week is Here. Okay. Uh, if you remember last year, it was really cool because they kind of just talked about it's kind of I don't know new baseball. Do you what did yeah. they call it? Yeah, it was and it was. Uh, oh my gosh, the dude from NBC, uh, Bob Costas, yeah. the new it, Ready Baseball. Ready Baseball, thank you. And Brian Cranston, by the way, huge Dodgers fan. Yes. So I'm wondering, Brian Cranston, not getting to the commercial, but getting to this. He's on MLB Network, and I think NBA does a great job of this. I've talked about this before, but I'm like, do more of this. Yeah. Famous people actually do like baseball. I think there's a lot of people that go, oh, baseball. It's not. And then some people are like, I like it because Taylor Swift likes it. How many sure. girls or even women are like, I like football now. I don't, know if sure. I don't know if it'll carry on throughout their life, but it was like this weird thing of people that didn't care at all about football, but love Taylor Swift. Like, well, if she likes it, then I must have to like Fair. it. Have you seen the video, the viral video at the Detroit Red Wings games where they're playing a Taylor Swift song and all the little girls in the arena are singing it at the top of their lungs? The music stops. The girls keep singing it, much like they do at Stars games with uh, with friends in low places, I believe. But the girls are keep they just keep singing it until the chorus. And it's like, hey, man, look at all these young yeah. girls hockey fans right now that are here and they're just having a great time because we did this. So my first question going to the game tonight, I'm wondering because tickets are very available, very cheap. I'm thinking Wyatt Langford is going to play left field. If you want to sit in left field or if you want to sit down the left field line or behind third base, like you can go to this game for anywhere from like those tickets, 15 to $40. Like, wow, it's it's. Obviously, an exhibition game, so it's different than a regular season game. But if you want to go see, you know, Lankford and Carter and Seeger play short, and I think the Rangers are going with a bullpen day today. But if you want to see a lot of the regulars, they're going to be out there tonight playing against uh, the Red Sox. But I'm wondering about this. This is my question for Mike Likes It. Last year, the Rangers, I don't want to say struggled, but they started turning the ballpark into a little bit better environment, yes. but it took some time and effort, a lot of effort. Yes. Obviously section 133 yeah. was unbelievable. And Caden, am I getting Caden's? I hope I'm hope I'm saying your name right, Caden, because I know he's a Tolo and listens who kind of started section 133 and I text him and stuff. He's an awesome dude. But I'm wondering, my question is, how well do you think the environment's going to be for games? You just mentioned the Taylor Swift singing and girls singing. Is there a way the Rangers can do that where there's some sort of, I don't know if it's Creed. I don't know if it's a new thing in 2024. I feel like Creed's got some juice at the beginning of the season for sure. Yeah, I'm just it's, wondering it's over. the environment this year. I know that was a big deal with the Rangers last year. They want that party. We're into it. The crowd is is going nuts. Uh, they understand the big situations. Uh, I, I think it in, improved as the season went along. I'm wondering, do we start at the end of 2023, or is it a whole new beginning for fans to kind of get into the games and understand that kind of atmosphere you want to create in Arlington? I think there's going to be a crap ton of carryover from the end of the season, and I think – at least to start, they should do all the same things that people were loving in the postseason. Because that's just for the fans. Like, the players have turned the page, and good for them for that. But I think the fans are going to want to be celebrating okay. this for at least a month. One of the things that we hear about Cowboys fans is that they've priced out the hardcore fan 
in that stadium. Sure. And it's it's not as much of a home field advantage as it should be. And I don't know if the Rangers, they bumped up a couple things, but not too much. Uh, but I don't know how Rangers fans feel about that. But we saw enough of them that were there in that environment that I think it carries over to start this season. The winning continues to help. You keep winning. Now, the one thing the fans can't do is get comfortable with it and just be like, all right, now like we win. We're a good winning team. No, you're part of that. You you stay with that. You keep Section 1. You grow with Section 133 into the entire 130s. Okay. You know, grow that even more, y'all. I like it. Take control of it as a fan base. I have a homework assignment because I don't have an answer. If you guys have an answer right now, you can. But my homework assignment is for the Tolos and for us, come up with something that you think would be unique at our ballpark for fans to kind of change the way that we cheer at a game. Like, obviously, Section 133 has the chance. It's very Texas A&M. I believe yeah. like, a lot of that has come from Texas A&M. They're not doing the exact things A&M d- does at, uh, what's the, Bluebell Olson. Park. Olsen Field, Bluebell Park. It is Bluebell. Best ice cream in the country. I think it is Olson, Olson yeah. Field and Bluebell Park. But I'm just like, what could we kind of create? Like, what would be something if you thought about this year, which would be really cool at the ballpark for like the fan experience, whether it's the music, like, uh, Oh, if they played this song, I think this would get, get things going or whatever. But I was just thinking of something like that. I'm hoping that the environment, I'm not saying tonight, I get us an exhibition game, but that it's just like, I have to be here. And I think there's going to be a lot of tickets sold, but then once you're there, you go, I got to come back to this because not only did I get to see the world champs play, but that was a blast. You know, Mike, you watch Welcome to Wrexham, right? Yeah. And one of the things I love that they do is they have some a, a few key star players on those teams, and they come up with songs for those players. Yeah. Like the one about Paul Mullins. He's here. Just, he's there. He's everywhere. Cuss, oh, yeah, because they cuss a lot over <laughs> they there. They do. Go- well, Fair. But it, like that's, I would love like some Corey Seager songs, some Adola songs, and, and that even the stadiums. Like, look, we play these. But the fans sing them. Like, they're the ones doing it. Because that's ultimately what you want. You want that engagement from your the people that are in the stands. Just like that. I would love for, I don't know if it's 133 or what, whoever yeah. does it, to create some of those types of chant songs. Because that it seems like soccer environment is probably the most the the, the most fun environment yeah. in all of sports. We talk me. about Latin America or Korea. Yes. We just saw the Korea. And I'm not saying that... Uh, you have to do everything that Korea does or Japan or Latin America. But I'm really hoping that the Ranger environment somehow becomes a unique, different environment in the United States of America for baseball. Could we get a Corey, 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 Corey? Yeah. Corey, Corey. Something like, Corey, won't you hit one to me? Corey, hit a bomb. You know, okay, something so, like that. All right. Well, you have homework assignment to see if I need maybe a band. You can think a band. Of, well, you're not going to bring a band to the game. You're going to have to do it with your whole band. I'll bring a guitar. Okay. I guess you can bring the zonk drum. But I don't think you can bring a whole band in there. You don't know. Yeah. Hey, do you guys got any amps? <laughs> I'll take my amp with me. Check, check. Yeah. I need a plug. I wonder this. That just hit me. Do you think there's ever going to be a point where new stadiums are built with, you know how when you go on airplanes and a lot of them now have plugs that you can plug your phone in to stay charged throughout the flight? Do you think there's going to be stadium seating where there's seats that have the electricity to plug your phone in or your whatever in? Like Maybe not at a baseball stadium. Do you think you'd be more likely to see it at the hockey or basketball arena because it's half the people? As you just were talking, as we were talking, that just came into my head so okay all right maybe so, he's might. just trying to get the the whole place charged up so nice. i might not get to all these that's fine there's 30 of them we have tomorrow we have wednesday and then we have thursday with Derek holland what about we've got tonight who needs tomorrow save tonight that's a different song by the break of dawn 30 things to be excited about for opening day all right that's where i was going this is okay. number one I, Number one, this isn't for Texas Rangers. This is for all of Major League Baseball. I'm sorry. But I do believe the Rangers, is it number five? It's number five. The Rangers are number five on this list. We'll get to that one. Tease. Okay. 
I can't wait to see. This isn't from me. This is from Major League Baseball. I can't wait to see Juan Soto at Yankee Stadium with a right field wall that will look close enough for him to reach out and touch. What did uh, Woodward call that? A, a, a Little League Park? I I don't know if it was. It might have been Yankee Stadium. I can't remember which one it was. Cincinnati, to me, seems like the smallest. And then that stupid thing in Houston, which really worked out to our benefit in the playoffs. Yeah, so I do really like that true, place yeah, now. But, um, I do think it's going to be very interesting with Juan Soto. If you look at his numbers at Petco Park, they were horrible. Real, and okay. so if you're wondering what happened to Juan Soto, and he didn't have a bad year last year, but if you go break down his numbers at all the stadiums, like it just was not a good stadium for the way that he hits the ball. So I'm just wondering with Juan Soto how that's going to be. Look, this is from MLB.com. I'm just going to quickly go through this one. Can't wait to see Soto hitting in front of Aaron Judge at Yankee Stadium. All right, enough Yankees. There's yeah, the first two out of the that. way. They're they both Yankees. I get it. So this is number three is very interesting to me. I'm not going to talk about fantasy baseball draft, but it was really tough to figure out where to draft this guy, and I didn't draft him because I wasn't as high on him as somebody else was. I can't wait to see... Mike Trout healthy again. Yeah. Like, I just, this is the tough Good part luck. about Mike Trout. I think he's still a top five player in the game if he's healthy. Last year, he did not have a great year when he was healthy. It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't Mike Trout esque. But number three is Mike Trout healthy again. But my question to that is how long is that going to last? Is it yeah. going to be two weeks? Is it going to be two months? I can't. I couldn't bet on it yesterday being six months. I just can't bet. I figured, I was talking to my son about it, and I said, you're going to have to deal with him not playing for two months. Yeah. And you just don't know when that's going to happen. And then you don't know how is he going to be when he comes, let's just say he misses the month of May. I'm just throwing out a random month. How's he going to be in June? Like, is he, when he misses the month, and then is it going to be when you really need him down the stretch? And I don't think the Angels are going to compete for a championship, but when you really want Mike Trout to help you win a fantasy baseball title, is he really going to be out there playing? And that's a tough one for me. Mike Trout, I'm excited to see him healthy again, but who knows? I know. And the second you hear he got pulled early from a game because of a potential yeah. strain, then I'm like, there you Here go. it is. Here's yeah, Mike Trout. I, hate it. I did see, I'll just stop at the top three, I guess. Uh, but I did see where Mike Trout did say, and I agree with him on this, and he is a confident person. He said, I'm still the best in the game when healthy. But he even is like admitting, like, I have to be healthy to, yeah. to be that guy still. From the 940, will anybody pitch to Trout in that awful lineup? I, w I will be. I will be questioning. <laughs> Let's just say you're playing the Angels, and it's second and third and two outs in the eighth inning and you're up by a run or two why would you ever pitch to him Shohei ain't batting behind him I, I'm gonna assume it's Anthony Rendon or something. I don't even know he doesn't gross he's not. so you just you go we're never letting Mike Trout beat us like after the sixth inning if Mike Trout can tie or win the game he walks every time we're the KNC masterpiece right here on 105 through the fan coming up next it's time for the C Block starring Corey Majors. Man, I talked to some guys from the Texas Cactus League on Saturday. You want to know what that is? I'll tell you next.
Command Studio, secured by DFWSecurity.com. It's the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan. KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Wanted to throw this update out from Alden Gonzalez. Shohei Otani will not be taking questions from the media. Instead, he will read a statement at approximately 4.45 Central Time. So he will read a statement. There will be no questions asked, which is fine, just as long as he doesn't think that means that people will stop asking him. Well, it, but what if in his statement he says, now please do not ask me any more questions that, about this? I mean, that's great. That is just not how the world works unless he goes, I'm guilty, and now I will be leaving baseball forever. I'm pretty sure that fans don't want the media to ask any more questions or be... Uh, I'm a fan. I want to know if the biggest star in baseball went against their rules that they banished another player forever for. Um, they don't want you to ask questions about stuff, dude. They just want to. They just want their favorite players to play sports. That's may, how it is. May, you might be right. If something happens on off the field, nobody wants to know I that want stuff. Know. Nobody wants to know it. I'm somebody. Eight seven seven eight eight one one zero five three. If you think Kevin's somebody. We'll I wait. know, man. I do not think I want to see the answers to that question. <laughs> I think you're somebody, I, bro. I do not. And that's all that matters. Now it's time for the Steve Lock starring Corey Majors. All right. Um, I uh, I are got you still waiting for these responses to come in? No, I had an idea the other day because there's a um, there's an Anderson Pack song on uh, his album Malibu, and Alec, I'm kind of looking at you right now. There's a line where he says, went from community ball to balling with the majors. Oh. And, you know, we've hosted community ball for my possibilities. True. Might do it again this year. We actually, well, not might. We are. I know, um, I just, we're already locked in, bro. It's dramatic. Uh, so th I was wondering if I could get that as my intro, you know, if I, yeah. but I need to put an intro together. So I've got to, I got to figure all that out. Anyway, the, I got a text from a friend who asked if I could hop in on his fantasy baseball draft on Saturday. Okay. And they are the Texas Cactus League. I don't know if there's any other Texas Cactus Leagues out there, but, uh, but you know, this one was the one that they asked me to join. So around 530 on Saturday, before I went to go see Ghostbusters, the new movie, Whatever it's called, Frozen or something. Frozen Empire? Frozen 2. Um, <laughs> that already exists. Before I went to go see that movie with my family, I hopped on with them. And basically, here's how it went. I'm on the Zoom. They're all in a room. They linked me up to their TV. And they just started firing baseball questions at me. Ooh. And asking about the Rangers, they're all big time Rangers fans and everything, and they were and asking them, you know, about the station and stuff like that, and just they just wanted to know stuff. I had no clue. Like I really was like, what am I gonna do? I have no clue what I'm supposed to do here. I hop in on the Zoom and I just kind of sit there and watch y'all drive. I don't know. Look, but then when they started, they started that process. It's easy for me to talk about what we do, Corey. Super easy. I should have told you this story ahead of time. It might have made you feel better. Just remember. Whatever charitable function or help you get involved with, you cannot give a worse answer than I did when I was at, I think it was, I want to say it was Renner, maybe Shefton in Plano for reading with the stars. <laughs> and I, it wasn't Shefton, they were too old. It was an elementary school. It was elementary school. And one of the first questions I got asked was, have you ever read any of the Harry Potter books? Keep in mind. Or which one was your favorite? And yeah. which one was my favorite? Was Reading with the Stars, to which I did not think my answer through whatsoever and blurted out, no, but I've seen all the movies. <laughs> At which point. He said, I didn't read any of these books. Alarm went off in my head. <laughs> I'll give you the sanitized version. I was like, hey, Nimrod, that's not the right answer. And I go. It's just because I've been too busy and my family wanted to watch the movies. But which book is the best? And I tried to pivot and she gave me a great answer. I think it was like the, she said it was the Chamber of Secrets, which is the second one, I believe. And I tried to pivot. But just remember, whatever you answer to a question probably won't be dumber than that. Well, I, none of my answers I don't think were that dumb um, because most of the questions were about Rangers baseball and this team specifically. And we've been elbow deep in this 
For sure. I mean, for months now. I mean, right. since the World Series, we haven't stopped talking Rangers. True. I can honestly say I don't think there's a single show. I think you're right. Since the World Series, which that can't be said for the history of uh, baseball at the station or yeah. most stations yeah. anywhere else. Because the Rangers, once it was done, you're like, man, that stunk. Or man, right. hopefully they can add somebody to this team. But as Chris Young has said, they've changed the standard for this team. So it was, it was a lot of fun. Well, going through it, you know, you always do the, you, you, you answer questions, you have some fun. They asked about Jerry Jones and what it's like talking to him on a weekly basis because we do that. And then, you know, I was like, listen, man, talking to Bochy is an absolute blast. It we is. have Bochy every Wednesday. Yep. When's our first one coming up? Kevin? I need to double check on that. I'm hoping it is actually this Wednesday. Okay. The, I'm going to double check on that. That being you. said, when we have him on, you just feel like you're talking to somebody that cares about what they're having a conversation about with you, except for whenever he's trying to figure out his Uber situation. Right. Uh, that one time he was that like, hold on, guys, I'm on an Uber right now. Bobby Wilson's trying to figure it out. <laughs> But uh, it was, so, it was so much fun. But like, it's just we have we have have had a lot of great opportunities on this show to interview some really fun people. Very true. Sometimes some duds. So I just I just got to, a chance to talk with these guys about it. At the at the end of it, I was like, "All right, man." And I told I told the the guy that I know I was like, "Just you know, Venmo me or whatever it is to to pay me for my appearance here." And we laughed about it and everything. And he goes, "Hey, man, don't you don't you have a charity that you guys work with?" Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Yeah, actually, I do." <clears throat> and um, sorry about that. And so I gave the my possibilities. I gave them all the information. And Adrian was around the corner, and she stepped in, and she was like, "By the way, here's some other information." And one of the guys goes, "So which one do I donate to right now?" <laughs> and I was like, "No, I'm just." And he was like, "No, seriously, I'm on the site." He said, "Is it this campaign, this campaign, or this one?" And I was like, "Well, Adrian can answer that question." And she looked up, and all of a sudden, he donated some money. And then later that's that cool. night, one of the other guys signed up as a, a recurring contributor. Uh, I don't know if that's monthly or yearly, but he signed up to recur. This morning, two of the other guys signed up for it. And I was just like, that is so cool. Like, thank you. You know, really appreciate that. That's something we do every year for peace -a but we do a lot more work along with it. And we're hoping to expand, not just with my possibilities, but hopefully a little more work with NAMI. And Kevin, I know you have some other things that I'm totally... Yeah. When listen, we're here for a while. All right. So if you're a Tolo and you're out there and you love us, we're here for a bit. If you hate us, too bad. You're stuck. Too with us. bad. We're we're gonna be here for a minute. And what we've wanted to do now is, is that we want to official announcement. Yeah. Yeah. It is. We yeah. Signing day happened, baby. We uh we want it. We want to expand our platform and our ability to help people or make an impact in people's lives. And Kevin, I know you know for me. Uh, not only with, with Lucy and, you know, everything she's gone through, but I have a very serious spot, uh, spot in my heart for people that have dealt with suicide Yep. because I've dealt yep. with that mm -hmm. and I know it's not easy. And so that's another avenue that I'd like to pursue. And I know you have a couple that you'd like to pursue as well. Well, and I just wanted to go back for just one second to Nami. Actually, your timing on this is astounding. Athena Trenton who runs NAMI North Texas and is phenomenal, phenomenal lady. And by the way, whenever you, we talk about NAMINorthTexas.org or if you call NAMI up, Athena might be the person who answers the phone. Oh, like, wow. it, this is not a gigantic operation with people on top of people on top of people. She just sent me a note asking if I could chat with somebody who has severe OCD to the point that it's sometimes hard for him to get out of the house. Now, I will admit, I don't think my OCD was ever that bad. It was bad. It still exists for sure. I have no doubt that you know little ticks or things that I do that are because of that. It's probably when I have to straighten things up yeah. around, around the... And I, and I hope you know, like, I, I make, I goof oh, yeah. off with you about it. Yeah. But just because I think we both have a uh, understanding of what we think is funny. For sure. But I just think it's really cool. And then, sorry, if people are like, get to sports. I think it's Sorry. really cool that I'm just to speak for me in this instance, that I have a job where we've gotten to the point that somebody from NAMI North Texas is like, we want you to meet this person because they love sports. They love your station. They love stats. And maybe you could help them out with that in OCD discussions. That makes this a cool job to have. Over the weekend, somebody reached out to me and said, I'm, I'm ready to admit it to myself. I need help. Where do I go? Yep. 
and I sent them to Nami first, but I do need to talk to you off air about that. So I need a, okay. little, a little help on that discussion. He's a really good Tolo, really good friend. Uh, so hopefully we can help him out as well, too. Uh, and I know, like, you, you've you even discussed um, domestic violence Yep. Uh, in that respect, too. That's something that th we have an ability. I'm not saying that we're going to try to do another peace a -thon. Uh, like right. that's, that's one thing that we do. Hopefully we can add more to this and, uh, and help out, help some people make change their lives, man. The Tolos, y'all do an amazing job. Y'all change lives. They all, y'all, we, we set up the oh, team. Y'all yes. knock it out of the park. Y'all are the ones changing lives. So hopefully we can do some more of that. We talked about it Friday when we were at RJ Dukes. This is somebody who routinely donates stuff for the peace -a or buy stuff. And somebody was asking what exactly NAMI is. NAMI, by the way, it's a national organization, stands for National Alliance on Mental Illness. We focus on NAMI North Texas for logical reasons, as I'm sure you can guess. They have all kinds of free programs because all the time we get people like, I want to go get counseling or whatever it might be, but I don't have the money for it. It is unfortunate the way that system is set up. And I, that's one of the reasons I love NAMI North Texas is they have a lot of free programs or sponsored programs if you need help for a variety of reasons on the mental illness front and to add to that if uh if anybody ever wants me to hop in on their zoom call for their fantasy baseball team uh yeah. all you have to do is don't no i'm just joking like that's <laughs> no, no, just let, let us know you know we're all we're all about something fun like that so hopefully we can continue it by the way kevin i just wanted to point out if ever you've thought that the world hates you Oh, from the 214, sometimes. Kevin is everything. Oh, that's delightful. From the 682, I think he is somebody, but I'm not sure he is 100% human. Because we discussed that earlier, pure human. Look, I'll tell you this. I have been the way I am for a really long time. You go back to middle school and they'll probably give you a very similar description of who I am as a person. Kevin is somebody, but I am better. From the 817, there. Kevin is somebody he took a picture with me once. Uh, <laughs> sure thing. From the 812. Just quick, quick note, quick, quick note, Corey, and I think you'll agree with this. I'm gonna read all these, by the way. It's better to just ask for a picture mm -hmm. than take a picture in the distance and then post like on with social Lawrence? media, oh. yes, and say, hey, were you at the Target? <laughs> is because this you? That has absolutely <laughs> happened multiple times. It's okay. I would much rather you just walk up and say hello so we could chat. Uh, from the 940, you guys' use of the fan platform to help people is awesome. That's uh, that's all... That's all we like. We when we started this, we knew this was an avenue that we could do something like that. We've been lucky that we've been able to do something like that. All right, so that's kind of enough of my. Uh... Oh no! Did we not? No, Oops. no, no. We did. I didn't know if you wanted just a tiny bit more sharing. Shohei is going to announce his final four teams. No, I just saw I that. I don't know that to be the case. Okay. And by the way, everyone who's tagged me in. Look at my graded Shohei betting slip card. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> I do. I do. All right, go ahead. I go to Talking Doctor, depending on schedule, usually every other week. Sometimes, well, sometimes it needs to be every week. One of the things that we were talking about, because if we're really going to be honest about things here and what you talked about earlier, Corey, we were kind of maybe at a crossroads in terms of what the future of yeah. our careers and lives could look like. That is one of the things I talk to my talking doctor about is because he goes, I consider success like being able to help people. And that really like stuck with me for a long time. And I, I realize like tomorrow when we break down the Mavs game or we talk about the Rangers offense versus the Astros offense. I don't actually know if that's like particularly helping people, but we get notes all the time. It's just the fun that we have means a lot to them and directing them, whether it's my possibilities for people who didn't even know that existed or NAMI or whatever is a super cool ability to have on this platform. And I like it a lot. And I very much appreciate you guys engaging with us and spreading the word. Not about our show. That's great too. But about some of these, whether it's the National Domestic Violence Hotline, whether it's NAMI, whether it's my Eric Nadell's birthday benefit every yes, year. Yes, at the Kessler. You yes. know, like that's always something 
we we love that opportunity. So yes, thank you, Tolos, for allowing us to invade your ear holes for a little while every day. And yes, if you did notice, Mike is gone. What? <laughs> don't call attention to. It. Boss literally told us the other day, don't call attention to it. He said, really? don't say. Kevin, hold on, Alec. Give us just a second. I gotta pull Kevin aside here. He said, just act like Mike's not there, or just act like he's just kind of involved. People won't care. Okay. Hold on, Kevin. This is a sidebar. You, you can't just okay cut it down. Like do we, do we need to just say something at the front of it though? That like maybe on game days he'll be out a little earlier. Mike has some responsibilities, and sometimes he'll be around for most of the show. And okay. that's the the what the future holds. We'll see how things go on from there. And you can hear all of the Rangers games right here on one hundred five on one hundred five three the fan with Eric Nadell. Now, Kevin, before In your face, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> um. You know what, Kevin? This topic's gonna go tomorrow. Uh, okay. The bride, the bride is gonna go tomorrow. We're gonna roll. Yeah, her out I want to know what the deal so is. This is with a really that. good story from the uh, two one four two years to, uh, Tolo. I started listening to learn more about sports and stayed because y'all are awesome. So there you go. That's uh, y'all are the best show. Been with y'all since the night show. That Thank is, you very much from the nine seven two. That is delightful, and that is a fair question. If we kicked Mike off the show early, that is, the, that is a fair question. From the 517, Kevin is somebody. He's the only one at the fan that has texted me back. And oh. you know what? It's going to stay that way from oh now on. Oh my gosh. I mean, I'm pretty sure I probably texted him back once. I'm texting him back now. You know what? No, so, I'm not. I decided not to. That was so aggressive. Alec, you should text him back, though, to get him on your side. Yeah, I'm going to do that. There Coming up next. Take that, Peyton. That sounded sarcastic. <laughs> Peyton would never. That is very true. I got to groom my mustache. Coming up next. Let's go back to the madness. Who would your final four be now? Does it stay the same? Plus, seriously, though, what was Jerry writing? And how do you get a pen to work? We'll do it next right here on The Fan.
Walk smart. A message from TechStot. This segment of the KNC Masterpiece is brought to you by Cars for Kids. Donate today at carsforkids.org and the personal injury lawyers Frankel and Frankel. If you've been injured in a car or truck wreck, call Frankel first, 214 or 817 333 3333. With Frankel and Frankel, there is never an out of pocket cost. They only get paid when you win. Frankel and Frankel, the go to car and truck wreck attorneys in Dallas. The school that coined the phrase survive and advance has done just that. North Carolina State is going to the Sweet 16 with a 79 73 win over the Oakland Golden Grizzlies. KC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Did you know that was Oakland's mascot? And then they're not in the state of California. Let's talk some more March Madness. And then we're going to get into Jerry Jones and Penn Talk, I think. those or That order might switch along the way. But for now, we will start with March Madness from the 905. My final four still looks good. Iowa State, Arizona, Houston, and Creighton. However, Jared McCain's performance yesterday has me thinking they could beat Houston. That is for Duke. I would love that if that happened, but I also predicted Houston into the final four. So I did not predict Duke to beat Houston, but this is the matchup that I had. Okay. Well, congratulations. Good look for you, man. Thank By you the way, somebody much. did say KMC, Kevin, Mike, and Chop. Wow, because that's on the Twitch where they think I'm choppy because I'm logged in as choppy here. Do you need to throw in some like inflammatory political rhetoric to convince people that you are choppy along no, the way? No, but I would listen to that show. I'm just saying. Like I would I would be like this is a good show, man. Okay. This is a lot of fun. All so. right. Now, since Oakland is out, wanted to shout out Jack Golkey. He was had the most three-pointers in the NCAA tournament through two games ever with 16, the fifth player to ever have 10 three-pointers in a game. And obviously led to the marquee upset of the tournament thus far in beating Kentucky. There yeah. have been other upsets, but not as many as it were used to. Kevin, am I wrong on this? Because I know I feel like this gets asked or gets discussed a lot. Has the the level of play this year seemed worse? And, and I'm I'm being very serious on this. When I'm watching games, I'm just like. I don't remember a lot of 25 to 11 games to start. And I feel yeah. like first halves have been really difficult to come by. Good, like good quality first halves where teams are coming out firing. And I don't know exactly what, if that's what, was it that I've watched Texas, a lot of these tournaments before. Was it Texas, Colorado State? Yeah, that was one yeah, of them. And that there was, was one another one that was 20 to 18. There has been, and I don't want to discount the defensive play because anytime you see a low score, it doesn't automatically have to right. mean terrible offense. Yeah. But if you look at the matching box scores, it's been because of shockingly terrible shooting. There has been a lot of bad shooting in this tournament. Okay, bad shooting. And it does seem like, I've always felt like the three ball in the tournament was, it would go in at the biggest times. It's the equalizing force. Uh, and But it just does feel like more of more and more of these college teams are like, we let it. We do let it fly. We don't care anymore. We're letting. There's not much paint work going on at all. How is that really? Or, that or much, not much skill in the paint area. Is that really that much different than the NBA? No, and that, it, that's how it's developed and grown into. But it does feel like they're more efficient with their three point shooting in the yeah, NBA. Yeah. I'm not saying it's exactly the same, but when you talk about letting the three pointers fly, no matter who you are. That sounds very reminiscent of NBA play. Yeah, times. and and Kevin, you know when it, when we were covering uh, high school, there was a school in El Paso that they had a center who was taller than everybody on the court. Sure, but as soon as he got the ball, he was instructed to pitch the ball back out, and it's it. They didn't do anything but shoot threes that whole game. The whole time I was watching it was the Birdville tournament. I was just like. What is happening right now? All they do is shoot threes, and I was informed, yeah, that's what this team does. That's all they do. And that's kind of taken on that thing in this tournament where I'm watching it. I'm like, if you're not a good three-point shooting team, why are you doing it? And I don't know if it's because they don't have that skill to, or, do, it, to do it any other way. That's a fair point. Or sometimes it's highlighted at the absolute worst time. Like, we were talking about Wade Taylor for Texas A&M yesterday. Not a banner game for him, but he's been a fantastic player all year. Sometimes it just shows out at the absolute 
worst time. I wanted to throw this... And I'm not complaining about the play at all. I just was asking if this is something I'm noticing or is... I think it's fair. Okay. I do not think that you are incorrect. And I know there's discussion about the different basketball as well translating for certain teams since the regular season could be causing a problem. I I don't want to dispute any of that. I... Some of these games have been very hard to watch. Okay, all right, okay. I just wanted to ensure that I'm seeing this and I'm not the other one. Yeah, I I, I think you were seeing things clearly. ESPN has re-ranked the field going into the Sweet 16. And I do think that's something other places should do, is you should get another opportunity at the bracket once you get to the Sweet 16 if you want to have, like, another pool. The number one seeds now, UConn, same. Purdue, same. North Carolina, same. And Houston, same. Why are they the same? Because the one and two seeds all advance for the first time, or excuse me, for just the fifth time in the modern NCAA tournament. So a lot of chalk, a lot of chalk. Well, and the percentages, I believe, once you get to the Sweet 16, the percentages are that the higher seed wins. That does, they might not survive that far, but if they yeah, do, it seems there's like, a good shot. Yeah, it's. I, I was looking at something the other day that that, that pointed out that I think it was eighty percent of the time that that's gonna that the the higher seed will advance. All the number two seeds are the same, and then we get to the number three line where Illinois and Creighton stay, but Gonzaga and Duke now move into the number three seed, and we might talk about this later in the week as well. I'm curious if people are going out to the American Airlines Center. Are they going to be there on Friday? Are they going to be there on Sunday, which is Easter? I'm curious how that goes. I know the NCAA tournament plays on Easter all the time. I remember the, I think it was the Kevin Ware game. It was Duke against Louisville in a regional final with that horrific leg injury was on an Easter. But I'm curious how many of our listener folks are going to be at the American Airlines Center. You're trying to go, right? You're you're hoping to be there. Hey, can I ask you a question about that? Yeah. So this is a hypothetical question. If you had long-standing plans with your wife and another couple to go to a fancy cooking class, Ooh. and it was something your wife was really excited about, and it was Friday at seven o'clock, and you that sounds like fun. It does, but also you would want to see duke play or whoever ask them to turn it on while you're there okay okay and then spend time with your wife follow-up question if your wife says she's fine if you go to basketball instead of that you think it's a trick um man this is tough because i think your wife truly understands you or whoever's i really no it's your it's you what i think that you that that your wife really does understand you does and so I think she also like understands that y'all are in this for the long haul. It's not some like short thing that's not going to last. So she's like, hey, look, we have a long time to be happy together. And right. if you're going to be happier going to this game than this stupid cooking class that I scheduled a long time I, ago for I, us, I, I'm not that ag- I kind of forced you to do. No, 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 no. I'm not against the cooking class and the two. You people- don't even like to cook, bro. That's it's true. like Adrian's joining book club. I've never even seen her read. But the two people we're going with, I do like both of them. Oh, well, then go enjoy the cooking class, dude. I'm sure Duke will play basketball again. Yeah. You may never be able to have a cooking class again, bro. I, You know what? I Actually, if it came down to it, what are you more likely to do? Go see Duke play again or go to a cooking class again? I probably would fall I know. I know. on the side of you went, Duke. You went to Cameron Indoor. I did. You got to go see a, a game there. I did. You got to be there. You got to experience that whole thing. I have seen Duke play in the NCAA tournament before as well. Yeah, you'll be all right. Okay. From the 817, don't do it. From the 254, after you ask her to turn it on, demand that she leaves it on. That is a great point. Yeah, you say, I'm toloing this. From the 817, spend time with the bro, with the wife, bro. Trust. From the 940, it's a trick. From the 469, it's definitely a trick. From the 325, just admit this hypothetical scenario is you, Kevin. Well, Corey already outed me on Yeah. That. I mean, I really didn't have to. Y'all knew. That's fine. Everybody and knew. The people we're cooking with are Denise and Emily. If you really need to fact check this all the way down the line. Okay. Now. I really didn't need to. Okay, well, just in case you needed all the information. I can't remember. From the 469, Duke plays at SMU next year. So you'll be fine. You'll be able to go down to Moody. Okay. Man, that's going to hurt my case. 
I mean, thank you for that valuable information is what I meant. Now. Hurt my case. I like it. What was Jerry trying to write? I don't know. All right. I got thoughts, though. Okay. So you got to see the picture of Jerry Jones and the fancy NFL kind of silhouette back lay. I don't know how to describe it on the paper. Is a bunch of scribbles where it looked like he might have written one or two things and crossed them off. Or it might just look like he was just doing scribbles or that he might have tried to sign his name in a fancy way one time. I don't know if you guys ever do that. Do you ever try to change up your signature if you get bored? In high school, I did. Okay. And then I was like, this is pretty damn good. I'm going to leave it at that. Okay. But also the prevailing wisdom we have come up with was he was trying to get his pen to work. Mm. And if that is the case, how do you get your pen to work as a... Bonus question to what was Jerry writing? Okay, a couple things. A, you shake the pen. Get all the ink back down to the ball, all right? You want to, you want to be right there near the bally area. But I also, I will I will go in circles because I feel like that gets the ball rolling around more in different areas. So if there is some gunk stuck on one side of the ball in the ballpoint pen, this now frees up the gunky area and allows more ink to flow better. Alec? Wow, that man! I do not think I, I go have in an circles. answer prepared. Like, yeah, whoop, 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 that's whoop. very intricate. I mean, honestly, what I do is I do give it a little shake, and then I just I kind of keep it small. I, I I do like a small little box scribble, and if it works there, it'll write. You know, I don't do anything huge, not too much. I, I'm I'm not wasting any motion, not wasting any energy, not wasting too much ink. Yeah, that's good. I want you to go back and reevaluate what you've said. We've got I don't think I will, Kevin. I think he said something along the lines of like he don't does a small little box. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't? Is what I heard. Yeah. There's well, other I mean, theories that have Size speculated matters. that he was wrote down names of free agents they weren't going to sign and then <laughs> crossed them off. <laughs> There's I no don't names. Know that to there be are the no case. names written down. And actually, Kevin Charles Robinson of uh, Yahoo Sports just said he's been doing this for a while because in that notepad you can see the paper is rolled over and underneath just like you know like a legal pad and you can see it on the other pages well if you've ever heard an interview that he has with us on fridays or with sean and rj on tuesdays you know that you hear it all of the time oh yeah scribble scribble and, scribble, and scribble and the speculation used to be he's he wrote checks. down a list of questions that he thought would get asked and then That's what he, he would, said. Yeah, he would scratch them out. And I always thought he was just signing checks because we talked to him on Fridays. So I was like, oh, it's payday. And I was like, he's just signing checks. That being said, Kevin, when I, I, I worked as a uh, stage manager for Colin Cowherd oh, way, wow. way back in the day. This was right after I graduated and the Super Bowl was here. This okay. was the day that he yelled and tried to embarrass me because I was trying to get Tony Romo to do a mic check. And he just tried to emasculate me in front of everybody. And I was like, one day I'm going to have a better radio show than you. Oh, guess and what? Then we did our first show and, and it was done. It's already better. Um, better. But he literally, if you're watching the YouTube or the Twitch right now, he literally did this kind of pattern over Ooh, and over and over on his fancy. entire sheet while he did the show. Like he had a, a legal pad. Just for doing that. I will doodle during the show. Yeah. I doodle all the time. And I don't know. That's just my way of kind of letting my hand do something while I'm trying to think and stuff. But that's what he would do over and over and over. He would just draw that pattern. And so I do wonder if sometimes while people think, if that's just the way that they allow, like if that's how they think. And if that's what Jerry's doing, if he's just doing that as part of like a nervous tick or something like oh. that so that he can, I don't know. But he didn't, there were no words written down. He did not take notes in any way, shape, or form. We are getting lots of opinions. Some say lick the pen. Other people say Bick said you should do a check mark. What? I just do the scratch back and forth like it looks like he was doing on that notepad. And I don't know why. I look at the ink in the pen as if I can instantly tell if that's just the outline of resonant leftover ink or there's actual ink in there. And then I just realize at some point I don't have to open the pen up. And like, look for the ink. I can just get a new pen. Do you ever, do you throw the pen? Oh, yeah. I love throwing pens across, like just into the corner or whatever else. Like, you're done. They, you can't do that with people. There used to be an empty desk next to me for a time at the newspaper. And I would just chuck them over into that cubicle because there was nobody there. And so I could just 
So when you left, there. there were just a bunch of pins, dead no. pins over there? That was the, the, the pin cemetery? I cannot confirm nor deny that that is the case, but that probably sounds pretty accurate. From the 214, Cowherd says to yell at the pin with nonsense. <laughs> I also don't think Dwayne Haskins can win a Super Bowl. Don't ever forget, that was a thing that happened after he, he had, had died. died. Yeah, he was dead. And I was like, you're right, but for the wrong reasons. You know, like people can be right for the Absolutely wrong reasons. Absolutely can. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. You're welcome. Coming up next, it's time for our chit chat with those fellas from the G-Bag Nation right here on 105.3 The Fan. We have you covered, Stars fans, with exclusive content from two-time Stanley Cup champion Greg Ludwig and NHL reporter Sean Shapiro. It's Spits and Suds three times weekly on the Odyssey app or wherever your favorite podcasts are found. Is it time for you to buy a brand new car? Perhaps you or somebody in your family just wants a brand new car. The spot to go, it's the brand new 80,000 square foot facility in Terrell known as Platinum Chevrolet. My family.
This segment is brought to you by Classic Chevrolet in Grapevine. They're the number one Chevy dealer in the world. More Silverados than anyone else. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. Based on new Chevrolet registrations, 2023. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105 through the fan right now. Courtesy of DM Leasing, it is time for our chit chat with those fellas from the G Bag Nation. Gentlemen, how is you today? Terrific, Heggy. Happy Monday. Uh, thank you very much. Happy Monday to you as well. I need a programming update from the 817. Do I have to wait for G Bag to hear y'all even acknowledge the U.S. men's national soccer team dominating Mexico to win the Nations League for the third time in a row? We did reference it earlier when we talked about how the match got stopped because of homophobic slurs. But other than that, we didn't really talk about it a lot. Will this be a heavy player on your show? Uh, you know, we'll get it in. We'll get 60 seconds on soccer, and it was a glorious event. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I think we're now three-time champs of that CONCACAF. That's right. And uh, we're the only team to have ever won it. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And now I think seven unbeaten uh, against Mexico. I think that's the longest streak ever. So. Like 5-0-2, right, I believe? Something along yeah. those lines? Yeah, take that, good. El Trey. You know what I'm talking about. No, I do. Yeah, I, I have no clue it, what that means. What, yeah. That was it was Dave Hellman. The number that, three. The yeah. Number three. Put up an L into that as well. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I did find that very, very enjoyable. How are you guys feeling about the Mavs game tonight? Because this feels like a game that they really need to win before they go into Sacramento. I'm feeling very confident. You know, the um the the letdowns that they were having against bad teams from season past don't appear to be there. And I just think this team is focused. You know, they've, they've been working really hard. We're seeing the results of it. And I think they understand the opportunity. And, and I don't know, maybe for the first time in his career, Luca for the most part, trusts his teammates. So I think they're in good ground. There's going to be the occasional letdown game, but it's not big enough that I would bet on it being tonight. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good right now uh, with, the, with the Mavs coming in off of a couple of days rest here. As long as marketing doesn't go off That's on you, I think you're, about, yeah. you're pretty much in a good spot. Yeah. And he was not shooting the ball well in the last game. Are you feeling more confident about this game than you were most of your NCAA tournament picks? Damn I'm actually you. doing very well in mine. Thank you for asking. I think he's talking to Eric specifically oh, here. I, I've I've been, I thought I've been he's just a... throwing it out there. Sometimes he does that. <laughs> no, no, that's fair. This one's for Eric specifically. I want to talk about your bracket. Have you, yeah. have you heard brought us about his bracket and Jared Sandler's group? Oh, are you just awful? Oh, man. It's, it's yeah, it's out, bad. Out of 415 participa participating brackets. You're 410. <laughs> oh, he's better than that. Better Hell than yeah. that, brothers. 357. <laughs> wow. 357. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I think Man, I had you can Auburn. Feel the <laughs> disappointment off of that. Mm. Yeah, I know. There's a. Yeah. I went with more upsets than the basketball gods like, wanted to like allow. The whole, the whole bracket, but roughly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just thought Auburn was going to be good, and that's on me. Yeah. You know, and I thought Baylor was going to go to the Final Four. Me and Corey did our brackets together. I did well. I just picked that one team to go. They let me down. I still have the three. All of my other teams are for the Final Four are still there. And I think only one of my other teams for the Elite Eight are out. Uh, Baylor and one other team. Broadus, you sounded very optimistic. How's your bracket looking? Doing very well. Thank you for asking, Heggy. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, young Bennett Broadus got me into his uh, fraternity bracket down there. So, uh, Adam, you just you were just copying Bennett's bracket. Not That's true at all. Bennett, Bennett is uh, involved in the bracket actually himself. He's and, a bracketeer. Uh, he's a bracketeer, and uh, his dad is sitting currently at number two. With uh, 450 points. Look wow. at that. Just going to produce yeah. on that, dude? Now, I needed Grand Valley State to upset Alabama last night. That didn't happen. Grand Baylor, Canyon. Yeah. yeah. Did I say Grand Valley State? <laughs> you did say. Grand you probably Canyon. just watched the player from there. Yeah. I might Scouting have. the draft. It was. I'm on these offensive tackles trying to finish up some of these cats. Have but, you watched NC State for their offensive tackle playing basketball? I dude. have not. I've seen the, the young man, and he looks behemoth. He looks big. Yeah. And so, yeah, actually, I watched. He's got the touch, too, I was watching man. Iowa State yesterday had a large lady that was playing, too, and she was quite a good player. She scored a crap ton of points. Yeah. I saw against that well. It was a good game against Stanford that they had. It was an overtime I game. saw this girl a lot on my on my Twitter feed. Audi Crooks, I believe is her name. Yes. Uh, she's She is fit. What a is joy she, to watch, is dude. Is she Iowa State, right? She is Iowa State, She blew a yeah. kiss the Stanford fans there at uh, Maples Pavilion she's, she's as she walked off. Did she really do that? Oh, yeah. She's playing with elite confidence right now, and I'd she say. should. She's putting up numbers. She's she's uh, she's a joy to watch play the sport. She's a little bit like our guy Cream 
Abdul. Yes. In uh, they got, on the men's side. Yeah, of they things. got jobbed when they kept Indiana State out of the tournament. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Audi Cooks, man. Indeed. Brought us, I was curious because I, I know you know this person pretty well. What did you think about Kim Mulkey going on the offensive? Well, that, that was, yeah, that's, uh, you know, I understand trying to get ahead of things, but yeah. let's let the, let, let the story get out. But I think she got out ahead of it because the same writer did a hat job on um, the head coach, the football coach, Brian Kelly. So obviously, oh. this is a guy that does not like uh, LSU athletics very much. I think, I think he's a gamecock. Yeah. So with all that being said, yeah, Kim Tim should have probably just let it come out and then see what happens from there. But you know, she's she, I, I Kim's always going to try and protect LSU. Yeah. You know, she's always going to say, "Hey, this." You know, she she's speaking to Tiger Nation is who she's speaking to. You know, she doesn't care about anybody else. She's just letting Tiger Nation know. That there's something about to happen here. Something's about to come out, and we're about to rally against it. And this it ain't gonna work, buddy. Okay, I love it. There we go. That's Kim. It is the Washington Post. Yeah. Now the person writing the article, Kent Babb, says, "Well, she said he's been working on this for two years. Called it a hit piece. Talked yeah. about all these former players that have contacted her to say." Hey, this reporter hit me up to try to say negative yeah. things about the program. So I understand why she thinks it's going to be a negative piece. Sure. And you know, like I said, she's she's going to do the best she can to protect the brand and 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 she rallied she rallied all the troops. And uh we'll see where it all takes us here. If we could go to cut number nine, is this the level of enthusiasm you want from your national championship mm -hmm. wrestler? That was great. That was great. Oh, you guys. Those are my boys. Those are my brothers. They live to die. Those are my guys. Sorry. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's okay to use the F word, though, when you just won a national championship, even when you're on TV, right? He said sorry immediately. Yeah, you could feel the remorse you there. You find that acceptable, though, right? 100%, man. Absolutely. We all get mulligans. Yeah, you know, even before, but now in this streaming and podcast era where everybody is dropping constant F-bombs, I mean, Pat McAfee's going off. Yep. We can't expect these athletes to know the FCC rules because... Um, you know, the majority of the content they are consuming are not prone or are, are not, you know, eligible to be held accountable by those rules. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. That was an, a very eloquent way of putting it. Hey, Kevin, also, if you lose, you can say it, too. So I think that's our, like winning and losing. Same thing. And like, the F word is the most emotions. Yeah. versatile word in the English language, right? That's for F, F and sure, man. Yeah. Okay. And remember that day? Who was it that we were we were interviewing at the Super Bowl when we went to Houston and I just started cussing? And so we're interviewing him, and it's a pre-record. He didn't mm -hmm. know it's pre-recording, so I'm just cussing. And then he's looking at me like, I can't believe this guy's. That's cussing. Max Holloway. Max Holloway. And then all of a sudden, he's like, and then he drops a couple, and I'm like, Whoa, you can't do that. And he's like, <laughs> Well, but you were doing it. And I was like, That's effing okay for me to do it, not. And he was just like, Hold on, what's going on? I thought he was gonna punch me. <laughs> That's I'm glad he did. So didn't. Max Holloway, it genius. <laughs> it is a good thing that he did not punch you because I think that would have ended up very, very poorly. And did you just say Max Holiday right there? <laughs> yeah, I did. All right, that's what I thought. What do you guys I was got? Saying Max Kellerman. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> bring that bit back. That's yes. good stuff. Absolutely. What do you guys got coming up on the program today? Pure gold is always Heggy. Thanks for asking. We'll recap nice. the weekend and look forward to opening day right out of the gates here. All right, roll home with the G Bag Nation. We have been the KNC masterpiece. Make your way back with us tomorrow, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. right here on 105.3 The Fan. Two more days? Three more. How many, is it two or three more days? Three. Okay. Maybe four? Nobody three! Nobody knows. Gonna carry the Until one. opening day. Shut up. What one are you carrying? Man, they need to clean this part up. <laughs> they are three.
from our fan studio, secured by DFWSecurity.com, you're rolling with the G-Bang Nation on 105.3 The Fan. Here we go. It's hour one of the G-Bag Nation on 105.3 The Fan. Hope you're having a fantastic day as we are off and running with a boatload of weekend news and stuff that's been developing throughout the day. I am Gavin Dawson, general at your service at ease. There's Brian Broaddus in his LSU purple. Ready to rock the house. Go Tigers. Lucius Alexander is not in the pin cup at Master Control today. You have Chris Strong and Lucius shall return before too long. Eric Chia following attendance. Salute to you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Wolchuk is on dad duty today. Okay, so send that man some love on social media. Send some love to Lucius as well. You can find our uh, X bios, our X links right there, our handles in the uh, G Bag Nation bio right there if you jump onto X. Of course, you got your main man, Carter Freeman, coordinating your video. You can watch us at 105 through the fan.com, Twitch, and on YouTube. And we're going to start with some Cowboys, guys. Is Jerry Jones saying, do not rule out Tyler Smith at left tackle? Yeah. What do you think? I don't think Jerry's lying to you here. Okay. I don't. And uh, and I've said this before on a couple different platforms, but I believe the draft will dictate his ability, whether he moves or not. And, you know, will they be able to find a tackle in the first round? Or are they going to go with the center? Now, it might be a situation, too, where they, you know, they're all in a one, all on one-year deals right now, you know. And they've done a great job with plug-and-play offensive linemen. What position can you get away with with a potential plug-and-play easier? Would it be the center? Would it be the tackle? So you, you think know? they would need to find a really good tackle at twenty four to I be think, confident? I think that's I think that's the I think that's kind of how I look at it. Okay. Um, but man, there every you know, the you talk to people over there, it is not a very positive vibe going on over there. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, really? Okay. And you know, there's so much unknown. Yeah. You know, when, when everybody's on one year deals and you don't know and you know, the thing I was talking about with McCarthy, if I was him, I'd have been in Will McClay's office every damn day during free agency, like, okay, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? What are we doing? Why are we not doing this? You know, you're not giving me a chance here. You know, I mean, that's, but, you know, Mike chose another route. You know, he went on spring break and did some other things. So they're going to let Will and Steven do what they do. He might have got a very clear message because Jerry also saying that doing the Tyron Smith deal like the Jets did would have blown up their cap. Yep. So this seems like, you know, a really hard line that they've drawn well, um, and that it's it's kind of a rebuild. You know, I, I think, Mike McCarthy, you're being given $5 million to play this thing out. And if you do an unbelievable job with it, guess what? You've saved your job. Yeah, I think I think that's the way that the team is is looking at it, and they have really have no intent of improving the team or even keeping it as good as they were because they they need this time. They went for it the last two years in their mind, like bringing mm-hmm. in Cooks and Gilmore was them going for it. Yeah, and now why would I want to bring in another coach for this rebuild when um, I already have you on staff? I already got to pay you, and we're not going anywhere. I don't want right. to bring in a coach and set him up for success. Hey, new coach, guess what? We're not spending any money. And this is the Cowboys version of a rebuild, so it's going to be a couple of years before well, we free stuff up. You know, and hello to all the guys listening in Orlando at the owners' meeting. I'm sure you guys are enjoying our broadcast today. Salute. Salute. Uh, they could have flipped some switches. Yeah, they could have yeah, got could've. some money. Mm-hmm. You know, they they acted like they were they were broke. In reality, yeah. they're not broke. Other teams, you know, might have decided to do that. Yeah. Um, but the way they manage their cap, they look at it as a multi-year approach, not every yeah. year. we got to do whatever it takes to win the Super Bowl. And that reality, I think, is is now official. You know, And it's settling in for maybe e- even the most cynical of fans uh, uh, about that. So I think you try to make the playoffs, right? And then you go, go on a, a magical run or draft so well that you can run. I, I just think it's a shame, you know, they've, they've gone up to this point knowing – they were building to this moment here for the 2024 season, and if you knew that, you should have gone for it sooner. I mean, bringing in Gooks, Cooks and Gilmore was great, mm-hmm. but it ultimately does not matter if you can't run the ball. And, you know, they really put their passing game in a bind when they come up against these good defenses that have answers, and they have no other plan to go to. Uh, time and time again, I, I, 
I've been I've been saying it consistently for probably three or four years now. It's great to add weapons, but if you can't make sure you can run the ball in January, you ain't getting through that gauntlet. You know, and I I'm not a a, a run game like uh, enthusiast. I don't think you should build your team thinking we got to make sure we run the ball. But if you're looking to put that final piece onto a championship team, you got to get there. And uh, the, the, the Cowboys did not. And now they're going to take their medicine over the next couple of years. But yeah, when Jerry said we couldn't even do that super incentive laden team friendly deal for Tyron Smith, that the Jets did because it would have blown up our cap. That's all I need to hear. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's all you need to hear. I do think it's a good move to do the Tyler Smith at left tackle thing. I think yeah. that's the most appropriate way to allocate what you have there from a resources standpoint. Like you have too many holes to create another one just because you want to keep this guy at guard. That makes no sense. Uh, so I think Tyler Smith being your left tackle, you got plenty of guards on the roster. You draft your center, and your offensive line is going to be okay. Yeah, I think as long as he's as he plays well, you know, it's it's a great opportunity to try this. You know, yeah. uh, if if it goes great at left tackle, you're like, awesome. If he's whiffing on guys and having to hold, then you know you have an all-pro left guard sitting there, and you can address that in the offseason of 2025. Correct. But how how does the draft fall to you, right, Chief? If you got that amazing tackle at 24, would you, would you take that? It, yeah, if there's an amazing tackle there, then like if you feel like, hey, we got a guy that can come in and be dang near just as good as Tyler Smith day one, he's an immediate starter. Uh, at left tackle, and you can get that at 24, then, hey, kudos to you. I don't think that will be the case. So I think you should be going into it with Tyler Smith being your left tackle, and then you can find the center replacement very easily at 24 or by even trading down a little bit, getting more picks, and still taking the center and making sure your offensive line is at least serviceable. You uh -huh. know, with, with Tyler Smith at left tackle, you know you're at least getting solid protection there. With a rookie, you have no idea. Yeah, you have a better chance of getting a first round tackle than you do maybe a first round center. You know, and and especially the kid at their Powers Johnson at Oregon. You know, you're starting to hear the whispers of how banged up he is physically. You know. So, that I mean, he's the best center on the board. We'll see what happens with Barton, you know, from Duke who hasn't played center. He's been a tackle. He was a center early in his career, but now he's been a tackle, he's been a guard. That seems like a you know, pretty good fit. Piano player. Yeah, piano player. <laughs> Frazier, the West Virginia center, good player. Van Pram from Georgia, good player. But you have a better shot of grabbing a plug-and-play tackle, in my opinion, here. But I, oh, I, okay. I, I, I'm, I'm, and then you get a center in the second round. You could probably, I think, I think they are, I think they are locked on to drafting uh, Jonathan Brooks from Texas. I in the second that, round, second round. I think they're yeah, taking. Okay. I think if then I had, you don't have a center, yeah. Well, that, but that, that's what I'm saying. You could, you could find a way. Maybe, maybe that's you know, if you pick up the extra pick, if you back up, uh, you know, Frazier, I, I think would be a, a consideration. A consideration there. Uh, Limmer from Arkansas is a guy that's kind of a uh, a fourth round guy, but they've got some centers that are some tough guys that are probably better players than what you were playing with the last few years. Okay. All right. So, Sounds but like I, I, I have a feeling that the center, the 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 tackle depth at twenty four will be better than what the center depth is. We are uh, just coming up on a, a month to go now until the draft. We will, as always, have the best coverage. We are just three days from opening day on the fan tonight. Rangers Red Sox exhibition action at the Globe. Very exciting for those of you that are heading to the game tonight. I'm sure we will have lots of Rangers content today. You will hear the audio a little bit later on when Boach told Bangford, you made the team, buddy. And we will have extensive coverage of that new uh, taco item at Hurtado, right? Oh, yes, we will. Yes, today was the unveiling of all the new concession items at Globe Life Field for the year. You're going to be very, very excited to see some of the new additions. Uh, and Hurtado is, uh, is certainly leading the headlines for what was unveiled today. It looks outstanding. It's going to be another incredible culinary experience every time you set foot in the yard. Okay, so what are you doing now with the NCAA tournament as far as rooting interests Okay, inside these borders? I know we have an anti-Houston uh, rivalry going on for a lot of you. You don't want to root for anything Houston because of you know things that have transpired between the Rockets and the Astros and so on and so forth. Maybe you still don't forgive the Texans for winning the first game at AT&T Stadium. I don't know. 
but there's an anti-Houston bias here. I am going to make an exception for myself because I grew up a Clyde Drexler fan. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have my Phi Slamma Jamma red hooded sweatshirt on today. That's where I'm taking it. That, that's where Represent I'm, for the Cougs. Yeah. I mean, you had UT taking L over the weekend. You had you had Baylor bowing out. Condolences to AM. Condolences to Kansas as well. The Rock Chalk Dra Jayhawk crowd is done early. It's all right. Bill Self said uh, for the last month his mind has been on next season. So <laughs> he, he's, he's been checked out yeah. for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Coach Sampson called it possibly the most satisfying win of his career, though, as four Houston players fouled out. It was incredible watch at the end how Houston was able to cobble that thing together and actually, you know, get some uh, get some stops there in the overtime. But how that game got to overtime, Insane. Texas A and M though, the, the, the you know they could look at their situation. They got to the free throw line a ton, forty five times, and did not do a good enough job there. Okay. So when you look at when you look at the loss there, that's probably the first place you need to focus on. But Houston just they got into foul trouble. It got worse, but the Houston bench is actually pretty deep, and they were able to kind of finish that game off. That's right. Yeah, Samson said they're built for this. You don't see what we do. All the sprints and the shuttles that we do in practice when we get to overtime oh. and our bench is depleted, yeah. we're still we're still ready to rock and roll. My guy's got the stamina. You ever seen the drill? It's like the old XFL. Remember uh, back in the day when they used to like have the scramble for the ball on the opening kickoff? Yes. Like they, you know, you ran and it, two guys run and try and dive for the ball. They practice ball on the court drills like that. Like dudes diving into each other to go get a loose ball. Shoot, yeah. So Are that's, you kidding me, no, dude? They, they, like they, a basketball they, Oklahoma drill. There's some, oh. there's some there's some video of them. I'd of like their, to see that of their practices where guys are like yelling as they're scrambling for balls on the court. You know, guys are fighting each other and stuff like that. So yeah, loose ball maniacs. They're, they're built for this. They really are. I dig that, man. That was a great game last night. Yeah, 972, I'll never cheer for a Houston team ever, not even for a million dollars. Yeah, I'm sure you will. I think for a million I would do it, but I don't I don't have the same type of Houston hate for the Cougars. You know, like I can separate Cougars from Astros. Mm -hmm. That's very easy for me. When it comes to the Astros, of course, you can't stand them. I think the Texans might might start to get to that point if they're about to go on a run here of winning and you're just going to be like, oh my gosh, yeah. we can't do anything. And even the Texans have figured out a way to get to a conference title game or a Super Bowl or something. That'll start to get under my skin. The Cougars don't do it for me, but I'm not necessarily pulling for them overall right now because I think, I think the la I mean, it's been a chalk situation from, you know, just by and large with the tournament. And so I think you're only remaining like Cinderella fun story uh, with the lovable team here. Underdog style is the 11th seeded NC State. Uh, you know, the NC State team right yeah, now Wolfpack, that is yeah. is, a, is a ton of fun to watch. And they got characters on that team. And they went to overtime and got themselves a nice victory the other night. Uh, and they got the big dude, Mr. DJ Burns, who is fantastic. He's the big man who's got, you know, the ability to put the ball in the hoop all over the place. And he's uh, the, the rebounding is fantastic. But the personality, this dude sells, or he doesn't sell them, but he owns a couple of vending machines. He's like He's got like his own business of owning, owning vending machines and just casting out because of them and i hear that's like a secret awesome like low-key business that we should all be trying to kick the tires on owning a vending machine apparently you can really? just clean up dude wow okay that sounds fun I, I, i'm in especially now with how they can swipe you don't even have to stack up all that change take it to a bank yes uh, exactly yeah. exactly exactly uh we could have nc state houston in a final four rematch 1983 huh yeah uh 1983 they uh, uh, just one of the one of the uh, most iconic Fifteen pounds of crawfish. Watching that one sitting <laughs> in my dorm room at LSU. Uh, By the way, I secretly will cheer for Houston. Okay, not because they're my final pick, but because it was one of the best recruiting visits I've ever taken in my life. Right. That's when I got pushed into the strip club, Rick's Cabaret. Uh huh. They, yes, they fake, you're underage, right? Fake I was ID? underage. I was underage. Didn't have a fake ID. They created a fake fight outside of the club. Oh, that's that story. Yeah, and I got and and those guys they veteran like, leadership. Next dude. thing I know, it's like they're kind of rolling around on the ground like the loose ball drill thing, and everybody's running outside. And one guy turns and just two hands shoves me into the club, mm -hmm. and I go stumbling in. And next thing I know, I look back, and I see the guys kind of making up, hugging, and then they got into the club. But that's what they did. They created a diversion to Genius. get me into Rick's Cabaret. Oh, the high at eighteen years old. Ah. 
secretly pull for Houston that way. Wow. Thank you. All right. So I, I, That's I, your I motorboat anniversary, you. isn't yeah, it? Yeah. It's coming up here pretty soon. Yeah. What else are you doing with rooting interest? Another texter uh, reminding me that it was the Giants who won the first game at AT&T Stadium. I bat on that. It was Houston that won their first game as a franchise. That's right. Against the Cowboys. Yes. David Carr, baby. I need someone from the Big 12 to make it to the Natty, even as a TCU fan. Go Kooks, uh, says right. the 817. Uh, that basketball drill is not unique. We're doing that starting seventh grade. Oh, wow. Whoever lost had to run a suicide. Mm-hmm. That's uh, fantastic. Must have a heck of a program out there. My goodness, the Stars won both games. Speaking of a heck of a program, they've won four in a row. Yeah. They'll be at San Jose, Vancouver, and Seattle for a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Colorado's won nine in a row, though. So we have a tie atop the division. Uh, and, and the Avs do have a game in hand, by the way. Vancouver still leads the uh, conference by a couple of points. Uh, just one point now with the abs and stars uh, tied right behind them. So in good shape here with the sports. We're uh, we're heading in a good direction, and the Mavs at, at Utah tonight should be able to pick up a dub as long as they stay focused. All righty. When we come back, G-Bag Nation, what the Rangers still have to work on with three days until the defense of their World Series championship gets underway. It's coming up next in the nation. I want to chat Frankels with you before we do.
Yeah, buddy, welcome back. It is the G-Bank Nation here on 105.3 The Fan, and uh, we hope you are having a terrific Monday. Thanks for making us part of it. Segment is brought to you by the Frankels. Life is unpredictable. Accidents happen. Franklin and Frankel are the go-to attorneys for car and truck wrecks in DFW. If you or a loved one's been in an accident, contact the Frankels for a free consultation. It's 214 or 817 Jump online to truckwreck.com. And uh, this segment of the GBAC Nation is brought to you by Cars for Kids as well. Go to carsforkids.org. Opening day on Thursday. We are so excited to take it all in with you. We'll be inside the stadium, our normal perch uh, over the center field wall. And we'll have Chris Young on and a number of Rangers, uh, luminaries and dignitaries and special guests. And looking forward to chatting with him about, you know, what he's learned since spring training began five weeks ago. Um, you know, I wonder if they're uh, thinking about bringing in Trevor Bauer at all. And then, you know, what is still unresolved with opening day happening? Trevor Bauer, by the way, involved uh, last night in a game with uh, a, an exhibition match. The Diablos Rojos, Del Mexico, beat the New York Yankees 4-3. to three. Two exhibition games going on in Mexico City. A classic Kenny Power story with the pitcher being ostracized from Major League Baseball. He signed a five-day contract with the Diablos Rojos. Um, and uh, he allowed four hits and no runs in three innings, three strikeouts, and two walks. So we did have some base runners there. His whip was two, uh, which isn't ideal. But, yeah, I think that's one of the questions. Like, do you think a, a team will ever sign Trevor Bauer? And I, I just want to see how CY would answer that because at this point, we need pitching really, really bad. You're defending champs. You only need them for a couple of months. He's doing a five-day deal with uh, the Rojos. I, to me, this is if if you can't get signed right now, then it, it just ain't going to happen. I just this one's intriguing to me because of all the things that you hear about the player and the person, and the you, know, you always talk about okay, just show up to pitch. We don't need you coming in the clubhouse. We don't need you yeah. hanging around everybody. I mean, is he but, a total spaz? That, I mean, is he that bad of a teammate? Just tell him to hush. I, I, I mean, these these teams must know so much about him. Yeah. Because if you, you, you're talking about a pitcher that's, like, super talented. Yeah, he I was mean, one of the best. I mean, he is, and he's you know, super competitive. But, man, for him not to even get a sniff, and you wonder if you wonder, there might be something else. Well, like you, we heard about the situation yeah, in LA, but yeah. maybe there's an undercurrent of well, there, speculation. How about or, how about somebody in the league office saying none of you teams are signing this guy? Yeah. Oh, and the he brand. did. Yeah, like you know, we're not going to we're not going through this again. We're not going to let him do something crazy once again that gives us the black eye. And you know, and 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 it it really. I think at the end of the day, it wasn't his fault, right? Did they... The kinda, L.A. scene? Yeah, the L.A., the yeah. whole thing. I mean, no, see, that's what I'm saying. Incriminating. Yeah, so all of a sudden now it's a... Deviant behavior, maybe. Deviant fetish. behavior, yeah, yeah, fetish, whatever you want to say. And But everybody's gotten over the whole, you got to be wholesome to be in the public I just, eye thing. Everybody understands with we're human. But I, shame. I, think, yeah. I think that I think the Ooh. league might just tell the teams... You're yeah, not signing this but they want to they want to build their league around guys who off the diamond don't have any any question marks. You know, guys like Shohei Otani and oh, things no. like that. No, you're you know? right. I knew exactly. They want to make sure. No, no, I knew exactly where you're going there. Yeah, they, they, they don't want to encourage unethical well, no. behavior. Face exactly. A, face of baseball right now. That's your guy. Yeah, he's you know betting on uh, Texas A and M and Houston. Uh, you know, oh, he was probably sweating that one out last <laughs> night. You think? <laughs> I think he was. Eight one seven from someone close to Chris Young. Bauer will not be a Ranger. Yeah, I figured that. Nine oh three. Bauer would. Thanks fit for in checking in, Chris. <laughs> perfect with the Astros. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely not Chris Young texting when right. I say this, yes. but this Chris, Bauer yeah. thing's not yeah. happening. I yeah. uh, heard him on a podcast as the four six nine. Doesn't seem like a terrible dude. It's hard to say, you know, when you're on a podcast, you're trying to present the best version of yourself. 704, sign Trevor, look at a second chance. Please, Rangers, sign this guy. Plus, his YouTube uh, would sell more tickets. Yeah, you know, I uh, th I think what Brian said is is really interesting to me right now. Like, um, Oh, thanks. What else could possibly be out there? I'm just as surprised as you are, Broadus. Yeah, because that, that is... That is um, 
That's the only explanation for why I oh, got yeah. this good. Oh yeah. Now that I now that I, I think about it in that way. Okay, what do the Rangers have left to accomplish here? We go to Jeff Wilson. Five items Rangers still have on their opening day checklist. They got to clear Seeger and Young. Young says he's confident he'll be in the lineup at third. Siegs is cautiously optimistic that he will be at shortstop. Uh, Boach saying they're both day to day until that time. If one of them needs a day off or needs to be a designated hitter a few times early in the season, Boach is going to give him time, he says. I'm not worried about these. You know, obviously injuries could be a, a big part of it, but they showed last year they could overcome injuries to both those guys and an injury to the best pitcher in the game and still win the World Series. So they're just, uh, you know, it's part of sports. Uh, final bullpen spots, bit of a head scratcher uh, because you're really just trying to play the hot hand. <laughs> Nobody's been like, hey, it should be me and me mm -hmm. and me. You know, it, you have a, a couple of good ideas, but I definitely uh, am curious to see how that's all going to get sorted out and uh, what the rotation's like and what the new guy can do. Where would you guys hit Wyatt Langford? Uh, where is Wyatt is the third one? Rangers aren't just going to make him the full-time DH to make him an everyday player and maximize the outfield defense. He's going to have to get as many at-bats there uh, and out in the field. The potential need to give DH days to Seager, though, and Young could result in Langford, Carter, and Tavares sitting. If so, expect the Rangers uh, to time Carter and Tavares days off when they are facing a left-hander. Bochy says the Rangers are working to determine where Langford will hit in the lineup after batting third much of the spring with Seager and Young back. Langford could slide to fifth with Jonah Heim behind him and Young batting seventh. You know, there's so much math and so many difficult choices. I, I don't even know how you do this, but I think you got to try to talk to the guys about being as flexible as possible because there's a lot of ways this could make sense. Yeah, I mean that's one of the one of the benefits having a lineup like this. And then I, I think it'll be it'll be fun to just monitor Bochi's approach from game to game. Like you'll have your what your ideal lineup would be, but then based on the pitching staff or based on guys you're trying to sit or guys who are banged up or whatever it is, and you have a bit of a you know, you have an embarrassment of riches as outfielders now with the way Langford is, has come up and played. And then, OK, so what do we do? There's there's so many question marks going into every single game. But I think the versatility of this lineup allows for you to feel confident that really no matter what the what the situation is, you're going to have a lineup that's going to be pretty dang awesome. And Bochi navigating that is going to be a joy to to yeah. watch. Yeah, my 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 question is, how, how tough do you think they're going to be keeping Simeon? You know, in the yeah, leadoff spot. Yeah, I know. Because now you have so many good options with the patience of Carter. You know, if Langford's just tearing the cover, you don't want to have him fifth or sixth. You know, I I think you go to Simeon and say, dude, if we're in the middle of a big slump, we are going to move you. Okay, please be a leader throughout this process. And yeah. when you're hot again, maybe you'll be leading off again. Man, I, this is just me. I don't think they're going to have that conversation. Yeah. I think it's one of those things that, you know what, the the respect factor of the guy, the fact that he lines up for 162, he was probably tired at the end, he was slumping at the end, he came up with a couple of big hits at the end. But that's one of those things I don't know. I just yeah. don't think they will. Okay, all righty. Real then, quick, real quick on this, though. Uh huh. Where did you bat Evan Carter when he first came in the league? Didn't he, with, near, the bot, near the bottom of the lineup? Initially, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was near, I mean, do you do the same thing just to maybe get him acclimated to what, you're what you're trying to do? I mean, I don't know. They started Josh Young as a rookie in the five hole, you know, and Langford just wonder, has been m more impressive than than even him. Because you're, gonna, but it's fair to ask. Yeah, because you're gonna, you know, w the pressure if he's not able to deliver in the three. I think that's something I would worry about. Yeah, and then you got to think about defense as well. And so far, his defensive instincts are not there. I, yeah. I do think it's possible long term on a great team he'd be the DH. Who's the closer? They have four options. Bochi's been playing it close to the vest. We go into the Pimp Cup where Chris Strong has your G bag of the day. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome into the news. Good afternoon, guys. Good afternoon. First ever. First ever. Uh, finishing up the Grand Slam today of shows here at the Fan. Right on. Hell yeah. That's the career Grand Slam, not the second, right? Yeah, career, career. Gotcha. Do you guys see the line of the Shields tweet over the weekend? He was like, there's no holes in this Rangers lineup whatsoever. Did not see that, but uh, it's a whole free lineup, man. Yeah, he said good luck to everyone out there. Uh, yeah. Good luck right there. Delano's a legend, so we salute him and welcome his endpoint at every turn. This is G-Bag of the Day for Monday, March 25th, 2024. I'm blessed to fill in this week for the great Lucius Alexander as he's on vacation. 
Did he, did he give you guys any details on where he's going, what he's up to on vacation? I think it was one of those uh, Jamaican sexcapades. Uh, oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think you nailed it. Uh, or, it, or it was camping in Oklahoma. I heard camping. Yeah, camping. A little home improvement to shout Maybe out LA. Both. This is a game of telephone, man. The, the message gets lost somewhere. <laughs> I like the, the Jamaican line. trip better than the home improvement thing. You know? If yeah. That's, yeah, that, that would be You're better. not much of a DIY guy. No, not at all. Not at all. Well, the one-time winner looking to double it up today is LA's news crush, Cynthia from WFAA. Yeah. He said to hold on and wait because she choked on what? Oh, a woman is alive tonight thanks to a Mansfield police officer who saved her from choking behind the wheel. Oh my God. Yeah, you know, our, our executive producer, incredible. Tiffany Johnson, <laughs> Just uh, so insensitive. She was laughing, saying, you know how embarrassing it would be to like have to be saved from just your chewing gum? I would and be I, happy to be laughed at and be I, saved. I couldn't believe that. That's <laughs> Tiffany Johnson. I, I just wow. couldn't believe what she said. Well, I, choked, I was choking on a banana a couple of years ago. Remember I told you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll never forget. I kid you not. Captain Awesome right. saved my life. <laughs> Seriously. All right. I'm, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm dead. I mean, I, 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 folks, I couldn't make this up if I had to. 67 degrees right now. There you go, Pete. In Denton. Get in there. <laughs> Insanity. Yeah. Save us, Pete. Save us. Yeah. Probably right, two-time Let me get champ. some music going up here. All right. Two-time champ. Going for two-time today. It might be tough okay. to beat. But I'm, I'm going to go since it's opening day. I'm going to go straight to baseball here. Do you guys know where Adams State University is? Adams State. No. Adamsville, Vermont. Is it Adams State located in Michigan? Colorado. Sorry. No. Division two baseball. Gosh, I would I would have given you all a hundred dollars in with that what one. with what? I know. I thought I knew Michigan? where Adam's yourself a Michigan. scout. Just because yeah. the Oakland uh, Golden Grizzlies are from there, you think maybe I, every I, random... Did I get that one right? <laughs> yeah, that I one. nailed that one. You did. I thought Adam State was uh, okay. Because you've been to the gentlemen's clubs in that area. Yeah. Guys, here's Adam State Cleaned baseball broadcaster. Yeah. He was heated at a call. They were down 11 to 2 until the umpire eventually changed the call. Oh. You suck! <laughs> a horse. That's terrible! That's a bunch of s. <laughs> you guys know we do, huh? Your heads out of your ass! <laughs> terrible! How can you say that? It sounds like 10 feet. Oh, Everybody <laughs> saw it! Yay, they got it right! Yay! <laughs> it's two guys, right? It's, there's the main character, but off in the distance, you hear the other guy, the supporting actor here, who is very much so ripping into the same umpire. Yeah, bless. I, I love when an official team congregates and says, hey, buddy, you messed that one up. You mind if we go ahead and reverse this? Yeah, oh, my bad, Jim. Yeah, thanks for picking me up. That's right. That's I, all we need. I kind of think this is what the path that Mike Bassick's going to take one day here in these broadcasts. Oh, really? Oh, for, from the from the ballet from the, booth? From the ballet booth, just start yelling. Just take his headset. Ball sack comes out. You just start yelling at the up. That would be so amazing. <laughs> if he turns into a shock jocker in a baseball booth. That would be awesome. Turns into an epic star doing that. I could see it. Guys, this G-Back nominee motion. was... Uh, nominated by Tolo Rogers on Twitter. He sent it to Lucius. Okay. Lucky Lucius P on Twitter. Keep sending over there. I'll look for them. This was a church funeral. Mm -hmm. An old buddy gives some remarks on maybe some naughty stuff back in the day. Let's hear it right here. But the thing is, you know, I was 11 years old and I had a... Oh. What? And the police used to pass by. Prostitute. What you doing? What you doing? I said, wait, no, my husband. 11 years old. I ain't never seen nothing like it. That's when I ran into James Wagner. <laughs> but anyway, he put him a coat here. But uh, I just want to tell you. Wow. Right on. 11 years old, huh? That is quite a shocking uh, funeral. You never know what somebody's going to no, say. You got a lot of emotion no. and, yeah. you know, usually a little booze here and there. <laughs> my favorite part at the end was the deacon who walked up, said, not in my church. You can't talk about that in my church yeah. and uh, pulled him off there. Okay. G-Bag of the Day, final one if we have the time. Yeah. Kevin Harlan promoting Knuckles on Paramount+. Plus. And Van Gundy wants a reminder because it's so far in the future. Everyone's favorite red-headed warrior, Knuckles. 
teams up with Sonic and his best pal, Tails. Stream the six-part event series, Knuckles, April 26th. Exclusively on Paramount Plus. Stan Knuckles. It's, uh, that was your nickname in well, history. You know right? what? Knuckles? I would love to watch that, but we're already advertising for April 26th. That's a long way off. So, Kevin, you've got to text me on the 25th and will. remind me. <laughs> no doubt, man. Yeah, man, I'm day to day. I'm sorry if I don't um, make it to uh, something that I'm due for tomorrow because uh, I can't guarantee it. Is it Cynthia's uh, WFAA, our one-time champ? Is it Adam State with the ump challenging, uh, changing the call? Is it the church funeral remarks? Uh, 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 or is it uh, Kevin Harlan and Stan Van Gundy promo? I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna vote for. Uh, Whew, that's a tough one. I'm gonna change. I'm gonna vote for the ump changing the call at Chia Fall. How about you? I'm gonna go with the champ. All right, Mr. Strong. I'm gonna go with the ump. I really like that one. D2 baseball represent. Yeah, Adam State. Why not? Let's go. By a score of three to one, your new G bag of the day champion is the umpires at the Adam State game getting called out and saying, you know what, fans, this time you're right. Okay, we got to run. Uh, Krusty's Corner's coming up next. Where are you taking this, buddy? Man, this team is trying to trade up for a quarterback. I'm going to run you through what they're offering to get there. We'll do that next. Coming up tomorrow morning on Sean or RJ.
Chevrolet in Grapevine. They're the number one Chevy dealer in the world. More new Silverados than anyone else. This is Texas. This is Class Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. Based on new Chevy registrations, 2023. Thank you, Chris Strong and for Lucius Alexander today. It is the G-Bag Nation here on 105.3 The Fan. Otani's going to talk in two hours, so at about 4.45, we'll take you there live to Los Angeles, see what he has to say. It's time now for Krusty's Corner. Here's the king of the Krusty's brought us. Thank you very much, Joel. No questions there on that one, huh? On that Otani? I believe he will not be taking any questions. He will just be, be... That's a statement read right there. Go, sure. yeah. That's a red flag. Tap. Is this yeah. thing on? Okay, mm-hmm. cool. I know there's been a lot of speculation yeah. about what happened. I just wanted to set the record straight. Yeah. Here's the real story. Please believe me this time. Man. Okay. We'll take a listen to it. I, I, I'm, I'm, I am very much looking forward to the press conference. But at this stage in the game, it's just... There have been so many conflicting stories. I don't yeah. know if anybody can say something that I'll believe. Well, now they're finding out. Did you guys see over the weekend, the Athletic reported that, I guess it was like UC Riverside is where the interpreter claims to have gone to college, and, they, and they've apparently got no record of him going to uh, to, to that university. So it's just like one of the things I saw this weekend where mm. you know holes are starting to be poked in this entire this entire thing. Wow. Well, make it till you make it going. New, interp- new interpreter. We have inter- interpreter tryouts, perhaps for yeah. Otani's presser today, or is yeah. this already somebody that perhaps has a full time gig? Yeah, maybe. Maybe what he does, he says, "Okay, fill out this betting slip, and if whoever has the best, you know, <laughs> so you guys if you, you, like, if you hit thing. the parlay, then maybe you get to be the guy." Oh man, <laughs> I got. I tell you what, prize picks. I'm having a blast with it. But I had a couple March Madness moments. I needed. I needed Philip Uski for Duke to get 15 points yesterday. To complete my four player parlay, yeah. it would have been a home run, and uh, of course he ended with with 14. Yeah. So that one stung. Ooh, yeah. bad Thanks, Filipowski. Mm, sorry about that, bro. Uh, by the way, uh, Mardi Gras Brian appeared Friday at the lake. <gasps> nice. Yeah, and I want to thank my uh, my buddies. I didn't know this was a golf drink, a drink that you drink on the golf course. Uh, transfusions. I've never heard of this. Me this neither. Vodka. I think that uh, that's Great the morning drink. after drinking. It's usually, when I, you get the transfusion. Yeah, I need the transfusion, but this is like a good everyday drink. Oh, vodka, grape juice, ginger ale, and crushed ice. Sounds wonderful, man. It is it is refreshing. One more time now, vodka, vodka, grape juice, grape juice, and then ginger ale, crushed ice. Yeah, sounds delightful. It is. It's a delightful drink, and I and I can see why people drink it on the golf course because it's a very refreshing drink. If it's hot outside, I can see it being a a really good drink. Hangover? Uh, no, not at all. Thanks to the the good night gummy. Uh, no, it saves just, you in the morning. It just did not save me in the morning. Okay, but, but the no the uh, I just think that uh, my tolerance since hanging out with you has gotten better. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I think it's because you've become a champion. Yeah. and you found yourself yeah, in championship I, I, I think, settings, I think, and I just happen to be there. I think you were part of the. You got me back on track. I used to not be that way, but now I'm back to I'm back to my days of being. <laughs> good able. job, Eric. Hey, yeah. if I get the credit for that, I'll take it. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. All right. This team, the Minnesota Vikings. I'm gonna I wanted this is interesting to me because I want to give you guys what the Vikings this is this is actually this is coming from ESPN. This is our our guys at ESPN and they they've they've kind of run through what the Vikings could do to go and get a quarterback. And and they they're offering their or what the things they're offering, they're saying, hey. How could they move up? How could they get there? So they sat down and kind of mapped out a path. And I, I want you guys to play the role of I'm trading to you. I'm the Vikings. I'm trying to come to you. And you tell me if this is worth it for you. All right? All right. I'm trying to get the three. I'm trying to get to the third overall pick. That would be the New England Patriots. Would you be interested in my 11th overall pick? the 23rd overall pick and a 2025 first round pick. So I'm giving you three first round picks for your pick. At if number I'm the three. Patriots, if you're the Patriots, um, I'm needing to use my pick. Okay. All, All right. right. I don't have a quarterback myself. Yep. So I would probably say no, unless I just don't like the third best quarterback on the board. It's you, Eric. Yeah, I I think uh, from from what I from what I've seen a lot of the like I I like Drake May and it seems like Drake May will be there at three, and yeah. if I'm the Patriots, I need to take a quarterback. 
So that's that's what I would do. If I was the Patriots, I would say thanks, so you but would no tur- thanks. You I'm taking away. the quarterback You would there. turn away the three first-round picks is what you would do. I believe I would. I think my guy Elliot Wolf might take that deal. It's not a bad deal to take. I mean, you get you get pick 11, right. pick 23, and then a first round the following year. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think Elliot would strongly consider that one. So, that is a pretty straightforward deal. Okay. At number four, Arizona Cardinals. The Vikings send number 23 and Justin Jefferson to the Arizona Cardinals for the fourth overall pick. So Dang. now I'm sending you number 23 and maybe the best wide receiver in the game mm-hmm. for the fourth overall pick. And this is, you know, this is, you could do it with their, their, their rationale here is, you know, you, you can, you could do it with all picks all the way if you want, but if the Vikings are unable to secure an extension for Jefferson, the Vikings could send him to Arizona, draft their quarterback at three and still be in a position to draft a receiver at 11. I just don't know how to value a star player who's about to set the market at his position. You know, like for Kansas City, they had that with Tyreek Hill and they actually didn't want him, you know? Yeah. Uh, and they they found a taker. But I, I don't I don't think that's a great situation to trade for. I'm getting an elite player, but said elite player is instantly going to take about 12 to 14% of my cap. Um, so I don't look at Jefferson as a like super valuable asset when it comes to trading because he's asking for thirty million dollars when he arrives. I could go spend thirty mil, um, you know, uh, on a on a great wide receiver if I if I wanted to go do that. It doesn't necessarily fit my plans, you know. That being said, you know Kyler Murray and Justin Jefferson might be exactly what our team needs. So I'm thinking no, but I, um, I could get talked into it. That's probably one I'd be I'd be super interested in doing if I'm Arizona, uh, because you know Arizona obviously feels like they have their quarterback in Kyler Murray right now. Right. So it's not like you're trading away from a position that you need at the quarterback spot. I would be doing everything I can though to get that pick eleven from Minnesota. It's like, hey, I know you want to give me pick twenty three, but you're going to get the quarterback of your dreams right now. Yeah. So if you want that, you're gonna have to fork up. I know you're giving me Justin Jefferson, but as Dawson just mentioned, I gotta pay him that's, an arm that's, and a leg. And you clearly don't want to do that in yeah, Minnesota. Yeah. In fact, you're trying to draft the quarterback the face of your franchise and you're willing to punt on the best wide receiver in the NFL because you don't even want to pay pay for him. Yeah, see So that, I need pick eleven. See, that's where I would go. I'm about to pay this guy. I think you guys are dead on here. I'm like, listen, I'm I'm gonna give you this pick, but I have to pay this guy. You know, he's not gonna play for me for the way it is. So I would I would work very, very hard to get the eleven. So if it, if it was Vikings send eleven and Justin Jefferson for four. Yeah, I'm doing that. We're we're in on this, right? I am, yes. Okay. All right. Los Angeles Chargers at five. The Vikings send eleven and twenty three for the fifth for the fifth overall pick, then send the fifth and the and a twenty twenty five first round pick to the Patriots for number three. So you're double tra- you're double trading is what you're doing. Right. You're going up to five, then you're turning around and taking five and a first round pick to try and get to three. Okay. Yeah. If you're the Chargers, there. I mean, I think if you're the Chargers, you do that. If you're the Chargers, you accept that initial offer. I'm trading back from five. I don't need a quarterback. Right. And you're getting eleven and twenty three. Right. So I'm getting two stud players here. Now, if you're the Chargers, you might think to yourself, hey, Keenan Allen's gone. Mike Williams gone. We need a badass wide receiver at five. We're getting one. At eleven, are we? Probably not. You're not getting one of those top three bona fide super beast receivers. So are you willing to trade down from there and not get one of those guys? But then you have two picks in the round. I probably would be because I wouldn't put as much stock into just one particular player, though I understand how studly these particular wide receivers are at the top. Yeah. So that that's the question that the Chargers would have to you know answer to themselves. Are you willing to punt on one of these top three wide receivers? Because at 11, you're probably not getting it. But you're still getting a really good player, and then at 23, same thing. So I'd do that if I was the Chargers. Yeah, to me, I also got to think about the, the trade that you make with the Patriots. You know, you're going to get – they're going to get five – you know, that it might be a little bit more palatable to them to be, you know, to be able to still pick in the top five yeah. and then get a next year's one. 
Right. That, that might might get a little bit more easy for you. But the thing, if you're the Patriots, there you still might be trading away from a quarterback that you love. You going from three to five could yeah. be the difference in getting the quarterback that you want. And if you're the Patriots and you got a guy you want, then there there's not a one single first round pick that's going to change the idea that that like making that a good idea. If you want a quarterback there at New England, I don't think you're trading out of three. All right. The final one I want to give to you right now is the New York Giants at six. The Vikings send eleven twenty three for the sixth overall pick. And send the six and a twenty twenty five first round pick to the Patriots for number three. So you're keep you're trying to keep enticing the Patriots to do this. Is it is it make any is it make any sense for the Giants to to pick up eleven and twenty three? Not right now. I got to see who's on the board, you know. But I'm trying to find out if there's a quarterback that our scouts and coaches really like. Yeah, I think that to me when I talk to the Giants people, they seem to think it's all about wide receiver there. They, I mean, and I wonder. I mean, it's skill. They don't. They just don't have any skill guys. So I wonder at if, if eleven and at twenty three. Man, this wide receiver draft. They is think really, you can work they, with Jones. That's that's. I mean, that's what the giant people are saying right now to me. And I don't know. Maybe in the next hmm. two weeks that'll change. But give right, it another year. Give it another year. But it seems like to me, the, the anything you have to do. So you feel like everybody. This whole scenario is. You got to get to the Patriots at three. Now, however you however you do that, but was there one team's deal that you liked the best? Did you like the Chargers trade the best? When with the Arizona, with the, you like the Arizona trade? Yeah, I'd rather do it if I was Arizona. Yeah. yeah, you want the you want the player then, right? You got the surefire player, right? Uh, I feel like that combination. Once you move that pick up to eleven, now you know we have a chance to help our offensive line or our defense or something, and that you know that gives us something to market around. We got a lot of yeah. good things going on there with that. Yeah, yeah. agreed. Yeah, I, I agree with you guys. So I think the, I think the I think the Chargers deal though is pretty good too, though. But I yeah. do like the Arizona deal the best. All right, thank you guys. Thank you, Brian. Crossy's corner every afternoon two forty here in the G Bag Nation. We have big news cranking today in the NFL, Chief. Where are you taking us first? Are you smelling the smoke around the Commanders? Plus the new NFL rule change. NFL players unhappy. Next in the nation.
Command Studio, secured by TFWSecurity.com. You're rolling with the G-Bang Nation on 105.3 The Fan. Here we go. It's hour two of the G-Bag Nation on 105.3 The Fan. Hope you're having a good one. Hope you're enjoying that NCAA tournament. You're counting down to all the fun stuff we have this week with opening day and then uh, the NFL draft towards the end of April. It is going to be an amazing spring. Of course, the Dallas Stars kicking butt taking names. Team USA, salute to everybody that got out there to AT&T last night. I am hanging on to 60 seconds on soccer. It will be delivered. Man, this freshman point guard at Notre Dame is a lot of fun to watch, this gal. It's time now, though, for Eric Chiafalo and your NFL news of the day. Well, folks, unanimously, the NFL has banned the hip drop tackle. The competition committee has uh, signed off unanimously at the NFL owners' meetings where Jerry Jones is doing some level of scribbling that we'll have to address at some point. We have the coach's photo that we need to do a deep dive on. But the the somebody big was news, missing on that thing. Do you notice? Handful of somebody's were missing. Not oh. just our Mike McCarthy. Oh, Your I, guy Sean Payton wasn't there either in the photo. But I'm seeing quotes from him where yeah. he's still taking subtle shots at Russell Wilson. That is pretty funny. Oh, so maybe he's see, there. I didn't see Sirianni didn't in the see, photo. That's what I didn't see. I didn't notice. I didn't notice Nick. That's the Mike one. Tomlin. I don't believe was in the photo either. They all just. All these guys are just bailing on this thing, huh? Yeah, just a little thanks, but no thanks. So yeah. we get the unanimous decision. I know you guys are excited. You guys are looking forward to the evolution of football that involves no contact whatsoever. So this is a great day. I'm excited about for that For the softy myself. generation like you guys. Thank you. Yep, yep. I'm a two-hand touch guy myself. Chief, can't wait. That's right. You wanted to play seven Mississippi, too, don't you, Broadus? I want to play safety. Don't hurt my quarterback. You got to count to seven before you go after him. That's You needed more than that with me blocking. Maybe. <laughs> 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 your quarterback and brought us yeah, on the line yeah, you he's need, like hey dude get ready to go yeah. backyard on these fools yeah you need to you needed to get that ball out quick hope you throw well on the run sir yeah <laughs> i saw a guy last night that kind of reminded me of a guy from uh from uh washington he, th- th- this guy's a great i mean he was a great athlete but the thing about it was he 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 varied how he did his pass set so to kind of throw him off so you, you short set him you know hit him quick and then you back up another time, and then so you never give it, you never let them get any kind of rhythm on. Never you. show your hand. You never show your hand. So yeah, a couple of times, set them short. Then and I'm like, man, this guy reminds how I used to play football. <laughs> That's Just awesome. kind of throw them off a little bit. <laughs> I like that, man. Yeah. Well, yeah, the NFLPA is not here for this rule. We cannot support a rule change like the hip drop ban that causes confusion for us as players coaches or officials and especially for fans so the nfl players association though they are all about player safety they are not here for the hip drop tackle and you've seen some players come out and speak on this um, or former players like jj watt always wanting to get in the mix on things and have his voice be heard he says just fast forward to the belts with flags on them dot 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 so uh you have javon holland safety for the dolphins breaking news tackling banned yeah. Uh, Mike Davis, a running back in the NFL, I believe with the Ravens, as an offensive player, this is wild, LOL. So you have an offensive player chiming in saying this is not cool. Lonnie Johnson Jr., who none of us have ever heard of, says that new rule is BS. Terrell Burgess, how do you ban something that in some cases you can't control? SMH. Player's not very happy about this. Yeah, like when you're mid-air and you're trying to grab a piece of the jersey, you know, the player is is stopping and going and changing direction, and while you're soaring through the air, you're not sure if you're going to hit him and just keep going or if he's going to be still going, and you're going to have to let go I, instead of hanging on. I don't know how many plays are affected each game like this. I don't know if there's been a study yet, but my initial thought is this is going to send scoring, not, not only because of the tackles that are missed, because of the hesitancy that it's going to create with the defenders. Well, Sean Payton, though not photoed in the coach's team photo at the NFL owners' meetings, he is quoted, I saw, by Mike Kliss, a uh, media member in Denver. Yeah, he's the guy I like to yell at all the time. Oh, okay. I like that flick him, don't you? Yeah, he, I, I thought he, Kliss was the media member you've been searching for for years but just haven't been able to find. No, he's the guy that like has a problem with me. Like, oh, yeah, some guy in Texas knows more about the Broncos than me. And that's what I was. Remember, oh, I, I put Cliss, out Cl- the Cliss oh. is anti Broadus. Yeah, and then at the combine, I used to yell at him like like I was calling him a hack and all that stuff like that while he was doing his stand up. So you would hear me in the background. <laughs> <laughs> you were <laughs> like, yeah, hey, you hack. 
<laughs> You're a hack, Cliss! <laughs> you know, like, and he'd be like... Back to you in studio. And he'd be talking about the avalanche or something like that. <laughs> I mean, just, you, you're a hack, you were, you, you were heckling Cliss? Yeah, yeah. And he, and it, and that's, he's the guy... During that, a live spot? Yeah. Like, they, I used to, they used that's to... That's great. They laughed so hard. The guys, the Raiders used to be next to us at the tables. And, like, the Raider guys would start cracking up about, like, look at Broad is just going off on this guy. You should have gave him a wet willy live on the air. He was. Or pants him or yeah, something. Yeah, he, he's the guy. He is the guy that said, he goes, how could some guy in Dallas know more about, you know. Who's this B Brian Brodus? Yeah, exactly. So Well, he tweeted out, to score more <laughs> points, Broncos have to do what? That's the question to Sean Payton. And the Sean Payton response is, quote, number one, can't take as many sacks. Hmm. Still shooting shots at the old uh, Russell Wilson situation. He's a big-time sack taker. Noted sack taker Russell Wilson. I can understand that, but it is kind of funny there, Sean Payton. You know, I, I, I do think part of, uh, well, part of this is, is Russell Wilson's performance. But, Brian, you know this. Like, Sean Payton does not think any of his quarterbacks have ever done a perfect job, even when he had Drew no, Brees. No, he, he'd be mad that Drew Brees yeah. is, is trying to throw for 5,000 yards instead of run his plays. There is yeah. an, an ego thing in Sean Payton. I think he might end up regret moving on from Russell Wilson. I, I think it's going to be pretty easy to 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 find worse than that. No two one four. We said Mike Cliss. That's what we said. That's his name. That's the media member in Denver. What are they saying? Who hates they say Broadus. Broadus is heckling. Yeah. Okay, no, not Mr. Bean. Uh, we uh, we have a couple of quarterback things. So we'll get to the smoke around the Commanders here in one second. We'll see if you guys are buying or selling that load of BS, but uh, the Jets owner, Woody Johnson, says they will be keeping Zach Wilson if they can't find a trade partner, which, I mean, no, based on what we've seen here, yeah. I don't think we're going to, I mean, Justin Fields is going for a sixth. I don't know that you're getting much at all for Zach Wilson. He says he's got the skill. He can do everything. There's a reason we drafted him at number two overall, so they will not be releasing him allegedly. But, I think uh, maybe scout team could be in his future. Hmm. If you're looking for new, different roles for him, he can do everything. That's true. That's true. I bet we'll see some photos of him like we saw Baker Mayfield in Carolina a couple of years ago where he's doing some he's doing like some scout team defense stuff. <laughs> like they just need bodies. <laughs> they got like B Baker Mayfield was like rushing the passer, I believe, yeah. in Carolina Panther practices a couple of years ago. And now look at the wow. come up here. You know yeah. what happens when you just sometimes you gotta hit rock bottom. Mm -hmm. You know? And that's what happened to Baker Mayfield. And now the come up is real and you got the bag. And he's just crossing his fingers his brother and dad don't steal it from him again. <laughs> All right, are you guys buying this? I just saw from Tom Pelissero, NFL Network. They're hanging around. It's Rappaport. It's White. It's uh, Garofolo. And they're all hanging around the owners' meetings. And they say the belief amongst executives in the league who know Commander's General Manager Adam Peters is that he will be drafting none other than Michigan's own J.J. McCarthy at number two overall. Wow. How big of a surprise would that be for you, Brian? Uh, it would be a big surprise, but man, you know, you, I was watching some, uh, Michigan players, offensive players the other day and McCarthy does some things. Well, he, he really does. The fact the play action game is very good for him. He's a winner. He's lost only one game in his career. Uh, the mobility in the pocket, he could be accurate. Watch the Alabama game. He was outstanding in that game to get him into the national championship game. I could see why people will fall in love with a guy that doesn't make a whole lot of mistakes. You know, he's, I think he's a really steady quarterback. I don't think there's anything really super dynamic about him. This is the time of the preparation, though, where we start hearing about real things that people think. And, yeah. you know, five years ago, it was around Mac Jones and Trey Lance, and there was the surprise about Trubisky and, and so on and so forth. And, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I think if you're going for a play action guy who, you know, doesn't, you know, light up a lot of the other stat things, that would be my evidence that I'm worried about Harbaugh making it in this version of the NFL. Well, I also saw, you know, you have now former Ravens defensive coordinator Mike McDonald is the head coach with Seattle, but before he was the D.C. in Baltimore, Mike McDonald was the D.C. in at Michigan under Harbaugh. And yes. so he knows J.J. McCarthy very well. And there is there's some level of Harbaugh on McDonald's staff in Seattle. So they have some people that are very familiar with J.J. McCarthy. And I've seen the rumors of maybe Seattle being a team. They have Geno Smith right now, but that's more of a bridge kind of quarterback. Right. And some people feel like McCarthy needs a little bit of time uh, to continue to bake a little bit yeah. before starting. So maybe Seattle's a team that could be a surprise move up or whatever His, around the draft to, yeah. to make the 
pull his, the trigger on McCarthy. His only real issue is sometimes there are some inconsistencies with the ball placement. You know, you could watch his guys. I was watching the, like I said, I was watching a tight end the other night, and you know, ball behind a guy. You know, crossing routes, ball behind. You know, he, that's something with him. I mean, but the guy's a winner. I, I don't know how you can. Uh, I don't know how you, you can't discount that about the guy. He's got a sixth sense to himself about how to find space and windows and stuff like that. It's just he's not always consistent with the way he throws. You could watch the you could watch the uh, I believe it's the Bowling Green game, and he is just awful. And you're like going, okay, yeah, but that's stiff competition, dude. Yeah, and that's I mean, what I'm saying. What I mean? That's hmm. what I'm saying. You're kind of like going, wow, why are you this bad? He's not just playing cupcakes over there. No, not at all. Oh wait, I'm just well, I forgot he plays for Michigan. Never <laughs> mind. I take everything I said back. Yeah. Cupcake City on that schedule this year. Harbaugh's like, yeah, no problem. Like, you can suspend me for the first four weeks of the season. We're not playing anybody. I think wake me up in October. Yeah, how many? Call me Josh Spores. How many games did he actually coach? Maybe three. (laughs) Yeah, he parlayed it into a championship and a giant NFL deal. It is working. Hey, the Eagles proposed a fourth and twenty alternative to the onside kick. It did not pass once again. That is, uh, that's too much change, I imagine, there for uh, the NFL owners to agree on. But Andy Reid was somebody that was in favor of it. So they'll go back to that one perhaps next year and yeah, give it a shot. Yeah, because he's got Mahomes. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. No question. When yeah. you have a guy like Mahomes, fourth and 20 is just kind of like fourth and six. It really is. Yeah. It really is. Uh, also saw NFL Competition Committee Chairman Rich McKay told uh, Tom Pelissero uh, the replay assistant will now be permitted to correct certain types of incorrect calls for roughing the passer and intentional grounding. So it must be purely objective, like the QB wasn't actually hit in the head or was out of yeah. the pocket or whatever. So that's something that the NFL, I think that's a small step in the right direction. I still don't think you're going to see the replay crew correcting those types of, like, hits on the quarterback and stuff, even if it's ticky tack, they usually want to make their referees look right. You know, yeah. so it has to be like blatantly not the right call for them to overturn something like that would be my guess. And I, I totally understand it. I, I think they need to transition away f- a little bit further into how many reps do we actually need on the field? You know, because I think this is the way the game should be officiated. It, a couple of seconds after multiple refs in a in a room watching it all on multiple monitors if anything is confusing give us 10 seconds and if we got to call a timeout to review we will but that's going to be few and far between i think they need to lean into this because it's just so difficult like give me a camera overhead view give me a camera up from an angle so much better than dude standing around field level trying to see through 300 pounders to notice where the ball was or if the guy got his feet down it's just It's an impossible game to officiate like that. And we're finding out right now because video double checks these guys work all the time and see stuff that they don't know. Lean into that, please. Now, I just saw as well, um, or didn't just see, but over the weekend, there was the trade involving Legereus Sneed, Chiefs corner. Yes. What did you think of that? The Chiefs, I mean, I'm... I'm always pretty much on board with the decisions they make. They've done yeah. a really nice job team building, so I don't want to question them too much, but this was a bit of a head-scratcher for me. They put the franchise tag on Legereus Sneed, who's one of the better cornerbacks in the league. He had an awesome season where he was just shutting down wide receivers week in, week out, up in your face, man coverage, I'll erase you from a game. And they put the tag on him, and then they just trade him to the Titans, who are apparently going all in surrounding Will Levis with as much talent as possible. But for the Titans, all they had to do was give up a third-round pick in next year's draft and then swap seventh-round picks in this year's draft. So the Chiefs basically get what they would have got anyways if you let LeJarius Sneed walk in free agency, which is a third-round compensatory pick in the 2025 offseason. So I I really don't understand what it is the Chiefs are doing here. They just just basically gave away LeJarius Sneed. Yeah. They're not getting any immediate draft assets. It's not like they're getting a third round pick this year. It's it's to the point we just talked about earlier. It's you're not going to get the value of the player a maximum pick. No one is going to give you a first round pick if they have to carry the entire freight of extending a guy's contract. If Sneed had maybe two years left on his deal, then they could have probably got a one for this guy. But they they mm-hmm. when when it when it turns into teams are not going to give up prime assets and then turn around and pay the guy. They're just not going to do that. It's not good business for them. So Maybe if it's a truly, truly elite player, but I think Snead had a great year. There must be metrics like his recovery speed or 
targets, uh, you know, yards of separation at target, stuff like this that it's, maybe says this is not a sustainable year from him? It's a contract. It, it's, it's just a, a contract? Yeah, I mean, I, as a matter of fact, because, Eric, I agree with you on it. I, I talking to people, like, how do you get, how do you just give up a third-round pick? And to a man, it was, it's all about the contract. No one is going to give you a premium pick and also have to pay a guy. They're just not going to do it. And Unless it's Tyreek Hill? Maybe so. Uh, and, but maybe that model you, you, is you, dead. Maybe, yeah. may, maybe we're overpay. now in an, now and now we're in an era where teams are doubling down on we're not going to give you picks and then pay the guy. If yeah. you don't want to pay the guy, flip and release him. Yeah. You know, and because they were only able to get that, they had to shop it to the other thirty teams. And all thirty teams were like, "No, we're not giving it to for the right to pay Lejarius team," which seems crazy to me. Yeah. You know, because that is, or even a third round pick this year, where you're at least yeah. immediately getting. You know, yeah. a player in return, yeah. but they're not getting it until 2025. But shout out to the Titans. They're they are they they are buying in on a quarterback they shouldn't be buying in on in Will Levis, but they are at least giving him a chance with the way they're putting talent around him. So salute to them, at least going all in with a quarterback on a rookie contract. We got the C-note, Cowboys news of the evening. So much flowing in. Jerry was busy talking over the weekend about Tyron and Tyler and salary cap and we have so much more coming up next right here. It's the G-Bag Nation of the fam. It's truck month, ladies and gentlemen, at Platinum Ford in Terrell. That's right, Gilcrest Automotive in Terrell between I-20 and Highway 80. It is truck month. It is located just minutes from the Metroplex. Trust me, it is worth a short drive to Terrell to save a lot more. If you're looking for that brand new Ford at Platinum Ford, why would you buy that Ford anywhere else? It's really a great question. I guarantee you the best buying experience you've ever had. I was in the car business for a couple of years. I know it can be tough out there. Platinum Ford's going to give you A-plus customer service across the board, streamlined process, general manager uh, Adam Vinci and his team. Now, Adam's a big-time Tolo, so he's going to roll out that Tolo VIP red carpet for you, get you in that dream Ford vehicle at your dream price. And again, it is truck month, so you're going to get massive savings everywhere. Look at that 2023 F-150 Lariat four-wheel drive, saving almost 12 k off MSRP on that bad boy. Maybe, you know, it's it's the car, the truck, the SUV. If you need the SUV like the Explorer Limited, almost 7 k off MSRP on that one. 2024 Ford Edge all-wheel drive over 9k off msrp these are the types of deals you can get at platinum ford 250s 350s 450s all the super duty action they got you covered there as well you can customize at platinumford.com or just call and ask for our friend general manager adam bincy drive a little further to save a lot more at platinum ford they poke fun out of mutual love and then get into fisticuffs behind the scenes but that's an hr issue T-Bag Nation's Boys in the Morning. It's Sean and RJ with Bobby Belt. Mornings 5.30 to 10 on 105.3 The Fan and the Odyssey app. The stars look amazing tonight. Hold up. Is that a UFO? Quick, grab a photo. Oh, it's too far away and too dark. Don't worry. My Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra can handle it. <laughs> what? Your UFO? It's a drone. Aww. See what others can't with Zoom with Galaxy AI on the new S24 Ultra. Get yours now at Samsung.com. Epic. Just like that. Say hola to T-Mobile's Go 5G Next plan and stay connected with Los Tuyos. Say buenas to no data roaming charges in 21 Latin American countries. Say que tal to non-stop calls, texts, and data between the U.S. and Mexico. And now it's easier than ever to join T-Mobile with your eligible matricula consular or student visa. Visit us today. Gold 5G Next plan required. Data included in select countries. In Mexico, up to 15 gigabytes high-speed data followed by unlimited 2G data. Not for extended international use. Ctmobile.com for terms. Dollar taco deals are here at Fuzzy's Taco Shop with $1 OG tacos for a limited time. Here's the deal.
there's some considerations here that you also have to think about if you're the staff. You know, they're really good at plug-and-play guys, uh, especially offensive linemen. They've done a great job with that. You know, but does, you know, guys like, does the coaching staff with everybody over there on one-year deals, how's that going to play? You know, are you willing to be able to think about, uh, you know, playing rookies at certain spots when jobs are on the line? You know, I think that's something that that we all have to consider right now. You know, I've talked to a bunch of people over there. There's some uneasiness going on in that building because of the unknown. You know, they don't know know what's going to happen. They're all thinking maybe they're going to have to hunt jobs after this year. So, yeah, that's, that's what Jerry wants. He wants that uneasiness. But you also have to look, you know, if Mike McCarthy does... Does he want to, you know, does he want to, you know, plug and play a rookie in the offensive line and and take that chance? You know, we'll see. It'd have to be a hell of a rookie, you know, especially that position where even the future greats can struggle a little bit and, and cost you games. I don't know. I think I would look at this as if I'm a Mike McCarthy and I would say, guys, let's try to enjoy this ride. It might be my last year as a head coach. Um, the team is setting us up to be disappointing. And we can get mad about it. We can get frustrated about it. But they're not bringing back any of our free agents. They're not adding any good ones. So the writing is on the wall. Yeah. Our our hope is if in their ability to, to draft like crazy. And if that happens, then maybe we'll do better than last year. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll get new contracts. But, but chances are we're just here to play out the string because Jerry Jones doesn't want to pay two coaches at the same time. Have you seen Jerry Jones ever talk about the Cowboys situation in the cap in such a dire way. No. I mean, no. that that to me is where that's, that's what kind of got my attention that all of a sudden, like I've never heard Jerry talk about the cap and, you know, like, you know, the way he just described it, talking with Tyron Smith about Tyron Smith. That's just so unlike him. But he said, if he makes all those incentives and things like that, we would be really wrecked. Yeah. I don't remember Jerry ever saying anything like that with the cap. Like Am you I can't wrong? roll with an additional ten million dollars mm. of a hit. No, I, I don't. I don't think you're wrong. Mm. You know, I think he's trying to make excuses for how rough this is going to get. Well, what we said earlier though, they could have flipped a lot of switches and they chose not to do that though too. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. they're not managing to win a Super Bowl in any year. They're they're managing, you know, to try to create the the higher lows. You know. And if if you can do that, then you know maybe your fan base is always on the edge of their seat, thinking we're just a player or two away, and it's it's about to be our turn. I know Jerry Jones believes significantly in the NFL business model of every time you go to play on Sunday, your fan base is excited just to see you win that game. And um, you know I, I think that's hard when you are a championship or nothing type of fan. Yeah, and he's he Jerry has lent voice to the idea of. Like one of his quotes from yesterday was, I think that we have been in a situation where we can get it done with lesser. Mm. He's he's acknowledging, yeah, this is going to be a lesser version of ourselves. He says more doesn't necessarily beat Green Bay. There are other things. Maybe having it better strategically. Yeah, so he's calling out the coaches a little bit. Yeah. Fire them then. Strategically in different spots, but more than necessarily beat them either. Uh, so we're going to be asked to do some things different because we've got some different players. Is that maybe why the coaches are down today or the, the mood is low? You just told it, you just said you expect us to maybe do better with less. Yeah. You're, you're, you're just playing out the string. Uh, I think if you're, if you're this coaching staff, that would put me in a tough mood. And like I said, I I think in the coming weeks and months, you got to try to find yourself a way to rally and enjoy this because in the end you're you're coaching a pretty good football team that has a chance to make the playoffs. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, but this is also this is Jerry saying like I gave you I gave you coaching staff enough last year. You had enough. Yeah. And you didn't get it done with that. Yeah. So uh like it wasn't I couldn't have given you any better players to make this thing work. You strategically crapped the bed in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, which is, but but that's not totally fair. I mean, partially it is. Yes, your coaches, every single one of them, let you down in that game. Everybody let you down in that game. But a lot of it was your players as well. The players yeah. that you handpicked, Jerry. This is your team, and you still want to act like there was enough on that roster last year. There was definitely enough to beat Green Bay. Yeah, not enough to do much else after that. Yeah, not only are you kind of uh, you know saying we had more than enough on a flawed team, but you're you're kind of setting up the fans to blame us. And there's some blame to go with that coaching staff. Like they could, they could get much better success out of the running game. I think they were the only team in the NFL last year 
that gained less with motion at the snap in their run plays um, than without it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's something that if I'm Mike McCarthy and I'm thinking, how do we save our jobs? Let's take a big swing and make sure we're as up to date as possible with the coaching trends and whatever we've resisted over these previous four years. Let's throw to hell with that and get busy coaching as soon as we get at that rookie mini camp. You know, a different way of attacking on the ground because with well, a lesser offensive line, maybe a lesser running back, we got to somehow get four and a half in attempt. Right? I know that defensive coordinator will be ready. I don't know about anybody else. Yeah, and hey, that that could help you. I uh, yeah, that's that's my that's if you if if I do not want to see Mike McCarthy get fired now because I care so much about Mike Zimmer. Yeah, as a person and what he's going to try and do here, he might be up against it too much though too. But, this is very doable if he can get good play from Osa and Hankins and and Kendrick stays young, yeah. somewhat young. This is somewhat doable that you could have such a good defense that maybe the offense could be average and you win like that. And that goes to your Mike Zimmer possibly yeah. saving Mike McCarthy's job. Yeah, that's why I, I think if, if Mike's job is going to get saved, it's going to be because of Mike Zimmer. That's where I think it's going to go. We have another baby on the team, Wanye Thomas with Wanye Thomas Jr. He breaks up the girl dad run that we've been on. Hmm. It's been an epic uh, a girl dad run, and I participated in it. I contributed to that, uh, but maybe the uh, the pendulum swinging back the other way. Okay, uh, up next here in the Cowboys news of the evening, you know I think this is a positive actually. Three former Cowboys who won't live up to their new contracts. I'm reading this on on the Landry hat because what you want your team to do in in a league where uh, salary cap space is so important is not bring back guys uh, who can't live up to the contract they're about to get. Now, in my mind, in free agency, you are going to overpay. You want to overpay to put your team over the top, not team build. (laughs) And uh, unfortunately, you know, like what the Titans did with Tony Pollard, I I think if they're really, really going for it and they want to go over the top and they're like, we need a runner, probably should have just stuck with Derrick Henry, didn't get the right player. But they're at least doing it right, that we're going to go spend money and maybe overspend for players because we think this is the end of our championship window. But Tony Pollard absolutely is a guy who's not going to live up to the contract, right, Chief? Yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think really any of these dudes that that left and got these contracts, think, mostly with I, the commanders. I think Tyler Biotish could be a big disappointment when it's all said and done for the commanders. Yeah. Yeah, he's number two on their list. Okay. Gets three years and $29 yeah. million, dollars, including yeah. 20.7 guaranteed. Congratulations to no, Biotish. Hey, congratulations. I know that's got to be very exciting for him and his family. Grew yeah. up on a farm. Yeah. Still loves going up there. But, I mean, when we met him a couple of years ago at, at one of the World Cup parties downtown, you could just see the drive and determination in his eyes to go chase that bag. Yep. You know, he he was he had just been in the weight room and working with the offensive line coach. He's like, I spent one week in Wisconsin. I was yeah. right back here, you know. And and two seasons happened. I don't think he got as good as he wanted to be, but he got good enough to to get ten million bucks. And I'm very happy the Cowboys didn't do that. That's one you'd be regretting for a long time. I just, you know, I, I think it's you know in a way a year late that they didn't have a chance to do it with Terrence Steele last year. You go back and unwind that; it'd have been great. And then the last player on this list is uh, Dorrance Armstrong, and uh, he got uh, forty-five million dollars, twenty-two of it guaranteed. There's no way that's going to spell anything but disappointment for the Commanders fan base, is it, Brian? They don't have any edge rushers, so he's going to be the guy. You know, he he. I'll tell you what. I felt like that Fowler was a better player than him last year. And the Commanders got Fowler too, didn't they? They got both. Yeah. So I mean, Fowler, you know, probably should have had more opportunities. Armstrong has been a flash player all his career. You know, one, two, real good game, and then next thing you don't see him for three games. So, yeah, I that 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 could be one that could could come back and get them. If I'm new guy though, I'm looking around like, hold on here. We had a Chase Young. He just went one year and eleven million bucks, and we're throwing around forty five biggins for Dorrance Armstrong because he had nine sacks in twenty twenty two, and he knows Dan Quinn. Uh, he knows Dan. It's Quinn. Huge for the culture. Yeah, right about. That. He knows the scheme and stuff. Everybody needs a sponsor. That's worth twenty That's million true. guaranteed. If I've ever seen it. <laughs> All righty, it is the G Bag Nation here on one hundred five three. The fan home of the Cowboys, home of your World Series champion Texas Rangers, and boy, we got baseball stuff coming up at four o'clock. I know we have uh, an edition of uh, around the bases at five forty. So we're going to be talking a lot about this and. 
And we'll, of course, get into mention of the new item at Hurtado. Stick around for that if you haven't seen it. But where are we going next, Chief? Best of the weekend featuring underwear superstitions, bite fights, and Apple versus Android has escalated quickly next year in the nation. Coming up tomorrow morning on Sean and RJ, we'll recap the Mavs game in Utah. Got a little Ask Reddit at 740 and the great Jared Sandler at 8. Get you set for Rangers opening day this week. It's a Tuesday morning on The Fan. I'm Bob Burke, founder and chairman of Burke America Parts Group, a family of brands that includes RepairClinic.com, an appliance and HVAC parts solution company that's grown into an international brand. Before AmericanEagle.com, we partially launched a new technology platform developed by another firm. American Eagle helped take our technology to a whole new level with digital marketing, software development, and business insights into our key markets, appliances, HVAC, and outdoor power equipment, and did so both on time and on budget. AmericanEagle.com has the resources, experience, and talent needed to produce solutions. Our new technology platform developed by AmericanEagle.com has produced tremendous results with higher traffic, conversion, engagement, and online revenue. If you have any home repairs you need to take care of, check us out at RepairClinic.com. If you need a world-class website or technology project, then I would highly recommend AmericanEagle.com. Call AmericanEagle.com at 773-NETWORK. That's AmericanEagle.com, 773-NETWORK. Now's the time to get your 20 game plan for the world champion Texas Rangers. The wait is over! You'll enjoy flexibility, savings, and exclusive benefits with any of the 20 game plans, including the customizable fans choice. Can you believe it? Right now, you'll find the best seats. Wow! So don't wait. And the celebration has begun! Make your plan for a special year at the ballpark. Explore your options at rangers.com. Life doesn't stop when the economy is uncertain. The market might not care you have a wedding to plan or a kid to put through school. And inflation doesn't know you've got a family to feed. But Bank of America does and is here to help. With digital tools to help you save and local experts in North Texas, you can keep life moving forward the way you need it to. Bank of America, what would you like the power to do? Learn more at bofa.com slash North Texas. Bank of America NA, member FDIC, equal credit opportunity lender. Hi, this is Brandy from the Good Feet Store. Are you standing on painful feet all day? Don't lose hope. We want to help you live without pain. Discover your options and visit goodfeet.com. Spectrum Business is made to work like your small business. Made to do it all with fast, ultra-reliable internet, phone, and mobile services. And made to work with a small business budget.
face of March. Him and uh, Oakland get bounced out thanks to NC State, but NC State's a lovable team right now as well. Uh, but the best team in college basketball, we'll see if they end up winning it all, but it is UConn, and their head coach, Dan Hurley, is already probably my favorite coach in college basketball, like the personality. He's he's ready to talk S. He's ready to be hated by everybody except for his own fan base, and he wears that sort of with pride. But uh, here is the broadcast from the weekend during the UConn game where they're talking about Dan Hurley, UConn head coach, and the Red Undies. Dan Hurley is the king of superstition, especially on game day. He has to have eight M&Ms before every game. He has to have a cup of bulletproof coffee on the sidelines at all times and do not knock it over. And he has to wear the same suit and socks and shoes and, yes, the same red dragon underwear. And don't worry, it is clean. His wife, Andrea, travels with a portable washing machine. I mean, you can't make that up, Ian. And apparently they travel a Maytag repairman with them as part of the crew. No, they no, no, we uh, actually we have one. It's pretty cool. It plugs in USB and we'll take it on soccer trips for like washing the jerseys back at the hotel room. Legit. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. Like for 40 bucks, dude. Because this is the first yeah. I heard of this. I'm like, yeah. wow, does Dan Hurley have some some access to this new technology that I'm not familiar with? You know, Abby found it and, you know, she's always doing a little online shopping and stuff. And <laughs> it was it was, you know, it. It was shipped from uh, China, and I was skeptical of it the entire way because it took like three weeks to get here, and I was like, man, this thing is going to break and leak the first time we use it, but it's gotten the job done. How about that Red Dragon undies for Dan Hurley by yeah. way of superstition? Whatever One it takes. Eight M&Ms. I wonder what the what the eight is there. The color and then factor. His, his bulletproof coffee. So that that's a man with some superstitions. That's a man with a really, really dang good basketball team. I mean, and that's a man Hurley, with a badass wife. The yeah. Hurley Shout family. Out to wifey, Mrs. Hurley. Right. We Hurley family. Is this the is this the family whose dad was the coach and the Bobby Hurley? Is this his brother? Yep. So this is the Hurley basketball family from it was Duke and all that stuff like that. Okay. If you say so, bro. I I'm honestly just, I, I'm yeah. not I'm not totally sure, but it would make sense. He seems like a basketball their, lifer kind of dude. Their dad, this Dan their dad Hurley. was a ball coach and like the brother's a ball coach. But his dad or the brother was one of the one of those guys at Duke that was an all timer, Bobby Hurley. Okay, yeah. so it's it's in his blood. Then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh I do I do love a good superstition. Uh we've seen the underwear superstitions in baseball. It's the first I've heard of it in basketball, though. Yeah, um, you know, and and basketball or baseball, whatever superstitions, I, I thought were always weird. But once you go through it, it's like I don't know if this is real. You know, it doesn't let really pass the smell test for me either. But you can't argue with the results. You know, and once something gets in your head and you're like, I don't know why, but I've lost three in a row with this on. I owe it to my teammates to at least eliminate it from the possibilities. Okay, the let me ask it. you this for a superstition. Back in the day in the tournament, there was a guy, you've heard me mention this guy's name, Lou Carnesecca, who was head coach at St. John's. And he used to wear a sweater during the Big East tournament, like his lucky sweater. Mm -hmm. John Thompson from Georgetown got the same sweater and wore it against him in a game. Ooh. Is, does that wipe out superstition? If you're going with your superstition, but the other team's coach or manager gets the same sweater or same item of clothing. Yeah, I, th I think I think does this that would, wipe you out? I think this is like offsetting penalties, replay the down kind of deal. It definitely throws a wrench into what you've got cooking on your side of things. You Something know? weird's going on. Yeah, you know, that would yeah. throw me the hell off. Yeah. It, it might totally you throw a monkey wrench in your plants. I think that's dirty pool. You know, I, I don't. Yeah, but hey, to <laughs> each his own. And if you're gonna unveil what your superstitions are. You know, now you've left yourself open to this. Oh, no. Carter yep. Seca would talk about this sweater. Of course. And he'd break, it, he'd break it out. Then all of a sudden, John Thompson showed up. Like, and they go to shake hands at midcourt. And Thompson, like, opens up his blazer, and it's the same sweater. And he's like, uh -oh. Carter Seca had to feel like, we're in trouble today. Every time you put on an, an, an item or take something, you have something in your pocket, the Pandora's box of luck is is open, and yeah. you never know how it's going to fall. Is it good luck? Is it bad luck? You're about to find out. It reopens when somebody plays that card on you. So you have to be – got to think on your toes because he could have uh, suddenly made that your bad luck sweater now. I think that's uh, quite a conundrum, Brian. And I, that's why yeah. you rarely see that because no coach – will go that far unless it's a hell of a rivalry. Yeah, I, it's playing dirty for sure. Well, I saw one time, though, okay, then we had a golfer 
Rocco Mediate wore the same color combination on a Sunday as Tiger Woods mm-hmm. in a match. <sighs> How'd he that went, go for him? Yeah, he, he played him well. <laughs> yeah. Tiger won. The, it was an open. It yeah. was, I think they were playing it. Went to an extra round the yeah, next day. Yeah, the it? next day. But he wore the same outfit as Tiger. He's taking his energy there, I wonder. I believe Tiger won that with a broken knee. Broken leg, yeah. 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 Unbelievable. Well, Back to you, Eric. Well, I'm uh, I'm curious then. Do you feel like head coach? Because now we we get the Sweet 16 matchup, UConn versus San Diego State. If you're the San Diego State head coach, are you doing the M and M's, the Bulletproof Coffee, and the Red Dragon Undies to try and offset what Hurley's got cooking over there? I think you have to, like you said, like yeah, you're, you're the underdog one, in this scenario, pick dude. Which one yeah. you, pick which one that, that you would what, just pick one of those. Pick pick the one you feel like it's the easiest to. To get, I think it'd probably be the M and M's, right? If you're San Diego, you're not a blue blood. You're not going to be back in this situation. You got to strike while the iron's hot. I think you do all three, and all then three. You, you let them know about it. Maybe you, you post a video on social that morning. There you go. Yeah, I think somewhere before tip off, you know, you're close. You're in his vicinity, and you pop all eight of those M and M's kind of right in his face, and then you bend down to pick up a basketball, and you let those red undies creep up your back a little bit. Ooh! Now all of a sudden, he's like, "Oh, s." Yeah. <laughs> he's going all out for this. If you're Hurley, that perks you up a little bit, I think, if you're Hurley. Or you sit down on the end of the bench, he looks down there, and you hold up your cup of steaming coffee. Just kind of like, yeah. Like you, or, or like at, you toast him. Like, you're in his head now. <laughs> yeah, now yeah. you're really, like, oh, look at me. And I like, and you can see the steam coming off it. Like, I'm drinking the same coffee as you. 214 says I wear run underwear on Sundays to increase my cash tips, and it works every time. <laughs> wow, look at that. Yeah. yeah. Is that a Twin Peaks waitress hollering? I'm not sure. Potentially. You know? Well, I like it, the idea of Aztec's coach's wife sitting in eye shot of Dan Hurley with the portable washer washing her husband's red undies. And maybe midway through the first ooh. half or something, she walks him over there. Says, here you go, honey. A little wardrobe change at halftime. You know, something like that. Just puts him yeah. over his slacks. How about that? Oh, he wears them over top of him? No, he just wears them over the top of the slacks. That would, that would be one hell of a bold move. <laughs> Speaking of bold moves, did you guys see the bite heard around the world this weekend a ufc bite I, I, fight. I didn't i didn't see any oh UFC this is a bite stuff. fight man somebody went full mic this is crazy now it's, it's not biting the ear off of an individual but shoulder it, bite it is it, i think it was more like a like more a of a rib, Luis suarez it was like a rib cage sort of bite um, oh ribs are if, good this time of year if i have the spot correct i believe yeah it's 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 a it's a rib cage bite like from the back like he's got this dude pinned up against the cage and then this dude is wrapped around him and his face is around his torso and at one point he just goes for the bite. Here's some sound of the fight uh, and it's a gentleman named Igor Severino who is biting Andre Lima. This is how it sounded afterwards. They had to stop the fight and figure out what the hell is going on. Did he bite him? No way. Stop. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Did he yeah. get flesh? 100%. Okay. Look at that. But it's that is that's really different. bad. And they did break the skin over there, too. How did he so do now that seeing with that, mouth guard? I don't fault Chris no, Tione not at all. For, for that stopping. Wow. Okay, wow. that's a hell of a bite, dude. Did you see the mark on that? Yeah. So the, okay, so this dude, this dude who got bit, Andre Lima, he ends up and he goes and gets a tattoo because the bite mark remains. Yeah. And so he goes immediately from the cage to the parlor and gets tattooed the bite mark. So it oh. remains there forever. I don't know if that's sanitary. Might want to get a tetanus shot, uh but I I or uh, a rabies I love it. shot. If a guy's biting you, this yeah. is a rabid mofo. And he really bit him hard. Like hard. a few minutes later at the end of the fight, he kind of shows the under part of his arm. Yeah. And it looked like a piece of gum was stuck to his bicep because it was just so, uh, like, okay, so indented. It, okay, so it was on the arm. Yeah. Because the video makes it look like it's sort of under his armpit and he's biting him on the torso. Either way, this is this is a, a bite yeah. of the ages right here. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I... Uh, I mean, that's just disgusting. I understand if you're in a headlock or something and your, like, fight or flight is kicking in and you're doing something for survival, but they're supposed to be trained professionals. And... I mean, I would just be freaked out. You know, I want my face nowhere near that man's sweat and skin. Oh, it just it makes me want to vomit. You know, it really is disgusting. Yeah. Uh, and the Apple, the iPhone versus Android wars have taken another another step into uh, into some treacherous territory with lawsuits and whatnot. 
many non-iPhone users experience social stigma, exclusion, and blame for breaking chats where other participants own iPhones. The green bubble is now That's becoming right. a a uh, you know a a big issue. Yeah, the bubble of shame right here. There is a there's a literal antitrust lawsuit going down right now because people have feel like Apple has monopolized. And now if you want to feel like you're a part of your family and your friend groups, you have to get an iPhone because oh, people are like, I can't even when my when my daughter sends oh. me videos of my grandkids, she has an iPhone and I have an Android and the video comes in all weird and I can't see it. That is tough. The yeah. iPhone guy or like the the Apple CEO is like, well, if that's such a problem, just buy an iPhone. Yeah, <laughs> that's his thoughts on this, man. Uh, you know, I, I as a as a lifelong Android guy or at least last 15, 14 years, Android guy, listen. I got to live with you folks, okay? If you're fellow Android folk, I salute to you. The Apple people think they're better than us, okay? There's not a damn thing we can do about it. So just, um, you know, think quietly and you're, we're going to be fine. There's no need to have any lawsuits about this. We're not being left out of anything. Just let them be in their pretend little bubble of pretending they're better than us, all right? Our phones are perfect. Just don't own, own a BlackBerry. <laughs> now that's a problem. I used to love my BlackBerry, dude. dude. Brick yeah. Breaker is the greatest phone game ever. I I I I rolled with the BlackBerry hard, and then a time like in early 2011, it just became painfully obvious that they had no idea what the hell they were doing anymore. I had to bail. We got baseball stuff coming up next. Tons of Rangers content with three days until opening day. And by the way, the game tonight will be heard right here on The Fan. The pregame's coming up at 6.30. We'll talk to Sands at 6.15. But all your Rangers goodies and baseball stuff is next in the nation. Take your turn it on, leave it on fan experience everywhere you go with our Odyssey app. Proudly presented by Comerica. This is Jim Rome with an Odyssey Sports Minute. If there's anything that Ipe, the interpreter, loves more than gambling, allegedly, it might be lying, allegedly. Like, we didn't find out any new information over the weekend about the actual gambling debt, but we did find out that his translator will apparently lie about just about...
from our fan studio, secured by DFWSecurity.com, you're rolling with the G-Bang Nation on 105.3 The Fan. Shoot, yeah, boy, we got news. It's hour three of the G-Bag Nation. We're on your Rangers right here. And uh, a chief just told me there as the music was about to start blaring, Seeger and Young expected to play. That's just what Boach said live out there at the yard as they're getting ready for some exhibition action tonight at the Globe. It'll be a 6.30 pregame right here on 105.3 The Fan. So congratulations, you know, it, it really wouldn't have mattered that much in the big picture, but it's just going to be amazing to get the lineup, to see those guys in there, to go through hopefully uh, the calls that they do at the start of the game in the first inning, all the energy and excitement when they take the plate, Corey Seager, uh, for the first time since the heroics of, of last year, you know, and to be able to take that all in and have those guys there, I, I think it's just going to make this opening day even more special. And we absolutely cannot wait to be out there Thursday afternoon for with you. Uh, and if, if you're coming out, please stop by the broadcast position. We'd love to say hi. So uh, Seeger and Young are in. Okay, what we learned about Texas Rangers at spring training, the Frankel Firm truckwreck.com text line is open at 877-881-1053. What have you learned about this baseball team since they started uh, spring training? What are you most excited to see here as uh, we get the, the season underway on Thursday? Brian, can we start with you? You learn anything about this team? Yeah, you know, the um, to me, the thing that it's fascinating is the lineup and what direction that Bochi's going to go with that. You have so many. I, I just remember, you know, the couple of times that we got to watch the Rangers play live in front of us and it just seems so much depth there with so many different pieces to it and the combinations and all and, and you know last year the rangers had to had to deal with a lot of injuries and stuff and were able to kind of survive that because of the depth they have but it seems like to me it's even a better lineup yeah this year than even going into last year i think we have a lot more of those questions answered but the whole thing i think everybody's fascinated with what with, with with Langford, what he could do, you know, uh, we, we, you know, this, the, 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 to me, it's just such a deep team and, you know, how are they going to, you know, day in and day out, you know, put that lineup together and will they get the right combinations? Cause if they get the right combinations that they're going to be hard for a lot of teams to beat them on a nightly basis. You're going to have to get to their pitching probably, but you know, I, I think that's the, from, from top to bottom, you know, I, I know the, the league had a deal where they ranked the best lineups in baseball. I think, Rangers were fifth, you know, and understandably there's some, you know, the Braves, the Dodgers, the others, the Astros are probably going to have, but man, it is. Yeah, anywhere it, from three to fifth, I've seen them be it, ranked. It seems like to me the lineup is even better than a cha than, a, than yeah. the championship team last year. So I'm excited on a nightly basis how Boach is going to put that thing together and, and can they deliver like they did last year. I do think the one seed for excitement is is Wyatt Langford. I think if you pulled Rangers fans right now, um, I mean, other than just initial opening day, seeing Seager back out there and, and unveiling the banner and things like that, I think ultimately the start of this season is going to be all about seeing our guy Wyatt Langford hopefully pick up where he's left off at every turn, which is just... Here's a thousand OPS. Here's eleven hundred OPS. Here's twelve hundred OPS. Dong ball left and right. Like that's what I think everybody is super fired up for right now. Yeah, that was number two on this list here in the morning news. What we've learned about the Rangers over the last five weeks, figuring out if Langford fits on the opening day roster, <laughs> and it was one of the greatest spring trainings by any player, you know, let alone a, a, a rookie. Hardest thing the Rangers had to do where Langford was concerned was keep a straight face in the wake of questions about whether he was on the team or not. They had made the decision. And uh, pretty cool from Bruce Bochy here. They're they're doing this a Rangers All Access show that you can watch online. They managed to catch the moment in his office when Langford was informed that uh, he would not have to wait much longer to make his big league debut. How are you? I have to see you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How are you? Good, good. Uh, I got to tell you, one, one of the coolest moments uh, you know, for a manager is a moment like now. And that's being able to tell you you're with the, the major league team here. And uh, I could be happier, I could be prouder for you. I mean, when, you know, how fast this is all happening for you. I'm, 
and I gotta tell you, there's never any doubt in our mind. I don't know if you ever had any doubt, but, uh, <laughs> but I just want you to know uh, this is a re really, really cool moment. You're gonna help us win, you're gonna help us win a championship here, and uh, so congratulations on everything that's happened uh, to you. I know, you know, just a year ago, you're playing for the Gators, and now here you are, so yeah. it's pretty cool. Nice yeah. work again. Thank you. And I'm, yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. We'll win some games. Awesome. Mike, yeah. congratulations. Yeah. You've yeah. earned it, man. And this is just Thank the beginning. You, yeah. you got the best yet to come. So proud of you. Oh, yeah. 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 Great job. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Guess what? All right. Thanks, yes. Nice work. See, I see why sitting in there uh, as, as the rookie walks in a historic spring training for anybody. But, you know, I that's the that's the thing that's happened this spring training that gives us the credibility of this as a potential breakout rookie superstar. The name Mike Trout, you know, was mentioned last week. And I think that just sent a jolt through the fan base, maybe the radio station, maybe Tolos everywhere that put it into context of just how good this guy could be. Now, Mike Trout had the the high butt, you know, that we were talking about yeah. late last week. The, Langford is an elite athlete as well. Yeah. Um, maybe not the kind of dude that can have a 45 inch vert and like redefine what it is to be an athletic outfielder. Um, but, you know, he fits in that category of, you know, maybe not a Ken Griffey Jr. Mickey Mantle superstar, but definitely in in that barely half tick down. Um, so that's that's my expectation is could this guy be as good as Seager? How much how long could that take to come to fruition? And it seems like whatever level he goes to, it's just a matter of getting the experience, seeing some pitches. And he's like, OK, I got it. And that's typically what the greats can do. You know, they just step in. The tools of the game, a little bit of work, and um, you know this is this is historic though, even for for greats to be able to do this this kind of deal. Um, so if but if he does that, then you would be looking at a team now that I think does compare favorably to the lineups of the Dodgers and the Braves. Yeah, yeah. you know how insane it is to to win a championship and then follow that up with to start a MLB season having one and two in the Rookie of the Year odds. Yeah. That's what you have right now in Langford and Carter. You just won a title. <laughs> yeah. And the and the and the top two guys, best odds to be rookie of the year are both Texas Rangers. Well, I think to me I can't imagine how many times that's happened in the history yeah. of the sport. I don't think so. Uh, it's just unbelievable that the, the Langford has eclipsed Carter so much. And all it, all Evan Carter does is make history. That's yeah, right. I mean, I think we could probably just off the top of my head think about the Dodgers probably that, that with you know, with what they've done, Dodgers seem like every year they had the Rookie of the Year, and then they were battling for the, <laughs> they're battling for the title or battling for the division or something like that. I mean, there's, but I think the thing is that to me and the mention, the reason why I mentioned the, the lineup is because, remember what we were thinking about with Josh Young, and you know, we're thinking about him. We really didn't know what was going on in center field. You know, there were so many questions that we had this time last year. Oh yeah, you were depending and, on guys and, like and, Josh and now, Smith. And now, and now, now you're kind of looking at this lineup going. Yeah, damn, Josh Young's a really good player at third base. You know, you look at you look at overall and some of the you know they they spent the money on, you know, the, up the middle there with their with their infield, but then you you know with with you know with low and guys like that. I mean, guys got better as the year went on. For there were, sure, there were far less questions. You know, but by the end you're like, and now you're talking about bringing all those guys back. Yeah, yeah. Where there you know, like there were so many questions. You're like, ah. Uh, well, this team's going to win 86 games. This team's going to win, you know, it's what they're going to do. They're going to. And they got rid of their weak links. Yeah, if so, if, if so many, if these guys come through, then they'll win, you know. But now. Hey, this was supposed to be the year that they really went for it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I think last year was extra. It just, just it just showed how good their process we just are. We just learned so much about the guys, like I say, the Josh Youngs and people like that. Okay, final thing the morning news wrote about, like, things that we learned in spring training. It was, it was a goal of theirs to make sure the defending the World Series title wasn't a burden. Did you ever feel like it's become that way? They got the TV show now. There's more. There's bigger crowds. There's more media. There's expectations. How have they managed that from your guys' perspective? You know, uh, I feel like though, it's just part of what happens. You know, the extra the the show that they're doing, the insight that they're trying to give. I think teams are trying to really promote their teams and any kind of access that you can give. Yeah, I, I think that's a good thing. I, this team is going to be the normal deal now. Yeah, isn't as it? long as Bruce Bochy's the manager, 
I don't see things changing very much. Eric, you go in the clubhouse a lot more than we were going. It, you know, it did did it appear any different from what you were dealing with before to you know this year? It really did, man. It it seemed uh, light. It seemed like there was really really good camaraderie. You have you have pitchers and guys like with each position other. Players, yes, they're yeah. all they're, they're sitting on the couch. They're gathering yeah. around. They're yeah. watching watching dudes do the crossword puzzles. They're watching another guy yeah. play the mobile version of Call of Duty, and it's it's Sporzy and Degrom yeah. talking a little smack to each other. It's Sam Huff talking a little smack with these guys. Like I I think everything was you know in a good place. And I do think that you have the, the even keel, yeah. steady uh, Bruce Bochy yeah. running the show there. But you also, I think, have had enough in the way of not offseason hate, but disrespect, I think. You know, there's enough there's enough out there from a disrespect standpoint where everywhere you turn, it's, oh, who's winning the AL West? It's the Astros again. Yeah. Oh, can, can the Rangers even make the playoffs? Everybody's talking about the question marks as opposed to shining a light on the the dominance that this team has and is bringing back. So I think there's enough in the way of disrespect that they can they can kind of have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder coming in as the big dogs. I kind of feel like, too, as, as long as the season was, that you really didn't have time to really anything to change. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you have a whole off season to sit on it and, you know, just kind of hear, you know, everybody patting you on the back, telling you how great you are, that whole thing, you know, kind of, you know, getting pumped up about it. But the off season seemed like to me, it was very short. Yeah. It's like, they, it's like they, they went into, they won the championship. We had the parade. And the next thing you know, we were talking about being in Arizona for spring training. So maybe the shorter, you know, it seemed like to me it was just very quick. So maybe they didn't have the time to get totally full in themselves when it was, uh, you know, that sometimes that happens to championship teams. Yeah, I just I wonder about the physical toll of playing an additional month of baseball uh, or more. And and then, you know, trying to that's why you don't see these teams go back to back very often. Even Bochi's teams, it was like yeah. that 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 in between year is like, okay, we're gathering ourselves and then we, we go for it again. I do wonder that's really my biggest question is outside of the tangible things of like the rotation and whatnot. It's just how does the the long season that you just played and guys like Marcus Simeon play yes. every single day? Yeah. 170 plus games how does that end up affecting you and at what point do you see it from the start or once you get into the summer can you start to feel the fatigue setting in i i don't know yeah. that's just one of the questions that i have yeah it's it's a legit thing and it's an absolute grind that i think days uh, guys need days off but I, hopefully that goes to bochi's uh you know uh, strengths as well that he can monitor the physical and and and, and the mental and, and keep guys fresh and I, I think this also goes to CY's approach, and I do think he he borrowed from JD on this, or he's benefiting from JD's insistence. We're going to get really even keel guys that trust the process, don't get too up, don't get too down, and it's annoying like when they suck and they're talking about that kind of stuff. But now that they're really good and they have that foundation and that culture built that JD was so big on the mental ABCs of the game and not psyching yourself out, not getting burnt out from being you know just a maniac. Um, I, I think that has benefited them big time already in the mental toughness department. And then they just cleaned out so many jobbers. Like, you bring back Janko because he's a glue guy, right? Mm -hmm. But you let guys go who, you know, were at the bottom of the roster and were, you know, symptomatic of what this team was before, you know, the the great rebuild that they they went through. And now when you look at the roster, it's like if you have somebody that you think isn't capable of going out and being an everyday player and hitting 270, it's because he's playing a very, very specific role and you need those unique skill sets, you know, available at the end of your bench in, in case of an emergency. Uh, now you're built to win a championship where, where last year you were ahead of schedule and magically figured it out with the worst bullpen to ever make the playoffs. You went ahead and won the damn World Series, so that's uh, it's pretty exceptional. With two legit like starting pitchers in the playoffs, yeah, you find a way. It's like here's Monty and Evaldi. Everything else is just going to be well, patchwork. We're going to figure this thing out. And guys stepped up. It's like what's my role? Okay, I'll go. I'll go eat two or three innings here yeah. and make it happen for you. Shout out Dane Dunning. Shout out John Gray, and many others. But a lot of it goes to the clutch hitting they had in the playoffs too. It just seemed like every time they needed a big hit. Even remember that time yeah. Adoli's in that game, he goes 0 for 4, and then when he had this fifth hit bat, he hits the homer. Yeah. You know, I mean, it just showed you how clutch they were at certain times when they needed to.
The clutch double plays. Oh, that yeah. Baltimore. Yeah, yeah. You're in trouble. Oh, yeah. my gosh. What Young. was that? The ninth inning? Yeah. What a staff. Oh, that was beautiful. Nation, we got to run. Top 10 at 420 coming up next, Chief. Where are we going? Liam Neeson has me wondering uh, who Hollywood's top 10 highest paid are. We'll get you that on the top 10 list of the day. Plus, Shadur Sanders calling out our beloved Texas high school football next year in the nation. Be a part of the show. Text us on the truckwreck.com fan text line, 877-881-1053. That's 877-881-1053. RJ Choppy here by your friends over at QC Kinetics. Where's your pain? Is it your knees, your hips, your back? Don't let it sideline you any longer, and don't let them tell you that surgery is your only option. Call QC Kinetics, the future of pain relief. This is the science of using natural biologics from your own body that can bring you lasting relief. No drugs, no steroids, no surgery, no downtime. Trusted by patients all over America. Over 150 clinics nationwide. Emmett Smith raves about QC Kinetics. I've used them both the right side and the left side of my body. You can start to live big again in 2024. You can use your HSA or your FSA. You put them to work to get you the relief you need so badly. QC Kinetics, 972-972-8610. Advanced Regenerative Treatments, 972-972-8610. Dallas, Fort Worth, Plano, Grapevine, and Richardson. QC Kinetics, free consultation, 972-972-8610. Get food that makes you feel good at Salad and Go. Their new steak fajita wrap is packed with steak, avocado, poblano peppers, and more in every bite. Available for a limited time for only $6.79. Tonight we're focusing in on Zoom with Galaxy AI on the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Ah, a baby tiger. Check out his claws as he prepares to pounce on that frog. Close one, but not as close as this Zoom. We can literally count the whiskers and... Oh look, Mum's here. Good thing I'm nowhere nearby. Go wild with Galaxy AI on the new S24 Ultra and zoom in on the epic day or night. Get yours now at Samsung.com. I'm at Genesis of Plano, part of the Huffines Auto family with longtime customer Anna Portillo. Quick question, Anna. Can you sing the jingle for us? Huffines has it. Nicely done. So what was the it for you? For me, it's the staff. They treat me like family. I've been coming back for 10 years. I bought five cars with them. I would recommend them to anybody. Well, it's no surprise that Genesis of Plano offers an outstanding customer sales experience. It's in their DNA being part of the Huffines Auto family, which has been family owned and proudly serving the DFW Metroplex for 100 years, putting customer service first since 1924. And get huge savings on hundreds of new vehicles like the G70, GV70, GV80, and check out our limited time manager specials. You won't find a better experience anywhere else. And shop online anytime at genesisofplano.com. It's car buying the way it should be. Simple, transparent, and all about you. Let's cue the jingle. If you're thinking about saving money and getting great internet, think Frontier Fiber. And right now, we're offering consistently fast 100% fiber internet at an equally great price. For a limited time only, get Fiber 200 internet for $29.99 per month for 12 months with auto pay and no credit check. Switch now and you'll also get premium Wi-Fi and expert installation included. Fast, easy, reliable. That's Frontier. In select areas, ETF terms apply. Max speeds are wired. Actual average and Wi-Fi speed vary. No credit check for fiber 200 only. Visit Frontier.com slash 200. Lock in your rock bottom deal during Ford Truck Month at Rockwell Ford. Score a truckload of savings at our entire inventory of the most powerful Ford trucks all month long. Like a new 2023 Ford F-150 XLT. Finance at 1.9% APR plus 1,000 in special cash and no payments for 90 days. Don't let Ford Truck Month mark down fast you buy. Hurry in today to shop the rock and save or Shop our entire inventory online anytime at Rockwell Ford.
Welcome back, G Bag Nation. I like the uh, two five four here. Calm down, Dawson. I hope Bankford does good too. But let's let this breathe. Wait till there is major league tape on him. I understand, you know, and I, I'm trying to, but I'm just not going to be surprised if uh, he hits four hundred in the month of April. You know, that's just me. You decide for yourself how hyped you want to get. Segment here is brought to you by the Frankels. Life's unpredictable. Accidents happen. Franklin Frankel, the go-to attorneys for car and truck wrecks in DFW. If you or a loved one's been in an accident, contact the Frankels, 214 or 817 Go online to FrankelFirm.com. It's time now for Wooly Bully's Top 10 at 420. Here's Chief for Zach. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Wooly Bully back tomorrow uh, doing the uh, the fatherly thing at the hospital with young Eliza. Uh, I believe things are moving in a positive direction. So nice. all is well with the Walchucks, but send your best over there on Twitter and whatnot. He will be back tomorrow. I will man the top 10 list of the day. Thanks to Liam Neeson and his wonderful sound that we played on Friday. We'll play it again here. I was wondering who are the highest paid actors and actresses uh over the last year in hollywood i have the top 10 in front of me you can send your guesses at 877-881-1053 but before we do that i wanted to play this sound of colorado's quarterback shadur sanders you must be very familiar with him well uh listen to him call out 6a big time texas high school football i came from a private school so at the end of the day, I dealt with a lot of negativity, a lot of hate, a lot of everything I done dealt with already year after year. I came from a small private school. Uh, all the other kids was going big, you know, power five, and they went to big 6A, Texas 6A schools and stuff. I don't see those same kids around. I don't see them excelling in their programs or whatever they're doing. So I've always been against the odds, like, in different ways. Okay, so he's he's getting ratioed on this one pretty bad. Uh, just a couple of takeaways here. You know, half of the college football playoff was quarterbacked by Texas 6A quarterbacks. Um, that is just uh, one of the statistical reflections of how he might have misjudged what it is he was talking about. Ben Baby showing us that Shadur Sanders was 41st in total QBR last year among Power 5 quarterbacks. At least eight of the quarterbacks ranked ahead of him in that category played at a Texas public high school. Uh, so a handful of people have come out and sort of shot down with facts, uh, whatever it is he was trying to get across there. But he wants to let everybody know that he's definitely gone through some adversity. Turns out six members of the NFL first team all pro went to 6A Texas high schools, a full 20% of the best players in the NFL. Uh, 50% of playoff quarterbacks in the NFL 2024 came from 6A Texas schools. So just not necessarily true what he said about the, the guys uninformed that were... Uninformed opinion, you'd say? Uninformed opinion, I think, is probably a fair way to put it. Yeah. As someone who never competed in the uh, school system, it is a little confusing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's there's plenty. Uh, I mean, the the Texas quarterbacks, it's a it's a thing. Like everybody it is, knows, it's not a thing. It's it's reality. Right. It really is. It's just that you know, if you if you just take a little time to research the quarterbacks that have played in this league and where they're from, as a quarterback, you might want to do that one day. You know, just see where your your counterparts are from. You know, always uh, trying to educate yourself a little bit better. It's always a good idea. Yeah. Now, we are about to have a little Hollywood conversation, but uh, we must address what is happening in real time right now, which is rapper P. Diddy having both his Los Angeles and Miami homes raided by Homeland Security in connection with a sex trafficking investigation. Hmm. So, um, Diddy's in some, some hot water right now. And that is trending in a huge way. A lot of people are texting in uh, because this over the last half hour or so has taken over the internet. P. Diddy has been the butt of some jokes as of late, uh, but some of the allegations involved here are extremely heinous. So it remains to be seen what ends up happening here, but it's been a tough couple of months and it seems only to get tougher here for old P. Diddy. Sounds like he might be the Harvey Weinstein of music. It sounds like he might be a gay paymaster. Really? Man, I hadn't seen those details. Uh, I guess I got to jump in over here on, on the X. Do we need to research that one? 
Like, did I just recklessly speculate? I, I hope not. I hope no, not. No, no, I, uh, I think there's always some recklessness I'm you, involved did, with I'm, just about anything I say. Okay, but that I, just, one, I was, do I need to look that up? I think that's a, that's a less than reckless speculative. So he's using oh. his position of power in the industry to coerce people into things that maybe they don't want to do, and all that's coming to light? Yes, oh, yes. Geez. And now all of a sudden you are, you know, a tough guy rapper mm. who has this hanging over his head. And you're like, crap, oh, wow. now I got her. I can't let this out of the bag. So mm-hmm. sure, P. Diddy, whatever it is you need me to do. Uh, well, that's my do secret that. of how I got into the music industry back in the day. Yeah. And maybe you didn't oh. know about it. Maybe perhaps you were drugged and oh, all of wow. a sudden crap started happening to you that you were like, oh, no. But still, there's some embarrassment involved there, wow. even if it was, you know, somewhat out of your control. Just thought I had a long night on the toilet. Yeah, <laughs> not quite. So uh, we'll, we'll continue to monitor that with P. Diddy. But two homes of... P. Diddy have been raided by Homeland Security coast in the last like 45 minutes. Yeah, coast to coast. Absolute nightmare situation for him. Okay, last week, Lucius uh, unveiled the the online conversation involving the craziest things ever said in an interview. <laughs> Played some fun clips. One of them was actor Liam Neeson a few years ago promoting a movie talking about the pay gap between men and women in Hollywood. Uh, and just just wait for it. Right there at the end is when it is uh, it is exactly what I want you to hear. There's a lot of discussion about it and a lot of healthy and necessary discussion about it because the disparity sometimes is disgraceful. How do you think we can move past that? We're starting. We're starting and it has to start, you know, and it's it's starting with these extraordinary actresses and brave ladies and... and uh, and we, as men, have got to be part of it, you know. We started it, so we have to be part of the solution. So would you take a pay cut to kind of equal things out? No. Pay cut? No, 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 no. That's gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Liam Neeson, for your thoughts on this matter. It is clearly something that hits home to Liam Neeson. He wants to get in the mix here. He wants to help out, but there is an obvious line in the sand that he is not willing to cross here. In order yeah. to get the money yeah, in the ladies' pockets. To, nobody needs to make less. Let's just bring them up to, to where we are. Yeah. You know, you don't have to take it out of, of my pile. There's billionaires yeah. whose pile this can, <laughs> no. this can come out no, of. No, 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 no. Would you rather none of us make anything? Hmm. Haters? You know? We just need, uh, need to bring the ladies up here. Make as much as we are, then it's all good. Man, Hollywood's taking L's right and left, though. They're like, but there's nobody left in the theaters, guys. We got to not pay somebody here. Yeah. Except for those psychos with all their dogs, apparently. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> these, these these dog pet movie theaters that's going on. No, 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 no. Uh, no. That's gone too <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's gone too far, Liam. Now, in front of me, I have the top 10 highest paid actors and actresses. Thank you to the hard work of guys like Liam Neeson in the industry getting money in the ladies' pockets uh, for the year 2023. How many women do you think are on this top 10 list? One. One. All right. Well, um, Sandra Bullock, maybe? We'll find out. This is for the year 2023. This isn't like all time. Oh. Just so just so you know. Like this oh, is just specifically oh, okay. for the, oh. the last year. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm no, 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 no apologies. Time. That's a damn good pull by you. I didn't even know you knew Sandra Bullock. Yeah. You know, as a guy who doesn't watch movies, just no, watch tape. Just, I just know she's in a lot of movies and that she was in a lot of famous movies. So I thought I thought it was an all timer thing. What's your favorite Sandra Bullock movie? I only know one. I think Speed. Was she the, uh, the Bird Box? Bird boom, Box boom. is another one. Yeah, well, two good, good pulls by you. What was the one where she was like, and it was like an espionage movie that I can't remember the name of this. She was like, uh, she was getting followed and a lot is that of, Ocean's Eight. No, mm. I'm sorry. I'll look it up. But there's a movie like it's think a good that, suggestion. I think by there's Chris a movie Strong. where she's like, like the government is out to get her, kind of a movie. Wow. I think she was. See, in that's it. what that's what she does well. You know, I, yeah. I think the problem is when you try to pl- put Sandra Bullock in like a serious drama or to make her an intimidating force, she just has to be the nervous person who's like, "Oh no, I'm in danger! Help me!" Miss Congeniality. You know? She was in Gravity, yeah. right? Was that one of her movies? Gravity. Gravity? Yeah, Gravity? she went to outer space with somebody with George Clooney. I think. I think Sandra Bullock and George Clooney went to outer space together. I think I have that right. Oh, she was in a Time to Kill. All right, could you guys, uh, who do you guys, let's see, Chris Strong, give me one actor that you believe, or actress, that you believe would be in the top 10 of this year list, made the most money in Hollywood last year. I'm going to go with Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper in your top 10. Swing and a miss. Oh. 
but it's okay. Number 10, we have Denzel no, Washington. No, 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 that's going. <laughs> Denzel Washington, $24 million, 69 years old, equalizer three. Never saw it, but I loved uh, the first one in particular. Second one was solid, but uh, the film grossed more than $191 million globally. So Denzel Washington, with really just like one legit movie to speak of, equalizer three, comes in at number 10, $24 million. At nine, you have Ben Affleck, $38 million. Starred in the Nike exec, Phil Knight, uh, Air. But he also directed and produced that movie. And that raked in $90 million globally. And then he starred in another film, Hypnotic. Um, although many stars have endorsement deals, like Affleck's endorsement of Dunkin' Donuts, the list only includes their income from their entertainment gigs. So Ben Affleck, $38 million just from movies and stuff, not including any endorsements or off the field, if you will. Uh, Jason Statham. This is crazy to me. This The staying power of Jason Statham has been insane. I wouldn't have guessed he'd been in a movie for a decade. I know, dude. I thought like the last thing he was in was like Transporter or uh, or the one where they all get together and it's Stallone and Schwarzenegger. Oh, God, and she was in the blind side. <laughs> Sandra Bullock, she was in the blind side. Yeah. Was, She's a football guy. Yeah. Uh, Jason Statham is tied Basically at seven forty one million, he was in Fast X, Meg Two, Expendables. That's the movie that I was thinking of. Expendables. That's good. No, he's, he's he's yeah, yeah, he's always good for an Expendables movie, and he, he's a certified ass kicker. I mean, he, oh, he's dude. one of my favorite action bros. Yeah, but I just didn't know he was still getting it done. He's fifty six years old. That's the thing. Like our action stars are aging in a big way. Yeah, I don't I know who the batch. who are yeah who's the new batch of young action stars. We're still rolling out Tom Cruise, Liam Neeson. It's like. These dudes are mid fifties into their sixties, bro. Yeah, oh, okay. uh, I guess we got Michael B. Jordan. Uh, Michael B. You got you know, Thor. You yes, know, Chris Hemsworth, uh, who plays Tyler Rake in an excellent Netflix special movie where he's just dominating people like John uh, Wick style, just murking folks. Research that I've just done. She was in a movie called The Net. You're still stuck on Sandra. I was curious because it it's it's a computer programmer discovers government secrets <laughs> and becomes a target of mysterious an enemy you know so yeah the movie was called the net 1995 the that's net. about when that's when i about stopped watching movies hmm. about 1995 she was yeah that was your was, final straw she was getting hunted down by the government yeah she yeah figured, well, figured out something and you know what i'm sorry i haven't been looking at the text for a second i was looking at the list a lot of people had texted in the net uh, they thank yeah. you folks i have your back it. yeah thank the, you guys the, another it. guy says uh she was just in one called the beekeeper perhaps the sequel to the net Oh, I've seen, I've seen a lot of the I've seen a lot of commercials for that the beekeeper. I thought that was a show. Oh, wait, I guess it was a movie. That yeah, was a movie. I don't pay attention. No, you don't. I really don't. It's evident. Yep. Nine four zero Tom Holland. That's Tim texting in, throwing out a young uh, action star suggestion. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. You know, he did some Spider Man stuff. I, I get it. He's not your typical archetype for action star. You know, Tom Holland, a little bit scrawny or whatever, but. But I, I get it. He's definitely a superstar. Leonardo DiCaprio's tied with Jason Statham, forty-one million. Killers of the Flower Moon was his main deal with the uh, you know the Scorsese film. Jennifer Aniston, your first lady, on the list, forty-two million bucks. Hmm. Thank you to guys like Liam Neeson for getting this done. The Morning Show, Murder Mystery Two. She was on with Adam Sandler and Netflix. She's she's fifty-five years old, still getting it done, man. Yeah. Still a rocket. A, a, a Gen X favorite, you know. Definitely. All the gals love her. You know, she's she's cute but not super duper hot. So like all all the all the ladies are like, oh yeah, that's my girl. I actually agree with you on this, but I think that's actually a hot take. Really, saying Jennifer Aniston is not like ten smoke show yeah. dime bag hot. You know, <laughs> it, compared to just like respect respectably yeah. 55 hot. Fifty five years old. Mo hot. A Man, lot of God. people go all in for her. Like yeah. even when you're not doing fifty plus stars or just whatever, like you get your one hall pass, yeah. and a lot of people are still going Jennifer Aniston by a mile. And I'm not hating on it, but I don't know. I mean, she's the hottest gal that you could seriously hope to get. You know, not you specifically, Chief, but you know, most most guys are like, oh yeah, I don't stand a chance, <laughs> right? Matt Damon's number four, tied forty three million. He's fifty three years old, and uh, he was obviously in Oppenheimer, which was a a monster film. Ryan Gosling's tied there with him at forty three million. So of course, playing Ken and Barbie, he crushed it. Uh, that was, a, I mean, that's 1.4 billion worldwide highest grossing film of the year. Get Barbie was so really? Ryan Gosling cashed out in a big way. Yes. Tom Cruise, 45 million, comes in at number three mm. of the top 10 highest paid actors and actresses. 
for the year 2023. Your second and final lady on this list, Barbie's own, Margot Robbie. Now she's the surefire. Yeah. Tensky. Cha-ching. 59 million, and uh, she played Barbie. Wait a minute. Okay. The number one, let me take a guess here. Okay. Because did he just sign a new deal? Is it the Netflix? Is it Adam Sandler? It's Adam Sandler, ladies and gentlemen. Murder Mystery 2. Yeah. And, of course, we have on the horizon Happy Gilmore 2. He's back, Hello. baby. But that's the thing about it is, yeah, because he signed. Is It's all because it's Netflix still, right? Pretty it, much. It, 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 Windfall for Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah Netflix. Okay. It's, yeah. It, he got the fatty, Very fatty boom Yeah, okay. Yeah, he, won't be, he won't be back next year, Brian. Yeah. It was a big year for Adam. Yeah. All right. Uh, it is the G-Bag Nation here on 105 through the fan. There's the top 10 at 420. When we come back, we are planning on having the Otani presser as he's going to address reporters and you know, who knows, maybe tell us the truth or maybe just another version of it. It's next in the G-Bag Nation on 105 through the fan. I want to chat DNA.
LA。ぐらいですかね、厳しい、えー、一週間だと思うんですけども、まあ、メディアの皆さんも含めて、えーまあ、我慢と、えー、ご理解をしていただいたのはすごくありがたいなと、えー、思っています。えーまあ、まず、まあ、僕自身もあの信頼していたあ、まあ、方の、えーまあ、過ちというのを、えー、悲しくというか、まあ、ショックですし。Alrighty, we are listening to Shohei Otani. Here's his. Well, first of all, thank you very much for coming.、Uh, I wanted to be here、uh, today to be able to talk.、Uh, I'm sure it was very tough. It's been a tough week for fans and team officials, and I'm very grateful that the media has been patience, patient in this process.、Uh, just on a personal note,、uh, I'm very saddened and shocked that someone who I'm trusted has done this. えー、まあ現在進行中の,あの調査もありますので、えー、今日話せることにまず限りがあるというのもまあご理解いただきたいなということと、えー、ま,あまた今日ここに詳細をまとめたあの分かりやすく皆さんにお伝えするためにまとめたメモがありますのでそちらの方に従って何があったのかというのをまず説明させていただきたいなと思います。Uh, I do have a document in front of me that I will refer to、uh, that will detail what has happened. First of all, I will tell you what has happened. First of all, I will tell you what has happened. First of all, I will tell you what has happened. First of all, I will tell you what has happened. First of all, I will tell you what has happened. First of all, I will tell you what has happened. First of all, I will tell you what has happened. First of all, I will tell So, I never bet on baseball or any other sports, or never have asked somebody to do it on my behalf.、Uh, and I have never、uh, went through a bookmaker、uh, to bet on sports. Up until a couple of days ago, I didn't know that this was happening. えーえー、口座からお金を、えー、盗んで、えー、なおかつ、えーまあ、みんな、僕の周りもそうですね、みんなに、えーまあ嘘をついていたというのが、えーまあ、結論から言うとそういうことになります。Um, just to kind of just go over the result,、uh, in conclusion,、uh, Ipe has been stealing money from my account and has told lies.、えーまあ、まず、はじめに言うと先週末、えー、韓国ですね、えー、僕の代理人に対してメディアのえー、方から、私が、えー、僕のようにですね、えー、違法のブックメーカーから、えー、僕が、えー、関与しているのではないかという、スポーツパバクチン賭博について、えー、関与しているのではないかという打診があり、連絡がありました。Uh, last weekend in Korea,、um, media has reached out to a representative in my camp、um, inquiring about my, my potential involvement in this. Sports betting. で一平さんは僕にこういった取材の依頼があるということをまず、えー、僕には話していなかったし僕の方にそういう連絡はまず来ていなかったということと、えー、まず初めに代理人には、えー、一平さんは僕と話して分かったのは、えー、一平さんにではなく、えー、某友人の借金の肩代わりとして、えー、支払ったというふうに、えー、僕の代理人も含めてみんなに話していました。So... i p e never revealed to me that there was this media, media inquiry. And、uh, to the representatives to, in my camp, he told, i p e told、uh, to the media and to my representatives that I, you know, on behalf of a friend,、uh, paid off、uh, debt. And so, the next day, 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 the えー、借金は自分のものあ、つまり一平さん自身が作ったものだということを、えーいあまあ、説明しました。Upon, upon further questioning, it was revealed that it was actually, in fact, 一平 who, who was in debt. でそれを僕が、まあ、肩代わりしたという話を、えー、その時に代理人に話したそうです。And told my representatives that I was paying off those debts. そしてこれらは全くすべてが嘘だったということです。And this, this, all of this has been a complete lie. 一平さんは取材依頼のことも僕にはもちろんその時伝えていなかったですし、代理人の人たちに対しても僕はすでに彼と話して
あ、彼と話してコミュニケーションを取っていたっていうことを、えー、嘘をついてました。So Ipe、um, obviously lied about, you know, basically didn't tell me about the media inquiry. And then その代表に対して。うん、あの僕もそうだし、代表、えー、チームもそうですね。Yeah. チームも、えー、代理の人たちに対しても、えーまあ、つまり僕とコミュニケーションを取っていたっていうふうに嘘をついてました。So Ipe has been telling everybody around That, he, that Ipe has been communicating with Shohei on all of this account to my representative, you know, to my representative, to the team, and that hasn't been true. And so, I think that the gamble is a very important thing. I think that the gamble is a very important thing. I think that the gamble is a very important thing. I think that the gamble is a very important thing. I think that the gamble is a Gambling,、uh, Ipe's gambling was during the、uh, after the first game when we had team meeting in the clubhouse.、えーまあえー、and then Ipe's So during the team meeting, obviously, Ipe was speaking in English and I didn't have a translator on my side. But, with, but even with that, I kind of understood what was going on and started to feel、um, that there was something、uh, amiss.、えーまあ、And then I was telling him that he was going to be able to do it. And then I was telling him that he was going to be able to do it. And then I was t e l l その時はホテルまで待つことにしてました。Just prior to the meeting, I was told by Ipe, hey, let's talk one to one in the hotel after the meeting. So I waited until then. で、僕は Ipe さんがその時にギャンブル、あのミーティングの時にギャンブルの依存症だっていうのは僕はもちろん知らなかったですし、彼が借金をしていることもその時、そのミーティングの時はもちろん知りませんでした。So up until that team meeting, I didn't know that Ipe had a gambling addiction and was in debt. で僕は彼の借金返済にももちろん同意その時も同意してませんし、物件会に対して彼に送金をしてくれと頼んだことももちろん、許可したことももちろんないです。And at that, obviously, at that point, or I, and obviously, I did not, never agreed to pay off the debt or, you know, make payments to the、uh, bookmaker. で、まあ、その後試合後、ホテルに、えー、戻って、一平さんと初めてそこで話をして、えー、彼に巨額の借金があることをその時知りました。And finally, when we went back to the hotel and talked one to one, that was when I was,、uh, when I found out that he had a massive、uh, debt. で彼はその時私に、えー、僕の口座を勝手に、僕の口座に勝手にアクセスして、ブックメーカーに送,信あ送金していたということを僕に伝えました。And it was revealed to me during that meeting that he, he paid, admitted that he was sending money、uh, using my account to the bookmaker. There it is, the Shohei Otani press conference in Los Angeles as Otani and the Dodgers are back home, had a weekend. It took them, you know, probably three days, but I think they have at least a, a flowing narrative that makes sense and is somewhat clean. You know,、uh, never asked somebody to bet on my behalf, never went through a bookmaker, I've never bet on sports. He said he was disappointed that somebody would have done this to him.、Um, he said, Ipe has been telling everybody I knew this and it's not true. And he said he never agreed to pay off the debt. So it really seems like Ipe was trying to control it in private and give the media a story that could hope, hopefully for him make it go away. And he knew that at any time telling Otani、um, what had been going on would be an automatic firing. So he was probably just scrambling, you know, assuming that narrative. You know, I, 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 I mean, that, that sounds good.、Um, if you're a lawyer making a case, I'm like, okay, let's see what the other guy has to say.、Um, but I, I think we're now far removed from a time that we're ever going to get down to the bottom of this and find out what a real story is. If that's not the truth, I don't know that we'll see the truth for 30, 40, 50 years. Agreed. Yeah. I, I mean, unless, unless Ipe is willing to just take all of the fall here,、yeah. you know, on behalf of his, his guy, Shohei. Then,、um, you know, that's, that's really all. Yeah, what's he going to do? Is he going to come out and be like, yeah, everything that Otani said is true? I imagine, right? I think,、uh, I think he will. Yeah. I think he will. He,、uh, you know, if you look at the situation, $4 million was paid somehow, some way, and it came out of Shohei's account. Yeah. If you're, if you're the translator, I think you immediately take 
all responsibility here, you know, and, and, you know, and you don't fight Shohei on this unless he could come up with, unless he could come up with actual, actual documentation, text messages, emails, something, uh, and phone you don't want calls. to make that bigger. Yeah. You just yeah. want the story to go away. At this you do. Point. You, yeah. At this point in time, you've, you've effed up pretty good. And now you're just like, okay, whatever happens, you know, you kind of, because if he fights Shohei, can, there could be some criminal stuff here, right? Yeah. You know, stealing money. Unless Shohei gave him access to his account. I know. That's what I'm, that's, that's the, the detail that's I'm most the, looking forward to finding if this yeah. is all what actually happened and the translator is the one who is stealing from Shohei and doing right. this all by himself. How did he get the ability to get to his money yes. and send millions of dollars with him not knowing? And how about Otani? This is all extremely personal. And this is all happening in the locker room in front of all your brand new teammates. And allegedly you're being told the information as guys you just met are receiving it at the same time. Wow. And you're sitting there like, wait, what? Yeah. We just played a game and now this is happening. It is unbelievable that he did not know anything until the guy's talking in a team meeting. Yeah. Like, like did you nobody... can't even pull me aside first and be like, hey, this is about to go down, bro. Uh, <laughs> just so you know, the team's about to be addressed, but you deserve yeah. to be told yeah. first. No, we'll go talk about this in private later on. There's a lot of fishy stuff, and most of the text continues to say that sounded fake. That's a cover up. You just don't give random people access to millions. That's what BS that's, Otani knew. Yeah. The How court do you of public know like, yeah. that millions are out of your own account. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it it does definitely seem fishy, and I think it's crossed over into in just being annoying now. Um, you know, they're they're in the midst of a cover up and. So many entities are going to go along with it. I think Otani, the Dodgers, MLB, the agent. Um, and then there's there's really nothing you can do after that to get any sort of clarity on what actually happened. We got to run, Nation. When we come back, an edition of the finest, Chief. That's Subject. right. March's finest, Mulkey, Gulky, and Big 12 Sulky next year in the nation.
Command Studio, secured by DFWSecurity.com. You're rolling with the G-Bang Nation on 105.3 The Fan. Hour four of the G-Bag Nation on 105.3 The Fan. We are all still in the wake of the Otani presser. Said he knew nothing about it, and then has been stealing from him. This uh, segment of the G-Bag Nation as we get into hour number four. Brought to you by Reliant Air Conditioning, gimmick-free AC repair and replacement. It is time now for Eric Chiafalo and an edition of The Finest. All right, ladies and gentlemen, plenty to get to here. March Madness officially underway. It is now uh, Sweet 16 week. We will get some Friday games at the AAC that involve some uh, some really intriguing matchups, to say the least. Now, uh, we will address that in a moment. We're down to two teams in the Big 12 So it has not been the greatest tournament in the world when it comes to Big 12 schools. You, of course, have number one Houston. They will be playing at the AAC versus Duke on Friday. That'll be a ton of fun. Uh, And then you have Iowa State, the other uh, Big 12 team, uh, Big 12 champion. As a matter of fact, they're the two seed, and they will be playing on Thursday versus Illinois. So those are your final Big 12 teams, but you will get to see Houston and Duke go at it. Friday night at the AAC. That'll be awesome. And you'll also have NC State versus Marquette. So those are going to be the two uh, Dallas games for the Sweet 16. And Iowa State and Houston are the two remaining Big 12 teams. We already have the 405 texting in. Let's go Marquette. Uh, Tyler Kolek, one of the best guards in the country. And Marquette maybe having the best backcourt uh, in the tournament at this point. And uh, a guy like Colette can really get it done. The way he closed that game out on uh, or just yesterday, as a matter of fact, was pretty dang impressive. That dude's a beast. So Shaka Smart, former Longhorns head coach, and Marquette will be uh, will be playing some some basketball here in the Sweet 16, right in our backyard at the AAC. Now NC State is the final kind of lovey-dovey underdog Cinderella team that I think everybody can sort of get behind. A lot of likable folks. Uh, in and around that team, but Oakland was the team in round one that stole the show. They beat Kentucky, Will Chambers and company still losing their minds about it. Jack Golke is the guy, the white dude with the the less than ideal hairline that shoots the hell out of the three ball. And what has taken place for him, this has been awesome. Their head coach, Greg Camp, said that the NCAA tournament changed a couple of his players' lives, including Golke. The run is now over. Oakland loses to NC State on uh, on Saturday. But this new Golke made three-point history in the tournament. He signed multiple NIL deals. He got to launch his own merch store, and he went from 500 Instagram followers to over 50,000 Instagram followers. This dude's come up is absolutely ridiculous. He's a forever March legend, and I mentioned a couple of those multi, the the multiple NIL deals. Here is one of them from uh, this this is a commercial I saw. Shout out to the marketing team, capitalizing, striking while the iron's hot, is the season turbo tax said hey Golki, we need you they posted up of uh, some camera inside a random hotel wherever he was staying at in the midst of the tournament they're like hey can we borrow you for a few seconds we'd like to give you some money and Hell we need yeah. you to dribble the ball and shoot a fake jumper on the carpet of this random hotel room floor <laughs> so we can film a commercial take it away Golki and turbo tax me and my team got to the next round by making all our moves count just like turbo tax who makes all your off court moves count this tax season incredible uh and apparently dream yeah he is he is and i'm so happy these players can get a little piece of this oh it's epic dude especially for a guy like him a guy like him who's got basically no nba future nobody knows who he is and now after one game where you go 10 of 20 from the three-point line and you upset one of the biggest basketball programs in the country all of a sudden now you are you know, you He's a are, pitchman. He he looks like he could be a spokesman. Yeah. yeah. And he looks like he could also be your accountant. Sure. For TurboTax. That's his next gig. He probably could do your taxes. I hope he just gets to do spots like every year. He's like, hey, Golke, here of the 2024 Final Four there for Oakland. Obviously, I wasn't going to the league, but I'm back with TurboTax. Yeah, dude, multiple NIL deals. And apparently he said something in an interview about how all these NIL deals, like everything starts happening in real time. Like you become Jack Golke, like in overnight, 
You yeah. go, you step into the court versus Kentucky as a nobody. You leave that game. Your phone's blowing up. Businesses are reaching out to you. And apparently he created an email account, gave it to his buddies and told his buddies to just like handle whatever NIL stuff that comes in. And one of them is TurboTax that they, they thought was a good idea. So that's just hilarious. Man. I saw he got a deal with B-dubs as well. B-dubs. He's, he's rolling in the wings. That's epic, dude. I'm so happy for a guy like that. And I saw like and I'm you just, get wing money. You've made it. Agree, dude. That's yeah. re- that's really the pinnacle. Yeah, and that's the sad part for Golki. It's really only downhill from here. But <laughs> yeah. uh, but you made it. I mean, yeah. you you made it to the top. Uh, and I saw something about the pregame routine for this guy. Like you don't just get out of bed and go ten of twenty versus Kentucky in the tournament from the three point line. You don't do that as Jack Golki. Uh, the reason why you do that is because apparently his daily routine involves a nine a.m. to nine forty five a.m. spot shooting two hundred and fifty shots. Then he does his team practice. Then he comes back later on in the afternoon for 90 minutes and does full speed game situation shooting 500 shots. So if you want to be the next Jack Golke and maybe you don't want his hairline, but you want that jumper and you want these NIL deals, you want that wing money, Dawson. Yeah. 750 jumpers a day will get it done for you. Man, I wish, I wish Abby could hear that right now. He shoots that many a game. Seven, he, he, uh, yeah, he 700, does. Abby. Feels like yeah, it. That, that shot chart, you, you, you talked about that He's last week. He's just spraying week. it, dude. Yeah, it's all behind the arc. There's yeah, nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing to chance with him inside the arc. He's all about taking the shot from the outside. It's phenomenal, dude. <laughs> and the NC State story, uh, you know, it's Oakland and NC State going toe-to-toe. Oakland loses. Sad to see him, you know, Oakland and Jack Golke leave the tournament, but it is cool to see what NC State's got going on. DJ Burns is now one of the fan favorites in the tournament. Big man for NC State. He does a side hustle where he owns a couple of vending machines and apparently cashes out because of it. Maybe he gets a sweet deal on on the you know bags of chips as well, which is a college kid. Anytime you can get a discount on anything food-wise, you're going to capitalize. Mm. So I don't know if he's getting high on his own supply, so to speak, with the vending machine, but I can understand if he did. Hopefully he's at least doing it at cost, you know? Not yeah, that. absolutely. There's a break-even yeah. situation involved there. Uh, but by winning seven games in the last 12 days, NC State head coach Kevin Keats has earned a 100 k ACC tournament title bonus, a $400,000 raise beginning next season, two-year extendo through April 23rd on the contract, $25,000 bonus for beating Texas Tech, and a $50,000 bonus for beating Oakland. Bang. This dude just cashing out. Congratulations, Kevin Keats, man. What a run the NC State Wolfpack have been on. Man, and I, I, I feel like I can celebrate with the coaches now that the players can get in on the fun. This is great. Everybody's winning. Yeah, everybody's Stack winning. The money. Including the Boilermakers. Everybody thinks Purdue, they're just going to they're gonna crap down their leg again. That's what they always do. But Shaq Eady, that's right, Shaq Eady says, no, sir, not going to happen. This dude, seven foot four, big man, and he's putting up all the numbers right now. Purdue has dominated the first two rounds of this tournament. Haven't really played anybody sure i get it but salute to them because they had a ton of pressure on them going into this tournament here as the the narrative of them being a bunch of chokers has really taken a stranglehold over the college basketball community but shaquille o'neal has taken notice of the big man zach Eady. he says i'm changing your name to zakiel o'neal <laughs> we got ourselves our very own shaq Eady situation brewing and it's because of the numbers he's putting up dude zach Eady of purdue first player with three straight games with at least 20 points and three blocks in the ncaa tournament since Kareem. Shaquille O'Neal oh. for LSU, 9192. Nice. Shout out to Brian Broaddus repping the purple. Yeah, I know you're very proud. Yeah, very proud. That team's only won like 16 games every year. Seriously, LSU was not a great team with Shaq being there. Yeah, I mean, it's a bummer. Yeah, they, was, they, 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 did not, they did not take advantage need of that. Need better guy. guard play. Yeah. Um, it's all yeah, about guard play this think, time of year. Do you think Edie is uh, a, an NBA player? It's a weird it's a weird deal. I, I think he is. I, I think there is a place for him for sure. I mean, if Boban could be in there. Yeah, like he belongs on a, on a bench at the very least somewhere in the NBA. I just don't know how the NBA will look at him in terms of is he a first round pick? Uh, is he just, is he a second round guy? I mean, at 7'4". It sounds I, like that he went back to school because that well because they didn't think he was an NBA I just don't player. think you're quick enough to rebound to block shots to get out to the perimeter I just don't think you can defend at all yeah he's probably too slow footed to really make a huge impact but do I think he's going to be in the NBA absolutely yeah you're right the uh, team's going to need a fourth center 15th man we're going to ACO kitchen who knows maybe his offensive game is skilled enough that 
you know, he could at least be a weapon. He's played in international basketball too. He's Canadian. So he's he's had his share of uh, you know, of those kinds of that competitions. A lot. Yeah. Well, here is Purdue head coach Matt Painter being asked about <laughs> Zach Eady, where a lot of people argue he's only good because he's tall. And here's the Boilermakers head coach saying, Go bleep yourself. You see people, you know, around the country, even you know, fans, but even pe- people that cover the game say he's just tall. What would you say to the people that say that, that are only looking at the size and not just the game? Yeah, they, they just shouldn't cover basketball. Yeah, you know. And so, like, you go to school and, and you learn things or whatever, but we all don't like every single class we're in, right? It's kind of a necessary evil. It's like going to work. Like, you don't like everybody you work with or you don't like certain parts of your job. And, you know, it's tough, right? You, you got to be able to deal with, like, certain things that, that are difficult. And so I just think everybody should, like, take tests on their knowledge of what they're doing. Like, I think all coaches should take a test so they understand refereeing. And I think all referees should take a test so they understand coaching. And I think all journalists should have to take a basketball quiz or a test or anybody that tweets, they should have to be able to do it. And if they say something so moronic as that, then they should have to have a probationary status where they they can't tweet for like three months. I think it'll help like, like society, you know, like just try to knock out the fools, you know, so they don't have to, you know, meet at the local Walmart and say things that don't make any sense. <laughs> that was a damn good rant. There you go. Very impressive there from Matt Painter. Uh, up, Matt. Now, I, I mean, we, up for your guy. I got 90 seconds worth of, of Kim Mulkey, whose voice sounds like the, you know, if an ashtray was able to speak. I don't know if you guys want to hear her, but she called out the Washington Post. Apparently, they got a hit piece on her. They do. She's, I don't know. She's, she's, yeah, she's, she's, she's getting ahead of this thing. Here is LSU Lady Tigers head coach, formerly of uh, the Baylor Bears. That's right. And this is, this is Broadus's lady. This is her starting her pregame presser uh, with, hey, we got to talk about this, this bleep old journalist from the Washington Post. This reporter has been working on a story about me for two years. After two years of trying to get me to sit with him for an interview, he contacts LSU on Tuesday as we were getting ready for the first round game of this tournament with more than a dozen questions, demanding a response by Thursday, right before we're scheduled to tip off. Are you kidding me? This was a ridiculous deadline that LSU and I could not possibly meet and the reporter knew it. It was just an attempt to prevent me from commenting and an attempt to distract us from this tournament. It ain't gonna work, buddy. (laughs) Unfortunately, this is part of a pattern that goes back years. I told this reporter two years ago that I didn't appreciate the hit job he wrote on Brian Kelly. And that's why I wasn't going to do an interview with him. After that, the reporter called two former college coaches of mine and left multiple messages that he was with me in Baton Rouge to get them to call him back. Trying to trick these coaches into believing that I was working with the Washington Post on a story. So there's Kim Mulkey, uh, and that's just about half of her three-and-a-half-minute rant against the Washington Post and this particular journalist, who I do believe is a Gamecock himself. So there's Mm. some some SEC Mm. hate involved here. There's a little rivalry. Uh, But I do look forward. I mean, she's really built up this particular story now. We're all going to be waiting to read. (laughs) She's she's really hyped it up for us now. It must be juicy. There's a nice rollout there. I imagine if you're the Washington Post, you feel good about this. But she she says she's, she's threatened to sue them if if they are coming out with a story that's not true about her so we'll see how far that can go i imagine the washington post has you know probably the best lawyers in the business there and they will make sure that story is buttoned up at yeah. every turn before they release it to the public there but she's definitely ticked off and she's potentially to, uh, nervous about what's in this thing defamation lawyer she's already hired too so yeah she's she's lawyering up and i guess the washington post is always that way because of the line of work they're in i mean might be a dishonest uh, intrepid reporter um I, you know i i don't know i i think the way that she reacted suggests that it's it's potentially damaging i didn't yeah. hear any denials about the things he is going to say no. just that maybe he's a liar and he might have an axe to grind here so 
Um, but, you know, that, that one's interesting. When Kim has said stuff in the past, I've cringed. You know, when she was talking about Brittany Griner and, you know, uh, her preference and, you know, she did not have her back at all. And when she was at Baylor, I was like, wow, that's kind of weird. I, I, I know, um, you know, like when when you look back on her career, you are going to see some things where she ventures into social commentary and, you know, it's troubling in a in a Mike Gundy kind of way. She's like the Mike Gundy of, of women's basketball. And, you know, I, I think I, I think there's potentially a, a stuff in there that is not going to reflect well on her. No. She's had a very long career. Yeah. And, you know, I, I will not be surprised at all. You know, it'll. I, I, I don't know why anybody has to write it. <laughs> I think everybody knows it. If you're, if you're a fan of Kim Mulkey, if you've been watching Kim Mulkey, if you've seen her at any of the universities that you root for or have gone to and you see her up there, you know what's in there, you know? Um, and, you know, maybe maybe it's a reporter's opinion that times are changed and she doesn't belong in, in, in basketball anymore and they're going to try to do a big hit piece and, and get her canceled. Um, but I, I am fascinated to see what is in that story. She's because she is a legendary personality. I mean, not only is she a great coach, but you know, the way that she interacts is brings so much attention to the college game. You know, it would be bad for her to, to get kicked out. Maybe it'd be bad for the brand of women's basketball to tear this thing open and see what's in there. But no doubt I already wanted to see it and, and her talking about it just makes me want to see it that much more. All right, when we come back, it's time to hit the expressway. We'll take you commercial free to the top. We have a rim session. We have an addition of baseball stuff and a look at all the developing stories coming up next right here. It's the G-Bag Nation on 105.3 The Fan. I want to chat about my friends.